I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Right on set. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and welcome to the first episode of my new show, On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a web show, it's the first of its kind where we talk about movies coming out this weekend and give you guys a little advanced knowledge as to whether or not these are good movies that you should go check out or movies that you should just wait, actually wait for them to come out on video or even not even see. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about the opportunity here and uh, I want to welcome my first guest. Uh, he's a film buff and I'm really glad to have him on the show and it's going to be fun to talk to him. Mr. Greg Turkington. Greg, thank hey you guys. for coming on the show. Um, Congratulations on the TV series. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, this is our first episode, so we're sort of working out the kinks and having a lot of fun doing it as well. Uh, the first movie we're going to be talking about today is called The Man with the Iron Fists. Yes. And uh, this is directed by RZA, and it stars uh, Russell Crowe and... Uh, Lucy Liu. And Lucy Liu, correct. I'll do the introductions of... Well, I'll do the synopsis in the movie. And uh, it stars Russell Crowe, Ch uh, Kung... Lee and Lucy Liu and Pam Greer. And um, this is basically, it's a feud in feudal China, blacksmith uh, who makes weapons for small villages. It's a karate kind of movie. Yeah. Um, and for a first time director, it's unbelievable that he was able to get so much footage out of this and shoot so many great scenes. I love this movie, what'd you think? I think Russell Crowe is always gonna be someone to watch. When he's on the screen, he lights up the whole room and this film is no exception. Kudos to Russell Crowe, and we hope we'll be seeing more of him. It's been a while since I last saw him. That's right, and it's been, I uh, can't remember the last movie he was in, but it was probably a great one. And Gladiator or something else. He's been busy probably working on this film, but uh, at last we see the fruits of his labor, the man yeah. with the <laughs> iron fists. All right, well, if you like martial arts, this is the movie for you, starring Russell Crowe, directed by RZA, and I'm giving it four popcorn, four bags of popcorn and uh, one soda. Greg? I like my martial arts, but I don't think you need to like them uh, to like this movie. If you like Russell Crowe or Lucy Liu, you'll also like this movie. I'm going to give it five tubs of popcorn and a couple of sodas, because it is just that good, whether you see it in 3D, as some did, or 2D, as I did. All right. Well, the next movie on our list is Flight, starring Robert Zemeckis and Denzel, or uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis and starring Denzel Washington, John Goodman, and somebody named Kelly Riley. She was good. She was great. And um, this movie was phenomenal. Uh, it's got to be winner of Best Picture this year. It's about planes, and it's about a plane crash. Denzel Washington plays a man who is a pilot of planes. I thought this was a great movie. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time, because it was one of those movies that I thought, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And I love this movie, Greg. Uh, John Goodman should be renamed John Greatman after this, because he's uh, Oscar worthy, as he often is. And it's good to see Robert Zemeckis back. Of course, he's made so many great movies throughout Back time. to the Future, and of course, the whole trilogy, the Back to the Future 2 and also the third one. Back to the Future 3. Um, this was a departure for Zemeckis. If you've seen Back to the Future, that's sort of uh, for kids of all ages. Uh, I think kids would be a little scared by this. I wasn't, but be careful when bringing children to this film. That's my warning. And I love Denzel Washington. He kind of reminds me of Russell Crowe, speaking of the other movie we talked about earlier. Um, the great actors are all kind of the same in a way, that they have that kind of talent and they know how to use it. Right. All right, so Flight, starring Denzel Washington, directed by Robert Zemeckis, and it is a great movie, This for, one of the great movies this fall. I'm giving it five bags of popcorn and two sodas. I liked it. Um, I would say probably four bags of popcorn, but because John Goodman is one of the stars and he likes to eat, let's upgrade it to five. All right. And a candy bar. All right, well... I think we should just keep the ratings based on whether you like the movie and the more not based well, on I love the movie. movie. All right, so two great movies to see this weekend, but if you don't plan on going to see the movies this weekend, uh, Greg here has a new segment. Uh, all the segments here are new, it's so the first episode, but this one is called Popcorn Classics. <laughs> Greg Turkington has brought in a VHS tape from his vast collection, and uh, Greg, what have you brought in to recommend this week? Today on my segment, we're looking at multiplicity starring Andy McDowell and Michael Keaton. Uh, this is Michael Keaton's finest hour, well, finest two hours, or finest... <laughs> what is the running time? 100 and... 
Usually it says right on the back. It, maybe it's on the tape. 117 minutes, so it is as fine as two hours, mm -hmm. give or take a couple, well, three minutes. Now this film is interesting in that they have cloned uh, Michael Keaton. And for anyone who's ever seen Michael Keaton and knows what a national treasure he is, you would have to agree that having a hundred Michael Keatons is not just a great idea for a movie, but it would be a great idea for Hollywood, because uh, then we could have him in a lot of movies at once, and that would be a treat. Right. Well, I wish uh, they had cloned uh, 100 Andy, Mc, uh, Andy, Mc, Andy McDowell's. Andy well, I think 50 would be plenty for her. She hasn't had quite the career right. that Michael Keaton has. But uh, the film's great, and I'd like to clone 100 copies of this and give one to everyone I know so that they could have a nice summer weekend at home. Make some time this weekend to see Multiplicity. Right. All right, well, Multiplicity, check it out. It must be available in wide release uh, on VHS. I got it on VHS. I think it's also on DVD. All right, well, thank you very much, Greg, for being on the show, and thank you all for watching. Just to go back and look, uh, Man I hope with you the... guys like the new segment. Uh, going to back, the Man with the Iron Fist gets four bags of popcorn and one soda for me. And I would duplicate that. And Flight gets five bags of corn and two sodas for me. Greg? Uh, it's off the scale for me. I thought it was a great film. I'm giving it the five, but I'm throwing in an extra tub of popcorn for Mr. John Goodman, who deserves a meal after his great acting job. Well, uh, thanks again for watching. This is our first episode. We really appreciate you checking it out. Thanks to you, Greg, for being a part of the first episode. And, and many more, I hope. And we'll see uh, and enjoy the film, whatever film you see. So. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema, At the Cinema. It's a web series where we talk about what movies are coming out this weekend. Give you guys some advice as to what uh, we love and, and uh, what we don't like. So um, I got a big special guest for you guys today. Um, he's done the show before and he's a film buff and his name is Greg Turkington. Thanks for coming on the show, Greg. Hey guys, always a pleasure to take my seat at the On Cinema Screening Room. And thanks to all of you who are sending in cards and letters asking to have me on more often. <laughs> well, uh, we got two movies, and you might say ladies get in free, half price, or uh, uh, what's the expression, ladies night? It's ladies night. It's ladies night. Because uh, we got Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part Two. Uh, which stars uh, Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson, directed by Bill Condom, and it's just uh, another one of these vampire movies, I guess, and it's romantic, and it's uh, full of uh, these sort of situations, uh, which is, turns out to be that's very interesting, uh, very scary at times, but also a lot of romance and uh, really well made. So I recommend Good soundtrack. It. Good soundtrack. A lot of good songs and good cinematography. If you're a film buff, you notice things like that. It's very misty and murky. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that they shot a lot of this stuff in the woods and in certain locations that really work. Yeah, it's, it's not the kind of film I would normally go see. I haven't seen the previous one, so it's hard to follow the plot. Not a lot of car crashes in this <laughs> film, but... Uh, well, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, would it be a great movie to see with friends? I'm giving it... Or by yourself. Great. Uh, I'm giving it to Twilight Saga Brown... Uh, saga... Saga... Uh, saga... It's the Twilight Saga... Twilight Saga Breaking, Breaking Dawn Part Breaking 2. Breaking Dawn Part 2. Uh, four bags of popcorn. And uh, how about you? I'm going to give it four bags of popcorn with reservations that if you haven't seen the others, uh, you might want to brush up on them before you go see this one. Another one is another chick flick, as you might call it, uh, called Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Starring Karina. Kira Knightley, Jude Law. And this is an adaptation about Russians uh, from a book. And it's a classic chick flick, I guess. Sometimes those movies are not great, but this one is. It's about Tolstoy. Uh, Ro, uh, Lu, Lu, Leo Tolstoy wrote the book. And it's set in Russia. And. And that's about it. So this is about Anna Karenina, and is very uh, well done, well made. I love this movie. And it's a period piece, and it's a sort of an important film in that it wouldn't have been possible to make this a few years ago when we were at war with Russia, and there was that whole thing. 
So it's sort of groundbreaking in that mm -hmm. sense. And interesting so to hear. The, also interesting to hear the uh, American and, and English, like Jude Law, for example. Uh, I thought to myself, hmm, he's not Russian. How is he going to play it? And he ended up doing a great job do, being able to do the accent. Uh, it's not, by the way, no subtitles required. You, this is all in English, so you don't have to worry about reading for the whole movie, which sucks. And Oscars, uh, I think there will be a few. This is the type of movie that Oscar loves to reward, and what greater reward would there be than to get an Oscar? So, well, if it doesn't win, it's certainly going to be nominated. That's a guarantee. It um, will win. Um, all right, so Anna Karenina gets five bags of popcorn from me. You got to give it five. Um, it'll be nominated. It will take home a few statuettes, and that's what it's all about. All right, so now we're going to do something a little different. Uh, since we are making this uh, show in Ca Los Angeles, California, uh, Greg has gone out and made some uh, a film here about some really famous locations, I guess, where a lot of famous movies have been shot. So let's take a look at that. It's called On Cinema. Uh, on, on Cinema On Location. On it's it's on our, location. our newest segment and hopefully a popular one. Let's take a look. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema On Location. Hey guys, welcome to another segment of On Location with On Cinema. Today we're at a very famous movie site. This is the Cemetery Lake where the film Hot Shots from 1991 starring Charlie Sheen was shot. Uh, you may remember the scene, it all took place right here and uh, really hasn't changed. Back to you. All right, very interesting. I didn't know that. It's uh, go check out that site if you're ever in Los Angeles. Uh, it's fun to be behind just, the camera. Um, of course, I've done the podcast, now the show, and then to get behind the camera and in front of the camera and make a little film like that is a treat. Well, really, it's almost uh, more valuable than going on one of those Hollywood bus tours. Thanks for watching. And uh, uh, just to recap, Twilight Saga: Breaking Dawn Part Two is getting four bags of popcorn from me. And Anna Karenina getting the five pops. Yeah, I'm going to have to say four and five as well. I don't like to just uh, parrot your opinions, <laughs> but in this case, you're right. All right. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week. Enjoy the film. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a web series where we talk about movies coming out this weekend and we also try to give you some advice as to whether or not you should go see these movies. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going on in our world and cinema-wise. Thank you so much for all the great comments and wonderful response we've gotten from the show. Just happy to help and um, we'll hopefully keep making more of these shows. Uh, my guest today is Greg Turkington. Hey guys. Good to be here. All right. Uh, and uh, for those, what are today's films? Uh, the, today's movie is uh, called The Fro Frozen <clears throat> Ground. Frozen Ground with Nicolas Cage and directed by Scott Walker. And it's about a murder, serial, uh, serial killer movie. It's a serial killer movie with a twist at the end, as I guess a lot of them do. Um, serial killers are not funny business. That's definitely a segment of society that should be eliminated, uh, which they do at the end of this movie. It's, oh, I wouldn't call it a lot of fun, but it's definitely thought-provoking. Keeps you on the edge of your seat. Uh. And Nicolas Cage is great in it, and John Cusack also who we haven't seen a lot of in a long time, but it's good to see him back on the screen and winning winning us all over, because he's always great. And uh, Universal Soldier but, did... Uh, oh, and I give... And how many... Uh, what did you think of the Frozen Ground? Four uh, bags of popcorn. I'm going to agree with you. Four 
bags of popcorn seems appropriate. Probably no uh, treats to go along with that because it is a dark, somber film. And then... Uh, Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning, which is a, another John claude Van Damme movie with Lo Dolph Lundgren. Jeff Lung, Jeff Lung, uh, another John Cluffin damn movie with Luff, uh, Lung, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren, Dolph Lundgren. Um, all right. Um, uh, Day of Reckoning is an action film, and there's a lot of action in it. Um, everything from overturning cars to explosions to sh old fashioned shoot 'em ups and. Uh, it's uh, it's a thriller. It's probably not for the faint of heart. Probably, uh, and if you've seen John Claude Van Damme, you know what to expect. Um, I thought it was a little bit better than than the uh, than most of his films, but um, uh, I'm biased. I own, I own them all. So, a Day of Reckoning. I would give that five five tubs of popcorn with. Uh, Maybe a can of Red Bull to keep you going. Tim? <laughs> and how many bags of popcorn? <laughs> I I would give him both four or five. And uh, so keep on watching and enjoy the movies. Hi everybody, happy Thanksgiving. My name is Tim Heidecker. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema, At The Cinema. It's a new web series where we talk about what movies are coming out this weekend and hopefully give you guys a little advice about what's worth seeing and what's uh, worth staying away from. Every week I bring on a guest and today my guest, a very cool guest, Mr. Greg Turkington. Hey guys, always good to be here as a regular guest. This week, we've got two movies to talk about. And by the way, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I always love going to see movies around Thanksgiving uh, because the family's around. And sometimes we'll just say, you know, instead of doing the dishes after Thanksgiving meal, let's just go see a movie. So we'll all go out to the cinema. It's uh, fun. The first movie is a remake called Red Dawn, which is a movie about people who are uh, being attacked by Russians. Or in this case, it's the North Koreans. And these teenagers fight back, and I won't give away the ending, but it's a happy ending. So um, they are attacked by Russia, or Korea, and there is a, it is a remake, and it's um, a lot of tension, a lot of action, a lot of great acting, and a lot of fun. Did you ever see the original with uh, uh, Bridgie Nelson, I think, was in it? And uh, it's, it's on video. You, yeah, you got to see the original. original. So that's you, Red Dawn. Do you like it better? Or uh, I like, I always prefer the remakes because uh, it's a better movie and uh, you can tell because the CGI and the technology. And no commercials. When you watch the originals, it's usually on TV and you have to sit through a lot of commercials. So it's fun just to go to the movies and watch it the way the filmmakers intended. Right. Uh, and they don't cut out the scenes with boobs and curse words and everything too. Also, we got to see this one. This was kind of special. We got to see this a couple days before it came out, special sneak preview. And that was the first time I've been to a Hollywood sneak preview and it was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, a lot of times you'll get invited uh, to see whether or not the movie's working and sometimes they'll change movies got, uh, like a focus group. Um, well, this one is good, so there was no reason to tinker with success. Right. So I'm giving Red Dawn five pops corn, uh, five bags of popcorn and, it's, uh, and no sodas. I'm going to give it 
four bags of popcorn and maybe just a cup of water. And it's directed by Dan Bradley. So. And it's definitely a popcorn movie. There's a lot of thrills and chills and spills, and we like that sort of thing on this show. And good cinematography, and, um, you know, it's a long movie, but time flies when you're having fun. I had a lot of fun at Red Dawn, and I think you will too. And it's R-E-D-D-A-W-N, not D-O-N. All right, our next movie on the list is uh, called Life of Pi. And I know you're thinking, mmm, dessert, pie, but this is actually the, the uh, dessert, not dessert, it's the P.I. from math. Uh, and it's based on a book, not Private Detective either. Uh, it's, uh, which I suppose would be a good idea for a movie. Uh, be interesting to see what a P.I. does. Have you seen Fletch? Yes. Fletch, Chevy Chase. Or Bogey. A bogey. Uh, from the Bogey movies. Um, Life of Pi. Didn't know much about this movie. And uh, this is based on a very popular book about an Indian boy who's trapped on a boat with a lion or a tiger, something like that. And this was a weird movie, for sure. One of the weirdest movies I think I've ever seen. Uh, had a very philosophical touch to it. And I appreciated the acting, and I loved this movie. Well, with all the animals in it, they could have called it Animal House, too, because it was <laughs> just filled with animals. And if you love animals, if you're an animal lover, and I know I am, you like this movie. Um, I like the Fletch movies better, but I would still recommend this. You have to admit, though, it's really weird. It's very strange, but I've seen a lot of strange movies. Um, uh, one of my all-time favorite movies is Napoleon Dynamite, and uh, it doesn't get much weirder than that. But this one tries, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't say it's for everyone. Probably someone that's looking for a sports movie wouldn't like this movie, but right. the rest of you will. So go check out Life of Pi. Well, Life of Pi, very weird, but very well done by the great cinematographer, director, Ang Lee. And I think I'm, this is going to be definitely, you got my vote. If anyone's voting for Oscar, this is going to win Oscar. And it's a little, I give, a little too weird for the Oscars. I give it six, uh, four popcorn bags. So check it out if you like the weird stuff. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and, I don't know, some sort of strange snack. How about... Um, like salt... Uh, have you had those, uh, those little crackers that are wrapped in seaweed? Oh, uh, yeah, like tofu. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just crackers. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, if you can't make it out to the film this weekend, you got too many dishes to wash after Thanksgiving. Uh, You're not we, working. You should be able to get to the pictures this weekend because right. nobody works on Thanksgiving. Uh, we do this segment every once in a while called Popcorn Classics, and Greg has brought in a movie from his home library to recommend. Greg, what have you brought in this week? I'd say put the dishes in the dishwasher, turn it on, and reach into your video cabinet and pull this thing out, as I did. Um, we, um, this is Twilight Zone the movie. Now, last week, we talked about the Twilight Saga, and this is sort of the original Twilight Saga, the mm -hmm. Twilight Zone. Uh, it was a TV show, and it was very different from the Twilight that we know today. Uh, the Twilight Saga came from a popular series of books. All right, well, that, so that was based on the TV show, then The Twilight Zone, and then... The, twi the Twilight Zone, the movie is based on Twilight Zone, the TV series. Okay. And Twilight, uh, the Twilight movies are based on books, have nothing to do with this movie, which stars Dan Aykroyd. All right. All right, well, if you want to get a copy of Twilight Zone, the movie, check out Blockbuster or the video stores, uh, or maybe it's even going to be on Amazon. TV. Amazon.com or eBay is a place you can bid. Uh, you place your bid, and if your bid's accepted, then you pay for it. You don't pay for it until then. All right, well, if you are going to see the movies, we both recommend Red Dawn and Life of Pi. I gave Red Dawn... Five. You gave it five. I gave four bags of popcorn and one soda, and Life of Pi, I gave five bags and two sodas. And I gave Red Dawn four bags and Life of Pi five bags, and watch them both if you can. Oh, a double feature. Thanks again for watching and enjoy the film. It's important to remember this. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and welcome to my show, web show called On Cinema at the Cinema. It is the first kind of show where we can take a look at movies coming out this weekend and give you guys advice 
about what to see, what to stay away from, maybe even movies that you should just wait to see on VHS or, or on video or uh, on demand. Uh, my guest is uh, one of uh, a guy who I've known for a while now. He's back. Uh, he was on our first episode, and uh, he knows quite a bit about movies. He's a film buff, Mr. Greg Turkington. Greg, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, guys. Good to be back in my seat again. <laughs> seat is for anybody who's a guest of the show. So, Well, I mean, it's... Our first movie is called Skyfall, and it's about uh, James Bond, who goes to... Tested Loyalty, starring Craig, Dan, uh, Daniel Craig. Uh, and it's uh, another example of Bond doing what he does, spying and whatnot. Uh, I know you're a Bond head. I'm a Bond freak, and seeing Skyfall is why we do what we do, is to have the chance to see movies like this and enjoy them. And no one enjoys James Bond more than I do. I mean, any time you have a chance to see a James Bond film, you've got to see it. They're all great movies. There has not been a James Bond movie that's not a 10 out of 10. This one is no exception. I really loved it. I really loved it. I think it's right up there with the best of the best. All right, well, so Skyfall, um, I wasn't as nuts about it. It's still a great movie. I give it four tubs of popcorn and just four tubs of popcorn because it's a good, a lot of good action sequences. I'm not a really big fan of the Bond movies myself, but uh, I... I just don't like, I'd rather watch other movies. I'd rather watch uh, Steven Spielberg movies, which I'll get into next. Anyway, uh, it was a great movie, though, and I'll give it five bags of popcorn. Greg? I'm going to give it, f well, five is the most we can give, so I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn, but I'm going to pack them tight with as much corn as I can get in there and an extra ladle of butter because I love this movie. It's right up there with the best of Bond. All right. You could also add sodas if you want. So. All right, then I'll add 100 sodas. All right, well, our next movie I was very excited about all summer long because it's return of my favorite director, Steven Spielberg, with Lincoln, a story about Ab President Abraham Lincoln. And it's got everybody in it, Daniel Day-Lewis and Dan uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Tommy Lee Jones and a number of other people. This movie is about Abe Lincoln, and it's about Civil War, and it's one of the great movies of all time, in my opinion. Could you believe all the amazing things, all the history that's in this movie, and the great job that Daniel Day-Lewis does? This movie just doesn't stop giving back. It really made you feel like you're back in the Civil War times. Uh, what would you think, Greg? Uh, I've seen a lot of movies about Lincoln. This was one of the best. Uh, Steven Spielberg has come through once again. If you liked E.T., this is a different sort of film. It's more in line with a historical drama. I've always loved Steven Spielberg. I've always admired Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it's a good film, uh, maybe even a great film, not as good as the James Bond film. If you can only see one movie out of the two, make it the Bond film. Great. Well, uh, I'm giving it uh, as many bags of popcorn as you can, which is six bags of popcorn and three sodas. I'm going to give it five. Uh, well, I'm going to give it four because I gave the Bond five and I preferred that. I'll give this four, but I'm going to throw in a roll of Lincoln pennies. All right. So check out these two movies. We both recommend them for different reasons. Uh, if you're not planning on going to the movies this weekend, we recommend. Uh, it's a segment we did last week that was very successful. Greg's uh, agreed to bring in a uh, VHS tape from his library. And uh, let's take a look at this week's uh, popcorn classic. So let's take a look at this week's popcorn classic. This week on my popcorn classic segment, we're looking at Murphy's Romance, Murphy's starring Romance. James Garner and Sally Field, two great actors or actor and actresses, or an actor and an actress in the prime of their career. She's Murphy. Uh, I'm not sure what his character is called. The film doesn't really work. The, there's no chemistry. The age difference was just a little too vast. So Yeah, I don't, I remember seeing this many years ago. Not really that my kind of film, but uh, if you're into romantic comedies, I guess this would be a movie for, uh, you want to check out. It's, it's, you know what, it's one of those ones you see time and time again if you haunt the dollar bins. Uh, so pick it up, give it a chance. All right. All right, it reminds me of the old saying, Murphy's Law, which says uh, anything good happens, anything bad happens will. And that's uh, funny because I bought this film and I went home to play it and the tape was all messed up and it took two years till I found another copy. And when I did, 
I didn't really like it much. So that is kind of Murphy's Law. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, interesting that you'd bring that in if you didn't like it. Anyhow, thank you very much. Once again, Skyfall's getting four bags of popcorn from me, and Lincoln is getting six bags with two sodas. Well, I thought it only went up to five, so, but if it's five for the Bond and three for Lincoln, and it should only be five for Lincoln for you because it doesn't go up to six. Six bags, and uh, we, it does go up to six. Thank you, guys. All right, then for six for the Bond. Well, so either case, great movies, great weekend to go see movies. So please make sure you go see at least one or two of these movies this weekend. Thanks again for watching, and thanks, Greg, for being the guest. Thanks again Thank for you. watching, and, and uh, have a great day, and enjoy the movie. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Heidecker, and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Thanks for watching. This is the webisodes where we talk about what movies are coming out this weekend and hopefully uh, recommending some for you or telling you which ones to stay away from. Uh, my guest this week is a uh, film buff and I'm really happy to have him on the show this week is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be back in my chair on <laughs> cinema uh, at the movies. Yeah, or, um, well listen, thanks very much for coming and we got oh, a couple, yeah. of, couple of cool movies to talk about today. Very cool. Um, Playing for Keeps is a movie directed by Gabriele Mucconi, Michiani, Muc Muccini. And that's uh, with Gerald Butler, Jessica Biel, and my favorite actor, Dennis Quaid. Um, it's a really great coming of age kind of movie about soccer and about Gerald Butler really reinventing who he is as a man and of course a lot of great romance, comedy, and sports. Uh, I thought it was really fun. It really took the edge off for me, and it was a really a nice, clean, pleasant, fun movie if you like soccer and, and movies about Which soccer. Which I do. This is a cool movie. People will like this movie. Um, you know, I hadn't heard of it until I saw the ads and then went to see it, and I flipped over it, and it will be a movie that I will add to my library when it is made available on DVD. Or... Uh, I thought Dennis Quaid was terrific in this. And... I love Dennis. I mean, I love Randy Quaid, too. He wasn't in this, but he's also a very fine actor. There's something right. in that Quaid blood. Yeah. Well, uh, Playing for Keeps gets my four bags of popcorn. I'm going to give it four bags of popcorn and a hot dog, because that's what you would eat if you went to see a sporting event. And a lot of the movie does take place uh, in the world of professional sports. Uh, our second movie is, uh, it's kind of a coincidence, because several weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we were talking about uh, another movie about presidents. This one is called Hyde Park of the Hudson, about another famous U.S. president named Franklin Roosevelt. And it stars, surprisingly, Bill Murray uh, as President Obama, uh, uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah. Sorry, uh, it's not Frank FDR. Yeah, of course. Um, what was I thinking? Oh, so it stars. Stars Bill Murray. Stars Bill Murray. And people are thinking, well, is it a comedy? No, it's not. But it has a lot no. of great heart to it. Uh, this movie blew me away. I thought it was so funny. Not funny, but well done. And over Roosevelt was one of our uh, first presidents. Or? Well, he wasn't one of the first. He was one of the best. And Bill Murray's one of our best actors. And so it makes sense that they would come together in this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, this is no meatballs. It's not a. It's not a gross-out comedy. It's actually a very serious film about a very. I was serious fun, it was always issue. funny to see Roosevelt with the the cigarette and the yes, cigarette holder. Yes. And uh, I thought Bill Murray was going to ham it up a little more than he did. And I'm also going to add uh, that I think this is your movie to win the Oscars. At least Bill Murray. It's always been a bone of contention with me that there isn't a best actor in a comedy award. And if there was one, Bill Murray, I think, would have a whole mantelpiece covered with these things. But when he does get dramatic, which he does very well, in every case, I think he's deserved the Oscar. And I think this is finally the year where he's going to get one. And thank God for that. It will be Oscar's sweet director. Revenge. The director could probably win for this. Um, Roger Mitchell. And it will Bill be Murray Oscar's, should have won it'll before. Be, it'll but. be Oscar's sweet revenge that he wins Best Actor when he was not nominated for other movies that he was in. That's uh, our movies this week. Um, both great movies. Check them out. Different movies. Uh, but we really did enjoy both of them. Uh, right now, we're going to show you guys five tubs of, or how many?
Just let me finish. Let me get to the on location segment that you want me to do. All right, we did this a few weeks ago. It was such a successful segment. We're doing it again. Greg has asked uh, to go and do this, and it's a segment called On Cinema, On Location. Very proud of these. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey, guys. Welcome to another segment of On Cinema's On Location. Uh, the segment where we take a look at famous locations from great movies and classic movies. Today we're looking at the hotel that was seen in the movie Moment by Moment, starring John Travolta and Lily Tomlin. If you've seen the movie, you know that this hotel is where John Travolta's buddy Greg lives and where Lily Tomlin comes to try to find John Travolta after a spat. So it's a classic movie, classic location. Uh, back to you, Tim. Thank you very much, Greg, for that report. And uh, once one more time, playing for keeps gets four bags of popcorn from me. I will give it four as well. And Hyde Park on Hudson getting five bags of popcorn with two sodas on, from me. Five bags of popcorn and as many Oscars as you can give. Director, film, actor, actress, screenplay, and even the score was quite good. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. Good to be and, here. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the film. This one's actually pretty different than I was Yeah, yeah. No, oh, it's Bill Murray. It's no uh, World War II. It's... It's... Are we still rolling? Because I was going to say we, uh, if Steven Spielberg directed Hyde Park on the Hudson would be kind of a cool idea. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Heidecker. I'm the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. It's the only webisode show where... We uh, tell you what's coming out in the theaters this weekend and also tell you what movies to check out and also maybe what movies to, uh, you can skip. Uh, my guest this week is a film buff, film historian, guy that knows a lot about movies. It's a lot of fun to talk to him. His name is Greg Turkington. Hey, Tim. Hey, guys. Uh, it's great to be here, especially this week when we're covering a couple of uh, what let I think are going to be the... Let me introduce the movies. Okay. The movies this week, I gotta say, we should have two episodes for this episode because of how big the movies are. Well, we should. Uh, but we won't. Um, this one is just so big. It's called Hobbit with an unexpected, uh, the unexpected journey by, or I'm sorry, The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey for 3D and IMAX. I mean, I tell you, I am such a fan of these Lord of the Rings movies, and this one just keeps keeps the energy of the old the movies going. It's classic, and I thought. Uh, that this was just a terrific movie and uh, loved it. And, and uh, I'll give you my one word review and then we'll get and in, dig into it a little bit deeper. My one word review is finally, because I've been waiting for this film. When the Lord of the Rings series ended, uh, it was a blow. We felt like, well, this is sort of uh, our era coming to a close and what, what next? And I'm sort of a hobbit freak. And so when I heard that they were gonna do this, I got very, very excited, started counting the days. Xing out the days on the calendar mm -hmm. until The Hobbit would finally be made reality, and it has, and I couldn't be happier with the results. This yeah. is fun. And I saw it on the big IMAX screen, but I would watch it again on the smallest screen available. I mean, any size, you're going to love this film. It's great. You got Peter Jackson's back at the helm. You got Morgan Freeman, Ian McKellen. It's Ma Martin Freeman. Mor uh, Martin Freeman, e Egan McKellen, Mitch, uh, Richard, Armitage, uh, Richard Armitage, Armitage. And, uh, and of course, the big star Bilbo Baggins, the Hobbit himself, and that's what really makes this movie rock and roll. He's sort of a personal hero of mine, mm -hmm. and to see him fully realized like this, uh, it, it makes your heart skip a beat. It really does. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm watching this movie, and this is the way I felt during Lord of the Rings, was how do they do all that special effects? In other words, the people that are tiny, short, small hobbits versus the tall humans, uh, all the technology that goes into making this movie kind of makes you go... Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't too worried about the details, the nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts. I'm just sitting back with some popcorn enjoying the film, and that's the way you should do it, too. Uh, well, it's fantastic. You don't need to know about the story 
This is the original. In you fact, know the story. If you, you, haven't, you haven't seen, read, if you haven't read The Hobbit, what uh, hole have you been living in? A Hobbit hole? But if I have to say one thing about this is, if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings yet, don't bother yet. See Hobbit first because it is a prequel, and then see rest of Lord of the Rings. Um, and see them on the IMAX because I don't know if there's one in your area. It gives you a real, th you can feel it in your bones, the big sound system, and visually, it's like you're there in yeah. Middle Earth with Bilbo and the gang. It's, it's great. And what about the dragon Sma uh, Smaug, S-M-A-U-G? Well, I mean, he's one of the classic characters of literature. Yeah, right? what a to see him man. on a screen like this. Uh... So I'm saying this right now, and you, everybody better be listening. This is the best film of the year. It's going to win Oscar. It'll win Best Picture. Uh, there's no question about it because Jackson's done it again. He is like the king. If Michael Jackson's the king of pop, then I'll say Peter Jackson is the king of movies. And he's got some Oscars already. So once you break that barrier, mm -hmm. they're willing to keep dishing them out, especially when you make films that are this audience friendly and this Oscar friendly. Yeah. Uh, great. So we have Hobbit, Unexpected Journey, Learn, Gen Unexpected Journey. I'm giving it six bags of popcorns and six cans of soda. Uh, cups of soda. Well, the scale only goes up to five, but I'll give it five bags of popcorn and a big Hobbit hug. All right. Well, um, well uh, the other movie we had is Les Miserables, Les Miserables, Le, uh, Les Mis, I guess you can call it. And that's, uh, I also give that five popcorn yeah, bags. Yeah, four or five, whatever. Great, great music. Okay. Let's just jump into the, while we have time, the popcorn uh, classic we have. <laughs> Popcorn classic this week is George Burns in 18 again. Uh, it's a delight for all ages. Um, I can't stop laughing. Mm -hmm. I love this movie. All right. Thanks again for watching and enjoy the film. This is a great movie. It's a wonderful switch. Yeah. Hi everybody, this is Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a weekly pod web, it's actually not a podcast, it's a webisode, where we talk about what movies are coming out that we, this weekend and we also give you some advice whether or not you should see them or not. Uh, my guest this week is uh, Mr. Greg Turkington. Greg, thanks for coming on the show. Hey guys, glad to be of service, uh, giving some insights and behind the scenes information on some of the new movies. And good to be here with you, Tim, and also good to be showing one of my short films later in this episode. Oh, let's not cut to that yet. All right, uh, movie first, the one first movie we're gonna uh, talk about is Zero Dark Thirty, which is a documentary about the hunt for La Osama bin Laden, one of the original bad guys in cinema and in the world. And uh, as, all, as we all remember so many years ago, uh, a couple years ago, we had the death of Osama bin Laden, killed in action after uh, we spent years hunting him for the murder of 9-11 and who is responsible for terrible terror and uh, man, about the men and women who did take him out and killed him and uh, all the work that went into going through that with the uh, seat, uh, Navy SEALs and the attack on uh, his compound because of where they knew where he was. And uh, it also goes through somehow hard, the hardships that went through with getting that done. And it goes through the, to the end. Um, and this was a very important documentary uh, about this killing. Uh, very sobering reminder of... Uh, the, of well, it's not really a documentary. It's, uh, they're using actors. And I liked the movie a lot. It was uh, a popcorn movie, but it's history. This film is history. And... Reliving the history so soon after it actually happened was uh, kind of a thrill, quite honestly. Yeah, we've seen this in other documentaries where they make a documentary about, um, for example... It wasn't really a documentary. It was more of a dramatization. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Well, it's a little different, but it's a, it's a great film either way. And uh, the guy who played Osama bin Laden was very convincing. And everyone knew that they were going to nail this guy, Osama bin Laden, this pig. And finally, at the end, it comes. And though you know it's coming, it's still a great surprise. And everybody in the audience that I was with cheered for joy. Yeah, I mean, it's a good film. Uh, definitely brings back some memories, some good, some bad. I would have liked to have seen, if I have any complaint, would have liked to have seen more about Osama bin Laden's life before all this stuff happened, sort of what, how he filled his days and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really get into that. So that's one flaw of the film. Right. Well, a lot of great acting going on in this. Uh, Chris Pratt, Jessica Chastain, Joel Eggerston. 
these are no-name actors. It's a, a cheaper sort of movie. They couldn't afford to pay Harrison Ford or uh, Mel Gibson or something like that. You know, it's interesting. I was watching um, The Dictator, the great Sacha Baron Cohen movie. Classic. And um, I thought to myself, ooh, wouldn't it have been an interesting casting choice to cast Sacha Baron Cohen as Osama bin Laden? Mm -hmm. And that could have been kind of very, in the same way that you might cast somebody like Bill Murray, like we saw him playing Roosevelt. I would not cast Bill Murray as Osama bin Laden. Oh, no, I'm saying we cast, I'm not saying we cast Bill Murray as Osama bin Laden. I'm saying Sasha Baron Cohen has Indian looking features. He mm -hmm. might be more appropriate for playing that kind of part. Uh, and it would have been, he could have gotten uh, that sort of perfect mix of humor and tragedy, which makes for great movies. And he might have included more scenes about Osama bin Laden's life before. He was murdered, which is what interested me about the movie, in which they didn't really cover. Great movie, nonetheless. Def definitely an Oscar contender in my book. I'm giving not it the bigger Oscars. I mean, that was going to go to The Hobbit. This would be best sound or costumes and things like that. Well, not costumes. It's just a bunch of rags and camouflage that you can get at Army Navy stores. Yeah, but the guy. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Three stars. Yeah, I'd give it four stars. Like a four-star general probably had something to do with the. Or, you know what, I'm, I'm giving it four bags of popcorn. Three bags of popcorn from me. And uh, so changing gears just a touch here, we got the second movie we're going to discuss today called Monsters INC 3D, re-release of original 3D, re-release uh, of 3D in original 3D. We usually don't do re-releases, but this is a big one, folks. And some people said to me, oh, no, are they going to recast the voices? Mm. But no, they haven't. Jim, uh, Billy Crystal and John Goodman are still in this movie. They're fantastic in it. Uh, and so that's a big sigh of relief from a lot of people I know. It's great for kids, but it's also great for old folks and everybody in between. Your thoughts on this one? I loved it. Osama bin Laden, that film should be called Monsters, Inc. Because he was a, a total Inc. monster. Um, but no, this is something different. This is, of course, the old Monsters, Inc. We've seen it a million times, seen it on TV. Uh, no reason really to go to the theater, but... See, I think um, you're wrong there. I think it is important to go see this movie on, on three theater, on theaters. So go check out Monsters, Inc. I'm giving it three stars, three corns. I love the movie. I'm going to give it five uh, buckets of popcorn. But watch it on video. You're crazy. You're wasting your time if you're sitting at home watching this on your shitty TV. The theater that I went to, the 3D, was not working properly and with the parking, cost of parking these days, it's not valid. Money is no object when it comes to great entertainment. I just assume stay at home and I love the movie. I love this movie. I, it's one of my all-time favorites, but I think you're better off buying it. You can buy it on uh, uh, eBay, hmm. place a bid, and see what happens. You might get lucky. No, well worth the money to go see this live. Uh, with a bunch of friends, and also see with a, gr a great crowd. Well, you can have your friends Friday come night. over to your house too and see the movie. You don't always have to go somewhere with your friends. I'll tell you the what, gas you wanna... crisis. That's why Osama bin Laden. One of the things that made that movie interesting is you have the gas crisis, and we're tired of the gas prices. How about you save a few dollars, have the neighborhood kids come over if you don't have kids yourself? I'll tell you and what, it's a lot of fun. All right, well, what, I give it uh, five and two. So what are you giving it? Five microwave bags of popcorn right. okay, and okay. two, two, All right. two liter well, bottles. We're going to have to disagree on that. With some cups and you pour it for every kid in the neighborhood and they can all come over and watch the movie. Everyone we're going to have to. Money. Okay, we agree to disagree. But I think we both agree go see Monsters Inc. in the theaters this weekend. Or uh, at home uh, on your home theater system. All right. Uh, we're going to cut to another episode of Greg Turkington's On Cinema On Location. Show that. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Welcome to a sad, somber edition of On Cinema, On Location. This edition is in memory of Bela Lugosi, the great horror actor from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, who you may have seen and loved in movies like Dracula and The Mummy. And we're here right now at the apartment where Mr. Lugosi passed away one sad, gloomy day uh, many, many years ago. Bella Lugosi, the great Bella Lugosi, died right here. Piece of Hollywood history for you. Back to you, Tim. Thanks for that. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, holidays are coming up, so we've got some holiday movies coming next week. 
And uh, until then, uh, Zero Dark 30 gets three bags of popcorn each. I get three bags of popcorn for that. And Monsters, I, Monsters Inc. 3D gets five bags of popcorn from me. And from me too, but again, uh, stay home and watch it. Check that out in the movie theater this week. All right, well guys, thanks again for watching and enjoy the film. I got the deleted scene. I got a nice plasma TV. I don't need to go to the theater. To it's watch deleted it. We're probably showing it off the DVD anyway. Um, yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. You're watching On Cinema at the Cinema, the webisodes that talk about what movies are coming out this weekend and hopefully give you some advice as whether or not you should see these movies coming up. Some of these movies you should skip because they're junk. Uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, um, good to be here and to be part of the On Cinema family and celebrating another successful episode. Yeah, and thank everybody for, uh, or thanks to everybody for their support and enjoying these episodes. And uh, we've gotten a lot of people thanking us for recommending The Hobbit. Uh, people were nuts about that movie. And it's been a big hit. Yeah. And congratulations to Peter Jackson, the king of movies. Uh, our movie today is called Jack Reacher, uh, directed by Christopher McQuarrie, starring Tom Cruise. Mm. And I'm so glad to see Tom Cruise back in the mix. Last year, he destroyed it with um, Mission Impossible 5. And it was such a fun movie, and I love that movie so much. So good, good for him. This movie is about a homicide detective who digs deeper into the case of a trained military sniper who shot five random... Victim, that sounds pretty good. It's an instant classic, and it's good to see Tom Cruise back in the news, not for some of the strange things that he's invo been involved in, but for what he's best at, which is dodging bullets and dealing with runaway trains rather than in the scandal sheets where we've seen a lot of them these well, past few years, and that's not fair because he's a fine actor and uh, has a lot to offer. definitely in my top three actors, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to the people I love to see. I love Robert De Niro, I love the director Steven Spielberg, and I love Tom Cruise. So I'm giving that one the highest score you can give it, which is six bags of popcorn and six sodas. And uh, Greg? I'm going to have to say f five is the highest. That's At least for me, that's the highest you can give. And I would skip the sodas. It's it's a good movie, but uh, definitely a stick popcorn. with the It's definitely, definitely a popcorn, popcorn movie. movie. All right, we got Cirque du Soleil, Worlds Away. If anybody does not familiar with Cirque du Soleil, then you sh should look it up online because it really is about a circus on ropes and with uh, a tightrope and uh, clowns and the things that you'd see at a circus, but even better than a circus. Uh, this is very much like going to see Cirque du Soleil, except it's been filmed and shot, and you can watch it as a movie. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it too. If you can't get to Las Vegas, I mean, if you're lucky, you can because it's a fun city. But if you can't get out there to see Cirque du Soleil in person, uh, go to your local Cineplex or your local drive-in or uh, just your local theater and see this movie. It would be great on IMAX. It's also um, probably on the regular screens too. So I'm giving Cirque du Soleil five stars and uh, five uh, bags of popcorn, four bags of popcorn. And uh, because it, it, there, it is a bit long, and uh, also some of it is in French. I'd have to give it four bags of popcorn if you like juggling and ropes and uh, the life of a circus performer. I can't recommend it enough. I give it five bags of popcorn. Wow. And a cotton candy. All right, so let's move on. If you are going to stay home and watch movies at home, then we recommend this. It's one of our popcorn classics. <laughs> Uh, today on my segment, Popcorn Classics, we have Dick Tracy starring Warren Beatty. Oh, well, and this I is, actually um, have a movie instead that I want to just uh, surprise you with. This is a little surprise on your end. This okay. time I brought in a movie. All right. So put, okay. put Dick Tracy away. Put the <laughs> dick back in your pants. <laughs> uh, can we use that? I don't know if we can get away with that. Uh, I brought in Star Trek IV. Um, if anyone listens to the podcast, they'll know that there's been a big disagreement between Greg and I on the plot of Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. Greg seems to insist that Star Trek II is where they go back to San Francisco. Yeah. But what's That's true right. is, is, is Star Trek IV is the one where uh, they go back to San Francisco. For Listen to this. Kirk and his crew must travel, must time travel back to 1986. You're reading off the card or off no, the box? No, I'm, I'm reading off the box. Crew must Kirk. Kirk must true crew. Kirk and his crew must time travel back to 1986 San Francisco, where they find a world of punk, pizza, and exact change buses 
that are as alien as anything they've ever encountered in the far reaches of the galaxy. That's the plot of Star Trek IV. Argument over, argument settled. I have been proven correct once again. Now, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, is where they go to San Francisco. The voyage home, they go back into space. That's where their home is. That's the voyage home. No, they're from Earth. They have, that's where they're going back to Earth, the voyage home. I don't home. think Spock is from Earth. I don't think you've seen anything like that on Earth. And Star Trek IV... Guys, if you guys know the answer to this... This is I'm... not the artwork from Star Trek IV. That's... This is not the real, there's no hologram. You see, that's how you tell a pirate. This video. is the original. If you look at a legitimate video, like the Dick Tracy video. Oh, this is a pirated video too. Oh no, it's, see, here's the security seal. There's no security seal. Well, there is a security seal. It says 71797 right underneath the that's Paramount That's called a catalog seal. number, so it doesn't mean anything. Anyway, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan is a great movie. I don't know what's on that tape. It's probably Star Wars 2 because that's a pirate that you probably got in Malaysia or something. That's not something that they would sell uh, at a real store here because you go to jail for piracy and you should. And Dick Tracy with Warren Beatty is also a film that we recommend. Audience, would you call and write to this guy, this nut here and tell him that Star Trek 4, if you just watch it, is them going back. It says it right in the movie. It says the, on the credit title sequence says Star Trek IV, and then they go back to San Francisco. It's not that hard to explain. Well, Star it's Trek not II hard to splice Com something like Star Trek II, which was the second movie after Star Trek The Motion Picture, they go back to San Francisco. Star Trek IV is about San Francisco. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next week. Star Trek II, they go to San Francisco. Star Trek IV, they go home into space okay. where they came well, from. Well, you're wrong. I'm right. Thanks, and He's enjoy the not film. From San enjoy Francisco. the film. Okay. No hologram. You can get the Dick Tracy. It doesn't This is, do you think I'm making this up? Yeah. Why? Why would I the care? The box is falling apart. It's obviously not a real box. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Heidecker, and welcome to our final episode of the year of On Cinema at the Cinema. And it's our big holiday episode, and it's uh, also the last episode for a while. What an honor it's been to be able to deliver this news to you and, and share my thoughts with you about the movies coming up. It's been a lot of fun putting the show together, and I want to thank the whole cast and crew for making it possible, including my guest here, who's with me today, named Greg Turkington. Thank you very much, Greg, for being on the show. Hey, guys. Great to be here uh, all year long, really. And uh, hopefully, I'll be keeping this seat warm through many more successful seasons of On Cinema at the Cinema. <laughs> In the meantime, I will be teaching film history classes um, at some of the local community centers in the area. All right, well, we got a lot to get to uh, because this is the big holiday issue. This week came out parent, uh, Parental Guidance with uh, Billy Crystal. And it's been a while since we've seen Billy on the screen. Not on Billy my Cri screen. I, see, I watch a lot of videos of his. Well, we got Billy Crystal, Bette Midler, and Mar the great Marissa Tomei. And it is a fun, family-friendly, funny uh, family film about a uh, grandfather finds himself having to take care of his three grandkids and using 21st century methods, uh, he soon resorts to an old school style of parenting. Very funny stuff, and I thought this movie was a, a laugh out loud. Every minute there's a new different kind of laugh, and they really did it. They managed to combine family values with comedy in a way that I haven't seen since probably uh, Monsters, Inc. Billy Crystal at his best. I love this movie. What did you think? The whole Billy Crystal, Bette Midler, uh pairing has always worked for me in other movies and now in this um, and you throw in these three uh, lovable but uh, difficult kids <laughs> and uh, it's just a recipe for fun especially at the holidays you know people don't want to worry about war and uh, bombs and things at the mm -hmm. holidays you want to go with your family to a movie that everyone can enjoy and in the hands of uh, Bette Midler and Billy Crystal of course you're going to enjoy it. Well, I said to my wife this morning, I said, I bet the producers of this movie were pissed when they remembered that there was the movie called uh, Three Amigos because between Billy Crystal, Bette Midler, and Marissa Tomei, those were the three amigos in this movie because of the energy and their comic sensibility and everything. Well, speaking of the title, I was thinking uh, on my way here that it would be really funny if the movie's called Parental Guidance and then they rated it R. <laughs> but... Uh, it's I'm P glad P it was P rated PG, PG but I'm PG, but glad it was rated PG, though, because it is a movie for the kids and for families. Yeah, no, that's the right rating for right. it. I'm just saying it would have been funny if they'd rated it R. Not my kind of humor. Or the three uh, amigos could be the three grandkids, too. 
Anyhow, I'm giving it six bags of popcorn and two glasses of soda. I'd say if you're... Uh, and go see it if you want to have a fun, fresh, exciting, family-friendly, fun film to go see this year. Okay, moving along. we got a lot to get through because uh, we want to talk about our favorite movies of the year as well. Django Ch uh, Unchained by Quentin Tarantino, Jamie Foxx, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Don Johnson star in this western uh, with, a very, with slaves in it and very violent... Very, uh, violent. very violent. Very violent. Yes, and not my favorite kind of movie around the holidays. I think this was a big mistake on the producer's part to put this out around Christmas. Halloween would have been more appropriate because yeah. that's when you have all your horror and your Frankensteins and right. that sort it's of thing. It's a slasher movie, but a Western movie as well. It's interesting. I mean, I like being thrown for a curve, and uh, Quentin Tarantino always does, and I'm going to tip my hat to him. This is a great movie. It's one of the best movies I've seen all year, and I'm giving it four bags of popcorn. Yeah, I thought it was great. DiCaprio is always uh, great to see. I would give it five bags of popcorn and maybe a little toy pistol filled with some uh, yeah. soft drink or something, because mm -hmm. it is a Anyways, little now it's time when we look into the past and decide on what our favorite films of the past year were, and also the best and worst, in other words. What was our favorite film? What was our least favorite film? Greg, what was your favorite film of the year? I'm going to have to say The Hobbit. That was my favorite movie of the year before I'd seen a frame of it. I'm just uh, really excited about The Hobbit, and I've seen it now four times, and I can't wait for it to come out on some sort of home video format. The Hobbit is like the cherry on the Lord of the Rings cake, and to get more Peter Jackson fantasy at this point in time is a real treat, and I think it's at the top of everyone's list, and it will be at the top of Oscar's list, mark my words. Well, I appreciate that, and I loved, as you know, I loved Hobbit, but I'm going to go with the dark horse here. Jack Reacher was my favorite film of the year, starring Tom Cruise. Uh, it was, uh, I didn't, I remember when I reviewed this movie, I thought that I loved it, and I gave it a great review, but I didn't give it enough credit, because I went and saw it again, and it is fabulous. It's Tom Cruise's best movie. It's, one, it's the best movie of the year. I thought that movie was terrific, and I think Tom Cruise should win the Oscar. It's an excellent film, and I'm not going to disagree with now, you. Now, as far as the I would... worst movie of the year for me, or the movie that we didn't, that I didn't like as much, was Skyfall, James Bond. And uh, I loved all the some of the scenes with the action, but too many moments in the movie, I was confused about what was going on. I hate well, having to go see Bond movies because I always get confused about who's the bad guy, and that there's no reason to be confused when you're seeing a movie. They should always be fun, and. Skyfall gets my no bags of popcorn. Well, that was one of my favorite movies of the year because I love James Bond. That was probably the best of the Bond movies. Well, if you don't like this movie, argument. you don't like James Bond it's because this is a, one of the best James Bond movies. So. It's not an argument about the movie itself. You just pick what is your least favorite movie. Don't defend Skyfall. Uh, Jack Reacher with Tom Cruise just... Not yeah. not a good film. Just you gave it a great review when we reviewed it. So that well, I saw it again spiteful. since then, and I didn't like it. It's just you know, it's amateurish. It's junk. Well, I loved it. It's my favorite movie of the year. Wow, well, um, you didn't see it then because it's crap. I saw it three times. Well, I saw it twice, and the first time I thought it was okay. The second time, the flaws became apparent. I would not watch it a third time. Well, all right. I think you're. Uh, I think you're being a little hard on it because I said some bad things about Skyfall, but that's what happened. Well, Skyfall got great reviews. Jack Reacher, mixed reviews. <sighs> all right, well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, all right, well, why don't we just disagree to disagree? Let's uh, throw it to another segment on cinema on location. Just show that. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, welcome to On Cinema, On Location. We're in front of the Blast from the Past house. If you remember the great movie from 1999. Starring Alicia Silverstone, Brendan Fraser, and Sissy Spacek from Coal Miner's Daughter in a rare comedic role, Blast from the Past. This is the house where Alicia Silverstone's character Eve lived and spent many great moments with Brendan Fraser, the star of the picture. Uh, Blast from the Past, and uh, thanks again uh, for tuning in to On Cinema, On Location, and uh, 
keep tuning in. We'll see a lot of interesting locations. Back to you too. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. It's been a great time putting the show together for you, and we uh, we really do appreciate it. So have a great year, and hopefully we'll see you next year. Enjoy the film. How are you doing? My name is Tim Heidecker. I'm the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm here with uh, Greg Turkington, one of the guests on the show. Hey guys, good to be here. And, uh, let's take a look at some of our favorite moments from On Cinema at the Cinema. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. You're watching On Cinema at the Cinema, the webisodes that talk about what movies are coming out this weekend and hopefully give you some advice as whether or not you should see these movies coming up. Some of these movies you just skip because they're junk. John Goodman should be renamed John Greatman after this because he's uh, Oscar worthy. It kind of reminds me of Russell Crowe, speaking of the other movie we talked about earlier. Um, the great actors are all kind of the same in a way, that they have that kind of talent and they know how to use it. Skyfall's getting four bags of popcorn from me and Lincoln is getting six bags with two sodas. Well, I thought it only went up to five, so. I'm giving it six bags of popcorns and six cans well, of soda. Well, the scale only goes up to five, but I'll give it five bags of popcorn. Six bags of popcorn. Five's the most we can give, so I'm gonna give it five bags of popcorn. Six bags of popcorn and two glasses of soda. But if it's five for the Bond and three for Lincoln, and it should only be five for Lincoln for you, because it doesn't go up to six. Six bags and uh, we it does go up to six. I'm gonna have to say five is the highest that's at least for me that's the highest you can give and maybe a little toy pistol filled with some uh, soft drink or something mm -hmm. maybe a can of red bull but i'm gonna throw in a roll of lincoln pennies a big hobbit hug all right if you had those uh, those little crackers that are wrapped in seaweed five microwave bags of popcorn okay, and, got it. Oh. and a cotton candy all right so let's move on and a candy bar all right. all right but i'm throwing an extra tub of popcorn for mr john goodman who deserves a meal after his great acting job you could also add sodas if you want all right, then I'll add 100 sodas. Zero Dark Thirty, which is a documentary about the hunt for Osama bin Laden, one of the original bad guys in cinema and in the world. And uh, as, always, as we all remember so many years ago, uh, a couple years ago, we had the death of Osama bin Laden, killed in action after uh, we spent years hunting him for the murder of 9-11 and who is responsible for terrible terror. And it's just uh, another one of these vampire movies, I guess, and it's romantic, and it's uh, full of uh, these sort of situations, uh, which is, turns out to be that's very interesting, uh, very scary at times, but also a lot of romance and uh, really well made. Um, you can tell that they shot a lot of this stuff in the woods and in certain locations that really work. Playing for Keeps is a movie directed by Gabriele Mucconi, Mickey Muccini. Uh, I'm giving it the Twilight Saga Brown uh, Saga. Saga, uh, saga, it's Twilight Saga, Twilight saga Breaking Break, Dawn. Part breaking two. Dawn Part Two. Chick flick, as you might call it, uh, called Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Starring. Karina. And it stars, surprisingly, Bill Murray uh, as President Obama, uh, 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 President Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah. Sorry, you got Peter Jackson's back at the helm. You got Morgan Freeman, Ian McKellen, it's Ma Martin Freeman, Mor uh, Martin Freeman, e Egan McKellen, Mitch, uh, Richard Armitage, Richard Armitage, Armitage. Uh, the other movie we had is Les Miserables, Les Miserables, Les, uh, Les Mis. I guess you can call it. Another John claude Van Damme movie with Lo Dolph Lundgren. Do Jeff Lund... Jeff Lund... Uh, another John claude Van Damme movie with Lo uh, Lund Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. All right, our next movie on the list is uh, called Life of Pi. And I know you're thinking, mmm, dessert, pie, but this is actually the, the uh, dessert, not dessert, it's the P.I. from math. Uh, and it's based on a book, not Private Detective either. Uh, it's, uh, which is supposed to be a good idea for a movie. Uh, be interesting to see what a P.I. does. Have you seen Fletch? Yes. Fletch, Chevy Chase. Or Bogey. 
A bogey. Uh, from the bogey movies. Uh, I thought it was really fun. It really took the edge off. Serial killers are not funny business. That's definitely a segment of society that should be eliminated. Uh, I thought Dennis Quaid was terrific in this. And I love Dennis. I mean, I love Randy Quaid, too. He wasn't in this, but he's also a very fine actor. There's something right. in that Quaid blood. Yeah. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins, the Hobbit himself. And that's what really makes this movie rock and roll. How do they do all that special effects? In other words, the people that are tiny, short, small hobbits versus the tall humans. All the technology that goes into making this movie kind of makes you go. That's the plot of Star Trek IV. Argument over, argument settled. I have been proven correct once again. Now, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, is where they go to San Francisco. The voyage home, they go back into space. That's where their home is. That's the voyage home. No, they're from Earth. They have, that's where they're going back to Earth, the voyage home. I don't home. think Spock is from Earth. I don't think you've seen anything like that on Earth. And Star Trek IV... Guys, if you guys know the answer this to this... This is I'm... not the artwork from Star Trek IV. That's, this is not the real... There's no hologram. You see, that's how you can tell a pirate This video. is the original... If you look at a legitimate video, like the Dick Tracy video... Oh, this is a pirated video, too. Anyway, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan is a great movie. I don't know what's on that tape. It's probably Star Wars 2. Put the dick back in your pants. <laughs> uh, can we use that? Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm joined by my frequent guest, Greg Turkington. Hey guys. And, and we're here to tell you about an exciting new app for your phone iPhone or Android phone called the On Cinema 2013 Film Guide Mobile Edition. What this app is a what this app allows you to do is access thousands of movie reviews by Greg and myself. You'll be able to find movies that are right for you and have fun doing it. Whatever movie you're interested in, get an instant review from the experts, including a popcorn rating. The app has everything and more. Why don't you go on to the App Store or the Android Center where they sell apps for that device and go get the On Cinema app right now. It's only 99 cents and you're going to have a great time using it and it's going to help you decide which movies to watch. I hate it being at the video store and somebody's taking up time because they can't decide what they want to watch. You ever had that where you're you're in line and I don't know what I want to rent, I don't know, I don't know what to do. If they have the app, they can hit Tim or Greg and either one of us will give an expert recommendation and you can go get that movie and have a good night. They used to sell these books that must have been 10,000 pages long and you'd walk through the video rental store trying to find a movie that you want to watch. Now it's all in the palm of your hand. You can access thousands of our reviews simply by typing in the name of the film and hitting search. From the critics you trust. So go ahead and download it. It couldn't be more important. I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Quiet on set! Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and you're watching another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a web series uh, here on this website where we talk about uh, what movies are coming to your theater soon. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful way to find out uh, different opinions of films. I'm um, very excited to have a guest with me today. He is one of the experts on film, and his name is Greg Turkington. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, guys. Good to be back uh, with the On Cinema family. Yes, and uh, it's been the uh, first 10 were very successful, and we appreciate all the kind words everyone said. And uh, we hope to be doing this for a long, long time. So, um, and thanks to all the cards and letters for people uh, asking to sort of increase my appearances on the well, show. I think you're well represented on the show. Thank you very much. Our films today are Side Effects with Steven Soder. Uh, I was going to say Steve Martin. Steve Soderbergh. I'll be talking about Steve Martin a little bit later today. Okay. Steven Soderbergh directed Channing Tatum and Ronin Mar Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara. Mickey Rooney? No. no it's Rooney what is it? Mara. Rooney. Okay. It's two names. Mara. Never, never oh, seen that Mara, before. Sorry, Mara Rooney. 
and uh, Judd Law, Jude Law from Jude, uh, the great Jude Law, right from Jude Law, and uh, he stars in uh, this movie, which is a prescription medication story about a woman who abuses drugs, the prescription kind, not coke and grass. Uh, Channing Tatum is in this movie, and that's why I went to go see it. That's why I loved it. Um, what did you think? I thought it was a frightening movie. It's sort of a modern day one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You. Um, can learn a lot from this, but it also kind of scares you to see that people can sink this low. Yeah. Um, I, it, it sort of had uh, it resonated with me on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, some kind of breaking news in my land uh, this week. Um, I was diagnosed with having several blood clots on my brain, and uh, it's one of those things where do you operate or not? No, you get the operation. You got to get the operation. Well, I mean. The, Obviously, that's one of the choices we have to make. Why it, would you choose not to get to get a tumor removed? That's a long story, but the doctor's telling me that that's not necessarily the only option, that we could wait it out, see what happens. And get another doctor, because that's dangerous. You don't have to have operation. Well, There's a chance that nothing will happen. That's so. a bad doctor. All right. Um, but my point is that side effects and the whole idea of the medical industry and drugs and Obamacare and everything like that, uh, this movie hit home. I give it six bags of popcorn and a two bags, uh, two sodas, because it is a classic. It's one of the great American movies of all time. Well, I don't have a, a tumor, and but I love the movie. I think the scale only goes up to five. I'm going to give it all five bags of popcorn, and I'm going to throw in a get well card for you uh, and hope that you do choose the, to get this tumor well, removed. Okay. None of your business. Uh, our next film that we're discussing is a on the lighter side of the... Uh, or, um, from the lighter side as a comedy is identity theft, thief, identity thief. There's a mild-mannered businessman discovers his identity has been stolen. He hits, the ro uh, he hits the road in an attempt to stop the thief. Starring Seth, Gor Seth Green, no, Seth, director Seth Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. And uh, starring uh, Jason Batman, the uh, Melissa McCarthy, who we all know, and John Favreau, Ooh. John Favreau, Favreau. Favreau, Favreau. Who's a director? Um, okay, maybe you guys missed the card up. He should be on the, here as director. So we've all been down this road before. We've gotten our identity stolen, and uh, this is a very funny movie. Uh, you know, it's got Melissa, Melissa McCarthy, who's one of the original funny ladies of cinema right now, and uh, yeah, and they might, she might be stealing people's identity. But what she's really stealing is her heart, and she's done that in the last few movies she's been in, mm -hmm. and I love this she movie. She almost reminds me of a modern-day Lucille Ball, you know, in that sort of sense of being a comedian. Um, funny ladies, Goldie Hawn, a woman comedy star, or Gilda Radner or something. But there's no one really like Desi Arnaz. He was sort of the best. But I still found that I laughed all the way through, so I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and some of those little chattering teeth. Well, uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, I will give it four bags of popcorn because uh, I thought uh, that there were moments that bored, bored, uh, were boring and uh, almost put me to sleep, but um, I was also having a hard time paying attention. Uh, but a lot of funny scenes, too. It's a great movie, and I think it's something that they'll be talking about throughout the year. Okay, so... Uh, Finally today, we're going to do our popcorn classic. This is a segment where Greg brings in a movie from his home library. If you don't want to go out to the movie theaters and pay, pay the babysitter and, uh, and do that whole jazz where you just uh, end up spending a fortune to go out to the dumb movies. Yes, this is my segment where we discuss movies that you might have missed that come from my personal uh, collection of movies. Uh, this week, uh, we've got Steve Martin in A Simple Twist of Fate, which uh, he's made a lot of great movies. This isn't one of them. It's a good movie, and it's worth seeing just to see what it's like for Steve Martin when he's not excelling in a role. It'll definitely fill the, fill the couple hours that it takes to watch the movie. It's just strange when you're watching it to realize, like, this is Steve Martin that we love in Parenthood and movies like that, and what's he doing in this? But that makes it interesting. It gives it kind of an edge, and... Uh, I recommend it. I mean, if you've got nothing better to do, uh, and if you are trying to build a collection, this one you can get very cheap. I got this one, I think, for a quarter. So it's a good way if you're a new collector to sort of start stockpiling those films. Where would you rate this in the sit in, if you had a list of Steve Martin films in terms of top ten? And I just wanted to correct what I said. I guess I paid a dollar twenty-two, not a quarter, because it says a dollar twenty-two. Doesn't matter. So. 
Uh, that's our show. I uh, have side effects. Got six bags of popcorn, two sodas for me. And Greg gave it... I gave it five bags of popcorn and a get well card because we're all scared here at On Cinema about uh, your tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor, as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say. Uh, it's uh, several blood clots that doesn't necessarily have to be operated on. So we're... Well, it should. All right. And the Identity Thief uh, must see movie of the week. And I gave it five bags of popcorn. And she's quite a thief in the movie. <laughs> I love this movie. Thank you guys for watching. See a better doctor. Sounds like you're going to a vet. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and we are again back watching On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a show where we talk about movies and, and uh, um, give you, it's a review movie show. And uh, today's uh, guest is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, and uh, welcome to our program. Welcome to uh, my program. Don't even say that. Today we're doing two movies and they're, they're unique in that they're both sort of these popcorn movies that you love so much and I love as well. Popcorn movies. Yeah, yeah and, these uh, are fun movies. I think so the people watching are going to... I have a... Chill. Okay? Chill. I'm just really excited. I know. Chill. So I thought for, for just a change we would uh, mix things up here and I actually brought in real popcorn, movie theater oh, wow. style popcorn. Okay. I thought we could spice things up because... Uh, these movies are popcorn movies. Um, and if you're at home watching uh, on cinema, go ahead and pop some popcorn up. Oh. It's a little stale. Today's movie is Guy Hard, Die Hard, or A Good Day to Die Hard. They keep coming up with different ways of saying Die Hard. Doc directed by John Moore, uh, and it stars Bruce Willis, Jai McCartney, Jai Courtney, uh, and some Mary Elizabeth Winstead, two women, I guess. Never mm -hmm. heard of any of them except for Bruce, the best. Well, that's the one that really counts yeah. with a Die Hard movie. Um, Bruce is, uh, plays John McClane, travels to Russia to help his son Jack prevent a nuclear weapons heist led by underworld forces. And Jack is uh, the character's name, Jack, oh, John McClane. His son's name Jack, which is another, Jack is short for John. So he could be Jack Jr. Like John F. Kennedy, though, his nickname was Jack. Anyhow. I love, I've always loved the Die Hard movie series, and I remember when I first saw the original one, because Jack Nichols, or uh, Bruce Willis, was on, on shows called Loop Moonlighting. But here he is. And, and still, it was a big success when it came out, and it continues and to be. And it's still good. You'd think, oh, Bruce Willis is getting a little old, maybe it's time to pass the torch to a new generation of Die Hard characters. But then you see this movie and you realize, no, nope, Let's keep him in the throne. This is uh, a good series. And that's why I hate Bond, because Bond kept changing who Bond was. And the, Bruce Willis has always been Die Hard and always will be. And if but they it, try to change that, I'll drop out of the whole thing and I won't watch any more Die Hard. Well, I'm going to have to disagree. With Bond, they're always improving on it. Each Bond is better than the previous Bond. And no. those have been going on for 60 years. You can't have somebody who's 90 years old who's James Bond. It's just not convincing. Well, I, I don't buy it. It doesn't make sense to me how you could have like, the same character with different looks with the same name. Th this is why I love Die Hard, because they don't give up on... I shouldn't eat this, Jeff. <coughs> I got this kernel. Right, right in the back. Uh, good, yeah, so Die Hard does it right every time with Bruce Willis in the lead, and I give it uh, five bags of popcorn, and um, 
my own private collection of popcorn as well. Five bags of my own private collection of my own popcorn. Um, I give it five bags of popcorn. How can you not give a diehard movie five bags of popcorn? They're all kind of five baggers. Mm -hmm. I would also throw in uh, a goblet of the finest champagne and toast Bruce Willis and the whole diehard gang for bringing us yet another successful hit. All right, our second film is Escape from Planet Earth, not to be mistaken from uh, Escape from Planet or from Planet Escape, or from, Planet Escape of the from Apes. New York. No, Escape, Escape from, from New York. Okay. With uh, John Cleese. Um, or no, John uh, Singleton, or John... Uh, Kurt Russell. Right, I'm sorry, Kurt Russell. This stars Brendan Fraser, it's an animated film. Um, Brendan Fraser, Sarah Jessica Parker, and James... G uh, James... G James... Uh, Gaffini. Gaffini. Gandalf. From The Hobbit. James Gandalf, uh, James Gandolfini, Gandolfini. Not pronounce the name. Gandolfini, Gandolfini. Uh, James Gandolfini. Gandolfini. For so this is an astronaut named Scorch Supernova. Love that name. Finds himself in a trap where he uh, basically have to escape from planet Earth. Mm -hmm. um, this movie thrilled and chilled me, and uh, I love this movie. It was fun. Sci-fi is my favorite kind of movie, but it also comedy and animated films are my favorite kind of movies. So this has all three wonderful combinations to make my film of the, one of my films of the year, Escape from Planet Earth. It's a great movie. I don't think you're going to find anyone that would uh, disagree. I would say it could have been made just a little bit better if you've got somebody like Brendan Fraser, who's a great resource. If you'd actually filmed him rather than animate him, I think it would have been more enjoyable. People like Brendan Fraser, and it's kind of weird to look at a cartoon when you could be looking at the real thing. So that's a mistake I think they made. No, there's no mistake. That, not a mistake. That was a choice. It was but right I think it was, it was the wrong choice because uh, Brendan Fraser, he's not Mel Blanc. He's not some fatso that you don't want to look at. This is a guy who's had a great career. He's no, very photogenic, no, you know very I'm not, handsome. I'm not, I'm not letting you say that kind of crap on my show, okay? This was the, the way they made the movie. They, did, they animated it. It wouldn't work as a, as a uh, uh, it wouldn't work as that either, all right? Now don't. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. You're watching another episode of On Cinema, At the Cinema, the web series um, where we discuss different movies and what movies are coming out this weekend and also cinema in general and hopefully give you guys a good idea of what's out there and what's, uh, what you might want to skip. Uh, my guest is um, uh, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here uh, on On Cinema uh, yet again. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Uh, of course, I loved being on the show, and I'd love to keep being on the show. And I'd love for you to keep watching the show. It's the same thing. Just let me get through my card. Yep, yep. You've seen these shows before. You've seen how this works. Our first movie today is Snitch. Doctor, directed by Rick Roman Waha. Or it's W H U G W A. Vaughn. I think it's pronounced Vaughn. W A U G H. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought it was is... v, v A U G H A N is Vaughn. No, this is director Rick Roman Waha, and he's a no-name director, so I can't know. I can't know every director. Uh, this stars the great Dwayne Johnson, who I guess is not going by Rock anymore, uh, and Susan Sarandon and Vince. Uh, Velasquez, or oh, I'm sorry, Nadine Velasquez, uh, Mexican name. Um, and this movie is about an undercover father for the DNA in order to free his drugs or his son who is imprisoned after being set up by a drug deal. Um, yes, this was a very, very great film. Um, I like this movie a lot. I th I it, boy, it, it really did show a different side of the rock. Yeah, and of the drug underworld too, which is a 
interesting world. I think if I was going to go to the movies in on, some afternoon, I think I'd go see The Hobbit, which is still playing in a few theaters. Mm -hmm. It's not a first-run movie, but mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it, you really should see it. It's a classic. But some of these cheaper theaters are not going to obviously have the 3D abilities to show The Hobbit. So well, I mean, you had that for months. And it's going to be better than it's going to be watching it on your computer at mm -hmm. home. So this is kind of your last chance to see The Hobbit as it was meant to be seen. All right. Well, so I give uh, Snitch five uh, or four bags of popcorn um, and uh, and a uh, two cans of two bottles of soda. I'm gonna give Snitch four bags of popcorn, but throw in one other bag for being so realistic and gritty mm -hmm. for a total of five bags. And our second film today is Dark Skies with Carrie Russell, Dakota Goyo, and Josh Hamilton, uh, and uh, directed by another three name director. I guess that's a new trend in cinema here. Mm -hmm. Director Scott Charles Stewart. Those are also three men's first names, so it could be just uh, three men. It could be three men directing it, and they just didn't. No, get it's their one last guy. Names. Because sometimes there's people with the same name, uh, they put a middle name in. There's been so many movies, so many I'm directors. Saying is this could that, have been a three person. Like sometimes you have the Coen Brothers or people like this. This mm -hmm. could be Scott Charles and Stewart. It was probably there was already a Scott Stewart, so he had to make himself different than that guy, and that's why you get the middle name. Right. Well, I had an emergency uh, and was not able to finish seeing the dark skies, so I'll give it a uh, three bags with a conditional it. that um, I'm assuming it deserves four or five, and when I do see that, we'll update that on the website. You could give it uh, five half-filled bags, mm -hmm. because it's, if you saw the whole thing as I did, you would give it five bags. Uh, five half-full bags, It's it's sort of shows that it's incomplete, and mm -hmm. that's what you want the viewers to understand. All right, well, uh, let's uh, move on to our next segment, which is a new, very new segment, a brand new segment called um, uh, On, Cin On Cinema Presents Popcorn Classics BTC. And uh, what does the BTC stand for? Behind the Curtain. Behind the Curtain. And in this new segment of mine, we're looking, sort of pulling the curtain open mm -hmm. and seeing what uh, is really back there in Hollywood. Well, it's essentially an interview segment where you interview a famous person. We have the honor of you getting to talk to this famous person. And that person is Joe Estevez. Joe Estevez, who I met at a recent film premiere. And Joe Estevez is the brother of Charlie Martin Sheen. And uh, you might know him from uh, movies at Turning Point, uh, Rougarou, mm -hmm. Out of the Darkness, yeah. uh, Gunfight in Yuma, Autism and Cake. Uh, the Voices from Beyond, Doonby, Gold Cage, Little Creeps, mm -hmm. Inside Out, Plastic Films, The Haunting uh, of Pearson Place, uh, Interpersonal Exopolitics, Under the Bridge, yeah, Omerita, Onion Soup, Sebastian, uh, Dr. Spine, in in Insignificant Celluloid, uh, Halloween, King's Men, First Dog, The Mitchell Tapes, Daddy's Home, Daddy's Iron home, Soldier, yeah. Dark Crossing, Days of Light, Primates, The Magic uh, Dragon, The Apparition of Roxanne, uh, the Vigilante, Vanguard, A Perfect Life, The Ascent, mm -hmm. Placebo, Corruption Governor, Not Another B-Movie, The Lights, Meltdown, Flesh, Texas, uh, The Death of Hollywood, The Lives of Better Men, Dead in Love, Serbian Scars, uh, Withered One, um, Hollywood Confidential, See Jane Run, Zombie Farm, Cake, A Wedding Story, uh, Cordoba Nights, Death Row, Killer Zombies, Sigma Die, Necronaut, Alibi, Koreatown, The Patrol, Shut Up and Shoot, Voices from the Grave, Third Degree, Evil After Ever, Inner Rage, uh, The IRA, King of Nothing, Resurrection Mary, Scar, The Tailor, uh, Dead Things, 2020, An American Nightmare, Hercules in Hollywood, Drawing Blood, The Evil Chamber, Evil Grave, Curse of the Maya, Buy, Sell, Kill, The Flea Market Story, The Rockville Slayer, Death, Can I Buy You a Drink, uh, Vampire Story, Vampire, or Killer Story, Vampire Va uh, Boulevard, Summer Solstice, Rice Girl, and Inferno, Mind of Terror, Zombie Garden, uh, Hitman City, Got Papers, uh, Scary Tales, The Return of Mr. Longfellow, Mind Games, Spanish Fly, Russians in the City of Angels, Tales from the Grave, Las Vegas Psycho, uh, Vatos, Jumping for Joy, Max Hell, uh, Frog Warrior, Mob Days, uh, Deathbed, Autopsy, A Love Story, Hell, Asylum, um, Psychotic, No Dogs Allowed, Jumper, Pacino is Missing, Two Coyotes, Shattered Faith, No Turning Back, Double Deception, uh, Black Scorpion, The Remnant, Green Diggity Dog, Ultimate Prey, Stolen from the Heart, Flat Out, 14 Ways to Wear Lipstick, uh, Silent Scream, No Code of Conduct, um, Crimes of the Chupacabra, Fatal Pursuit, I Got the Hookup, uh, Guns of El Chupacabra 2, The Unseen, Together and Alone, Avenged, The Catcher, Memorial Day, No Rest for the Wicked, 
Uh, Lola's Game, Tex Murphy, Overseer, The Waterfront, Winner Takes It All, uh, Acts of Betrayal, Motorcycle Cheerleading Mamas, Lethal Seduction, Dark Secrets, Guns of El Chupacabra, Gator King, Breakaway, The Searcher, The Last Kill, The Garbage Man, Roller Gator, Blood, Slaves of the Vampire Wolf, uh, Squanderers, Demolition Highway, Lethal Orbit, uh, Carnival of Wolves, American Tigers, Last of the Breed, Werewolf, Toad Warrior, Backroads to Vegas, Red Line, Dillinger and Capone, uh, Little Lost Sea, uh, sea Serpent, uh, Cruise, uh, Star, uh, Starstruck, Baby Ghost, uh, Equal Impact, Karate Raider with Criminal Intent, Boulevard, Guns and Lipstick, Quiet Days in Hollywood, um, you know, Point Doom, Broken Bars, uh, Blood Heaven, Inner Sanctum 2, The Mosaic Project, Double Blast, Fatal Justice, Body Count, uh, The Deadly Secret, Unconditional Love, Dark Universe, Beach Babes from Beyond, uh, L.A. Goddess, In a Moment of Passion, Cyber Seeker, Karate Commando, um, uh, Madam, The Fletch Merchant, Eye of the Stranger, uh, you know, Expert Weapon, Armed for Action, Eddie Presley, The Summoned, Lost in Hollywood, Psychic Detectives, Return of the Rollerblade 7, Legend of the Rollerblade 7, uh, Blood on the Badge, The Rollerblade 7, Dark Rider, Soul Taker, Lockdown, Murder in Law, The Platinum Triangle, Fatal Pulse, South of Reno, Retreads, Human Error, uh, I Married a Centerfold, The Invisible Woman, Anatomy of a Seduction, uh, Lucky and Lucky Lady. Um, so uh, let's take a look at that interview now. Thanks, Tim, for welcoming us to this new segment. We're here with Joe Estevez. Good to see you, Joe. Thank you. What actors do you think should get the Academy Award? Uh, the, the actors for uh, coming up? Just in general. Uh, Humphrey Bogart. There's so many that are just... Uh, just and, and actresses, too. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Of all the movies you've made, what are your 10 favorites? South of Reno is a good movie. Jumping for Joy, terrible title. High on the Hog. Does that count if I can't think of the title? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. Oh, Bunyan! Bunyan! It's terrific! Does it star Dr. Scholl? Uh, no, it stars Joe Estevez. When one of your films comes out on videotape, do they mail you a box of them? I have a lot of... Uh, unopened DVDs and even DVDs. They're more collectible if you leave them sealed. Well, there you go. I, I got some maybe you might be interested in them. I definitely would. Yeah. When you go to the movies, yeah. do you like to have your popcorn with butter or just plain? Plain, but with a lot of salt and I get the big tub because you can go back and you can get that filled up again for free. Most of the places the second time around, so. Back to you, Tim, in the studio. All right, very interesting. Seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, he was really nice, and um, it was a lot of fun getting to meet him, getting mm -hmm. to know him. And uh, any secrets that you could that uh, you couldn't reveal during the interview? Any kind of uh, anything that that you were surprised by or? Well, um, we had sort of a conversation off the camera about uh, soup and salad and things like that. He lo he, he loves soup and salad bars, and uh, as do I. So that was kind of a nice little thing, uh, getting to know each other. Any any particular, uh, like what are, particular uh, secrets or anything like that? He likes the soup plantation, which is uh, sort of a chain. Uh, it's a regional chain, but it's very good soup. Uh, if you like cream of potato or cream of broccoli, and uh, they do uh, good minestrone uh, and a big salad bar too. All right. A soup plantation. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of my own show, that, which is this show called On Cinema, At the Cinema, and it's a web show where we discuss uh, what movies are coming out and, why they're, and uh, whether or not they're good and, or if you should skip them. Uh, my guest is uh, film expert Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here and hopefully we can help you out with some new opinions today. Well, uh, before we get into that, I just want to address uh, people have been writing and asking about my medical condition and um, 
do appreciate that and thank you guys very much for the concern. I wanted to give you an update that uh, my family and I had discussed this with our doctor and I'm not going to be getting the surgery. Um, I'm not going to be getting the surgery per the doctor's suggestion, first of all. And second of all, because of homeopathic medicine that is available that we are looking into and there are different ways of treating the situation that are, do not involve invasive surgery such as uh, different supplements. So thank you and uh, you know, let's not worry so much about my health and let's worry about movies, whether or not movies are good. Let's uh, start off with our first movie here, 21 and Over, a comedy with director, Lon, or director John Lucas and Scott Moore, a directing team. You don't see that very often, with Miles Teller, Justin Chun, uh, and Skylar Aston. This is about the night before a big medical school exam. A promising student celebrates his 21st birthday with his two best friends. As you can imagine, this is lots of funny drinking jokes and uh, getting people getting messed up and also funny uh, situ situations that you don't often see in movies these days. It's very funny. I don't know that it's responsible to encourage a sort of uh, alcohol abuse, but you know, if you watch old Flintstones cartoons, they do things in that that you would never do in real life, and it is just a movie. So if you enjoyed The Hangover, Hangover 2, and that sort of thing, you'll, you'll probably enjoy this. Uh, it could be a case of too many cooks spoil the broth in that two directors, I think sometimes it gets kind of messy. But the laughs still keep coming, and uh, I had a great time. I would uh, strongly, strongly recommend this movie. I, uh, I thought it was hilarious. I um, found myself just completely in love with the movie. And I, I was going through a period, I am going through a period where I need a good laugh. And, and mm -hmm. laughter is the best medicine. Or surgery too would be a good medicine, but. All right, that's not appropriate. Um, uh, it reminds me of some of those old National Lampoon's movies. I think it would have been even a better movie if somebody like John Belushi or J uh, Dan Aykroyd could have stepped up into the driver's seat of this movie. And, and that, that would have made this movie clearly a, a classic. But I did love it, and I thought it made me laugh, and that's what I needed right now, so I give it five bags of popcorn. I think if you'd tacked the National Lampoon name onto this and called it National Lampoon's 21 mm -hmm. and over, it would have been a five-bagger. Uh, I'm going to give it five bags anyway, though, because I think that the world does need a laugh. And I'll throw in uh, maybe a shot of Jägermeister. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not legal unless you are 21 and over, which is the name of the movie. That's why I chose Jägermeister. And ironically, you have to be 17 and over to see this movie. Uh, and perhaps that could be the sequel, 17 and under, or over. It'd be interesting to see what happens to this character once he becomes a doctor. Maybe you could call the movie, uh, or uh, call the movie Doc, uh, uh, something about doctors. Doctor 21. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're not here to write movies. That's for Hollywood to take care of them. There's plenty of talented writers uh, to take care of the writing of the sequel. But uh, as fans and critics of film, we want to say, see what you can do to make this happen. Doctor, Doctor 21 would be our suggestion. Not the best, but you'll have to live with it. But well, at least it's original, because 21 and over is just something you see on signs and bars and things like that, whereas Dr. 21 is an original idea. All right. Well, the other movie we're talking about today is uh, Jack and the Giant Slayer, directed by Brian Singer. Um, maybe his last name should be Brian Director. He probably started out, though, doing smaller jobs, so you couldn't have had the name Director mm -hmm. until you become the director. You wouldn't want to have to change your name as you move no, up the ranks. No, I know. I'm just trying to make a little joke. Doesn't matter. Um, Ewan McGregor and Stanley Tukey and Nicole uh, Hout and Bill Knight is stars in this movie. And this is about a young farmer who leads an expedition into the giant's kingdom to rescue a kidnapped princess. I wish that this movie uh, just went on and on and on. I loved it so much. I thought to myself, aha, they're still making these kind of movies. And we get to see it. We get to live in a time when classic movies are being made. Imagine what it would be like for our grandparents to grow up when the Gone with the Wind and uh, movies of that stature were being made. Well, now here we are, alive and well, listening, uh, getting to see Jack and the Giant Slayer. Six bags of popcorn for me, and uh, make the giant-sized bags of popcorn. Well, they are. The ones that we use are already the, the biggest size of popcorn, so. Then make them, the, then make them as they are. I'm going to say five bags of popcorn, and um, maybe another five. Yeah, when I see a movie like this, the first thing that pops in my head is I love this job. Uh, getting to watch movies like this and uh, getting to talk about them and uh, to sort of 
provide a public resource so that people can get information about this movie. Yeah, uh, no, I hear I hear that loud and clear. And um, yeah, I just didn't think about it those in that way until now. So uh, I'm letting that sit in. Well, while you think about that, I've got something for you to think about who are watching, which is another edition of Popcorn Classics. <laughs> Uh, somebody told me uh, that you have a special popcorn classic for us today that's related to uh, Jack. Yes, I do. Today's movie, I wouldn't call it exactly a prequel. I wouldn't say it's related at all to uh, James and the Giant Slayer, but the movie does involve giants. It's called My Giant. Put it down. And um, in this movie, Billy Crystal runs across a man who becomes his friend who's uh, double his size. And uh, if, you, if you look at the box or if you've seen the movie, uh, you know that this guy, I don't know what causes you to be eight feet tall, but this actor is very, very tall. Maybe it's just that Billy Crystal's very small. I don't know, but it's very funny to see these guys together and just look at the difference between the heights. It's hilarious in this every is scene. Just, and, but this is CGI. I mean, that's not... No, that's... That a, that, really not that no, tall. That's, he's an actor, and uh, he's in a lot of films. He's a very well-known actor. No, and, no, no, no. This is like in Lord of the Rings where you have big, tall Gandalf with... Um, the little Hobbit man, that's that's just a, that's just CGI. No, this guy, that. if you get the world's shortest actor, Billy Crystal, and the world's tallest actor, this guy, and you put them together, no. you get uh, a right. situation I, like this. I hate this. to do this to you on the, on the sh right in the, the show, but this is done through computer graphics. They didn't have that when this movie was made. This movie yes, is several did. years old. This was old. only 1998 or something like that. Look at, I mean, that's, can you see that? That yeah, Billy small, Crystal. That guy, that, this is all. It's it's. Uh, Billy Crystal is short. It's 1998. Yeah. It, hit, it hit the nail on the yeah, head. Well, when did the this Phantom Menace is, come out? Because that's when they pioneered this sort of CGI. They've been doing effects. this. It's not CGI. It's special effects. It's an optical illusion. All this guy had to do was be much closer to the camera than Billy Crystal. And that's well, all. if you look at the sidewalk, they're uh, they're exact same spot. Look at the shadows. That's what they fixed in post. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and I'm the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. Thanks for watching and it is a show about movies and reviews of movies and my name is, oh, uh, my guest is uh, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here on another uh, edition of here, On Cinema. <clears throat> well, our movies today is The uh, Oz, The Great and Powerful, directed by Sam Raimi and it stars James Franco as Oz and Milan Kouris, uh, Mila Kouris and Michelle Williams, who's very uh, good looking in, as a woman, is a, does, you know. It's not really what the movie's about though. This is a sequel to The Wizard of Oz, which- Prequel to The Wizard of Oz, um, in which we find out how Oz became so great and powerful. And I would say it's about time because uh, those of us who are Oz freaks have been waiting since 1939, which is when the last Wizard of Oz movie came out. It was an MGM uh, picture starring Judy Garland. Oh. And to wait this long to find out the next chapter is a kind of a burden a lot of people have passed on who saw the original and never got a chance to see the next chapter. And so that's kind of a shame. And as much as I love this movie, and I do love it, and just a preview, I will be giving it five bags of popcorn. Um, I miss the munchkins. I gotta say, I miss the munchkins. I never thought uh, I would hear myself say that. <laughs> and I know a lot of them, again, have passed away because they waited too long, but uh, there is still one of the original munchkins is still alive and he's going around the country and signing autographs and things. And to not include him in this movie uh, after he's been an ambassador for Oz all mm -hmm. these years is kind of a slap in the face. Well, I wonder if he went to the premiere. I bet they didn't even give him an invitation. Mm -hmm. Toto, too. That's another character that I loved as little dog Toto and right. uh, I love it from the original Wizard of Oz one of the greatest probably the most quotable lines in all of movie is uh, we're not in we're Kansas, not in Kansas, anymore, Kansas yeah. anymore Toto. and they're not in Kansas in this movie and I think that's kind of a flaw in the movie right. and I always like to use that expression when for example there's something strange going on or we're in a strange situation uh, you know we had a, had a flight recently to uh, Phoenix and uh, it was delayed and there was no ex you know, people were doing a terrible job of explaining what the delay was and I turned to my wife and I said 
We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Well, if the plane originated in Kansas, that would, I mean, that would be, that right would make sense. Nose. Maybe two on the nose. Mm. Well, I still loved this movie, despite, th despite this film being munchkinless. I'm giving it four bags of popcorn. And Toto list too. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the theater expecting Toto. Uh, but still, four bags of popcorn. They lost a full bag of popcorn from me because of no munchkins. I'm going to say zero bags of popcorn because I'm going to say let's take Toto's old basket and fill that with popcorn and eat out of the basket, which is essentially five bags of popcorn. I love this movie. All right. Well, the second movie is Dead Man Down with Colin Farrell, my favorite actor uh, of my... Not, I mean, Dennis Quaid's my favorite all-time all actor, but current cinema, current young actor, Colin Farrell. Of this generation. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, another great Colin Farrell movie. I feel like this guy doesn't know how to make bad movies. He's always in classics. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that about him. It's all, you're always saying five bags of popcorn after his name. Right, so Colin Farrell gets the uh, assured vote for the, at least a nomination for Best Supporting, Best Actor for Dead Man Down. Uh, that's my Oscar pick. It's tough, you know. Um, you can only do now that nowadays they do ten Best Picture nominations, and I feel like we burned those already through the first three months of this year with some of the movies that mm -hmm. we've been looking at. And I guess that's a good thing. We're living in good times, and this is a great movie. All right, Dead Man Down getting five bags of popcorn and three cups of soda from me. I'm gonna give it uh, five bags of popcorn and a little uh, mace spray because there's some. Pretty shady characters in this movie mm -hmm. you might want to stay away from and protect yourself from. All right, uh, now we're going to do a brand new segment on the show. It's an opportunity for me to uh, talk to you guys about stuff outside of film and c cinema. Excuse me. Outside of film and serious uh, stuff, not With just a about tumor movies. Or... No, uh, this is my 60 second soapbox. Hi, my name is Tim Heidecker and this is 60 Second Soapbox. You know, one of the big problems that we face is a question of what is the role of government in our lives? Now, you might say that we need more government because we need more things, uh, we need more things given to us, but it's a fact that when you look at the history, more the, it is better to not tax so much and have not as much regulations. Um, you could look at the economics of it, but we have a government now that is trying to take over everyone's lives. And they can't do, they, they shouldn't be allowed to do it, and we should be more encouraging of uh, laws that say that there's for less taxes and also for less regulations so that businesses can uh, become uh, more independent. And uh, that is the a fact, and is not just my opinion, but is also the facts. And also, uh, uh, we have to make sure that we're uh, uh, making a, a promise to our seniors. That was popcorn, or that was a 60-second soapbox. And let me know how you think of that segment. And do we have any other movies? Um, Oz the Great and Powerful, five, star, five Bags of Popcorn, and Dead Man Down, Five Bags of Popcorn. Um, thanks for watching. He said you weren't going to do that anymore when, the, when we were doing the podcast. You weren't going to do any more of the political stuff. It's not my problem. Well, it's it's both of our problems because people. I don't feel know. good about it. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Heidecker, and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a show where we talk about different movies coming out this weekend and give you our reviews, my reviews, and my guest reviews. And the guest this week is Greg Turkington. Greg? Hey, guys. Uh, glad to be here and to share my opinions and my expertise with all of you. Well, thank you very much, Greg. And uh, here we are in March. And uh, wow, it's been a couple of months of great movies. The class of 2013 has some real, uh, real winners mm -hmm. in it. Although 2012 had to have had some of the best movies I've seen in a long time. The Hobbit was fantastic. And, Jack and we're Reacher. still talking about it, still and thinking Jack about Reacher it. Jack probably be out on video any day now. Looking forward to owning that. I wasn't as big of a fan, but... Well, let's talk about today's movies. Um, Carrie. It's just Carrie. With Kimberly Price directing, Pierce, and uh, Chloe Grace Mortz, Jim, uh, Julianne Moore, and Judy Greer. And this is uh, what a great movie. 
Um, of course, it's a remake, and you know how much I love remakes, uh, because it's finally, you get a chance to uh, perfect. You, get the, you had your first chance, and, and the original carry was great, but this one is even better than that, so. Well, maybe third time will be a charm. Mm. Um, yeah, Carrie's a, I'll tell you what, I, I probably shouldn't say anything about this because I don't want to give away the ending. So watch it for yourself and see. I'm not going to give away the ending. All right. Well, what did you think? Did you like the movie? I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. I just, you got to see it for yourself to see that ending. I'm not going to give it away. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't think you have to give away the ending. Just say what you thought. Mm. It's a horror movie, so it's frightening. You will not believe the ending. So watch the movie and see the ending. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to give, give it away. All right. Well, you're not, I don't think you're in any position to give anything away. And I don't want, I don't want to stay in that position because you got to see this for yourself and see how it ends. Don't look at the spoilers. We're not going to spoil anything here today. Of course, there's the classic scene where she gets drenched in blood, which we all yeah, remember well, from the video. I'm not talking about any of it. I just don't, just let it lay. Let people watch it for themselves and they'll find out how it ends. That's what the big deal is. Well, it's just you've ruined the movie if you give away the ending. So well, I'm not giving away the ending. We're just talking about, you know, I can tell you that she has telekinetic powers. She has blood spilled on her and everything like that. Just watch this movie. You don't have to see tell. this we don't, movie. We never tell the ending. Watch so the whole so thing. It's, it's a scary is. movie, uh, and it has got a truly memorable ending, and that's all I'm going to say. It's not like the crying game or some movie where you Let's can't. just... Let's just drop it because I don't want to spoil it for people that want to see the movie and don't want to find out ahead of time how it ends. I agree. Let's move on. I give it six, uh, four bags of popcorn. I'll let you wait and see what I give it. No review? I don't want to give away anything. I think if, if you heard my rating, it might give a little bit of a clue. I think, you're, I think you're making fun of this, but I'm not sure why. Perhaps. I'm not making fun of it. I'm trying to protect the viewer because I'm sick of these reviewers that tell you how these things end. And then well, we're not talking about the ending. Just tell me if you like the movie or not. Well, I love the movie, and that's the point. I love the movie, and I want people to be able to see it for themselves and not spoil it for them with spoilers. All right, whatever. You're an idiot. Well, I mean, this is a good movie. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn, but I'm going to put a curtain around them so you can't tell how many until you've seen the movie yourself. Okay. And some of those little hot cinnamon, those spicy little candies, because it has a hell theme. You just told me how many bags. So. It doesn't matter. It's stupid. Well, it's not as important as the ending of the movie. All right, our so. second movie is The Incredible Burt Wonderstone, directed by Don Scardino, and that stars my favorite actor, my favorite comedy actor, Jim Carrey, Steve Carroll, Olivia Wilde, and Steve Buscemi. So a couple of Steves in this movie. After breaking up with a stage partner, a Vegas magician must fight for relevance against a hip new street magician. Uh, this was very funny um, and, and had a sweet, and had a good heart to it. And uh, it was fun to see Jim Carrey and Steve Carroll play off each other and do their different, because there are different styles of comedy out there and these guys are different in different ways. but. Um, definitely one of my favorite movies of the year, definitely my favorite Jim Carrey movie. And you know, I think this is the year that Oscar is going to smile on Jim Carrey because I think he gave a great performance and it's a funny movie, but it's not strictly for laughs. It has a message too, so I do think he'll get the Oscar. And it's supposedly um, very, very good, very well made and just five bags. Pop. Five bags of popcorn in each bag, inside each bag, when you open it up, you find an Oscar for Jim Carrey because this is his all-time best performance, and I am a big fan as well. Yes, and I hate magic. Uh, I like I magic. Yeah, I don't like magic, and I never did. But this one, suddenly I walked out of this movie theater going, ah, now I want to go see magic. After I saw the movie, I went to the Toys R Us near our house and uh, picked up a little beginner's magic kit. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, magic things, and then, you know, lo and behold, they didn't have some of the tricks that were in this movie, but... I did learn about uh, the cups and the balls and everything like that, and and it's it's, it's it's you know because of movies like this, you get exposed to different kinds of culture. And that would be a fun segment for the show instead of that soapbox, uh, one minute soapboxes. Maybe you do magic for a minute or something like that. No, I'm not good. Like to... Not good enough yet. It takes years of practice. Well, we're going to be doing the show for years, I hope. All right, uh, let's keep the show moving along. Before we do um, the next segment. 
Uh, here's where the incredible Burt Wonderstone is playing near you. All right, so again, if you uh, don't see your city there, uh, uh, go ahead and look it up on the internet and uh, you should be able to find um, where the movies are playing. Or the newspaper, the and newspaper. that's a resource that you can use. All right. Uh, let's do the pop uh, popcorn classics. All right, today, Popcorn Classic. We, uh, Greg, what did you, you brought in for us? I brought in a movie that uh, is pretty cool. It's called The Mod Squad. Mm -hmm. And this was a TV show uh, back in the day, but they've sort of hipped it up with some stylized characters and mm -hmm. some new music. It's a pretty flashy movie, and it's a lot of fun. If well, you haven't I seen it, I actually don't recommend that. I recommend this, uh, Dennis Miller Live, one of my favorite comedians. It's uh, He's a stand-up comedian, and uh, sometimes I feel like we get sort of hyper-focused on, um, on these movies when videos ha can be of, of concerts or stand-up material or TV shows, so... This isn't a movie, this is just a... That's what I'm saying, just it's episodes. not just... Yeah, this is, well, this show's called On Cinema, it's not called uh, On, on we'd Television. It it's not called On Television, so... Uh, I do stand by my choice of the Mod Squad. Well, if you don't want to watch and, um, just another same old movie of a remake, all we do is remakes lately. This is original comedy, original content from one of the great ones, Dennis Miller. And I watched uh, this. You don't borrow mine because it's actually I've watched this tape so many times that it's uh, the quality of it's very bad. Well, the right quality now. of it is very bad. That's why The Mod Squad is the movie you should watch. This movie actually did pretty well at the time it came out, and it's kind of going into a second life as a popular movie on the video rental scene, something yes, to play at a Dennis party. Dennis Miller or, Live features. Uh, celebrity scandals, political subterfuge, social deviance. It's not this a movie. King of the it's not phrase. a movie. Just because it's Doesn't on video. Doesn't matter. I know. That's why I'm trying to expand and expand our horizons. Well, the one is just take somebody's catch... home movies. Hold some, on. Somebody's Please. home movies that you find at a thrift store and review Let that. Let me get this. King of the catchphrases. King of the references. This guy makes you feel smarter just by listening to him, even though sometimes I don't even know what he's talking about because his references are so... Uh, very specific and about specific to stuff. TV, but not it's no. Not but a this movie. you could put it's this out in the theaters and it would be a blockbuster smash. They tried it and it failed. He's never had a hit movie no, and he you never could, will. You, he was in the net, but also this you could put this out right now, re-release it in the cinemas. It would be a huge smash because the comedy is timeless. It's like an evergreen tree. Uh, the, it's the all jokes Wall about Street things Journal that happened says, 15 years uh, ago. Nobody uh, wants yes, to but hear the, about. The Wall Street Journal says his incisive. It's comic all Bob riffs. Dole jokes. Hold on, from... listen to that. Ah, the Wall Street Journal says his incisive comic riffs and rants merit raves. Guess what, folks? This is my pick of the week, my popcorn classic. Well, you know, it's not. Week. It's yeah, it's my segment. Well, so. it's my show. So thanks for watching. Look, it's two hours long. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and I'm the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. It's my show where I talk about movies and review them and tell you which movies to see and which ones you should skip. Uh, it's a really great show and an honor to do it for you guys every week. And thank you for letting me do the show. Uh, th and thanks to uh, the website for putting it up. Uh, my guest today is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here. and. Uh Congratulations, Tim, on uh, so far a great season. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun talking movies with you. And um, uh, we only have one movie today we're going to talk about. It's called The Crudes. And that's not uh, C R U D E S, it's C R O O D S. Directed by another directing team here. We got uh, Kirk D'Amico and Chris Sanders, uh, starring the voices of Nicolas Cage, Ryan Reynolds, and Emma Stone. Um, another wonderful, uh, fun movie about the past, cavemen and whatnot. This is the world's first family must embark on a journey through new lands after the cave, which has always sheltered them, is destroyed. So obviously it starts from a place of sadness, but it's a lot of fun and uh, um, it's beautifully drawn and it has an, a tr tremendous energy to it. Uh, one of my favorite movies of the year, right? Yeah, I gotta say, uh, thinking about this movie just makes me feel warm all over. It was a lot of fun. I uh, went with a couple family members mm -hmm. and they had fun and uh, they're not professional critics or experts, but they know what they like, and they like this movie, and I like it too. I love that. I love uh, sort of um, coming off the high horse, you know, a little bit, and saying, "Oh, well, guess what? People of all ages, and not just you don't have to be some hooty tooty film critic or something like that. This is really for the people, by the people, 
uh, in a great American film, Nicolas Cage's voice is so distinctive. Mm -hmm. I forgot that he, he was in this, and I went to go see it, and I go, who's the sound of that voice? Reminds me of Nicolas Cage, lo and behold, it was. And his voice well, is so, that that's how distinctive it is. He's an Academy Award winner, so uh, he's not going to muck around. He's going to give you a good performance, whatever it is. And uh, in this case, uh, we're lucky to have him, because this movie really sort of blew my mind. It was, it was great. And it, it's funny, because this has always been a fantasy of mine, is what was it like back in the caveman days? You know, not just what we see from Flintstones, but actually mm -hmm. what was it like? And this kind of bridges the gap, where it's not just, com it's not like a documentary, of course, but it's not as silly and ridiculous as the Flintstones. Uh, it's more grounded, but still with a lot of heart, great, greatly drawn. I give it five bags of popcorn. Well, I guess this is more like the Flintstones, but if you were to sort of hollow out uh, stones and make popcorn containers out of that, that's what they would have done on the Flintstones, so I would give it five of those. Mm. All right. I'm sorry, I have not slept. So five tubs of popcorn. All right, well now I'm very excited. This is a very special episode, and I should have said that in the beginning, that this is a very special episode. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, Stump the Buff. So we got the graphics for Stump the Buff. This is uh, where we ask our esteemed film expert a series of trivia questions about the movies. And this is kind of neat. We have worked out with the thingx.com that they are going to be donating $500 for every question that Greg gets right to the American Cancer Society. This is going to be fun. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I know we're going to go into uh, uh, four digits at least. So. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's get it started with the first question here. Who was the cinema? I feel like I'm Alex Trebek or something. It's very, very cool for me, too. Um, all right, now, first question is behind the lens. Yep. Who was the cinematographer for Robert Altman's Popeye? Uh, Robert Altman uh, was the director. Um, so that, uh, I think that was Andrew Dunn, cinematographer Andrew Dunn. Nope, sorry. It was um, Giuseppe Rotuno, Rotuno, no. uh, French guy, Italian guy. I think it was Andrew Dunn. He did um, the, uh, if you've seen the Steve, well, we talked about the Steve Martin movie, A Simple Twist of Fate, which was a movie that we mm -hmm. covered on this mm -hmm. show. All uh, right, well, speaking of Steve Martin, this is our second question. So we have uh, one wrong so far, zero money raised. Ready for your second question? Yep. How many movies, you'll like this one because I know you're a big fan of this guy, how many, how many movies did Steve Martin make in the 80s? That's a good question. How many movies hmm. did Steve okay. Martin make? This is easy. Um, how many movies did Steve Martin make in the 1980s? 13. 13 movies. Oh man, close. Lucky, unlucky 13 because the answer is 14. All right, over for two? No, uh, it's 13. Um, are you counting the, no, I'm the, the didn't decade? Make these, I didn't write these questions. But are you ca it's a decade. These are from I'm the counting official. the decade the way a decade goes, which is from 1981 to 1990. That's 10 years. That's what I was counting, and that's where I got my number. So right, well, I, I'm going I by 14. I'm right. you know, the number's 14. So. But that's not really the 80s. The 80s actually I don't think it would make a difference. I think it would still be, your answer would be wrong no matter what. All right, sec third question. We've raised your raised no money yet. Well, we uh, could have raised money if you worded the questions properly. All right, third question. How do you spell, this is one of your favorite actor, actors, you should know the answer to this one. Okay. How do you spell Richard Dreyfus? You're not gonna throw it out on a technicality if I don't spell Richard too, like you threw out the last one on a technicality. Just, you know, I think you have to spell the whole name. Just to make sure, it's R-I-C-H-A-R-D, and then it's uh, D-R-Y-F-U-S, S or S? I think it's one S. F U S S. F U S. S. F U S. Jeez. F U S. Yeah, there's two S's. It's D R Y F U S S. Okay. It's D R E Y F U S S. F U S S. That's what I said. I know. E Y. D R E Y F U S S. Oh. Oh, yeah. Thought you'd get that one. 
All right, well, that's 0 for 3. Focus in. You're my buff. Let's just focus and get one of these right, two of these right. It'd be great. Uh, this one is an easy one. You'll get this one. Raise some money for the American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. Ready? Who won Best Supporting Actor for his role in City Slickers? Billy Crystal. No. Er, uh, supporting Actor. All right. Jack Palance is the correct answer. Yeah, I thought you said Best Actor. Okay. It was a Best Actor Oscar. No. Which Billy is... Crystal didn't win Best Actor anyway. So. He starred in the movie. All right. Um, well, for number five. This is the final question. Let's see if we can raise $500 for the American uh, Cancer Society, which I think they'd appreciate. All right. How many Oscars did the film Titanic win? Seven. Eleven. Okay. Thanks for watching. Good thing. Hi, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the, uh, this is my show on cinema at the cinema, and it's a show where I talk about movies and give you guys a good, uh, to tell you about what's coming up in the movies. Uh, my guest today is uh, Ayaka Owaki. And Ayaka, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And uh, Ayaka is uh, staying with uh, my family. She's a foreign exchange student from uh, Japan. Yes. And uh, she has uh, agreed to come on the show just to get a couple of a foreign perspective on movies. So it's been, been wonderful having you stay with us and really been cool to get to know you. And yes. Yes. You enjoying your time here? Yes, I'm so happy. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, the movies we're talking about today are uh, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe Retaliation. Directed by John M. Chu, and uh, Chan and Tatum again, and again with Bruce Willis, and again with Dwayne Johnson. Uh, three of three, some of my favorite current film stars. I love this movie. I love the first one, but somehow they've managed to outdo themselves and make a, another great G.I. Joe film. Your thoughts? I give it five bags of popcorn. Um, I'll give one bag of popcorn and uh, five. Cups of soda. Okay. So you didn't care, or you didn't, or because you, one bag of popcorn. Because we, uh, we went to see this uh, last night, and uh, you see, you seem to enjoy it. I just, not big fan of popcorn. Oh, well. Okay. So, but the popcorn isn't to be eaten. It's just to signify oh. a roof, like a star. Oh, okay. Then uh, four stars. Four bags of popcorn from Ayaka. Very cool. Must be different seeing American movies without subtitles. Yes, I didn't understand at all. Oh boy. Well, we also went and saw Tyler Perry's The Marriage Counselor, with the, directed by the Tyler Perry, starring Tyler Perry, or, uh, uh, well, uh, Vanessa Williams and the, Kim, oh, and Kim Kardashian was in this. Kind of funny to see her in a movie. Uh, I, I thought this movie was funny, not my, um, you know, not my favorite kind of movie, to be honest with you. But uh, it was, it was okay. You know, I thought it was very well made, so I have to give it four bags of popcorn. Um, I'll do three bags of popcorn and uh, three cups of soda. Did you like? So, did, what did you think of the? Um. It's average, I think. Average? Okay, average. Uh, average. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at a segment uh, called On uh, Cinema Presents uh, Popcorn Classics BTC. Take it away. Welcome to another edition of Popcorn Classics BTC. We're here with Mr. Jimmy McNichol. 
And today we're looking at Smokey Bites the Dust. Oh boy. The film that you starred in. Uh, how many copies of the movie do you own? Um, actually three. My wife's been collecting them. Did they send you a box of uh, videos? They sent me one. What's the best place to find it? Flea markets or internet? Or I think what would you say? On the internet. Why do you think Smokey Bites the Dust is a popcorn classic? Um, it's got a lot of um, thrills and action in it. Um, it's just a constant, non-stop, uh, you know, uh, classic of just chasing, you know, cars and crashing. Was it uh, scary being in the car during the big chases? No. Do you think the price of DVDs will eventually come down? Over time, they're going to eventually phase out to even smaller discs, is the, at least what technology is saying. Do you think film critics and experts are becoming as important to the movie-going public as actors and directors? I think it's important that films are reviewed and that there's, uh, there's good, you know, viable critics out there that can actually give the audience, you know, the heads up so that they're not wasting their time going and seeing a movie that that really is just okay. I love your hit single from uh, from the 70s called mm -hmm. He's a Dancer. Can we expect more music from you in the future? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, the beginning of 2013 I'll be releasing a new album with music videos. The previews of the music videos can be found at FindingJimmy.com. What size of popcorn do you get when you go to the movies? I usually get a large bag of popcorn, a box of Junior Mints, and I eat the popcorn and the Junior Mints together at the same time. Thank you so much. Back to you, Tim. All right, well, that was cool. Yes. Yes. Good to see you, uh, Greg. Thanks, Greg, for that Thank segment. You. And uh, all right, well, that's our show. And it was thanks for coming on the show. And Thank you. See you back at home. Yes. And uh, she ta actually taught me how to make sushi the other night, which was neat. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, no, no. Where's Greg? Thanks for coming. Yeah, I'll be back soon. Oh. Hi, my name is Tim Heidecker and I'm the host of this show you're watching called On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a web series dedicated to, fit our, uh, to movies and reviewing movies and what's coming out this week and whether or not you should go see them or whether or not you just stay away and stay home and do something else or watch the football game. Uh, my guest is acclaimed, filmmaker, uh, acclaimed uh, film buff Greg Turkington. Welcome back to the show, Greg. Hey guys, good to be here and uh, good to see you, Tim. Good to see you. Thank you for your great report last week on Jimmy McNichol. We're very interested. That was a lot of fun getting to know Jimmy and yeah. uh, talking to him about some of his work. Yeah, I didn't uh, honestly didn't know who he was, um, so it's neat to learn about a new guy. Uh, well, he's not a new guy. He's been around for years, but he's he's one of the best and a very gracious a gentleman, and it was very fun to talk to him. The Company You Keep, directed by Steven Soderbergh, is our film uh, today with Robert Redford. And uh, Shia LaBeouf and Nick Nolte. Wow. Well, this is a um, another Steven Sonnenberg movie that we talked about earlier in the in the year. We talked about uh, him, and uh, this is another thriller, and it's uh, another movie by Steven Soderbergh. So it uh, gets a uh, high marks it's, for me. Uh, one of those movies where you're enjoying it, but the whole time you're thinking, "Could I be learning something here mm -hmm. too?" And uh, that's kind of a nice combination. I think it's a special film, and I think it's the type of film. Uh, people will be talking about. I had the feel, feeling of, I'm enjoying this movie, but when is it going to end? Because Not because I was bored, but I just wanted to find out what was going to happen. That's a mark of a good film. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I give it four bags of popcorn and uh, one glass of uh, soda. I'm going to give it uh, five bags of popcorn. I really liked it, and uh, maybe put them on uh, the back of a runaway freight train, because the film's pretty exciting. Well, I wonder if, uh, the old, if Robert Redford himself uh, ever would have put this in his famous Sundance Film Festival. Um, I'm sure it was there. Uh, and now I'm regretting uh, not making this about, St about Robert Redford, but I, I am going to be doing a tribute to Steven Spielberg later. Because I'm, and the reason I'm uh, not just coming out, with that, coming out with that without thinking about it, the reason is Jurassic Park in, here we go, ready? In 3D. Yay. It's about time. Well, are we doing it in 3D? Why not? What, this? Yeah, I see. Forget that. It's, um, it's fun to give a movie like this sort of a new life, a movie that... Um, I thought we were going to be able to do this in 3D. Okay.
Jurassic Park, read it in 3D. I thought we were going to be able to cut to yeah. this part of the segment in 3D. That would be cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that was my idea. And uh, somebody said that that would be possible. Don't do that. Do we have to swap cameras? Should, should we wait? The Jurassic Park in no, 3D. Hold on a sec. You told me we we're going to be able to do this in 3D. Sam Neill is great. I'm pissed. And, and um, Jeff Goldblum. And we can take five if you want to set up. So can people, if, can, my point is, can we get people to wear the glasses? What's the, di mm, mm. all right, well, f okay, so this is in regular 2D, which is fine, uh, but the movie Jurassic Park is in 3D. I'm sorry, I'm pissed about this. You said we're gonna be able to put this, you said that because, it, because of what? Because that's on web, or what? All right. It's, a whole, it's, a it's whole good. Movie. You know, I love this movie uh, the old way, and I'm glad they haven't tinkered with the movie themselves. Sometimes when they reissue things, they'll cut some of the scenes you liked. This is the same Jurassic Park that you know and love, but it's in 3D now, and so it actually yeah. comes out at you. And Jurassic Park's in 3D, are, not our segment. It's don't, really frightening don't make when they. You can't keep. When a dinosaur chomps on something, it's... We all know what happens in Jurassic Park. It's a great movie. It's a classic movie. It's one of the greatest movies Steven Spielberg ever made. That's why... I can't do this. Okay. It'd be cool if they re-released all the old on cinemas in 3D, wouldn't it? I just it? want you to be straight with me. All right. I apologize. Okay, um, but Jurassic Park in uh, 3D is... Uh, you know, what I always don't understand about these re-releases in 3D is why didn't they just show the original movie in 3D? If they had shot it in 3D, why wait till now to put it out? Well, you don't want to second-guess Steven Spielberg because he's the master, so... I agree Maybe at that time, the glasses were more expensive. Who knows? All right, well, I have a tribute to Steven Spielberg. Oh, you know what I have for you? It's a tribute to you, actually. It's a, sort of a present that I picked up in uh, one of my journeys to the flea markets. Um, this is a pretty unique item. Uh, I would venture to say it's quite valuable. This isn't an antique road show here, but this is something you're not going to find everywhere uh, or anywhere. It's a Spanish language uh, version of Jurassic Park. It's called El Parque Jurásico. When you put this in your video player, it starts out, you think you're watching Jurassic Park, and then it's wild. Every line of dialogue is totally in Spanish. So um, I've never seen anything like this before, and uh, it's my gift to you to thank you for all you've contributed uh, to On Cinema. Well, thank you very much. Very unique. I can't read this. Looks like I'm just looking at random, not, uh, random uh, letters. That's the beauty of it, is it's uh, so familiar yet so different. And that's why I think you'll have fun. This would be a fun thing to watch with friends late at night, have a couple of drinks and have a few laughs and uh, enjoy El Parque Jurassico. Esteban Spielberg. Totally in Spanish. Thanks for watching. The whole f***ing point of this was that I was going to be able to do 3D and, and tie that into the 3D thing. Hi everybody, this is Tim Heidecker on Cinema at the Cinema. And uh, I... Um, it's been a tough week. So uh, I'm just going to turn it over to Greg. I can't do it today. To the tumor.
Hey guys, welcome to On Cinema, uh, the webcast where we discuss new movies, review those movies, and then give recommendations to you, the viewer, as to whether or not to see those movies. And this week we've got two for you, and what are they, Tim? Okay. Uh, this week um, we're reviewing two movies. Uh, the first one uh, is called Oblivion, and it's a science fiction <laughs> uh, uh, science fiction movie. This is the new Tom Cruise movie, and of course you all know that because everyone keeps tabs on Mr. Cruise. And here he's joined by Morgan Freeman, and this film is a delight. It's a, a science fiction movie. It's a little strange, but if you're familiar with Star Trek or the X-Files or anything of that nature, you won't be too shocked at some of the other worlds that they explore, visit, and do battle with in Oblivion. Um, this is the real deal. I would give this movie five tubs of popcorn, maybe put a ring around each one like the planet Saturn. Tim? I love this movie. I love Tom Cruise, and uh, I love sci-fi, and uh, you know, it was a lot of fun to watch this with my family. Uh, how is how is your family doing? How is the is the tumor uh, gone down in size or? No, they are uh, not. It's not a tumor. It is um, blood clots, and uh, um, they have doubled. So there are now twelve. Of once, of where there was once six. You should have gotten the surgery, which is what I was suggesting all along. Well, that ship has sailed, and uh, continue. All right, well, the next movie, um, as long as we've done science fiction, let's do a little bit of horror, too. Um, this is called Scary Movie 5, and it's from the Zucker Brothers, and stars Lindsay Lohan, Charlie Sheen, and the whole Scary Movie gang. Um, if you've ever seen a scary movie, or uh, one of the Scary Movie series, you know what you're in for, which is a lot of laughs, a couple of little chills, a little fright here and there, and uh, a little bit of eye candy in the form of Miss Lindsay Lohan. And uh, the plot itself isn't as important as the reaction that it will get from you, which is uh, a good time. I can hardly recommend Scary Movie 5. I give it five tubs of popcorn. Tim? I didn't get a chance to see this movie. Um, I think you'd like it. We've been uh, spending time saying goodbye, um, looking at old pictures and going through stuff and there's so much stuff. You look in your, my storage room that we have, there's just so much stuff. Well, this might uh, be a fun thing to do, you know, I mean, I okay, guess... I'm trying to just manage my time, you know. Time is so valuable to me right now that I can't... Uh, something like a scary movie is just going to well, be a waste. It's, it's not really a scary movie, it's a comedy, it's a parody of uh, a scary movie, so it's actually quite funny. There are a couple of scary moments in it, but um, if you need something to get your mind off your troubles, um, I recommend Scary Movie 5. I give it five tubs of popcorn. I've been going back and watching some of my favorite movies, um, movies that make me feel good, that I'm comfortable around, that uh, bring a smile to my face. I was never a big fan of the Scary Movie franchise. I think it's junk, and uh, I think those guys are just the worst, and they're just profiting off of violence and profiting, profiting off of gore and, and horror and people tr suffering. And I would rather watch something that makes me feel good, Sound of Music or something like that. Or Oblivion, our other movie um, with Tom Cruise, which is a lot of fun. I want to thank you for uh, filling in here and, uh, and to Ayaka, who was such a big part of this season for us. And uh, into my family, into my, and all the people that watch the show. Why don't you show. just get the surgery on this tumor and it's then stop a, with this? Because no, it's not, it is not, it's a not tumor. incurable. It's not an incurable situation. It is not a tumor. There was a, a very well, small window uh, during which surgery would have been appropriate, and that window is closed. It's closed by and, you uh, and your 
idiot doctor because I've studied up on this and I don't uh, think that's really how it works. I know. Well, a tumor. You don't know anything about it. It's not a tumor. It's a blood clot. It is a, you know, 12 blood clots on my brain. There's and no uh, reason for this. Just well, go get a, a real doctor, get some surgery, and let's get back reviewing movies. And enough with the erratic episodes and things because... All right. Well, we're not, this isn't the Stone Age, or the Dark Ages, and uh, it's barbaric uh, to do what, they're, what they were suggesting, and that's just the choice we made. So, um, anyway, thank you guys so much for being a part of the On Cinema family, and thank you to Greg for all your work, and, and uh, hope, hope we made a small difference. And uh, let me just say, um, from uh, myself and the entire crew here, uh, I hope you guys will remember me and, you know, whenever you go to see a movie, whenever you get a, p a popcorn. Especially if you go to a movie about a stubborn person that won't get surgery when they need surgery, that would fix the problem. Definitely think of him then. Thank you, guys. I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker, and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Quite on set. It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hi everybody, welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema, season premiere of season three. My name is Tim Heidecker and uh, it is a review a movie where we, re where we remove re review movies for, you, uh, tell you which movies we want to uh, recommend and see. Uh, my guest today is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here and of course I've brought lots of expertise with me this season. And uh, I'm celebrating the, we are in the summer and this is a, the whole season of summer movies is with us so I'm wearing my summer shirt. Uh, very cool shirt. Very uh, sort of Hawaiian in style. And uh, I thought that would be fun to wear the shirt. And uh, so our movies today are Lone Ranger. Mm. Uh, Lone Ranger directed by Gore Verbinski uh, and actors of Johnny Depp, L Helena Buck Bunham Carter, and somebody called Army Harmer. Army Hammer. And uh, this is a typical story of uh, the Native American warrior named Tonto, recalls uh, stories of how Johnny Reed, a man of the law, transformed himself into a legend of justice who is called Lone Ranger. But they do reveal his um, name in the movie. That's one of the fun parts about this movie. I liked it a lot. Right, let me just get into it. Lone Rangers is uh, one of my favorite movies of the year. I think it's a lock for best picture. I enjoyed so many different parts of this movie, especially the horse riding and the western. It is almost like a western, and that's what I loved about it because I love westerns. And uh, thank you, uh, and I love this movie. What did you think? It's a cool movie. It's a cool movie. Disney's usually known more for their animation, and it's neat to see them uh, branching out with something like this. And of course, Johnny Depp is always going to be an asset to any production that he's involved in. Yeah, I, I always thought that Johnny Depp would play Lone Ranger, and this was what a twist of Disney to say, no, he will play Tonto, which is the opposite character that you imagine him to be. Because when I saw the coming out, I thought Army Harmer might have been a Indian man, and mm -hmm. that's who was playing Tonto. So this was a big switch, and I thought it worked. Well, it's movie magic, and part of movie magic is uh, misdirection, mm -hmm. just as with real magic. And yeah, uh, Tonto is a more important character than the Lone Ranger. Okay, well, I'm giving this uh, the, as high a score as you can give, which is six bags of popcorn and uh, five bags of soda. The highest score is five bags of popcorn. I'm going to dock it one point, actually one bag of popcorn, because I think the film should have been directed by Tim Burton. I think it would have been a better film. Uh, that said, Johnny Depp was just so good in it, I'm going to bring and restore that bag, because the movie was great. Okay, so how many? It's five bags of popcorn, total. And a little chocolate heart for Johnny Depp, because I loved his performance. All right. Uh, or a horse for the Lone Ranger, the mask from Lone chocolate Ranger. Chocolate horse.
All right, well, go check out The Lone Ranger. We have both agree that it's one of the great movies of the year. Probably will be a lock for Best Picture, Best Oscar winner, uh, and Johnny Depp, Best Supporting Actor for uh, Lone Ranger. Um, before we get into the next movie, Despicable Me 2, which I can't wait to talk about, I do want to address my uh, wound, or these darn bandages, as you can tell. Uh, I did have the surgery, and uh, a lot of you guys know that, and I want to thank everybody for your kind words and support. It's been a tough couple of months. I really did feel like I was knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Bob and, Dylan. Uh, it was pretty touch and go there, I thought for sure. Uh, I was uh, going to be passed away. And um, uh, long story short, um, I did get a second opinion. And the surgery happened, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, who uh, didn't believe in the surgery. So we weren't getting the surgery until uh, push come to shove. And um, where I'm divorced, so going through that process of, as a lot of people always do, get divorced. Yeah. Anyway, not any of your business. None of my business. Was it cancer or what was it? It was blood clots that uh, they were, were able to remove surgically, um, which. But did they test them? There was a difference between tumors and uh, clots. So these were just blood clots. It's a, it deals with the, the veins in your brain. Anyways, they got it finished and we can move on, but they have to let the scar heal and everything because they split your skull open and the recovery time is very painful. In fact, uh, it was just a week ago and the doctor said, I'm not supposed to do anything for two weeks. So I, uh, but I had to keep my commitments with this show. And uh, so I uh, have a very, ter a, a lot of pain in my head, headache, which, uh, anyway, uh, I got on herbal supplements, which are doing the trick for sure. Uh, let the healing begin, and thank you guys for all your well wishings, wishes, and thank you, Greg, for standing by me and supporting And the for show. getting the ball rolling of having people send you cards and letters telling you to get the surgery. All right. Um, yes, thank you. Anyways, Despicable Me 2, starring Steve Carell, Al Pacino, uh, Kristen, w Kristen Wade with two eyes, um, Miranda Cosgrove, Russell Brand, and Steve Coogan. This is a cartoon, and it is basically a sequel to Despicable Me 2. Evil mastermind Gru is recruited by the Anti-Villain League to help deal with a powerful new super criminal. Uh, I love the first uh, Despicable Me, and there's no reason why I wouldn't love this as well, and it's true. It is so fun and funny. And it is for kids, but it is also for adults who love good movies. Uh, story was great, and how fun was it to hear the voice of Al Pacino? In that this? was a trip. He's won an Oscar before for serious roles. This is more of a comedic role, and I think he'll win an Oscar for this one, too. I loved it. Yes, well, I don't know if you can win an Oscar just for being a voice actor. I don't think they have restrictions. It's the best actor of the year. It doesn't matter if they're wearing, if you're wearing a mask. It's just whoever did the best job, and I think Al Pacino is uh, definitely in contention. Oh, well, that would be interesting to see if... Uh, be, it could be a world record to see if an if actor wins just by the voice. And uh, I'm giving it four bags of popcorn and five uh, cups of soda. This is a kind of movie that you take kids to, so I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, five bags of mixed candy. Okay, well, now you have some uh, thoughts on what you should see this weekend. Uh, by the way, today we're going to celebrate the ce uh, celebrity birthdays, and uh, we call it On Birthdays. <laughs> Okay, today's birthday is July 3rd, and uh, exciting, this is amazing because it is our first time we're doing this segment. What, how, what, how fortunate we are to have one of the greats, Tom Cruise's birthday today. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday, uh, Mr. Master, Tom Cruise. Happy birthday, Tom Cruise. We love you, and we love all the movies you're in, especially Jack Reacher. It was my favorite movie last year. And uh, all of your movies, really. And even his latest movie, which we didn't get to review, called Oblivion, which I loved, and I will love every movie you've been in. Um, he's not getting older, he's getting better. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday, Tom, and we wish you many more, and... And I'd love to see him in Despicable Me 3. We're going to say, and many more And movies. many more movies, yeah. Sorry. All right, well, our next, uh, finally, we got our old segment. Hopefully it's going to be a Tom Cruise movie, uh, Popcorn Classics. Let's hear it, Greg. Yes. Uh, this week, my popcorn classic is Two Weeks Notice with Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant. And uh, this is a romantic comedy that I highly recommend. 
What? No. I thought you were going to do a Tom Cruise movie. Well, I didn't know it was his birthday until just now. Some film buff. Um, I'm okay. a film buff, not a birthday What's buff. What's with the red... Tape on the bottom. This is my new uh, coding system, internal coding for my collection, uh, to keep people from stealing the tapes. Sort of, uh, it's cheaper than an alarm system. Let me put it that way, and it makes sure that the tapes uh, belong to me. What do you mean? I mean, how does that stop people from stealing the tapes? Well, well if I loan a tape here, a tape to you, a tape to somebody else, and then I don't always remember that I've loaned them. Uh, as time goes by. Then I go over to your house and I'm looking through your tapes and I see, oh look, this one's got red tape, this one of mine, so then I can retrieve the films. And also that way if professional burglars broke into the house or something and took all the tapes and then they turn up in pawn shops or whatever, I can say to the police, this is one of mine, and then you're entitled to retrieve your stolen merchandise that way. Um, so it's, you know, it's a lot of fun to All do. All right, what do the numbers stand for? I don't get what the numbers stand for. This is an internal coding system. A T is for the title two, mm -hmm. two weeks notice, T. Uh, five is, is my rating, five bags of popcorn. Zero is the decade that the movie was released, not made, but released. This was in the 2000s. Uh, L is the first letter of the director's last name. This was directed by Mark Lawrence. Uh, 35 is the shelf number where I keep the tape, and 48 is the tape number. Couldn't you just use the last two numbers then if it's the tape I have, number? Well, the, if you only had 99 tapes, but I have significantly more than that. <sighs> okay, I have to stop now because my head's starting to really hurt. So we'll be back next week and hopefully I'll be feeling a little better. Uh, and check out two weeks notice. Uh, and uh, I, can't see the, I can't see anything past, I can't see anything past like here. So if there's something you're telling me I can't see it. They're just done. Okay. Hmm? No, the episode's okay. done. What's that? Episode's done. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. I can feel the, there's like a ringing in my ear. Mm -hmm. Guess how many shelves I have. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. I can't. I can't hear you. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, this is a movie show, or it's a web show about which we Review I review movies uh, and have a, as a get with a guest who also reviews the movies. Uh, who is Greg Turkington? Hey guys, good to be here and good to see you, Tim. Thank you very much. And uh, Grown Ups Two. This is the movie we're talking about today, directed by Dennis uh, du or Dugan, uh, starring this. Uh, of course, this is an Adam Sandler movie with Steve Buscemi, Kevin James, David Spade, Chris Rock, Maya Rudolph. And uh, Lenny has relocated his family to where he and his friends grew up. This time the grown-ups are the ones learning lessons from their kids on a day full of surprises, the last day of school. So this is one of those last day of school movies. The great Adam Sandler has returned. The first grown-ups was one of my favorite movies of uh, combining summer comedy with uh, some pretty gross out comedy style humor, which I love. And, uh, and great to see that Saturday Night Live gang coming back together. They are sort of the, the original, not ready for primetime players. And uh, that, that's why I give this movie five bags of popcorn. Yeah, I love the movie too. Um, I think that the title uh, is a little misleading. Grown Ups 2 should be for grown ups only because <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty raunchy. I'd feel strange showing this to a kid. But that said, I'd feel great showing it to an adult. And I think if you're an adult, you should definitely see it. I'd give it. Uh, Five bags of popcorn and maybe uh, an empty bag to throw up into because it's kind of a gross-out movie. All right. The other movie uh, discussed is uh, Pacific Rim. Disgust is how I felt when I watched uh, uh, mm -hmm. Grown Ups 2. Mm -hmm. All right. Pacific Rim, directed by Guil Guillermo del Toro. It's a weird name. Um, yes. This is an alien attacks Earth. A bunch of nobodies, so I'm not even going to mention who starred in it. When an alien attack threatens Earth, giant robots piloted by humans are deployed uh, to fight off the menace. So this is an alien ad adventure, an alien attack adventure movie. Very interesting sci-fi movie for me. I give it uh, two bags of popcorn because I thought it was not very uh, interesting and uh, I thought that Tom Cruise should have been in it because it, I don't know why they bother making <coughs> these movies uh, where it's an alien movie, an adventure, 
and there's no uh, big stars in it. So I didn't care for this movie. I thought it was a uh, junk. Well, Tom Cruise wasn't in the original Alien movie, and uh, I think you'd give that five bags of popcorn. So I think you should give this five bags of popcorn, which is what I gave it. I love this movie, and I look forward to many more in the series. Tell you what, why don't I adjust the rating after you made a good point. It doesn't have to have Tom Cruise in it. Uh, let me throw two bags back in the mix and give it four. So there will be four bags from me. I do think that, though, Hollywood should take notice that we are not going to keep seeing movies if it's not going to have big movie stars in it. Charlie Day is not a movie star. Somebody named Idris Elba is not a movie star. Charlie Humam, Hunam is a, is a joke. And if you're saving money, if that's what this is about, saving money, well, then guess what? I'm not going to pay money. But, um, you know, today's nobodies are tomorrow's stars. I think if you saw Risky Business when it first came out, you'd say, oh, who's Tom Cruise? I never heard of him. Well, he went on to be one of the biggest stars of the no, generation. No, because everyone knew t Tom Cruise by then. He was one of the biggest stars on TV. That was his first movie. Yeah, but he was already a big TV star. Well, so are these people. Hollywood is, is uh, this is your warning. Don't keep putting out these movies that have cool ideas and cool sci-fi, but don't have any stars I want to see. So next time, think about who you're putting in this movie. Even Tom Hanks would have been good. A lot of these stars are getting older, and you need a new generation of stars to replace them. And the best way to do that is to give them a chance in movies like this. I love the movie. I'm saying it's so hard to put somebody like, even if you want young, go Channing Tatum or somebody of that ca caliber into the film, and we'd all enjoy it much more. Still, four bags of popcorn. And um, let's uh, do a, cop a popcorn classic. Uh, this week on Popcorn Classics, we're looking at a great movie called Six Days, Seven Nights. It's uh, an action romance uh, with Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, the original Han Solo, lots of other films, Patriot Games, and uh, Anne Hesch, a bit of eye candy for the guys. Um, Harrison Ford delivers in this film. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting, got a little bit of romance for the ladies, and it's just a fun package. I loved it. And of course, if you know my rating system, uh, five bags of popcorn. Mm -hmm. Always look at the second digit on the front of the tape for those of you who are in the know. Yeah, I remember when this came out, it was kind of considered a big, big flop. It was a critical darling, and uh, I loved it, and I wouldn't call it a flop. This mm -hmm. was a movie that sort of didn't appeal to uh, all audiences because it right. sort of brought back the old Casablanca style of movie making or uh, some of the old Bogart and Bacall, that kind of chemistry that these two had in right. this picture. So I, I right. absolutely can't recommend this film enough, right. and I would give it five bags of popcorn. All right, thank you. And, uh, and thanks, Harrison Ford. Thank you, Harrison Ford, and thanks for watching, and uh, we'll oh, see you guys. Oh, one last thing. Um, it's not your birthday, but it doesn't mean I can't get you a present, especially because you've been through so much. And just to sort of as an appreciation for all that you've done uh, for me and for the audience, I've got some new uniforms for us to wear. As uh, co-hosts of the show, uh, they're Popcorn butter yellow, uh, which is kind of cool because, of course, the popcorn rating system. This is something you can wear next week on the show and every week um, just to, uh, I don't know. It's a neat, neat idea. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. What size is this? Extra it's large? One size fits all. Extra large. Well, thanks, but Greg, and thanks for watching. Try it. You can get it altered. Hi, everybody. Welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker. I'm the host of this show, and it is a movie site. It's a movie review show. Uh, and uh, my, uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. I'm here to provide expertise. Okay. Um, before we get in uh, to our reviews today, I just want to mention uh, we are currently selling the On Cinema mug, uh, and it's a really great mug, which uh, I've been enjoying. It's got on the back here. It came from a saying that my guest, uh, Greg Turkington, said, thank God for coffee. And I said, ah, it's like TGIF, and so I say TGFC, or thank goodness for coffee. The more coffee you drink, the more movies you can watch. Uh, I'm not so much of a coffee guy, but you are a coffee addict, and... Uh, but I, you can put anything into this. This is my used mug, so it has some, uh, actually it was my wife's, and now I've got everything in boxes. So I it's found this the other day. And um, Soup is good in it. Mm -hmm. And hot tea. Um, oh. 
All right, well, we have a lot more actually in stock, so don't worry about that. Plenty more. Uh, our movies today, one is called Turbo, which is a 3D animated movie, um, and it's actually opening today. It's uh, directed by David Soren, starring actor Reynold Reynold, uh, Ryan Reynolds, one of my favorite actors, Burt Reynolds' son, uh, Paul Giam Giamatti, and uh, Giamatti, Giamatti, Paul Giamatti. Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. The great Paul Italian, Giamatti. Italian guy. Oscar winner. Michael Pina and Bill Hader. So this is another great animated movie about a freak accident that might just help an everyday garden snail achieve his biggest dream, to win the Indy 500. I love this movie. It had everything for me. It had great adventure, comedy. Obviously, some of the voices were familiar to my ear. And uh, it, I love car racing, and I love... I wish it was NASCAR is my only dis disagreement with it, but Indy 500 is the best as well, so I don't have too many problems with it. I give it five bags of popcorn and five bags of soda, five cups of soda. Yeah, I love the movie too. It's sort of a unique take on the race theme. Usually if you have uh, slow and steady wins the race, it would be a turtle. In this case, it's a snail. So I thought that was kind of interesting, interesting choice, and the voice work is excellent, as you mentioned. So I would give it uh, five bags of popcorn and a little shaker of salt, because that's how you kill snails in your garden, is you salt them. Mm. Well, we they... wouldn't want to kill the hero of the movie. No, um, but I mean, if you have snails in your garden. Um, I just thought it was so interesting how I knew, was watching the movie and I never knew what was going on, which I liked that sort yeah. of era of mystery. And they didn't treat me like a child. They didn't make me feel, uh, it made me feel like a child watching it. Uh, in other words, I didn't know, I was confused. I was confused too, because when I first got the email about this one and it, um, the letter was cut off so it said Turbo 3 and I was like I've never heard of Turbo mm -hmm. 1 or 2 and then when I actually opened the email there was a D well, after the 3 it was in 3D. Yeah, that's not necessary. That's... Keep that junk to yourself. I'm so tired. I can't sleep on the left, I usually sleep on the left side of my head and because of where the scar is, I can't sleep that way, so I'm not getting any sleep. Well, if you hadn't broken the coffee glass, I'd get you a cup of coffee. Wake you up. J Red 2, directed by Bruce Willis, and starring, I'm sorry, directed by Dean Prashnot, and uh, starring Bruce Willis. Listen to this list, this is an impressive list. I mean, this has gotta be like the best cast there ever was. Bruce Willis, Anthony Hopkins, John Malkovich, Malch Malch uh, Helen, Her Helen, Herm Me uh, Helen Merman, Catherine Zeta Jones, uh, Mary My Tyler, Mo or very Mary uh, Louise Parker. Um, wow, I mean, I don't. They could have just put these people in a room, uh, and sat them around a table, and had them talk about uh, the weather for two hours. It would have been a, probably a great movie. Uh, Not as good as it is when they're in this uh, action sort of scenario with these assassins. I think that's what really makes the movie in this case is the I agree. plot. I told you I agree that this is a better movie than the, even the first Red, which was my one of my favorite movies from a few years ago, Red with Bruce Willis. And um, this is almost like it's a Frank Moses and his motley crew of retired assassins return for a second outing is the, descript is the plot. And uh, basically this is uh, an action adventure with a lot of humor, a lot of heart, and, uh, and a lot of familiar faces, and it's one, probably my favorite movie of the and year. And some, a lot of violence, I gotta say. Uh, if you're not a violence fan, stay away from this one. Mm -hmm. But I still give it five bags of popcorn and two sodas. Uh, I'm not a fan of real violence, but I am a fan of movie violence when it serves the plot, and it did in this movie. This is about assassins. These are not, uh, these are not nice people. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna, these are not babysitters they're talking about. <laughs> these are assassins. So uh, there's gonna be some blood spilled, and there is, and so I'm gonna give it Five bags of popcorn and five uh, packages of Band-Aids for all the blood that is spilled in this great movie. All right, well, it gets two thumbs up from, or two, uh, or it's, I'm sorry, two, five bags of popcorn for me and five bags from you. Not thumbs up, sorry. No. Forget that. It's nothing to do with this. No. We have our own system. 
All right. Well, finally, we got a new segment we're debuting today. Let us know what you think of these segments, by the way. I love hearing the feedback. Go to oncinemapodcast.com. Or people love on, the segments. I'm not finished with the plugs for the where do pe people attack. Uh, uh, people to contact us. On they Cinema already Podca know because I'm getting lots of emails and uh, Twitter. On Cinema Podcast uh, on Twitter and the on Cinema Podcast com and the Facebook uh, uh, also in, uh, and the website website on Cinema Podcast com. There's a new segment called On Popcorn from Greg Turkington. Hello and welcome to On Cinema on Popcorn, a special new segment where we look at popular popcorn brands and examine their flavors and see which are the best for you, the viewer. My guest today is none other than On Cinema host and creator, Mr. Tim Heidecker. Tim, thanks for coming and being a part of my show. Tim, I'm going to ask you to try some of the top popcorns on the market today and give me your opinion. This is the type of thing that you would eat if you were at home watching a real movie, you'd pop some up. Now, anyone who watches on cinema knows we rate the films using a five-bag system. We thought we'd turn the tables and give the popcorn uh, a five-videotape uh, system. Okay. These are my threes. These are the three from? that we're going to choose from. Oh, hold on. We need you to clear your palate first by having a bite of barbecue potato chip and a sip of water to clear your palate so that you can start from scratch and then try our first popcorn, which today is Orville Redenbacher, the Cadillac of popcorn. Okay, now just take a handful and take a bite and see what you think. I got still, I got a lot of barbecue in my mouth now. Clear the palate. <clears throat> okay, Orville right. Redenbacher? Orville Redenbacher right here. See what you think. One of the all-time original popcorns. Yeah, it's good. It tastes like movie theater popcorn, kind of a buttery and salty and... Popcorn. So, right. so on a scale of zero videotapes being the worst and five videotapes being the best, what would you rate Orville Redenbacher? Um, I guess I'd do four, bag, four uh, videotapes. Okay. Cleanse the palate and we'll move on to our next flavor, which is actually Pop Secret. Okay. Pop Secret? Yeah. Pop Secret is one of the original uh, microwave popcorns. They may have invented it, in fact, uh, for all I know. Um, what do you think? This one has, uh, like they cooked it too long. It's like a little overcooked. Black, burnt. Like a burnt taste. Come on in. We're shooting a popcorn uh, video. It's okay, do you wanna? So, uh, a little burnt, huh? Yeah, I'm fine. I may, a I may have burnt it burnt. a little bit. I may have burnt it. So. I'll find a piece that's not burnt. I don't want to disparage Pop Secret because I think. No, it's good. It's uh, it's like this one. It's tastes like popcorn. Sorry, I burned it, but four bag, four, uh, I guess four tapes. Four VHS tapes. Okay. Any differences you noticed? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. And our last brand is a store brand. I'm not going to give the name of the store. This is just their inexpensive store brand. Anyone can buy it. Anyone can try it. You don't have to microwave it. It comes already ready to eat in the bag, which is why I like it, because I don't have a microwave anymore, unfortunately. What do you think? I don't, it's not as buttery and salty as the other two. OK. Um, it is lightly salted. It's a lightly it's salted. It's a little dry. Uh huh. So um, three movie t videotapes. So you like that one the least of the three? Yeah, one, two, three. That would be my favorite of the three. Um, I guess partially for the convenience, partially for the price. But uh, of course, nothing beats real movie popcorn. So if you're at the cinema, be sure and support your local popcorn stand. Okay. Thank you, Tim, for being a guest on the show, and uh, we'll see you later. All right, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the segment. Uh, I want to see this again. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called Red Two. Yeah. See it twice. Hi everybody, welcome back to On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker and this is our show where we talk about movies, uh, or actually review movies. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the episode for uh, the, this week. And uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here and to be part of the On Cinema family. All right. Um, oof, I am, uh, my head's in about a thousand places. Uh, <clears throat> I got back into this too quick. 
Well, let's just uh, talk about the movies. I could use, could use another month. Um, and if you need a break or something, I'm always happy to host the show. All right. Um, let's talk about The Wolverine with James Mangold, directed by James Mangold, actored, acting by Hugh Jackman. Uh, I don't know any of these names. Fanky Jacobson. Famke Jansen. Brian T. Is it Brian? What the hell's a Brian T? Brian Lee. It's like a golf term or something, huh? Yeah. Well, this is a bunch of no names except for Hugh Jackman. Uh, Wolverine makes a voyage to modern day Japan where he faces his ultimate ne nemesis in a battle that will leave him forever changed. I can't keep doing these names. If it's going to be a foreign, is this a foreign film? Uh, this movie was great. It was, uh, I love the X-Men and I love everything, uh, you know, I love a uh, great action movie. Five bags of popcorn and go see this movie because it's the X-Men and they deserve everything. And I'm a big X-head. That's what we call ourselves, us X-Men fans. So there was a lot of anticipation about a, another Wolverine movie and uh, I have to say this is kind of the gone with the wind of Wolverine movies, the old Clark Gable classic, in that it's a long movie. Uh, if you've got back problems, bring a pillow, uh, have a couple cups of coffee, because this one goes on and on and in the best possible way. I love the Wolverine. It could have gone on for 24 hours. I would have been if happy. You're gonna have if you're going to bring coffee, bring your On Cinema mug uh, that's available now in the store. So pick that up. Um, what, how many bags? I give it five bags of popcorn and then... Uh, 10 cups of coffee, because it's long. Be ready for the long haul. Um, our next movie is a Woody Allen movie called Blue Jasmine, starring Woody Allen, uh, directed by Woody Allen. Let's hear it for Woody I'm Allen, a big back Woody in Allen the saddle. Fan, so yeah. this is kind of neat. I think he's made 100 movies, and this is this will be his 101st, um, with Kate Blanchett and Alec Baldwin and Peter Sarsgaard and, and Louis C.K. Louis C.K. This is last this is an name. abbreviation. Those are initials. CK what? CK Lewis? It's like The Rock or one of these types of names where they've abbreviated it and it's kind of cool. It's not cool. Uh, that's a story about the final stages of an acute crisis in the life of fashionable New York housewife. This is another classic. Of course, whenever Woody makes a movie, it's an instant classic because he is one of the greats, one of the masters. Um, and uh, this one gets his, uh, gets my uh, vote for Best Picture of the Year. So um, I think everyone's going to rush to the theaters to see this movie. It's his best. I did. It's funny. I used to go see these movies with my uh, wife. Uh -huh. And uh, now I have, uh, you know, this, sort of this vacuum, this holes opened up. And I appreciate I went to go see the movie with you. It was the first time we've gone to see a movie together, and uh, that was a nice night. We had a nice dinner, went to Carabas, and I appreciate your company. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. We should do that more often. Absolutely. Kind of get more uh, in tune for the show, too, that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ended up talking a lot about uh, other Woody Allen movies and learned a lot about you. And, uh, and about Woody Allen. Mm -hmm. And I have seen all his movies. The thing I always liked about Woody Allen was that a lot of filmmakers, they're making the movie from the wallet, and he's making it from the heart. And you can really see the difference when you watch a movie like this compared to some of the other movies we've reviewed. Well, I appreciate uh, that insight, and I appreciate the time you spent. And I, was, uh, I have to admit, I was a little um, emotional that night, and this movie got into some sh relationship issues. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, most of his do. Mm -hmm. That's uh, something at Woody Allen, that's his particular interest. One of his trademarks. Uh, just like with the Bruce Lee movies, you know there's going to be some action and some karate. Mm -hmm. And with Woody Allen, you know that uh, there's going to be some moments from the heart. Mm. Now, obviously, this is a six-bagger. Six, so this is a classic, instant classic, because it's from the mind of Woody Allen. Uh, so we're not going to waste time giving it our review. What we'd like to do now is our brand new segment called On... Uh, called, uh, Actors on directors. And, on uh, cinema actors on, on directors. On cinema actors on directors. And uh, our guest uh, is um, Joe Estevez. And you'll see our interview where we talk about Woody Allen right now. Let me show the clip. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, OCP 
Stars on Directors. That's On Cinema Presents, Stars on Directors, with my uh, uh, guest, Greg Turkington, and a special and creator guest. creator of the segment. Co-creator of the segment. I like creating these special segments, and uh, it's a lot of fun. This should be a fun one. Let's welcome our guest, the uh, movie star, Joe Estevez. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good to see you good again, see you, Joe. Thanks for and coming Nice out. to meet nice you. To meet it you is finally. a pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy and, and you. Thank you for inviting me back. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we're here yeah. talking about the films of Woody Allen. I wanted to get your perspective on his work, and Greg, of course, yours. And, yeah. Uh, you know, he's got a new one coming out now, and we reviewed it, or we talked about it a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, have you gotten a chance to see it yet? I, I, I have not. Okay. I have not. What's your sort of perspective on him? Yeah. I don't know anybody else in, the, in making movies today that is the genius that he is. He, he is an incredible filmmaker. Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Can, well, yeah, but can he play a clarinet? I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> he plays the piano. If, uh, all right, yeah. But an accomplished musician. Uh, I know he's won Best Director. He's won Best Writer. Uh, I know he was nominated for Best Actor. I don't know if he yeah, won Yeah, I think actor. he won a couple times. Yeah. If so, you had a top ten list of, of American directors, where would he be on the list? He'd be about number three. Yeah. Behind Spielberg and who else? Uh, behind uh, Hitchcock and... Um, Maybe he'd be number two. What do you think is the thing that is funny about him, though? I mean, why do we laugh when we see Woody? I actually can't. I, since my surgery, I've not been able to laugh. Oh, uh, not done. Gitchy, gitchy, gitchy. No, no, it's not. You don't it's laugh. Not a, you don't laugh. It's not a. Uh, I mean, I still find things funny, but because of where the took the phony bone out, did they? The phony bone. No, they. Uh, there is a part of your brain that affects the ability to laugh, to make the sound of laughter. Oh, so, so you, yeah. I'm sorry? That's fine. I'm That's going to be the doggonest thing. It's wow. weird, because you'll be watching something and, and just nothing comes out. Yeah. But um, yeah. If, you, if Woody Allen's such a popular director, or if his movies are so uh, well-loved, why do they always come out to be flops? Like, what, I mean, not, maybe not all of them, but if they're so great, why aren't they the number one movie of the year? Why don't they win the best picture? These kind of questions. Well, why hasn't it, he had Tom Cruise in his movies and those kind of things? You know, it's like like great writers or whatever. They're never really uh, respected by while they're alive. You know, uh, I I think after he passes, if he ever does, well, we can be very objective about his work. I think we'll realize what an incredible filmmaker this gentleman was. If you could pick any classic comedy from the classic era of comedies from the fifties and forties to have Woody Allen remake it in a modern setting, what would you choose? Oh gosh, I mean, I I, I don't believe any good film should be remade. I, I think it's just leave, leave well enough alone. Walk, walk, walk away. the Nutty Professor, though. That was better the second time around. You know, you got me on that. It was. It really was. And, and, and I did way back in the day. I did the play when I was just a kid. Play it again, Sam, and played the, the Woody Allen character. In, in, in playing it, all the nuances that Could I would clip? find, the gags between it. No, it's a play. Oh, OK. Yeah. And since I, I did play it again, Sam, I, I have, I've always uh, respected his talent. And who's the new Woody Allen? Who's going to fill his shoes? It would have no. to be somebody like an Adam Sandler or uh, Eddie Murphy or somebody of that nature. Yeah. I would like yeah. to see him in, like, say, one of the Star Wars or Raiders of the Lost Ark or a series like that, just in a cameo, because I, I think it would sort of make things more interesting for the viewer if Woody popped up here that and would, again. That you know? would be incredible. Depends that on what they're be. offering him money-wise, you know? Yeah. I, he's probably got so much money now that he could... Yeah. Of course, he lives in New York. That's an expensive city. you got to think his rent's got to be $3,000 yeah, a month. Guy, I, so yeah. he's probably only got $2 billion then. No. <laughs> I always wonder why, he couldn't, why you couldn't have a Woody Allen movie that took place in Texas. It's always New York, New York, Well, he Paris. made one that took place in Texas. What was it? The... Uh, Manhattan, not Manhattan. Where was the yellow rose or the purple rose of Cairo? Where was that? Texas. Uh, there you go. Yeah. But, you know, what the old adage, you write what you know, you mm -hmm. know. Mr. Allen knows New York, so that's the reason. And they love him there. They do yeah. love him there. George yeah. Lucas isn't from space, and he writes movies about space. So. Yeah, but he's in space. Kind of. Right. Yeah, I won't go. Anyways, Joe, thank you very much for coming thank on the you. show. Thank you. What a we pleasure. What so, a pleasure. Thanks a lot. I had a ball. And we'll get back to the show. All right, well, thanks. Uh, that was an, I thought that was an interesting segment. Uh, thank you to um, Joe Estevez for coming by and sharing his insight. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I think if you want to come by tonight, I'm going to probably watch um, the sh show Boston Legal. I, have the, I still have the leftovers from Parabas. I can bring them. We can reheat them.
Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and uh, I am here with another episode of my show that I host called On Cinema at the Cinema, a movie review show and uh, it is on web. And um, my guest is uh, the uh, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, how are you doing? Fine. I'm talking to the... Yeah. Our first movie... Our first movie today is a movie called The Smurfs 2. And boy, have, we've, have we had an embarrassment of riches the past several weeks with sequels and uh, animated sequels and, and especially, but also just regular like sequels like Red 2. The Smurfs 2 is directed by Raja Gosnell, sort of an Indian name but with an American name in the back. Sounds like a Smurf name, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, we have, uh, this story is about, uh, we got Jonathan Winters in this movie, the late Jonathan Winters, and uh, Christina Ricci, Neil Patrick Harris, and Anton Yelchin. And uh, the Smurfs team up with their human friends to rescue Smurfette, who has been kidnapped by Gargamel since she knows a secret spell that can turn his newest invention, creatures called Naughties, into real Smurfs. So a very, very complicated st story for Smurfs to get involved with and this episode of Smurfs. Uh, this was one of my favorite movies. Uh, I loved the first Smurfs a lot. I loved the whole blue thing where everything says, everything is about blue and the color blue and the way they say Smurfs is this and Smurfs is that. Um, I loved it and um, I think they're gonna probably keep making these Smurfs movies because they're very fun and very funny and got a lot of heart and a lot of soul. My review of it is for Bags of Popcorn. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to see some of the loose ends from the first movie tied up, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a great movie. Um, if you grew up watching the Smurfs, as I think we all did, uh, it's kind of neat to see it expanded into a movie-length feature, mm -hmm. and especially repeated the following year. And I hope this is one of those franchises like Star Trek that we see uh, become a regular uh, presence on our screens. What about Jonathan Winters? I mean, mm -hmm. this was his final film. Of course, he passed away before it was really, he didn't get to go to the premiere party. Uh, he passed away. Very um, sad. But what does that do to the film? How does that affect the, uh, the, the way it's received? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's going to be beneficial to the film. I mean, anytime someone dies, it's not beneficial. But in terms of the money coming in through the door, people are going to want to say it, goodbye yeah. to Jonathan Winters in a classy way. And what better way than to go see his final work? I wonder how the Academy will handle it. They might start doing a best uh, comic actor category, like the Golden Globes do, mm -hmm. uh, at the Oscars as well. And if they do, it's probably the death of Jonathan Winters that would spur it on, because he does deserve an Oscar, and this seems like the perfect role for that Oscar. All right, well, if the Academy's watching, let, us, let them know that we believe that Jonathan Winters deserves a posthumous uh, Academy Award for his role in Smurfs 2. Um, I give Smurfs 2 five bags of popcorn. I give Smurfs 2 five bags of popcorn, of course, and uh, throw in five blue popsicles, because that's what the Smurfs would eat. Pretty typical. Um, let's see here. Our second movie this week is coming out, 300, Rise of an Empire. It's a sequel to my, one of my favorite movies called 300. Uh, and it stars Noah Burrow, actors Reva, Eva Green, Lena Headey. Again, I don't know who any of these people are. This is the problem with this movie. I give it five, let me say this, I give it four bags of popcorn right off the bat because it's a, because the action. But this movie made a huge mistake. It didn't have Harold Butler in it, or Gerald Butler in it, who was the star of the first one. And they made a huge mistake by not getting this guy in the second movie. I don't know what they're thinking. Well, if his character dies, you can't have it. He didn't bring die him in back. the first one. So why would it, th this movie is worth seeing, but it's disgusting and a disgrace to movies that he's not in it. And I think everybody in Hollywood Maybe owes the Gerald. Actor died. If, if when somebody dies, Gerald you, Butler did not Jonathan die. He was Winters in. Is not going to be in the Smurfs three no. unless they use outtakes. No, I saw Gerald Butler was in. Uh, we did the review of it, playing for keeps. He's still alive. Uh, we would know about that because we would have lost, if he had, had passed away. We'd know it just the way we knew when James but Dean died. But if his character dies, then they, he's not going to be in the next movie unless it's flashback scenes, and they do use those sometimes in some of the Harry well, Potter movies. Or look it up. Three hundred, the original one, had a live Gerald Butler was alive at the end of it. The character of Gerald Butler was alive, I believe. I can't remember the ending, but. The, he should have been in this one, and that's why I only give it four bags of popcorn. Yeah, I, you know, whether a character leaves or stays isn't really how you review movies. That's kind of amateurish. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, throw in... Uh, but you understood. There was no, there's no uh, star power in this movie. I mean, the, the, nobody here rises to the occasion. I think uh, if you want to see a positive Star Wars movie or a, a positive star power movie, 
Go see Smurfs too. Well, I mean, you talk about Star Wars. When Star Wars came out, no one had heard of Mark Hamill. No one had heard of Carrie Fisher. No one had heard of Harrison Ford. It went on to be the most beloved movie of all time. This movie has a chance to do the same thing. I give it five bags of popcorn and 300 little uh, bits of uh, caramel corn. All right, let me just say it's the Greek general Thermosically, Therm, some Greek name, battles an invading army of Persians who are commanded by the mortal god turned Zexus. It, Less confusing than it sounds. I think anyone can follow this plot. It's, it's, it's a good movie. It's a bad movie. Uh, so let's have a popcorn classic. My popcorn classic today is Jack Frost, starring Michael Keaton, and it's a family film, kind of a Christmas movie, and you might say, why are we doing Christmas movies in summer? Well, the good Christmas movies are movies you can watch year-round, just as you would watch a summer movie sometimes in December. It doesn't make a difference if the sometimes when good. I if I want to watch, uh, if, I'm, if the temperature's very hot, you want to put on a cool movie. Sort of as a way to cool off, you know, if you can't get to the beach, uh, that might be a fun mm -hmm. trick. Um, it's a cool movie, he's the world's coolest dad, so this is definitely one you should see. And this movie uh, is sort of historic for me personally because I'd like to announce right here on On Cinema that I am launching an effort to get in the Guinness Book of World Records. And this is the first movie that I watched as part of that effort. I watched this last night. Um, I'm doing something called 500 Movies in 500 Days, where I'm going to watch 500 movies in 500 days, get in the Guinness Book, uh, I think I can do it. I watched two last night, so I'm already one ahead. It has never been done that I know of. This is the official world records submission form, which I'm going to fill out. Uh, Look at that, Guinness World closer Records, to... official world records. Exactly. Cool. I'm not going to fill it out yet. I'm going to wait till I've got 400 films under my belt. And uh, I need three witnesses. They don't have to watch the entire movie with me, but they have to verify that I did uh, actually watch the movie. So I could sure use the support of the viewers out there. That's Some of the neat. movies I'm gonna watch at home, that still counts, but a lot of them I'll see in the theater. So if you see me in the theater watching something, come up and uh, you know, wish me luck, cheer me on. All right, well that's pretty cool. I'd love to uh, support you with that. And everybody, as Greg said, go out there and get online and uh, find and, and just uh, show your support for Greg here and even in the comments here. Let us know what you think about this uh, crazy idea to watch 100 movies in 500, 500 movies, movies in, a, in, in 500 days. Right. And if you have any suggestions for movies you want me to watch to be part of this, let me know. I was going to say, you might, run out, library of, already. you might run out of ideas. Oh, I got more than 500 movies in my library, but I'm trying to watch movies I haven't seen before, which makes, I don't have to do that to get in the book, but it's just my own personal little thing that I'm throwing. How in many there. years is that? It's, it's just over a year, 500 days. It's uh, 365 days in a year. So another 135 days. So it's going to be a busy year, mm -hmm. but uh, it's going to be fun. I, I really am looking forward to this. What happens if you, uh, like on Christmas or the holidays or something like that, would you? I, I usually I will watch a movie on Christmas, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, like I said, I've already got two movies on the first day. I'm going to try to get ahead, and that way if I get sick or if I'm working. All right. Uh, well, thank you. Interesting, very interesting stuff there. And uh, go see Smurfs too. That's my official recommendation. Five bags of popcorn. Five bags. And uh, R Rise of the Empire of 300. Could use a lot more Gerald, Bur Gerald Butler, but still worth checking out. I thought it was good. I didn't need Gerald Butler. I love the movie Five Bags of Popcorn. Thanks for watching. How does this work? I'm going to need three witnesses that sign off that showed that I watched the movies. They don't have to watch the whole movie with me. But... <sighs> All right, uh, welcome to On Cinema Podcast. On, damn it. On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker, and this is my show where we talk about movies. And uh, uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Good to be here, and especially with these two movies that you uh, have for us today, Tim. We have a couple movies we want to get through today. Sorry, yes. I'm in a rush because I have to leave okay. uh, very soon. Uh, for a doctor's appointment, and uh, and then off to the lawyers for some bullshit. Uh, my movie today is Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters, directed by Thor Frudenthal. 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 Yeah. yeah. 
And stars German, Logan yeah. Lerman, Sean Bean, Nathan Phil Nathan Fillon, Stanley Tucci, and Jake Abel. Bunch of no names again. It's a bad year. It's a good year actually. So the far. son of Poseidon and his friends embark on a quest. Uh, uh, pull that on a uh, monster to find a uh, fleece and stop. An ancient evil. This is a really fun movie. It's kind of like, I would say it's sort of like The Hobbit Underwater, you know? Hobbit meets Jaws, if you will. Uh, these sort of fantastical characters, uh, much as we loved in The Hobbit, but in an under the ocean setting. And so, uh, of course, I really liked it. Um, I would hope that this is the beginning of a new franchise. That's always a neat thing to be part of, is uh, to be present when a new franchise starts. And I think the Percy Jackson franchise could go down to history as one of the best. I give this five bags of popcorn and a, a cup of water in which you can drop a plastic hobbit. Uh, also, I give it five bags of popcorn to stay on the point with you. I appreciate that. I didn't get a chance to see this one, but uh, I trust your opinion, so. You didn't see the movie? Uh, I saw uh, the trailer and I gave okay. it five bags of popcorn. Seems like a movie I'd like, Poseidon. You'd like it, you, you love the hobbit, so it's. Uh, I love it's the Poseidon neat. Adventure, so this is the son of Poseidon. Imagine so. Shelley Winters and that gang wasn't in the Poseidon Adventure, but taking place with Bilbo Baggins and uh, Gandalf and uh, things like that. That's kind of what you're looking at with this. It's fantastical and fantastic. Well, it sounds great to me, and I'm sure it's a fine movie, so five bags of popcorn for that. Uh, the next movie is uh, Legium, directed by Neil Blanc. Bloom, all these names. B Neil with two L's, stupid. Blumpkamp. Blomkamp. This is a, this is a practical joke. Matt Damon, Jodie Foster, Charlotte Clopla, Chloe, Charlotte Clopla, Copley. Matt Damon, I know. And Jodie Foster. He's great. Set in the year 2154, it's a science fiction movie where the wealthy live on a man-made space station and the rest reside on a ruined Earth. The man takes. Uh, on a mission that could bring equality to the polarized worlds. So this is not only an action movie, but science fiction and mess I got a message mm -hmm. about uh, politics. And this is a little uh, too um, much of a battle, like a, like a liberal kind of thing for me because of Matt Damon. And it had sort of this negative attitude towards blacks. Uh, it's not, that's not the way I saw it. I saw it as a popcorn Set in the year 20, I didn't see, no, I didn't see this one, I didn't see it. Five bags of popcorn, because I like science fiction, so uh, I recommend that one. I'm sorry, it's just been a hard week for me to get out and see movies. Well, you know, sometimes movies are a good way to take your mind off your problems, especially a movie well, starring when you're Matt mo Damon. First of all, when you're moving, uh, when you have, they, they make you come in for testing every, uh, every two days, and they're taking blood and they're taking fluid out of my spine now. But you know, a lot of the actors in these films have problems too, and they show up on set and they do their job and you end up with a good movie out of it. And... <sighs> Neat film. Well, we have a big happy birthday going out to uh, M. Night Shyamalan, who directed one of my favorite movie Signs. Uh, thank you, M. Shyamalan, for uh, the gift of filmmaking that you're a part of. And a happy birthday, M. Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan. And I would love to see you work with Bruce Willis. Mm. Much, which it's a little bit too much, which is why I asked you guys to give me an extra month. I can't keep coming in here each week, and you expect me to move heaven and earth to see all these movies. Half them jump. Two movies? I, I honestly haven't had. I can't, first of me, there's no movie theater where I from close to where I am now. Then you can get me screeners. Sense. Then you can f***ing get me screeners. Sorry. All right, let's go to popcorn. Uh, uh, no, uh, on cinema, on location. Go to cut to that. Whatever, whichever one we have. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few. On on cinema, on location. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On Cinema, On Location. We're here in front of Excelsior High School. Well, if you don't know anything about movies, you wouldn't know this, but Excelsior High School is actually the setting for Rydell High in Grease 2. Uh, Grease 2, the musical, and some of the songs were shot and filmed right here 
at Rydell Excelsior High School. Okay, thank you for that, Greg. Thanks for being a team player. Yep, and um, again, Percy Jackson, uh, five bags of popcorn? Yeah, five bags of popcorn. Uh, see you next week. Th thanks for, turn the lights on. I didn't, thanks for watching. Don't say, don't talk to the audience like that. Talk to me. If you're not talking to the audience, someone has to talk. I gotta go. I'm gonna get to the doctor. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. This is my show where we talk about movies and uh, review them. And uh, I, before we get into the reviews today, I want to apologize for my behavior last week. And it's just unacceptable for me to say I didn't see these movies. The truth is I did see them, uh, and, uh, and, and I, I was under a lot of stress and pressure with my health and uh, personal life, but uh, I can assure you that um, I've my, got some good news about my health, uh, that I'm in good shape, and uh, personal life's a different story, but um, I want to apologize to you, the audience, and also to my guest today, Greg Turkington. No apology necessary. It's just fun to be here and be part of the On Cinema family. Well, I put you. I feel like I put you in a weird spot last week, and uh, I apologize. I was glad I could cover because I had seen the movies and uh, liked them both quite a bit. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of which, your your project where you're doing your Guinness Book World Records is still mm -hmm. raging. I heard and, uh, it's looking pretty good. Looks like I'm going to be the newest uh, entry in the Guinness Book of World Records. Greg's competing to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for watching uh, 500 movies in 500 days. Well, I'm not competing against anyone. We sort of uh, looked in the book, and no one else had done this, so I thought it was something to try. We're 15 days in, and I've watched 19 movies, so I'm four ahead. I just have to get to 500 in 500 days, and then. Uh, Submit my form, and then I'm in the book. All right, well, part of history. Yeah, everybody, uh, show Greg his support. I'm showing you my support. Is there anything I could do? Let me know. Today's come, come to some of the movies with me. I'd like to because we actually had a. a I don't want to say it a date. We could call it what do they call it now, bromance, uh, where it was uh, Greg and I went and had dinner together. It was really nice, and we uh, saw a movie, uh, and um, I, I, I think that, uh, if you're not doing anything tonight, I'm gonna. Uh, I am doing something. I was going to go watch the Indiana Jones trilogy on the big screen. Take care of three movies. That'll really put me ahead. So you should come along. I don't want to see three movies uh, tonight. but um, Skip yeah. the first one. Come for the second two. And it um, could be fun. Yeah. What time's the movie at? First one's at 6.30. Karab is at 5.30? 4.45. Because they're kind of slow. Okay. Kick-Ass 2, starring Jim Carrey. Another great Jim Carrey performance. Chloe 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 Chloe, Chloe, Chloe Grace Mortre, Mortez, Alan Taylor, Alan Ta Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Christopher Mintz Plas. Made up names. The costumed high school hero Kick-Ass joins a small group of normal citizens who have been inspired to fight crime. The Red Mist plots as an act of revenge that will affect everyone Kick-Ass knows. I went to see this, and uh, at the end of the movie I stood up and uh, I said so thank you, Jim Carrey. Always thank you, Jim Carrey. Now, I gotta tell you something. I did not see the first Kick-Ass, so I walked into Kick-Ass Kick 2, lost and completely confused. I didn't know what was going on. Completely disoriented, and I still love the movie. I love the movie. I feel bad for Jim Carrey because I feel that an opportunity was lost. When you call a movie a controversial name like Kick-Ass, you're gonna lose half the audience segment right away. If they call it Kick It, and kick it too, people will be more likely to take their kids to it. Kick and I butt. think you do. Even that, you know, I think you want to have something that grandparents feel good about taking the kids to. And I think Kick Ass is a great movie, but a bad title. I so. just thought I'd a brainstorm idea if Jim Carrey's watching, if he could do a movie called Kiss Ass and he would be the teacher's pet. That could be funny. A brown noser type movie where he's the, perhaps he's the uh, star student, uh, but he would have to be an older student, so it'd be a back to school kind of scenario. And uh, I think that would be a lot of fun, and I'd love to see that movie. So if anybody's writing that movie, let me know. I'd love to be in it, too. That would be wild. All right, our next movie is Paranoid. Let's f***ing skip what, this movie. What, did you rate it? Um, I'm giving Kick-Ass 2 one bag of 
one soda and five bags of popcorn. So five bags of popcorn and one soda. Uh, a very disorienting film, but then I went back and watched Kick-Ass 1 and loved it. So I got caught up uh, with my the way I understand the movie. So how much do you give it? I'm going to give the movie five bags of popcorn, and I'm going to give the title zero bags of popcorn, because I think with a better title, you'd have more of an audience. All right, let's do a new segment, uh, not a new segment, an old segment called On Cinema uh, On Location. And we did one last week, and people loved it. So what do you got uh, for us this week? This one's even better. Uh, this week, let's just say I've gone to San Francisco to uh, settle an argument. Can you show the thing? Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, we're here at the site of San Francisco's famous Star Trek II filming location. If you've ever seen Star Trek II, you will see Spock and Captain Kirk standing right here in Star Trek II uh, in front of this backdrop. And we have come here to prove once and for all that the film Star Trek II was shot right here in San Francisco. Here's your photographic proof, Tim Heidecker. Are you joking? Are you kidding me? Well, that didn't prove anything. Um, yeah, it did. No, because we it had didn't the prove footage. anything, Greg. We you, had the footage and we had the still. Yes, you had footage from Star Trek IV, and you just said it was Star Trek II. It was Star Trek IV. No, I had I, footage. No, shut up for a second. I, I had footage something. from the street of shut San Francisco. I didn't have this footage from given Star to me Trek by IV one of you guys out there. The footage. Shut up! This was given to me by a fan out there. He sent it to me. Thank you very much. This is the novelization of Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, okay? This is a novel by Vonda Mc... This is, this will settle the, the deal. Listen to this. Uh, but their trip is interrupted by the appearance of a mysterious, all-powerful intruder. Suddenly, Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the crew must journey back through time to 20th century Earth, for the, only there can they save the future by rescuing the past. And they have San Francisco right on the it's book. It's not an official book. It is an official book. It's a story by Leonard Nimoy and Harv Bennett. So I mean, well, Leonard Nimoy's made a whole career of doing things that kind of relate to Star Trek. It doesn't mean it's the official story. This is the official novelization, a novel based on Paramount Pictures' supreme space adventure, Star Trek Exactly, IV. based on this adventure of the whole Star Trek series. It's the Trek general series. story. It's where they go it's, back to San Francisco. It's not that hard to explain. No, because it's... Have you seen The Hobbit? This is the building. Because this they're is the making building. three movies of The Hobbit, but it's only one book. This book compiles the first four Star Trek movies, the plots, and combines them into one book, just as The Hobbit book combines the three no, movies. It, no, I it says buy... Star Trek IV right here. Not all the Star Trek movies are in this book, because they would, then it would just be, say, Star Trek. All the movies. And I could, I could buy a book about the history of the Jefferson Airplane and it would mention San Francisco, but that doesn't mean that's the basis of the Star Trek movie. That's what this is, the voyage home. They go back to Earth and are in San Francisco. No, I that, can't do it anymore. I can't listen to this bullshit from book, you. That hey. book is a compilation of the first four Star Trek movies into one book. Chief Medical Officer Christine Ch uh, Chapel stood in the midst of the chaos of Starfleet's command major mission room. Huge curved windows presented by 180 degree views of, let me hear it, San Francisco Okay, what Bay. page is that? What page is that? 59. Okay, that proves my point. If it's that early in the book, it's because the second movie, when you take Star Trek, put them into one me? book. No, the Star Trek II, the San Francisco movie, is going to be pretty early in the book. It's no. going to be somewhere around page 59. This is Star Trek IV. It's all this book is. No, they're telling you that all four movies are in one book. Star Trek IV, the four original movies. It's an interesting book. It's not as full of detail as the four movies are. You can't compress four movies into a book and have it really um, cover as much ground. So I would say the book, I give right. two bags of popcorn. But right. Star Trek II, which is set in San Francisco, I give five bags of popcorn. It's a popcorn classic. All right. Well, listen, I uh, have enjoyed having you on as a guest. Well, it's been good to be here and to settle this argument once and for all. Okay. You're so, right. 
You're right. I know. Okay, and thank you very much for yeah. being a part no, of this. No, I'm glad that we settled the argument because thank a lot you. of people have been confused Let in renting the wrong Shut up. Shut Thank you for being a part of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I honestly do not think that it's a good match to have you on the show anymore. I think it's uh, uh, there's too much uh, conflict here, and I, I can't have all that this much conflict in my life right now. So I will need to make an adjustment with my guests, and uh, uh, I appreciate uh, everything you've done for the show, all the segments you've produced, and uh, I, I just don't think it's going to work out anymore. So uh, all the best, and... Um, Guys, we will uh, rejigger things here and figure out a new guest for next week. But uh, Greg Turkington's no longer part of the show. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. I'm really sorry. Kill boys. I'm very sorry, but I can't do this. Can't do it. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and uh, you're watching another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, it's a movie show where uh, I have different guests on every week and we talk about the movies coming out this weekend and give you, so hopefully, hopefully give you some advice about what movies to see and which ones to skip. Uh, we got some um, exciting movies this week. I got an exciting guest. This is what I consider a special guest. Not necessarily a uh, film critic, but his name is John Apria. And he's an actor. He was on our Oscar special. And I'm also joined by, welcome back, Ayaka. Hi. How are you, darling? Good. How are you? Great. Uh, Ayaka and I, sorry, John, let me just introduce her and then I'll introduce you. Oh, sure. Uh, Ayaka and I, uh, as you remember, was staying with our family uh, earlier in the year. And she has come back because she got a job. We're very proud of her. And uh, we're actually um, uh, officially going, seeing each other. We're going out and uh, it's been... Nice uh, to have that in my life. Can I, that's congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. It's been three weeks. You're a very lucky man. Yeah, she's yeah. adorable. She's very beautiful. I love her. I mean, I don't. We haven't said. I don't. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I love her very much. Okay. We can talk about that later. Okay. Hopefully, she didn't. Hopefully, she'd understand me. Uh, anyway, uh, John Apreya has been a movies. Uh, uh, many movies, and uh, honored to have him here. His expert uh, opinion on film is going to be valuable, and I hope we can work together some more. I hope, I hope we uh, ha you come back again. I want to do it every week. Okay, well, that will well, <laughs> be terrific. We'll see if your schedule permits. Uh, our movie today is uh, two movies, The World's End, uh, mm -hmm. directed by Edgar Wright, actors being Sam and Pegg, Martin Freeman, Rosamund Pike, Nick Frost, and the story is of five friends who reunite to their, to top their pub crawl from 20 years ago, unwittingly become humankind's only hope for survival. Uh, I love this movie. I thought it was very funny, very irreverent, a lot of fun. Ayaka and I saw it a couple nights ago, and uh, we just uh, laughed. And then there were scary parts. It had everything you wanted. It was a real roller coaster. Uh, five bags of popcorn from me. John? I agree. I, um, I would give it four. I liked it, though. I liked it. didn't like it as much as you did, I don't think. But I liked it a lot. It was it moved, uh, good young actors. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of different elements, uh, scary, funny. Mm -hmm. uh, good movie. Good, good movie. Good. Yeah. Ayaka, five? Yes. Yeah, five bags of popcorn from Ayaka. Right on the money. But uh, also, I mean, you'd recommend people go see it, John. Right? Absolutely. No, I, I wouldn't. I'm not saying that I took one bag of popcorn right. away, but four bags is good. Yeah, yeah. I, that's so. No, I think yeah. it's it's a, it's a movie you should see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. I, uh, but to me, a five is tough. You got to. It's hard to get a five. Well, this is a five bagger for me coming up. Not to no no not to spoil anything, okay. but The Colony, directed by Jeff Renfro. Casted by, with cast of Lauren Fishburne, Bill Paxton, and Kevin Zegers. Uh, okay. Forced underground by the next ice age, uh, a struggling uh, outpost of survivors must fight to prevent humanity against a threat more savage than nature. Uh, this was a great action adventure movie, and I love this movie um, so much. Yaka, what do you too. think? I love this movie. Uh, she's adorable. I know, she's cute. Um, I do too. I, 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 it's five plus. 
I, I love Fishburne anyway. I think he's one of America's greatest actors. Everybody's in it is good. And it's a good, good movie. That's yeah. definitely a, a must see. So you're giving it five bags? Absolutely. Well, there you go. You've got a lot of great choices this week. Probably um, Ayaka and I are probably just going to stay in this weekend because I just set up my apartment where she's going to help me go out there and get some stuff from Ikea. Ayaka, Ayaka at Ikea. Ikea. That's poetic. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we have fun. And oh, so uh, uh, Ayaka is going to be doing, from now on, is going to be doing our popcorn classics. So uh, you have a choice? Let's hit popcorn classics. Airheads. Airheads. Okay, let's. <laughs> John, show that one off. Classic. It's a fun rock and roll movie, mm -hmm. and you don't have to think anything. Mm -hmm. You just watch. <laughs> you just sit back and enjoy Airheads with uh, who's in that again? Uh, Brendan Fraser. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this one, John? I think this was fun and kind of it's irreverent. It's a fun movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, but mm -hmm. it's definitely. Uh, Worth a look. Yeah, this has got one of her early Adams. You, know, you wouldn't call this an Adam Sandler movie, but it is Adam Sandler in it. Yeah. With Steve Buscemi and Brendan Fraser, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. And uh, Fraser and Buscemi are deadpan delights. Sandler's red hot. You know, <laughs> and that's what, what more do you need it to know? It kind of says it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, this is, I got to admit, this has been a lot of fun doing this episode with you guys. Um, first of all, having an expert on set, how cool is that? Well, I, thank you. I appreciate that. And Ayaka is so smart and pretty and full of life. That is true. And uh, yeah. there are some directors who would not think of me as an expert. So really? that's, that's another story. Okay. F favorite director? Francis Ford Coppola. All right, guys. I just you. met him again for his new movie, uh, which is a ways away, but I hope I'm in it. Okay. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. This has been a lot of... This has been a lot of fun. It's, a, it's just, I had such a tough year, and now I feel finally I'm coming out for air. Good. So thanks for watching. This Thank has you. been great. Thank you. Thank you. It's my yeah. pleasure. It's fun. It's fun. You. Killed you. You, you just light up the screen. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get something to drink. Oh, sure. Yeah. You want to sure. hit Carabas? Yes. Hi. Hey everybody, it's Tim Heidecker here, back for another episode of On Cinema, At The Cinema. And it's the web series where we talk about movies and uh, review movies and uh, having a really fun time doing it too. And I'm glad you guys enjoy it. My guest is Ayaka. Great to see you again. You too. And uh, Ayaka and I are doing very good. We just um, did this um, Tough Mudda, it's called. It's a competition where you go and try and compete and it's a very athletic thing. She's getting me into athletics now. Anyway, uh, and my, my other guest is Greg Turkington. Greg's back on the show. Hey guys. And uh, Greg, great to have you back. And uh, I love having the two guests. It really creates more of a round table kind of show and uh, people are loving it. So uh, glad you could be back. And let's just say that Greg and I had a little disagreement a couple weeks ago. We worked that out. I'm happy to say thanks to Ayaka, the peacemaker. Uh, I appreciate the, you know, you caring about that. Relationships are not just about, uh, you know, who's right and who's wrong. And mm -hmm. So. <laughs> All right, um, but Greg, um, great to have you back. Uh, Want to talk about the movie this week, The Getaway, with Ethan Hawke, Selena Gomez, and John Voight. Brett Magna is the name of the main character, must get behind the wheel and follow the orders of a mysterious man to save his kidnapped wife. This is a great movie. We saw it uh, two nights ago, and it was really fun. It was, it was, we kind of Exciting. snuggled in and got, mm -hmm. uh, we had the popcorn, and it was like a very romantic. Throwing popcorn. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah. Got in a little bit of trouble with the usher. <laughs> Trust me. Um, whew. And uh, it was a getaway movie, almost like uh, Richard, what's his name, John, not John Voight, which is the, uh, Steve McQueen. Uh, and it was a getaway car chase movie, uh, it ch thrilled and chilled. And What about uh, Greg? I give it five bags of popcorn. Yes, five, five bags. bags of popcorn. Tim yeah. and Ayaka give it five bags of popcorn. Isn't that simple? We're always 
thinking thinking alike. Well, I disagree with both of you. This was not it's not a great movie. It's uh, you know two bags of popcorn, I guess. It's not not the Steve McQueen getaway. Got it. Okay, well we disagree on that. No big deal. I think it was a great movie though. Um, and it the really other movie. Wasn't. Okay, the other movie we uh, saw the matinee of this uh, the other day is One Direction. This is us, and this is a documentary about one of your favorite groups, yes. One Direction. I loved it. Yeah, they were, yes. and it is for kids, but you know what? I feel like a kid at heart. So this is directed by the great Morgan Spurlock, starring Harry Styles, Nilan Horan, Louise Tomlinson, Zayek. Who's it? How do you say? It? I never know how to say it. Z Zane. Zane. Zane Malik, Malik. and Liam, Judy, Liam Payne. Payne. <laughs> It's an all-access pass to the British pop sensation One Direction in concert. I we had such fun at this movie too because I didn't even know their music, but she turned me on to. I tell you this, Greg, she turned me on to them, and now she's got me addicted to some of their music. So by the time we went to go see it, I knew all the songs, and we were having a lot of fun singing along. And uh, we took uh, my niece, who's uh, 11, and she loves One Direction, and we had so mm -hmm. much fun watching this movie. Uh, it was very, kind of a bubblegum, funny. Uh, those guys seem like good kids, and the music is cool. And mm -hmm. I cute. loved it. Yeah, they're cute. They're, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that she's saying that, but well, uh, you're I'm, cuter. Ah, uh, well, I'm not the jealous guy, but <laughs> believe me. Okay, give me a minute. Uh, this was a great movie. I loved seeing it in 3D. Five bags of popcorn. Greg? Sorry, Ayaka? Six bags. Six I thought you bags shared the popcorn. ratings. I thought you guys were sharing your ratings. No, we each have our own ratings. Would they match up because we're very sim simpicatico. Simpiatico. Sim simpicato. We have similar opinions. That's what makes us so happy together. Anyway, One Direction. This is us. Five bags of popcorn. Six bags for her. And two bags of soda for me. Two cups of soda. Two, uh, Bottles of soda for me. Large. Well, I mean, this isn't even a movie. It's just a concert by some, you know, kitty band. I mean, it shouldn't shouldn't be reviewed on this show. You should review it if you had a show called On Terrible Music. That oh, would be a no, good place that's to not fair. This. It's a new release, so we're doing all new releases. This well, it's not really a movie. Release. It's just some jerks playing awful music, and <clears> it's <throat> not something I would watch. Um, this is supposed to be about cinema. This has never been a show for concert movies. Uh, All right, I, what's your review? I give it zero bags of popcorn. And All right, well. I would say if, if you've ever seen the old Disney movie, The Black Hole, that's what this movie is in terms of bags of popcorn. It's a black hole that sucked all the popcorn out of the world into the center of the earth into a great void because there's nothing to this movie and it's not a movie. Zero bags of popcorn, you guys are wrong. Well, well. Sad. Yeah, that's a little negative. Well, it's not a good movie. It's a documentary. I mean, there's plenty As like, critics, like, we're supposed to give informed opinions about films, not just parrot uh, what our girlfriends say. And maybe you should have a show right. called well, obviously On, you got on some Teen other issues going Idol. On. You, got other, you, got, you, you got other issues going on. You should check them out. You should go talk to somebody. I never noticed you listening to One Direction before. So while you well, give that five bags of popcorn, I have no idea. Welcome to the new me, baby. Well, I don't like it. Uh, okay. Well, who cares what you think? Honestly. I don't know why I brought you back. I, I was doing, doing you a favor. Doing the show a favor by having somebody that knows something about movies. I'm it? trying to be nice to you here. Nobody here likes you. Okay? Nobody. None of the crew. All right. Um, we have a popcorn classic. Sure. My popcorn classic this week, and this is a popular part of the show generally, uh, was going to be The Family Man with Nicolas Cage, Oscar winner Nicolas Cage, and Tia Leone, who hasn't yet won an Oscar, but there's still time. I love, and, um, yeah, I love Nicolas Cage too. He's great, yeah. yeah. Um, I watched the popcorn classics last week where Ayaka hijacked a segment that I created and did Airheads. And when I got here earlier, her purse was in the, in the other room, in the green room, and it was open, and I went through it, and I noticed the copy of Airheads from last week, which when I watched the episode, yeah. I was pretty fascinated to see this tape because I recognized it immediately. Yeah, I love that. As my copy of Airheads, I could see the red right away. This is why I set up this system, to prevent thieves. 
You could still see part of the coding on this thing, which is hmm. all you need to indict and convict. Here is the evidence. This tape has been vandalized. I have no idea. Where did, I mean, where did you get this? Because I've never had you in my home, and I, my doors have been locked. And as soon as I saw the episode, I went to the shelf where this was kept, because I have a printout with all these things, and saw that there was a space where Airheads normally is. And this is why I had this system that you laughed at, this security system, is because of situations like this. And this is why the system works. And I can still see exactly what film this is, because some of the number is still left here. You didn't even peel it off very carefully. I'm not sure. I have no idea I, how that could happen. Where did you get this? I found it in a box in your room. Uh, I don't, I never, I've never, you know, I never... Does he have other tapes where there's a strip missing from the bottom of the box like this? I don't remember. Well, I have never seen that tape except for last week when Ayaka brought it out. I don't know where the f*** she got it from. I'm sorry to curse, but I don't know where she got it from. Well, she says she got and it from you. She didn't get it from me. That's all this I know. This tape hasn't been in my collection for several months, and if you're going to borrow tapes, you know you're supposed to return them within a week. And certainly return them in Listen, collection. Listen, Greg, you bring in tapes all the time them. to the studio for different popcorn classics. Maybe that one got left I in. I love this movie, but this is not a popcorn classic. It's a different type of It thing. is a popcorn classic. Well, it's a great That's movie. Ayaka it's chose a great it for movie, one. but it's not a popcorn okay. classic. But it's well, certainly not a classic now that the tape has been ruined, I, and I have to find another copy of time this. I'm and seeing it's a betrayal that, that you betray me already by giving my segment to someone else who then is stealing my property and marring it. First time I saw Airheads, was I actually saw it many years ago in the theater, but the first time I saw that tape of it was last week when Ayaka brought the tape onto the show and showed it. That's, I swear so to God. So you're saying Ayaka ripped the tape off of it. You didn't. I don't know where Ayaka got the tape who from. Took, who it's ripped not, the tape off? It didn't off. come from my house. But who ripped the red tape off of this? Was it you or was it Ayaka? I told you it what I know. Like that. So you're saying Tim did it? Yes. I you didn't get it from my house. I didn't. It was. It could not have come from my house. Could not have come from my house. Well, so what? she's lying. I'm not lying. She's lying about this, and uh, I apologize to you, because I don't know how that happened. But you have to come out and tell the truth. If whether you found it around here in the studio or you got into his house and took it, I don't know what you did. But uh, you're, you're making me. You're putting me on the spot here, and I want to say that it's, I don't appreciate it, and I, you're being disrespectful to the show, and we have big problems. All right. Um, we'll figure this out, Greg. Well, you can get start figuring it out by getting another copy of the video and getting me some red tape to repair the coding on it. I didn't take that tape off either, and uh, she has a lot of explaining to do. All right. I'm not exa I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to do here. So join us next week. We'll get this figured out. Kill the light. I want, to, I want to ask you, and you tell me honestly, where the f did you get that Airheads from? In your room. You didn't get it from my room. I don't carry that shit. I have DVDs. That's what the number of them. Let's get this all in. Don't throw the tapes. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a show where we talk about movies and um, review movies. Uh, apologies again for last week. Um, uh, I'll get into it with you. Uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, uh, glad to be here to enlighten you all again about the newest movies. And uh, sorry to say that Ayaka has uh, returned to her mm -hmm. homeland of... Uh, Japan because of a visa issue and uh, very very sad to see her go and um, I you know upon further reflection I think she's a sweet girl and we we really did have a lot of fun together and uh, I think the age difference and the cultural difference was just too vast I uh, I just could there were a lot of times I couldn't understand what she was saying and I don't th I think she was so young and so immature about a lot of things and. Uh, we're coming out of a divorce, um, and all the and everything I've been through the past year, was not uh, was not she wasn't the right fit for me, and uh, I had her parents. I mean, the whole thing with people from Japan calling me and trying to get her home. Not really an expert in movies either. I mean, everyone loves movies, and people go to movies for fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, I wouldn't call her an expert. Definitely not.
And if I find out, when I find out who did that to your airheads, somebody here in this crew, it'll be hell to pay. Well, I think I know who did it, but I got another copy of the movie. That's the good news, and um, it was easy. It well, was because $4. this is my show, I'm covering it. I'm going to pay you for that. It was only four dollars. It's fine. I'll give you four. I'll give you five dollars. Um, the, there wasn't any tax because I got it on the internet. Okay. Well, I'm saying I'm not going to give you four ones. I'll give you a five, and you can keep it for your trouble. I apologize. I'm sick of doing that. But I mean it. No, I accept the apology. And one thing I agree with Ayaka on, maybe the only thing, is that Airheads is a good movie. So that was a good choice. It's just too bad that she had to steal it. Okay. Listen, nobody knows who stole it, if anybody even did steal it and do it. Well, a... two people know, but. Let's let the police figure that out. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyways, we're not here to talk about that. It's old news. We're here to talk about our, this is our season finale. We're here to talk about movies. And this week, we got a big one coming out called Rid Riddick. Mm -hmm. Directed by David Twohy, T-W-O-H-Y. What the hell? How do you pronounce that? Twohy. Twee. 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 David Twee. David. I killed Tweety Bird from the uh, Warner Brothers cartoons. Mm -hmm. Looney Tunes. Uh, this, Looney Tunes. This, uh, okay. Actor Vin Diesel, we know who he is. And Carl Urban's Katie Skakoff, David Babusta, ba Barista, or Bahusta. Bayusta, Bastidita, Bahast, David ba Bayust, Katie Sackoff, and Vin Diesel. Uh, left for dead, Riddick finds himself up against an alien race of predators. Activating an emergency beacon alert, two ships, one carrying a new breed of mercenary, the other captained by a man from Riddick's past. So this is another great Riddick movie. I love this movie. I love Riddick. I think it's one of those great franchises that you have like Indiana Jones and Jack Reacher and Hobbit, and Jaws, Jaws, Star Wars, um, Star, Star Trek, Trek um, James Bond. And uh, Fast and Furious. Fast and, and Furious. Uh, the Smurfs. Twilight. The Twilight movies are very popular. Uh, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter is another big series that really, uh, without it, a lot of the smaller movies like Riddick wouldn't be able to get made. Yeah, interesting. I, I agree. I think uh, Riddick reminds me of that old story of the little engine that could. It's that movie that everybody believed in enough to happen. And uh, I love action. I love sci-fi. And when you combine those two with Vin Diesel and uh, Carl Urban, then boy, you got a hit. Yeah, I agree. I've seen all the Vin Diesel, well, I've seen a lot of movies, but I've seen all the Vin Diesel movies. I'd rank this among his top three, and that's really saying something because he's made uh, dozens of movies. I'd give it four bags of popcorn and one ga a gallon of soda. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, but instead of the soda, I'd make that a fifth bag of popcorn, and I'd throw in an iron fist because mm. this movie is exciting. Wow. All right, well, listen, that is pretty much it for us this season. Um, we're going to do a second movie. Go check. No, there's no other movies this weekend. Go check out our app uh, on the uh, App Store if you're, you want to look for the, an app. It's under On Cinema, uh, and uh, it's a great app. It's the 2013 On Cinema Film Guide, and that includes basically every movie there ever was, and with reviews from us and a lot of great options. You could check that out on the web. Uh, it's uh, just type in On Cinema app. It's fun because you're getting. Uh, hundreds of years worth of movie viewing combined into one little 99 cent app. So yeah. it's, it's a bargain. And pick up the mug so you can sit at home, watch the pod, listen to the podcast, watch the uh, at the cinema broadcast, listen to the, uh, use the app and drink a, a hot cup of coffee. Um, thanks for all your support. And Greg, good luck with the 500 movies in 500 days. Yeah, I um, wanted to do a brief update for the viewers because a lot of people are asking me about this. Um, I am working to get in the Guinness Book of World Records, we as, know, we, as you you're know. You're going to be in the 500, uh, 500 movies. 500 movies in 500 days. Um, we are 35 days in, and I am ahead of schedule. Uh, I'm at 51 movies. Okay. So I'm 16 movies ahead of schedule, which means I could take a break if I wanted to. I don't want to. I'm going to keep watching them. I want to make sure I break this record. Um, I'll show you right now the last three days. I watched uh, City by the Sea, which is kind of a modern classic. Well, anything Four, with De Niro in it, huh? Well, it's, it's one of his best. Um, I bet you out of the 500 movies I watch, I bet 50 of them star Robert De Niro, because he's made that many, and they're just that good. 
Another one that I watched, Sandra Bullock and Ben Affleck in Forces of Nature, which I hadn't heard of before. And uh, chick flick, huh? It's, it's interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's interesting. IQ with Meg Ryan, Tim Robbins, and the great Walter Matthau, the original odd couple, is back in IQ. And of course, you could see uh, Walter Matthau is playing Albert Einstein. So this is a thinking man's film and I enjoyed it. These are the type of films that I'm trying to get more of in order to reach my goal of 500 movies in 500 days. And so it does take money to, uh, to do something like this to make that dream happen, to help pay for the movies, to help pay for the popcorn, the parking, and uh, for getting the word out. So we've put together a, sort of a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, cool. Kind of a fund. If you want to be part of history, help me make history and uh, make yourself part of history in the process, you can donate to my fund. Okay. And uh, so I think we're we going to get there. You, your it? name won't be, I want to clarify one thing. Your name won't be in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, they can only put the actual award winner in the book. But I will send you a certificate of thanks and some other goodies. The actual 500 movies, we will be saving them, signing them, and sending them with a copy of the page from the Guinness Book, photocopied and framed for you. So that's one of the perks that we have. Um, it okay, was, so it's a good to, cause to contribute to. Yeah, it sounds like it. So you go to kickstarter.com and type in 500 movies in 500 days? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the exact address is. It's on the bottom of the screen right now. Okay. And it would really mean a lot to me. If you've ever gotten something out of this show, uh, pay it forward and right. uh, help out with this campaign. Okay, well, go check it out. I'd love to support that. And uh, thanks again for uh, everything you've done and, uh, and for your friendship. And, uh, and congratulations on everything with this uh, contest you're involved with. It's very cool. Well, it's not a contest. It's a world record. All right. Uh, anyway, it is neat that you're doing that. I'm, gl I'm glad to be a part of it. And so I'm going to go to the Kickstarter and donate some money to that tonight. Mm -hmm. Or if you have any movies, you can just send the movies and I'll watch those. I prefer the cash because it's just less wasteful. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Yeah, well, it's not very good. It says on the front, outrageously funny, but it's not. It doesn't look that good. I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Quiet on set! Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode and a new season of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Tim Heidecker, I'm the host of the show, is my program where we would talk about and review movies and also have other segments based on, around movies. Um, and my host is, or my, I'm sorry, my guest is, a Freudian slip of the tongue, Greg Turkington. Greg Turkington. Hey guys, and that was funny uh, to refer to me as the host. That's something that I aspire to. Well, it was an accident. It's great to be back on the show. It's great to see you again. It's been a uh, few weeks, and um, you know, it's been about a week. Yeah, it's like 12 days. Mm. You'll never guess how many movies I've watched during those 12 days. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, I want to thank everybody for their uh, asking. A lot of people have been asking about my health, and I'm pl pleased to say that my, I'm feeling great. Feeling, you know, the doctors have cleared me of all the clots. They said there's not a chance of them coming back, and um, I've uh, had this sort of tingling numbness in my hands uh, and my feet, especially my right foot, has just been like. You ever get that where you kind of need to shake out the leg restlessly? You should get checked for, uh, tested for diabetes. That sounds like some of the early symptoms. I don't think it's diabetes. It's for old people. Um, uh, but anyhow, aside from that, I'm sure it's something, probably something uh, in my diet. Um, let's go into these movies real quick because uh, I do have an appointment I got to run to. Uh, Lone Survivor, starring uh, or directed by Peter Berg, with the cast of one of my favorites, Mark Wahlberg. Speaking of Bergs. Um, ben Foster and Eric Banana. Banna. 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 Um, Batman. Or is he Batman? There's no Eric Banana. Play Batman or Spoot. Uh, He's Hulk. been in a lot of things. He's the Hulk. Uh, Incredible Hulk was one of his main All right, movies. so now this movie, based on the failed mission, Operation Red Wings, uh, when four members of SEAL Team 10 were tasked to capture or kill a Taliban leader. Marcus Luttrell was the only member of his team to survive. This gives the f***ing ending away. Sorry about that. We gotta kinda kill the spoilers from these uh, cards. 
Uh, this was a terrific movie, another great Mark Wahlberg movie. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of... Um, Lawrence of Arabia, did you see that? It's a great action movie. It answers a lot of questions that I think uh, we we're all wonder wondering about. Lone survivor. Well, guess what? There's one survivor, and it's not Bin Laden. I give it five bags of popcorn <coughs> and uh, two cups of soda. Definitely don't miss this movie this summer, this, uh, today, this week. Yeah, I really liked it, too. It's sort of an unofficial sequel to Zero Dark Thirty in that you kind of have the Navy SEALs and these bad guys, and they come in and save the day. I would have liked to have seen uh, Bin Laden as a character in this. I thought he was very interesting uh, as a movie villain in Zero Dark Thirty. Uh, but he wasn't in it, and it was still a good movie. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and one uh, turban. And God bless the troops. Let's not forget that. This, some, of this, some of these movies tend to disperse, mis, uh, besmirch troops. Well, the Navy SEALs is kind of different than, than your standard troops. They're specialists at what they do, uh, much as I'm sort of a specialist at uh, bringing expertise to this show, and I'm happy to be here. All right. The next film uh, coming out this week is called Her. Uh, not Ben-Hur, Her, just Her. Directed by Spike Jones and uh, starring Jacqueline Felix, Phoenix. Uh, Amy Adams and Scarlett Johansson, and uh, this is a d lonely writer develops an unlikely friendship relationship with his newly purchased operating system that's designed to meet his every need. So it's like a might have got what Max Hedrum kind of movie, yeah. Uh, but it's TV computers or, not about computer. Yes, yeah, like mm -hmm. a computer movie. So much of what people do nowadays is on computers. Yeah, interesting. Yes. Well, this movie was directed by Spike, somebody named Spike Jones. If you ever saw uh, the Al Pacino classic Simone, which was short for Simulated One, it's kind of an unofficial remake of that. And uh, there's a new classic on the block, and it's her. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, maybe a little red ribbon for her hair, mm -hmm. her hair, uh, to sort of humanize her because... Uh, one thing, if you've ever seen Star Trek, you know that uh, robots and computers like to be taken seriously as people. Well, I loved her. Um, I'm not talking about my ex-wife or Ayaka, um, who I did love, but um, I'm talking about the movie Her by, by Joaquin Phoenix. I give it five bags of popcorn and one soda. All right. Well, Greg, um, I, this is a great opportunity for us to check in with you about your big 500 movies in 500 days. Yes, yes. Uh, you give uh, us an update on that. I know you put a segment together. I Let's put a little segment, segment together. And people are really excited. Oh. 500 movies in 500 days. <laughs> it's never been done. That's about to change. Here's a behind-the-scenes look of a world record in the making. Only the best movies must be selected to be a part of this record. When I'm not busy actually watching the movies, I scour the world to find them. Sometimes a great movie can be found in an unlikely place. I can't wait to carve out my place in history. Will you support me? All right, well, very interesting. Yeah, it's nice. People want behind the scenes information on how I'm doing this, how I'm actually breaking this record and what goes into it. There's a lot of people involved. We had a very successful Kickstarter campaign to raise money. Uh, and a lot of you out there contributed to that. We appreciate it. Um, people are wondering, are you going to be able to do this? Yeah. Uh, how are you doing? Are you holding up? Right. And I've made it a priority. Um, we're now actually four movies ahead of pace okay. to All break All right. This well, record, thank you so Garrett, very much. And go check out Lone happen. Survivor and Her, all in the movie theaters this weekend. And thanks for watching. Thanks. And uh, keep supporting what I'm doing. Thanks for watching. time you're going to hijack the show like that because I will put a stop to it. It's distracting. It should be about the movies. Well, it should, sure shouldn't be about your feet. Ah, God. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and uh, I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema, which is the program you're watching right now. It's on the internet and uh, it's a movie show where we talk about movies and review upcoming re new m movie releases. Uh, and uh, my guest is Greg Turkington. Greg, thanks for coming on the show again. Hey guys, yeah, it's nice to be on the show. Um, we had a little bit of a break before this season, and uh, of course I was busy uh, setting a world's record. Mm. But uh, to get back here and do what I started doing, 
uh, sort of uh, reviewing movies. That's kind of my first love, so I'm glad to be back. Well, I am uh, almost here uh, against, uh, uh, um, I'd rather not be here, in other words, because I'm in, uh, my foot is in a lot of pain. And uh, I'll just show you, these, by the way, again, these boots have been a lot of fun to just go around, but I've got the weirdest thing going on. I was telling you guys about the tingling. And this, just the past week, foot has gotten so swollen that you can see here, I don't want to gross everybody out, but wow. look at that. That's bad. The whole foot's sort of numb, and I've just been putting Neosporin on it and stuff, but it's, it's ah, geez, it's like very tender. So, no disrespect to my boots. But uh, I'm gonna just let this breathe a little bit while we talk. My nephew turned me on to this, uh, what they call an acupuncturist, who uses a Chinese needle um, as sort of a alternative medicine. Um, and I'm gonna be seeing him tomorrow, and he's gonna be doing a whole evaluation of my body, probably helping me with my weight loss and with uh, all the tingling and numbness. And hopefully, that's sort of the magic cure, and I'll just not worry about uh, my health anymore. And it's called acupuncturist, and that will be who I see tomorrow. But um, anyway, I'm gonna power through. Um, all right, our movie today is The Nut Job, starring, uh, we're directed by Peter Lepinit. Peter, L-E-P-E-N-I-O-T-I-S. Peter Lepinipinus. And cast of Will Arnett, one of my favorites, Katherine Heigl, and Brendan Fraser. Uh, Surly, a grumpy, independent squirrel, is banished from the park and forced to live in the city. It's here where he finds the one thing that could save his friends' lives as they gear up for winter, Mari's Nut Store. Uh, this is a great movie. It's great seeing Brendan Fraser back in, in, in a movie again. I've always loved him, and I love looking at Katherine Heigl. I love, she's a, one, just the kind of woman I like. Uh, in terms of beauty and uh, sex appeal. She is hot. She's a 10. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's a great animated uh, picture. Um, huh? um, if you've seen the movie, uh, you would know that it's uh, an animated film about a squirrel. Wow. So and, thanks uh, to Peter Lepinetis for making this movie, and I didn't realize it was an animated movie. You know, yeah, this, so the technology is pretty getting... Clear I know, about but I'm one saying the second in. Sometimes you have to admit, though, the technology now is so good that some of, the, some of these animated movies look like real life. Some of them do, but when a, when a squirrel starts talking, you generally know it's an animated picture. Right. Now I realize, yes, okay, that makes sense, yes. Or if you looked at the movie poster on your way into the theater, you'd probably have a clue as well. Right. Well, it almost reminded me of the old Roger Rabbit movie where it mixed that sort of real world with the animated world. Yeah. I mean, and did it, was it animated or was it not? I don't know. In, in any event, when I hear the voice of Catherine Hagel and uh, Brendan Fraser, it do reminds me of who they are. So maybe I was even just daydreaming a little bit during the movie, imagining those two together romantically would be interesting. Something for a memo to Hollywood. You want to put them two in bed together. Uh, easy on the eyes. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is, I think I've got to go to the emergency room, because um, I don't want to get gangrene. No, I don't think you will. I think what you have is diabetes. It's not diabetes. And it stinks down there, too. It smells like. Yeah, it does. It's not normal it's foot odor. It's sort of a... Yeah, maybe you should give the movie uh, five bags of popcorn and five bags of smelling salt mm. so that we can block out the smell. All right. Well, let's move along to our next movie, which ironically is called Ride Along, um, directed by Tim Story. I like that, Tim Story. Almost as if they made a, uh, bio, uh, a documentary or more uh, normal biographical picture about myself, you'd call it Tim's story. Well, I think you'd call it the nut job. You'd watch yourself. You're a guest on my show. Show respect for being here. Show respect for that seat. I got a line 10 people deep that want to sit in that chair and want to talk about it. No, they probably don't want to sit in it now. They do. You watch your mouth. I am who I am. Uh, cast is uh, Ice Cube, whatever that is. Ten, Kevin Hart, Nick, Tika and Sumter, 
And John, Leg, uh, what is that, Leguizamo? Leguizamo. And this is about a fast-talking security guard joins his cop brother-in-law, James, on a 24-hour patrol of Atlanta in order to prove himself worth of marrying just worthy of marrying James's sister. This is almost like a um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, let's see how much we can cram into a movie in terms of 24 hours. Um, there's a lot of action in it, and mm -hmm. uh, if you're an action fan, you'll like this. But uh, there's more to it than that. Um, I think it's interesting that you would cast Ice Cube in a movie that's this hot, because uh, <laughs> you'd have to worry about him melting on the set. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fun movie. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, a tray of ice. Well, I like this movie a lot. Um, I, in fact, uh, went to see it again separately on my own as a, as a gift to myself because I was in a lot of pain. And I remember that the film itself let me forget a little bit about the pain happening in my leg. So I want to thank Tim Story and if he has any ideas for me to be a part of his whole, this movie, or not this movie, but other movies, let me know. And we need to be in a movie directed by Tim Story, starring Tim Heidecker, directed by Tim Story. Just fun. It reminds me of the Toy Story. No, it doesn't matter what it reminds you. No, I use this as my show. If I want to talk about whatever I want to talk about, I'm going to do it. Five Bags of Popcorn from me, starring Tim Story. All right, now finally on our segment, we're going to talk about the segment of Greg Turkington's called Popcorn Classics. Popcorn Classics. Get through it. Go, go. Hey guys, today's popcorn classic hey, is, uh, well, Forget Paris with <laughs> Billy Crystal and Deborah Winger. If you loved when Harry back. met Sally, you're going to love Forget Paris. And <sighs> it's kind of funny that it's called Forget Paris because this is a movie I will never forget. And I recommend you see it. It's a popcorn classic. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Cut. Um. I need him out of the building now, because he just called me a nut job. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker. I'm the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. It's a show here what, that we're doing now where we talk about movies and uh, give you reviews and tell you what's coming out uh, next week, or this week. Um, I'm joined by my guest, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here for another uh, great episode of mm -hmm. On Cinema. And uh, also an acknowledge, I'm here with my acupuncturist, uh, Dr. San, who's agreed to join me here. I'm, I guess I, I should say he uh, needs to be here. He's been monitoring me for the past 24 hours, and um, I guess uh, I just started with what is acupuncture yesterday. And um, you can see I've got some evidence here in my face. Uh, of the uh, where they put the needles and Dr. Sand, thanks for helping me out. Hopefully, sure. you could maybe tell quickly since we want to get to the movies, but quickly go through what you've been working on with me and how my condition rates in terms of what, how my how, how am I doing and everything. Well, uh, you have a little bit of um, when I feel your pulse and I mm -hmm. check your tongue, your liver is a little bit overactive, mm -hmm. so you have a little bit of liver fire, and mm -hmm. so I'm kind of trying to smooth the liver, okay, so it doesn't mess up your digestion and so you don't so in other words the whole thing is very holistic completely right yeah so he's going to be here for the show and probably for ne next few shows and uh hopefully you can get something out of what we do as much as we can get something out of your expertise knowledge on terms of acupuncture and uh our movie today's are um i frankenstein which is a 3d movie directed by stuart beetle beetle beady and casting cast of uh, Eric Aaron ugh, Eckhart, Bill Nighy, and Miranda Otto. Uh, and this movie is about Frankenstein's creature finds himself caught in an all-out centuries-old war between two immortal clans. This is Frankenstein, uh, like you've never seen him before. It's a must-see. It's a five-bagger for me. A five, a movie bag. Yeah, no, it's a great movie. Pop. It's excuse me. <clears throat> five bags of pop. Uh, yeah, Frankenstein, uh, well, it's one of the great series up there with Star Wars and Star Trek and the Bond pictures and that sort of thing. I'm a big Frankenstein fan, a Frankenhead, Frankenfreak. I've seen all the Frankenstein movies. I would rank this up there with the best of them. It's nice to see Frankenstein in color, and that's one thing I really liked about this. So many of the old Frankenstein movies are just that, old movies. And they've really turned a corner here with this one. Uh, it's in color and it's in 3D. 
So if you've ever been scared at Frankenstein coming at you, uh, now you're going to be twice as scared. It's a great movie. Uh, I would give it five bags of popcorn and a couple of those bolts that Frankenstein has in his head. I enjoy that. Um, and um, talked about a little bit about the use of medicine now and, and the way medicine is sort of being mismanaged in people's lives and the irresponsibility that goes through in Western medicine. Well, so quickly doctors prescribe mm. heavy meds, mm -hmm. you know, just to balance out emotions and they're probably killing the artists of the future. Really? Yeah, because you're just kind of going through life in its gray tone. Yeah. You're not going to make that movie that you might have made. Right. Well, I the show is on cinema, not on alternative medicine. Mm. We already had Dr. Frankenstein in the Frankenstein movie. Do we really need another Dr. Frankenstein sitting aside you, uh, ruining our show? Okay. Someone's, no, someone needs here for the stress, right? Yeah. Yes. Some of that anger. But health comes first, even more important than movies. Gimme Shelter, directed by Ron Krauss, Vanessa Hudgens, Rosario Dawson, Brendan Fraser. Um, a teenager sets out to find her Wall Street father and is forced onto the streets in a desperate journey. <sighs> Foot is still like a lot of shooting pain now. It's um, normal. It's normal. Uh, based on a true story. Um, I love this movie. I thought this was really interesting how they uh, were able to tell such a complicated story. I thought it was very confusing at many points. And the acting wasn't as good as I'd, I usually like, but I do love Brendan Fraser. And it was uh, good to see him back on the silver screen. Thank you, uh, Cinema, for bringing us Brendan Fraser back from the grave. Funny, uh, two funny scenes, but then the rest of it was a drama. Well, four I mean, bags of popcorn for me. <clears throat> that was a really interesting movie. I don't know if you want me to talk about the movie, or maybe I should talk about uh, medicinal leeches or some other... Uh, quackery that does have nothing to do with uh, the movie at hand. But if somehow you accidentally stumbled upon this sh uh, show because you're interested in finding out about movies, uh, maybe turn the channel, find something else, because that's not what we do on this show anymore. Five bags of popcorn. Well, um, it's my show and I can take it in any direction I want. Right now, I'm interested in my acupuncture, which is a very interesting subject. I think people are going to really clang on to that. And, but I don't want it to just be about that. I talk about, we talk about movies and reviews, but why not expand and talk about whatever we, whatever's going on in the world right now? He has to be here anyways. Why not include him? Why not? It would be awkward for me not to. He can't be away from him for five minutes so we can talk about these movies? Not for 72 hours. He says he needs to be very close so he can monitor my well, I've never pulse. heard of anything like that before in my life. I mean, you've got... Uh, Siskel and Ebert, those guys both had severe medical conditions, and uh, I never saw any doctors by their sides. They reviewed the movies, they kept their personal life well, personal. Case in personal, point, case in point, that's case in you, point, case in point. If they'd had, maybe they'd be alive today. That show was on for 30 years. I don't think this one will be. All right, well, I don't care what you think about this, all right? If you don't want to come on the show, don't come on the show. Dr. Sand's going to be with us. He's now part of the show. He's a permanent member of the team on Cinema Family. And... By the way, don't discount alternative medicine because it's you have a lot. Uh, you get a lot more out of it than just regular typical medicine, which is now a part of Obamacare. And I don't have to even pay insurance with this because I have to pay for it on my own. Because health care is a privilege; it's not a right. And anybody that thinks differently doesn't know what they're talking about. Thanks for watching. You understand that? This guy is gonna get me better. And if you don't understand that, or I don't want you to. You didn't even me. let me give my popcorn rating to no, do uh, your, give me turn shelter. the lights back on so quickly five bags of popcorn for give me shelter and uh two certificates uh from the american medical association debunking dr sam alternative medicine being healthy on my terms forget obamacare you can use acupuncture natural green medicine using herbs dr sam is with us let's talk alternatives Feel that. <clears throat> Hi everybody, welcome to a epi new episode of On Alternative Medicine on Cinema, uh, starring myself, Tim Heidecker, as the host. I'm joined by Dr. San, my acupuncturist, and also Greg Turkington, who will be will be talking about movies a little bit later on. Um, whew, feel better. Feel sort of what, whatever you're talking about there with the liver and everything. He's got be putting pins in me like I'm a voodoo doll, um, mostly focusing on the face and. 
uh, it's been, um, I guess, natural for this yeah, sort of... Your body's filled with a lot of toxins, and so we're just releasing those toxins. Right. And so they're expressing themselves. I kind of feel like I'm a high school kid with the pepperoni or the pizza face, but, uh, but zits don't hurt this much, so sort of feel like I've been cut, my face has been cut with a knife or something. Um, anyways, thank you, Dr. Sam. Appreciate you being here and getting me back, back in the best shape of my life. Um, and uh, as far as our uh, Greg, welcome to, uh, back on the show. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Any thoughts on um, my blood clots in my brain of making sure they're not going to ever come back? Is there anything we can do to pre I to kind of preemptively to, I we're doing movies? We are, Greg. Chill out. You ever seen the Tonight Show? They have different segments. Um, is there any way to prevent preventative medicine, in other words? Yeah, so we'll, we'll tonify your blood mm -hmm. and we'll smooth your liver chi and get rid of the fire. Right. So, and by the way, one thing I love about acupuncture is that it's not something insurance covers. I pay for it out of my own pocket because I do believe that healthcare is a privilege and um, it's $50 a session and I'm doing it several times a day. So it's not something that I'm expecting somebody else to pay for, AKA the government Obamacare. So uh, if you have health problems, see an acupuncture. On to the glib um, uh, light world of Hollywood. We've got the awkward moment starring- yeah, that awkward Do moment starring Dr. San and Tim Heidecker. That awkward moment when a movie review show is ruined by quackery. Not necessary. Uh, three Manhattan bachelors make a pact to have as much fun as possible while remaining single. This was a funny, 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 funny movie. F um, and uh, raunchy. I love sex comedies and I love our movies. This was one of my favorites. And I give it five bags of popcorn because I recommend it. Greg? <coughs> yeah, I liked it a lot. It's sort of uh, uh, the hangover in so Manhattan, or if you will. It? Um, uh, it's, a, it's a comedy. It's got a good cast. Um, Kind of a, these bachelors get in a lot of trouble. Guys do that sometimes, it's fun. Um, I would give it five bags of popcorn and I'll throw in a couple of uh, dirty acupuncture needles of which uh, obviously there are several in the studio today uh, causing Tim to have uh, infected sores on his face. I think your doctor uses dirty needles. Well, never mind that. Thank you for the review. What was, what'd you give it, five bags? Five bags. Yeah. Uh, up next we have Labor Day, directed by Jason Reitman, with uh, Kate Winslet, Josh Brolin, Toby, Toby McGuire, Clark, Greg, two names there, Greg, James, and Greg, ow. Wow. It was a bit of like a spark, electric shock. Ow! All right, can you turn it off? Mm-hmm. It's my foot. Ow! Ow! Take it out, please. Take the take the needles out. Ow! Okay. Thank you, Doctor Sandy. Oh, what a little shock. Um. The, I love this movie, and it was a call. It was uh, uh, should be up there, up, up there with all the greats, and five bags and two sodas. Yeah, it's a serious movie. It's um, <clears throat> no laughing matter what happens to this family in this movie, and uh, I hope it never happens to any of our viewers. And uh, you do have to worry about this sort of thing happening uh, when you pick up hitchhikers and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a cautionary tale and uh, I would give it five bags of popcorn. Right, well, always great to see Josh Brolin. Thank you, and oh, we, okay, we're gonna go to Greg's On Cinema Popcorn uh, on location. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema On Location. Hey guys, welcome to another segment of On Location with On Cinema. Today we're at a very famous movie site. This is the Cemetery Lake where the film Hot Shots from 1991 starring Charlie Sheen was shot. Uh, you may remember the scene, it all took place right here and uh, it really hasn't changed. Back to you. And 
and thank you, Greg. That was a, um, I felt like that was, we'd seen that one before. Did we yeah, have... you did. That was the repeat. Okay. Well, a, I thought you were, you go out and shoot other locations? Or... Well, they, you know, TV channels that don't care uh, show repeats of I Love Lucy all the time, and I figured uh, you obviously don't care about the people that are interested in movie criticism or in, in this doing... movie being a serious show anymore, so I may as well just show old stuff too, because I'll tell you something, when you turn a cinema show into a medicine show, you lose 900 99 percent of the audience and that's what we've done here today so what does it matter well I, 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 I take great offense to that and it's disrespectful to me it's just disrespectful to dr. Sam well I don't really care about dr. Sam all right well I don't care about you and I don't care about your opinions and uh, I don't honestly don't care about the audience either because well that's my clear show. you don't care about the audience that's not what I said yeah you said I honestly don't care about the audience I don't care what the audience thinks which is true because the audience knows to expect the great, knows that I know what I'm doing and this is what they should be watching. So thanks for watching. Well, it's a great show if you want to learn how to Don't get talk in, during the if you want to learn how to get an infected face with dirty needles okay, we'll because that's, sound on that. that's a good way to get them is cut to the hire sound. somebody like Dr. Sam. <laughs> oh. Hi everybody, my name is Tim Heidecker and uh, welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. Um, it's a show where we talk about movies, and um, my guest is Greg Turkington. And uh, I want to apologize to the audience for my appearance. Um, I have a, they call it stage three uh, uh, infection on my face from Dr. Sand's needles. Apparently, were apparently Dr. San. I hate using the word doctor because it's not true. Um, has been using needles that were not sanitized Dirty properly. Needles, Dr. Needles. Sam. Yes. And by the way, if anybody out there knows who, where he is, I need to speak with him. And my lawyer needs to speak with him as well. And so does the police. If anyone sees him, may he be found and arrested and prosecuted and put in jail for abuse of needles. He's a bad guy. Yes, he is. We're never going to talk about him again. So um, it's back to movies. Back to movies, and um, I'm going to try to get through today, and then I'm going to be taking a sabbatical. Can't read any of this here. The, Phil, the Lego, Lego movie. movie. So we're going to talk about the Lego movie, directed Definitely. by Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and Chris McKay. Three directors, two with the name Chris, and the other one named Phil Lord. Um, casting, cast of Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill, Kobe Smothers, Elizabeth, Smolders, Elizabeth Banks, Morgan Freeman. There's Morgan Freeman. Liam Mane Liam Neeson, Fr Allison Brie, Ch Nick Rof Oferman, Pratt, Ch uh, Dre, uh, Bill, Will, Ar Will Arnett, not Will Ferrell, Will Arnett, and Will Ferrell. It's a big cast. <sighs> Too many people. An ordinary Lego minifigure is mistaken as the master builder and taken on a quest to stop an evil tyrant from gluing the universe together. This is about Legos. Three stars. Well, it's not just about Legos. It's sort of about creativity and what you can make with Legos. And in this case, the director's made a series of wonderful characters and uh, fascinating situations. This might be marketed as a kid's movie, but I think it's something that all adults would enjoy. Uh, these are the sorts of characters you want to see more of, and I hope this is the first of many Lego movies. You know, this could end up being another franchise like Bond that has legs, uh, and that's funny because it's called Lego. So. Um, I recommend it highly. I give it five bags of popcorn and five big grocery bags filled with little Lego pieces so you can make your own Lego movie at home. <clears throat> like Lego My Ego. Remember those? Waffles? Yeah, those were, that was a funny ad campaign. Egos being a, sort of a waffle, a pastry type of thing you'd have for breakfast. Right in the freezer section. Yeah, I think they still make them. Thanks for uh, watching and uh, Liam Neeson RoboCop with Jose Poeta stars or directed RoboCop 3D with Joel Kinnaman, Abby Cornish, Jay Barrochell, and Gary Oldman. Um, in Detroit, when the loving cop, it's De it's remake of RoboCop. Omnicorp is a part-time robot police officer starring RoboCop. If you've seen the first RoboCop, there's nothing new as far as the story. It sticks very closely to the original. 
I always wish that there'd been a RoboCop sequel, and there never was. And I kind of wish they'd done that instead of just remaking it in 3D. 3D is kind of a gimmick, but uh, it does have something new to offer. Uh, it's very exciting. If you loved RoboCop, the original, you're probably going to love this twice as much. So I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn. That's my highest recommendation. And I will uh, throw in a uh, little miniature robot, something, you know, a little keepsake of the experience. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Do you have a segment? Um, you well, anything to add? I did want to uh, let people know that my 500 movies in 500 days, it's never been done. That's something I'm working on right now. And I was really delighted to uh, check my mailbox this morning and find that some of the top names in film have sent in their well wishes, uh, wishing me my best on my journey. So I thought we might look at those clips today. Let's see, check out that clip. It's Jimmy McNichol, and I want to wish Greg the best of luck in making world history. Watching 500 movies in 500 days. Guinness Book of World Records is waiting for you, my friend. Everybody at On Cinema, happy 2014. Hey, Greg, this is your buddy, Jim. Congratulations. Thank you. It's nice to be recognized by your peers. Mm. Uh, scheduling note, next week I will not be available for this show. I'm going in for a series of uh, operations, and my doctor said absolutely no work next week for me, pure bed rest. So, so there's no episode um, next week? I would like to offer you the position of host for next week. Okay. That sounds neat. Yeah. Um, sure. Just uh, sit in that seat and review yes. some movies. I uh, will make sure that I you can, have uh, a... I can do that. I, well, I usually uh, do my homework. I think I'll be a good host. You'll, you'll, make a, you'll make a great host next week, and we'll make sure that you have uh, everything you need. We'll book the guest, and we'll... You know, okay. make sure the movie you see get the movies for you to review. Who be the, who, who's the guest well, going to be? Well, we'll figure that out. I'll find somebody great that knows what they're talking about and okay. have a great, great episode for you guys next week. And I'll be back in okay. a couple weeks. Yeah, that sounds Thanks neat. Thanks for watching. All right. That's great. Thank you. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I, you know, let me know who I you think go. of having as the guest, and go. I'll talk to them ahead of time. I have to go. On Cinema at the Cinema, the top show in movie criticism today. The newest and hottest, most innovative film cinema commentary review program on the web. To be able to share my expertise with you, the viewer, is a blessing. Welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. I am your host, Greg Turkington, longtime guest, first time host, and hopefully host on many more episodes to come. Uh, today, we're talking uh, about a couple of movies with our special guest, a fellow film buff, a fellow film expert, Mr. Larry Terman. Good to have you here, Larry. Happy to be here, Greg. Yeah, it's nice that Tim found you. Uh, I guess you work at a local university? I run a master's program at USC Film School, yeah. Okay, so you see a lot of movies. Less now than I used to when I was your age, but yeah, I see a lot of movies. <clears throat> well, it's good to have you. Today, we're talking about a couple of new releases. These are foreign films. Tim usually doesn't like to do them, but he's given me a couple of them here today. The first one that, uh, that we checked out was The Girl on a Bicycle, directed by Jeremy Levin. Uh, it stars Vincenzo Amato, Nora Tertioner, Patty Considine, international cast. They're, they're, they're no Harrison Ford, but they'll do. Yeah, and these are actors I'm very familiar with. So it's about an Italian tour bus driver in Paris who proposes to the love of his life, only to have a young French beauty pull up beside him on her bike, he soon finds that his life is turned upside down as he tries to contend with loving both. So sort of a menage a trois, as they say uh, in foreign films very frequently. Um, I love the movie. I, uh, you know, it wasn't a Bond movie. I'm kind of a Bond head, as anyone that watches this show knows. But uh, it had its charms, and I would give it five bags of popcorn. What do you think? I don't like it as much as you. I give it. I only gave it three bags. I'd give last year's film, uh, Woody Allen's film. I gave that five stars. Last year's film. Last year's uh, Blue Something. Blue Something. That was damn good. We actually had uh, not Woody Allen, but we had Joe Estevez on the show to talk about uh, Woody uh, Allen. Do and you want to talk about movies or personalities? No, we're interested in talking about movies. Actually, this season on our show, we've had a little bit too much personalities, and I kind of want to get back to the real roots of the show, uh, which is film criticism. So let's see how you feel about our second film, Endless Love, directed by Shauna Festi, with Emma Rigby, Alex Pettifer, Gabriela Wilde, and it's about a privileged girl and a charismatic boy who have their love affair compromised when their parents try to keep them apart. 
This is a, a fun movie, um, a little painful at times, I found. But uh, I still would give it five bags of popcorn. Jesus, you're some critic. Fun, but painful. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. We were hoping you could say a few things about this week's popcorn classic, which features our, our hero, Sean Connery, Mr. James Bond. Uh, it's called Medicine Man, and Lorraine Bracho is in it. I don't know if, you, if you've seen this one. And what do you want from me? I memory can't crank this well, one It's in. hard to forget an a, a unforgettable movie like this, and I, I saw this quite some time ago as well, but I do remember that uh, it was sort of an instant classic at the and time. And you're a purported expert. Well, I do, I mean, I know, I know my stuff. I wouldn't say purported, that's the kind of thing Tim might say, but I would say, I think I'm an expert. I'm, I've seen, uh, <clears throat> this actually kind of shows my expertise in that I've watched now, well now we're up to 127 movies that I've watched. These are, a lot of these are classics. Some of them aren't classics, but it doesn't matter. It's more uh, about uh, seeing them all. And, and I really keeping... want to see things I think I'm gonna like. That I think are, and I think I'm going to like those that are good. Mm -hmm. Well, I only love good ones too. Nobody loves a bad movie. Fortunately, they don't make a lot of bad movies. They make a lot of good movies, and that's what makes it such a fine art. It's not like uh, music where you have a lot of bad songs. We seem to disagree, so. I don't know what to say about that. You have to love movies, I think, to be in this business. Well, you should do what I spent 40 years doing, making movies. Well, you know, I, uh, I don't think I'm really qualified for that. I think I have Whoa, a lot of... Whoa, you're talking like you're qualified. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That doesn't and that's what guarantee I've been trying to tell that you Tim. are qualified. I just said you're talking like you're qualified. Definitely more than qualified to talk about them, more than qualified to see them and to host the show. And uh, hopefully there'll be can, more opportunities can, in can the future. Can we pause for a moment? What makes you qualified? Well, I have one of the biggest video libraries in the state. I've been collecting movies for the past 15 years, and uh, I've got one of the, this is, this comes from my library. This is my coding system. We have so many movies, you can't just put them on the shelf and find them. You have to have a system. This is a brilliant system. M stands for the first, that's the first letter of the title of the movie. Five is the number of bags of popcorn I give this movie, five bags. Nine is the decade that the movie was released in, the 90s. M is the first letter of the last name of the director, in this case, John McTiernan. 14 is the shelf number, and then 30 is the tape number on the shelf. So it's a pretty big archive. It's a hey, pretty historic archive. Now I'm impressed. You are an expert in, fi in filing. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have you on the show and, and have a peer here and really give people some expert opinions. If you watch this show for expert opinions, finally uh, your time has come because I think we really covered it all. The guy who uh, normally hosts the show, he shows up and takes his shoes off and shows people uh, you know, welts and things on his leg or picking at scabs and things like that. That's his idea of film criticism, is bringing in acupuncturists and quacks and things like that. We're done, the lights are off, we're finished here. Coming soon, the second annual On Cinema Live Oscar special with your host, me, Tim Heidecker. March 2nd, right here, live on YouTube, featuring film experts and real-time analysis of Hollywood's biggest night. March 2nd. I'm telling you, if you see one movie this year, it's got to be this one. Sorry, guys, I can't give great reviews to every movie I see. This one's only getting three bags of popcorn. I don't know what movies to see this weekend, but we're here to help. It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hola, people. My name is Tim Heidecker, and you are watching On Cinema at the Cinema. And uh, thanks for watching. I am your host, Tim Heidecker, and this is a show where we talk about movies and uh, review them. And uh, let me welcome my guest. I am back as the host, but now he is my guest, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Yeah, you could still call me a host no, sometimes. You I are know I've guest. broken that barrier. So, <laughs> uh, Well, thank you so much for filling in for me last week. Yeah, that was um, a lot of fun. Yeah, um, it's um, great to be back. As a lot of you guys wrote me such wonderful messages that they missed me and they missed uh, the whole, the way the show should normally be. And um, I got to say, I spent the past week in um, St. Thomas, part of the Virgin Isles, uh -huh. and I got a whole uh, sort of a rehab part of my life and um, got rid of those, got rid of the infection. And thank God for penicillin. 
and uh, I'm on a whole new regimen. I got some a new haircut and uh, you know new threads and uh, met a, met a lot of cool people down there that I'm keeping in touch with. And um, my God, I just feel so much better now. Good. Well, let's and let's review more movies than ever before. Then a little bit be... bad news. Um, you are right. I do have diabetes. That the, they discovered that was the cause of my okay. numbness and um, some urinary tract problems I was having. And um, I am uh, going to be living with it, you know. And just uh, um, I've been checking out a new website called CureYourself.com and. I found that, that that there's a way to combat diabetes pretty simply. You use um, I don't know if you're familiar with flax seeds. Um, it's very high in um, helping the blood work properly. So I've been doing this. I've been taking two big spoonfuls of flax seed every day. Just like that. And uh, I don't think that's going to help for diabetes. Mm. I, if you, you overdose need to get on insulin, if you overdose on flax seed, it actually reverses some of those side effects of diabetes. And I've already noticed that I feel 100% better. And it's supposed to be good for your skin, it's clearing everything up. Flax seeds are a wonder drug. Get as much of it in as you can. So, I'll finish chewing here. <coughs> mm. I'll eat the rest of that later. But again, thanks to you, Greg, for last week. I got a chance to see it, and you did a fine job. And Thank you. How did you enjoy the guest? He had some interesting opinions. He had some of his facts wrong. Um, but a lot of these uh, so-called academics aren't really film buffs. They don't understand cinema. and. Um, so uh, he's not somebody I would have back on the show. Um, he did the best that he could. Um, it's which interesting, we did a poll, and our guest last week, Larry Terman, ranked number one on the list of all-time favorite guests of the show. So he's number one guest in, on cinema at the Cinema History. Well, I mean, he was definitely an improvement over Dr. Sam and Ayaka and some of the other guests you've had on the show. Um, of course, that poll wouldn't have included the hosts, people mm -hmm. like yourself or myself. Right. Uh, and of course, we would rank higher than uh, some of the weirdos that you bring on. I, it's like you're a temporary host, now you're back to being a guest. So it's not that hard to understand. Just much like uh, when the old days you'd have the guest hosts on the Johnny Carson show, they don't suddenly become the host. But if you're a president of the United States, you stay president. They still eh. say, oh, hello, yeah, President Ford. But hello. That... No one's going to address President Carter as, hello, uh, former President Carter. Yeah. But so... this is totally different than that. All right. It's not so, so different. There's a protocol, and it, when you earn a title, you keep that title. And right. I got a lot of complaints All right. from well, people let's talk about, the about movie. him. A lot of people writing to me and, and saying, don't have that guy. He doesn't know his movies. Let's well, talk about our movies today. One movie today is Pompeii, starring Emily Browning, Paz Vega, Kit Harington, and my favorite actor, Kiefer Sutherland. Um, a slave turned gladiator finds himself in a race against time to save his true love, who has been engaged to a corrupt Roman senator. As Mount Vesuvius erupts, he must fight to save her as Pompeii crumbles around him. This is about Pompeii, about volcanoes, and it is a Pompeii movie. And it's kind of a gladiator movie. If you ever saw the old gladiator with Russell Crowe, uh, he won an Oscar for that, and that was a fine movie. This one's not quite up to the level of gladiator, but it's damn close. I'd mm -hmm. have to give it five bags of popcorn and throw in a couple baskets of uh, dried volcanic uh, rock. I see. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, are we still going on? Okay. Um, I give it five bags of popcorn and uh, one soda. And um, I like volcano movies. So this mm -hmm. was a great... Joe versus the Volcano. Joe versus you ever volcano, see that one? The Volcano I movie saw that, starring uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones. And I saw Joe versus the Volcano just a couple weeks ago as part of my 500 movies in 500 days. And uh, Joe versus the Volcano. And, um, Joe versus the Volcano. And I have a list that I actually had on the set last week uh, when, when the expert mm -hmm. was here and uh, to show him he was very impressed with it but I, I somehow left it here in the building and I need to know where that is because it's my only uh, record of, of how many movies I've seen and Do we know so, where the list is okay we'll find it okay yeah I know we will I all just right, thought if, let's if, take if somebody a, knew. All right, well, now let's have a, we'll do another popcorn classic from Greg Harrington. Greg Turkington, sorry. It says Kit Harrington here. Mm -hmm. 
My popcorn classic today is twofold. We're doing something different with a segment, and we like to switch things up every now and then. Uh, we've got the movie itself, which uh, in this case is The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, one of my all-time favorite movies, and a perfect complement to some popcorn. And Jolly Time is one of my favorites. I've got a microwave again now uh, that my dad was getting rid of. I thought you were a uh, uh, pop secret guy. I like a lot of different popcorns. Um, I prefer, of course, movie popcorn, but when you're watching a movie like The Hobbit, for once the popcorn isn't the main attraction. It's really about the movie and the great characters in the movie. And so I recommend you get the movie. You can get it, um, well, it's not on VHS. I had to actually tape this um, because they just don't, I don't know why they don't make these anymore. But um, mm -hmm. So you get the, get the movie, um, tape it off of HBO or borrow it from a friend or something. You can't borrow mine because I'm going <laughs> to be watching it a lot. And then get the popcorn and really go to town. It's a fun night. It's something I recommend to uh, do every night if you can. I got The Hobbit on Blu-ray. It looks terrific. It's got all the uh, special features and commentary from Peter Jackson. And... Usually if they make a movie, they cut out the, the scrap scenes, the scenes that nobody wants to see, the scenes that didn't work, and they leave them on the cutting room floor. I'd rather leave them on the cutting room floor and watch the movie It was uh, the way it was intended to be seen, and that's why I have it on video. Did you ever get that Blu-ray working I got you? Or... Yeah, it works. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for watching. I don't want you bringing in this homemade stuff because uh, MPAA frowns. It's not homemade. The movie was made in uh, no, New I'm Zealand saying, at great uh, expense. No, I'm taping stuff off HBO budget. that MPAA frowns on. Well, so. if they don't put it on video, I have no option. I hope you'll join us on March 2nd for the second annual On Cinema Live Oscar Special with me, your host, Tim Heidecker, and special guests. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker and I'm the host of the show On Cinema at the Cinema, which is a <clears throat> review movie show where we talk about movies and tell you what's coming out in the theaters this week and give you guys a little advice as to what movies you should check out and, and uh, see. Uh, movies we're going to talk about today, first of all, we have Almanac, starring um, Dean Israelite, Sir um, Major. And your guest today is... Oh, I'm sorry. My guest is uh, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Good to be here, and especially with such fantastic movies as we're reviewing this week. Right. Well, I was going to tell you guys about Almanac, starring Sir Major, Sir Major, Amy Landecker, Johnny, a bunch of no-names. <coughs> This is a story about a group of teens who embark on an adventure when they discover secret plans to build a time machine. Now, this is a classic time machine movie, one of my favorite genres of H. movies. H.G. Wells, The Time Machine. Right, and this is sort of one of those um, sci-fi, fun, friendly movies. Um, was released this year. It's a little um, scary, too. The whole concept of traveling in time can be scary if you've mm -hmm. ever seen Back to the Future uh, 2 or 3, mm -hmm. where things actually go wrong for Marty McFly. Kind of interesting. I would have liked to have seen, you know, somebody like Tom Cruise in this, or uh, I mean, obviously there's only one Tom Cruise, but even a Mel Gibson or somebody of that quality, of that caliber, this was just full of people I didn't recognize. Well, these are pretty well-known actors. You just have to know your stuff. Um, I've heard of these actors, all of them, and I've seen them in their other films, and uh, they're kind of more European type actors, and, and uh, sometimes we do get imported films and we review them, and uh, we try to give you the information about whatever's in the theater, wherever it's from. So that's what the show's about. I mean, I hear, I hear what you're saying about that, but despite there not being any stars in this movie, I'm still, uh, twist my arm, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn because it is about time travel and sci-fi. So uh, Johnny Weston, uh, you're lucky you get a, finally get a good movie reviewed by me. You don't have to twist my arm. In fact, uh, I'm very happy to give it five bags of popcorn. This is probably the best time travel movie I've seen since Back to the Future 3, which was the conclusion of the Back to the Future trilogy. Um, <clears throat> anyone that's seen those movies know they're sort of the gold standard of time travel movies. So right. I do recommend you see all three of those movies and uh, as soon as you can. All right, next stop, next movie is called Nonstop. Um, and it's directed by uh, Jaume Collette Sarah. My name is Jaume. J-A-U-M. It's a joke name. That's the name of some kind of soup, not a man's name. I've never heard of any soup. Soup name. Like that. Jaume Collette Sarah joke. Casted by Liam Neeson, Julianne Moore. I love Julianne Moore. She's very pretty. And Anson Mount. An air marshal must spring into action aboard an international flight. 
This was the best movie I've seen in a long time. Um, it's right when you have you ever been on a plane? Oh yeah, a couple times. You ever wonder what would happen if it got t carjacked or uh, hijacked by an uh, assassin? Yeah, there's actually like. a, a uh, comedy called Airplane, really funny movie mm -hmm. where that happens, but it's not scary, it's funny, mm -hmm. and you should see that, the Zucker Brothers, very, right, very well, funny. We're not talking about that, we're talking about nonstop. I was sitting in my seat like this. Which is hard to do on a plane, because mm -hmm. the seats are awful close together. I thought this movie was terrific, and God bless Liam Neeson, I'm so proud of him for doing these movies all the time. Uh, the guy gets no rest, he probably doesn't sleep more than a couple hours a night, because he's... Constantly working. I thought you said he gets no respect like the old uh, uh, Rodney, Rodney Danger Dangerfield. Field. I don't get no respect. But Liam Neeson has got a few Oscars mm -hmm. under his belt, so I'd say he gets plenty of respect. All right. Well, I, I got to give nonstop six bags of popcorn and uh, go ahead and threat tag on six cans of soda. I thought nonstop was pretty frightening. It wasn't the comedy that the airplane was or airplane two or something like that. It was more of a dark look at a really toxic subject, which is uh, airplane hijacking. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, maybe a little uh, uh, cell phone so you can call 911 if that ever happens to you. Well, that's very thoughtful, Greg. Thank you. Um, why don't we just do this and just say thanks to Liam Neeson and a ask the audience here to send a note to uh, whoever's putting this movie out. Say, we'll put the address up there on the bottom here. Say address to Neil Lee, Neil Liam Neeson and say here, thank you for hold on a minute. Here's a trivia. Shut up question. for a sec. Hold on. Okay. Thank you, Liam Neeson from the On Cinema family. That's all you gotta do. And put it in the mail today. And here's a trivia question. What do you think the three best Liam Neeson movies are? Um, nonstop, Taken, and the Grey, the Wolf movie. No. I'll give you a hint. I, I tell you, I'm at a place in my life now, you know, where I'm looking at my list of all time favorite actors. And I gotta warn you, Tom Cruise, I gotta, and, and Tom Hanks, who are sitting number one and two right now. You got some uh, competition on your ass. I'm talking about Liam Neeson. is rising, flying up that list. He was probably in, uh, the, in the 20s or something two years ago. He's up in the top 10 now, and he keeps making movies like nonstop. He's gonna be number one. And Tom Cruise is going to be bye-bye. For me, it's more classic actors, guys like Roger Moore, who was the, the best James Bond. He was the second James Bond, actually the third if you count. It uh, doesn't matter. Let's move on. Uh, I don't watch Bond. Junk. You get me in the movie theater if you cast Liam Neeson as James Bond. Now, there's an idea. That's a All great right, idea. Let's go to popcorn classics. Today's popcorn classic uh, actually is a pretty interesting film. It's from 1976. It's called The Slipper and the Rose, right. and it stars Richard Hold Chamberlain. It's Greg, I asked you to not bring in these homemade tapes anymore. We're going to get in trouble from the MPAA, so... No, because I, this is the only way I could get this movie, is to tape it off television. Well, I don't and like it. It. It, looks, it looks very unprofessional. It looks amateur. I'm going to ask you to not do that anymore, okay? Well, you're going to get a lower quality of selections if, I'm, if I can only bring in certain types of well, packaging. Well, you've had the past three seasons, you've had no problem bringing in uh, top quality movies. Uh, I, I don't know why this suddenly you are bringing in all these homemade, doesn't matter It's anymore. not homemade, it's the does, movie was okay. made by a major We're studio. I don't, nobody wants to see this old movie anyway, old musical junk. Slipper in the Rose, who cares? Here's big breaking news coming on for On Cinema fans. I've got a big exclusive happening right now. I gotta show you guys an exclusive clip of my new film. That's right, I've been making a movie all on my own. I've only been shooting a few scenes. But this scene when, is very... When have you been doing this? I've been doing it every weekend for the past six months. I that I've that. been financing myself. It's an action spy, uh, international spy thriller called Decker. That's the lead character I play named Becker, Jack Decker. Me, who I also wrote and directed. And um, you will see now an exclusive scene from Decker. Decker, thanks for coming. We have a crisis. <laughs> you know what, President Davidson? I was pretty sure you didn't call me up here to shoot the shit. Iran has nuclear weapons. They're, they're on missiles and they're pointed towards the United States. They are ready to attack at any second. All due respect, President Davidson, I told you assholes to watch out for Iran and you didn't listen to me. It's not important now. What is important is that we act immediately. Otherwise, we're going to have World War II nuclear style. Well, what the f do you want me to do about it? I want you to go to Tehran. And I want you to assassinate every f***ing Iranian that you see. Now that's the first goddamn thing you've ever said that made one piece of f***ing sense. 
Can you cover my ass? No, afraid not. If you're caught or killed, I, I'll tell the nation that you're some psychotic lunatic that just went crazy. It's a Hail Mary for the world, Decker. Mr. President, I'll do it, but not for you. For the American people. They deserve a second chance, not like you. I knew I could count on you, Decker. I better get on that plane. Oh, Decker. Good luck, Decker. You still don't get it, do you? Luck is for pussies like you. All I need is this gun. So, Craig, how many bags of popcorn do you give that scene? Assuming that the rest of the movie is that quality. I, I mean, it's, it's not a real movie. It's not going to be a real movie. You don't seem to understand how movies are made. You have to have a director, a producer, I a camera this. crew, I'm... sound crew, no, key have grip. You have a gaffer. Do you have a best boy? Do you have that sort of thing? Because well, if you don't, these then it's just theory... a home movie. And it's well, not, you don't review things like that on our show. No, so. I'm not asking for reviews. I'm saying um, this are, these are all theoretical scenes. So I'll, I'll be reshooting them when we get the real budget. But these are theoretical scenes that we're going to be presenting to investors um, next year. So that's your first peek. And we're going to be continue to work on it. I'm pretty happy with it, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, we can actually do so much with CGI now. A lot of this stuff we fix is we're going to have to shoot at the White House. That was on green screen. It looks like it's the White House. No, it didn't look like the White House at all. I thought, I can't, I couldn't tell the difference. I hope you'll join us on March 2nd for the second annual On Cinema Live Oscar special with me, your host, Tim Heidecker, and special guests. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema, a movie review show where we talk about different movies or the movies that are coming out this week. And uh, my name is Tim Heidecker. I'm the host and creator of the show. And I'd like to introduce one of my guests for the show today is Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Good to be here on uh, what I think is becoming one of the most valuable resources on the web. Okay. Um, so a uh, couple movies to talk about today. Uh, we want to talk about the movie Need for Speed, starring Aaron Paul, or directed by Scott Wogge, Wogha, with an H, Dominic Cooper, uh, Imogene Poots, again, Imogene Poots, becoming a household name, um, Kid Cutie, and Michael Keaton from uh, Mr. And Mom. And Mr. Mom. He's made a lot of films. Yeah, He's well, one of America's Jack Frost uh, and, hidden treasures. Right. Um, this is a fresh from prison, a street racer uh, who was framed, joins a cross-country race with revenge in mind. Um, this was a great film, one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, it proves that um, Aaron Paul is a movie star. We know him from a show uh, called Breaking Bad that's been on TV, and uh, there has been this trend lately. Um, I'm talking about shows like Sopranos and um, Mad, uh, Mad, Mad, Mad Men and a number of other of these shows that people start saying, well, they're better than movies. Well, I've got um, news for everybody. Movies are better than TV. That's true. They don't um, show TV shows in a theater. That's no, all you need to know. No, because as soon as the ads would come on, you'd get up and walk out. But my point is, wake up, people, because movies are getting bad rap. But movies like Need for Speed come out, everyone jumps for joy because they are better than TV shows. So that's my two cents. Five bags, two sodas uh, from Need for Speed. It's funny. When I went to see this movie, I got a, a call from a friend of mine who's another video collector. As you know, I have quite a library of films. He said, oh, I'm having a party over here tonight, and I was wondering if I could borrow your copy of Speed. Mm. He had a need for Speed. But uh, I, I wouldn't loan it. I don't loan out videotapes after what happened. But um, I do like uh, action and adventure and things like that. So I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn. All right. Next movie on our list is Walk of Shame, starring Elizabeth Banks, um, Tig no Notaro, mm, Notaro, James Bar Mason. Margeson. And uh, this is a reporter's dream of becoming an anchor is compromised after a one night stand leaves her stranded without a phone call, phone car, ID, mode, or money, and only eight hours to make it to the most important job interview of his life, Elizabeth Banks' life. <sighs> Honestly, uh, Walk of Shame, directed by Stephen Brill. Thank you. This has been a. I thought uh, it was a great movie. It's just a little bit re unrealistic. If you lose your ID, 
you can go in and get a new ID pretty fast. And mm -hmm. I might dock it for being a little bit insincere plot-wise, but in fact, I love the movie so much I can't dock it in good mm -hmm. faith. So five bags. Well, I uh, was going to say it reminds me of the old uh, Johnny Cash movie uh, about Johnny the Cash, line. Walk the Line. Well, I Walk the Line, um, or Walk the Line. Yeah, and uh, but this is Walk of Shame. So right. there are so many different you know coincidences that happen in movies. There's only so many words. There's Run, um, Lola, Run. You could have Walk of Shame and Run, Lola, mm -hmm. Run. Choose which way you want to travel. Right, of course, the old surf song, Walk, Don't Run. I think there was that was a movie, too. Mm. All right, now I have a brand new segment I'd like to talk to you guys about. It's called Movie History, and it's a segment that I put together myself. Movie that you're doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today's uh, movie history installment is all about VHS. A lot of people wonder the history of VHS, and this is more about the death of VHS. So uh, in, the, in 2006, New Line Cinema released the movie A History of Violence. This would become the last major theatrical release on VHS. So that's the end of the story there when it comes to VHS. They don't no, make because VHS anymore. Yeah, I still get plenty of them. I probably buy 30 to 40 movies a week on VHS. You're not going to be able to put out, get The Hobbit or Jack Reacher. I have, I have The Hobbit on VHS. You can get them. You've got to tape them off of the TV. I'll tell you what, if you have well, a Blu-ray player right. and you try to tape something off of TV with that, you can't do it. There's no record button. You end up with nothing. So it's kind of strange to me that they think Blu-ray is so much better. Well, it doesn't even record. But the Blu-ray video quality is actually much better than the VHS quality in it's terms debatable. of... It's debatable. Okay. Whatever. Um, all right. Now uh, we've been, people have been asking for this since uh, last season. Since we have Greg on today as our guest, I'm going to be playing a New uh, round of Stump the Buff. So, Stump the Buff. All right, Stump the Buff is a uh, quiz contestant show starring our buff, Greg Turkington. And uh, we are, we're going to challenge him. And if he can get uh, three questions right out of these five, mm -hmm. Greg can win $1,000. Should be a bonus if you get all five. I'll give you $2,000 if you get all five. Okay. Good. Out of my own pocket. My checking account can handle $7,000 today. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're going to show you a still from a movie. All you have to do is tell me what movie it's Where from. Where's the still? Okay. You'll see. It's right there. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. First movie. Name Casa that movie. Blanca. Or, uh, Gone with the Wind. Sorry. Gone with the Wind is my, okay. my final answer. Well, you said Casablanca. I was just excited because we were just starting. Okay. Place, well, one so. wrong. Unfortunately, that disqualifies you from the two grand. You had to have But I didn't say right. final answer. Doesn't if, matter. If, I'm not, but if I we're cleared my on, throat, we're not on millionaire. This is the way we play stump the butt. First word out of your mouth, that's your answer. So no right answers yet. Let's throw up the next still. Godfather, The Godfather. Is that your final answer? Final answer, The Godfather. Okay. It's actually from The Godfather Two. I don't think so. It looks like The Godfather. I can see how you would make that mistake. That's Robert from Godfather Duvall. Two. Is it from The Godfather Two? Yeah. Okay, we've and, just confirmed uh, well, that from our judges. No. All right, let's go to number three. We are 0 for 2. You can still come back. you got to get the next three right, and then you got the $1,000. Let's show a still from this fall. What movie is this from? Guarding Tess. That is correct. Guarding okay. Tess with uh, Nicolas Cage and uh, Shirley MacLaine. Great. Okay. Now All we're right. on a roll. Now we got one. you got to get the next two right, and you will cruise to victory. Uh, let's put the still up. Just the way you are. That is correct. Just the way you are. Yeah. Well, I saw it recently. I actually had just seen Gone with the Wind recently for the okay, fifth time. Okay, doesn't matter. And I thought that then you have two right. If well, you get this next, this is amazing. If you get the next one right here, you win the thousand dollars. If you get it wrong, you get nothing. Let's put it up on the screen. Star Trek Two. Incorrect. That's. Star Trek IV. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, starring William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly. That's obviously a still from Star Trek II. Oh my Trek God, II, Greg, because you could I see fired that you they're... from the show last season because of this. Are you seriously going to And you brought me back because you were wrong. No. You, you made a mistake okay. because that's Star Trek II. That's it. Cancel well, I have looked it up. I've seen you. the movie so many times. It's Star okay. Trek II. Thanks two. for watching. They're shot, it's shot in San Francisco. Okay. This is well, stupid. You could have won $1,000 if you just get off your Well, no. I should get it. I should get $7,000 or whatever it was that you were offering because I got the first one right, and that's Star Trek II. Look it up. Go to Internet Movie Database. Go to Wikipedia or something. That's Star Trek II. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Heidecker. Welcome to the season finale of on cinema at the cinema it's a web series where we talk about movies coming out 
And uh, I just want to say it's been a real pleasure um, coming into your computer screens every morning, or not every morning, but every afternoon, or once a week. And I appreciate all the support that you've given me through this um, past several weeks. It's been really uh, a roller coaster, and, uh, uh, and um, I'm just blessed to have the audience that we have. And thanks for watching. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I want to welcome my guest, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Hey, Tim. How are you doing today? Good. And uh, thanks for being on the show, and thanks oh, for yeah. your support this uh, whole season. Wouldn't it's been miss a really it for the world. Yeah. Season finale. <laughs> and uh, we got a great show today. We're going to talk about a movie. We've got um, a great guest, uh, Joe Estevez, coming up, who's going to talk about his new book. Uh, I want to start with today's movie, uh, Muppets Most Wanted, where the Muppets are back. And uh, we got directed by James Bobbin, Tom Hiddleston, obviously the Muppets, Kermit, and Piggy, and uh, the rest, but also humans being uh, Salma Hayek, Christopher Waltz, and Ricky Gervais. Um, and um, this is as good as Muppets can get. I'm giving it five bags of popcorn and five bags of soda. Cups of soda, yeah. Um, it's like Sesame Street, but a little bit more adult, and mm -hmm. uh, but still perfect for kids. So I'm gonna give it five bags of popcorn and five newly bundled newborn babies. Well, um, so that's the big movie this week, Muppets Most Wanted. We both recommend you go check it out. I wanna introduce our guest, good friend of mine, great friend of the show, Mr. Joe Estevez. So let's bring him out here to talk about his new book. <laughs> Joe. Good to see you, Good to see you hey, Joe. Thank, director. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Good to see you yeah, again. Does, you guys know yeah. Joe and I did a movie together mm -hmm. that I directed and wrote. You know, we're not done shooting by any stretch, yeah. but we have a lot of work left to do. And um, But yeah. that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about your new book, why, uh, Joe Estevez, Wiping Off the Sheen. And this is a new book by Joe Estevez. Or, uh, mm -hmm. yes, by, well, written by somebody else. What is this? Yeah. Written by Brad Paulson and Chris Watson. Yeah, it, it's just a, a long uh, a conversation, just my experiences and some of the people that I've had experiences with. And, of course, I touch on my, my brother and my nephews mm -hmm. a little bit. But, gotcha. uh, you know, it's mostly moi. You know? Gotcha. Well, it's just some quotes about you. Joe is one of the most talented, creative, and best friends I have. Uh, actor Robert... Zadar. Zadar, a maniac okay. cop, you mm -hmm. know, Tango yes. and Cash. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's a cool book. I got to mm -hmm. get one of those. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well this has been great. Um, I look, I read about it. I, got, I didn't get through the whole thing, but uh, uh -huh. it it's, looks like a fun book that you might want to yeah. have in your bathroom or it's something. Nice little short story in the back, just in case the book bores you, the short story in maybe the back. save it. You Special know? thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Interview. So that's, uh, uh, Baby uh, Ghost. Uh, no, let me see here a second. I, maybe they didn't put it in this issue. Uh, Mm. Oh, special thanks. Here we go. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, well. Okay, All right. Well, Joe, th anything else you want to plug while you're here? <laughs> Just this guy's boobies. <laughs> right, it's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Good coming out soon. Pleasantly surprised. We'll yeah. see if he finishes yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, looks good. Looks good. All right, Joe. Well, thank you yeah. so much for thank being you. on the show. Craig, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. It's good uh, to see you, Joe. Yes, this All is, right. this is my you. copy we get to keep. <laughs> have, a good, have a good week. Thank All you. All right. And uh, it's a fun, loose show. Why don't we cut to, uh, why don't we uh, do Popcorn Classics? Sure. <clears throat> popcorn Classic today it stars the great Diane Keaton. Ah, Baby Boom. Oh, Baby Boom, okay. Which is uh, an unexpected comedy, they call it. That's sort of the subtitle. And she's, uh, you know, inherited a baby. It's, and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Diane Keaton. I love Diane Keaton. I love yeah. her in all the Woody Allen movies. and. Should have talked to Joe about that because we talked to him about Woody Allen last season. Should have brought that up. Anyways, um, I have a new segment well, that uh, I'm okay. kind of excited about. It's going to close out. Thank everybody for watching. But um, we got a new segment. That you new segment. Try? Um, okay, we have time for that. Uh, you know, Popcorn Classics is sort of my segment, but this could be my new uh, my new hit segment. It's called Tim's Mailbag. A lot of people have questions that they ask Tim, being the host. And I thought it was a good chance for you to answer some of your fan mail and answer some of the questions that have come in the door. So, Do we have uh, time for that? Do we have time for that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's, um, here's the first one here from uh, Tammy Smith, Kenner, Louisiana. Kenner, Tammy Smith. Okay, she's got a letter for, uh, question for me. Huh? Mm -hmm. Tim, hi Tim, what's your favorite movie? That's a good question. Um, boy. Um, so many, I'm thinking either Godfather or Okay, we've got another letter here. Well, I haven't just, um, I was going to say, probably Jack, 
Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher's great. Yeah. So one of my favorites. There's so many too. great movies. But thank you for this letter. That's yeah, cool. thanks, Tammy. Um, All right. Here's the next letter. I like this segment, by the way. Thank you, Tammy. Interesting question. Um, yeah, here's one I think you like. It's from Japan. Take a look at this. Japan. Really? We got. Well, I guess they have internet everywhere. So. What is this? This is cool. Um, from Ayaka. Why don't you read it out loud for uh, the viewers? Okay. Um. <laughs> Dear Tim, how are you? Long time no see. I have great news today. I'm pregnant. I'm really happy f right now, and I hope the same for you. Can you believe it? You're going to be a father. I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Why don't say? It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hi everybody, welcome to a, the ne next, our new season of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, with my head, I am Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema, season five with my guest, Greg Turkington is back. Hey guys, good to be here, back in the seat. Thank you very much, it's been a long time and it's fun to be back with you. Too long. <laughs> um, and before we get into the movies, thought we could just get a little update on what's been going on with you. 500 movies in 500 days. Um, still plugging away at it, we're getting there. Uh, pretty soon we'll have some good news as I enter the Guinness Book of World Records. And uh, so how close are you? What number are you at right now? Uh, we had a little setback. I um, actually lost the list where I was tabulating. Mm, um, I remember that, yeah. The movie, so that was 127 movies on that list. So I kind of had to start from scratch to make it honest. So. Since I started the new list, we're at 141, so we're actually making some good progress. If I find the original list, we can add that to the 141, mm -hmm. and then I'll be at 268, and we'll really be on our way. So still looking for the list. Cool. Well, as for me, I uh, relocated to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is where I now live, uh, about three-fourths of the year, and uh, I got myself a Kawasaki motorcycle. One of the best motorcycles there are, and I've been riding that around. I didn't know you were in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah, I needed to get out of the whole Hollywood scene and the whole LA lifestyle, and sort of get back to nature, get back to connecting in with some of the um, rights that I have as a, as a as a patriot. And uh, I actually did a patriot ride from Jackson Hole to LA. Got in yesterday to start doing this uh, season of the show, and uh, you know. I'm sure I'll get a lot of complaints about this. I let my beard grow out, uh, which has been fun. You look like Orson Welles. Same sort of beard. And of course, he was well known for being Nostradamus. Of course, Nostradamus had the gift of predicting the future, which is something I wish I had, because then I'd know when the new Hobbit movie's coming well, out. Well, they know, you know when the next Hobbit movie's coming out. They put that news out months in advance. You don't need Nostradamus. But they changed the dates. Huh. Uh, since we kind of missed that first round of uh, summer movies, unfortunately, uh, we of course saw them and we just want to give you a I was going to say, I didn't miss them. No, but. no, I mean, we didn't get a chance to be yeah. on the air talking about them. I just want to quickly run through the movies that we gave five bags of popcorn. Sure. Captain America, uh, X Dead, Days of Future Past, Godz Godzilla. Godzilla. Five, Godzilla. Okay, five bags of popcorn, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Five Bags of Popcorn, Neighbors, Spider-Man Blended, all get the Five Bags of Popcorn, and 22 Jump Street, where Jonah Hill gave a bag of pop, five bags of popcorn from On Sim at the cinema, two bags of soda. And maybe throw in a beach ball, too. Okay, summer movies. So a lot of great movies this summer, and we recommend you see all of them right now. Yeah, set aside some time. There's things to do in the summer, the beach and swimming and that sort of thing, but... Nothing beats a good old-fashioned movie. Yeah, and if you're in a hot zone, if you're in a hot part of the country, what better way to get some free air conditioning exactly. uh, than seeing a movie? Again, and, and Captain America. All right, let's talk about the movies coming to theaters this weekend. Deliver Us from Evil was directed by Scott Derrickson. 
directed by and starring Eric Bana, Edgar Ramirez, Oliva, Oliva, I'm sorry, Oliva, Oliva Munn. It's just Munn. Okay. Oliva Munn. So we have a New York police officer joins forces with a priest schooled in the rituals of exorcism to combat possessions terrorizing the city. So this is a very scary movie, a very frightening movie, horror movie of the kind of horror movie I love, and I give it five bags of popcorn. I like I liked it a lot too. Um, it wasn't The Exorcist, and it's very similar. Uh, think, if you will, imagine The Exorcist set in New York City, and I think you get an idea of what we're dealing with here. I'd give it five bags of popcorn, five scary bags of popcorn, because it's uh, it's a little frightening. All right, so go see Deliver Us from Evil. Deliver Us. I was going to ask. Going to add, deliver us to the movie if you're a UPS don't, driver. So. Don't go see it late at night, though, because uh, it might be a little scary walking back to your car after seeing something like this. It's that type of film. Okay. And a Tammy by directed ne Ben Falcon with Melissa McCarthy, Susan Sarandon, and Dan Aykroyd. Elwood <laughs> Blues is back. Um, yeah. 35th anniversary of the Blues Brothers this year, and so it's kind of cool to see him back uh, on the screen. He's really a master of the blues, Elwood, but uh, in this movie, he's not doing the Elwood blues thing completely, but it's hard to get that out of your mind, you know? So it's kind of distracting, gets in the way well, of the actual just, plot, let me, but. Let me read what the movie's about, and then we could talk about whatever you want to talk about. After losing his job, after losing her job and learning that her husband has been unfaithful, a, okay, so a woman hits the road with her profane, hard drinking grandmother by Tammy. Okay. This is a comedy directed by Ben Falcon, who, and it is uh, starring Melissa McCarthy. It's one of those movies that you got to see. It's hilarious. I laughed my way, my ass off, pardon the French, the whole way through. Well, I mean, if you like the Blues Brothers, it has some of those elements. You've got the road trip angle. You don't have enough music. Dan Aykroyd's an accomplished harmonica player and a great singer. I would have preferred... Uh, a little more music, but I still like the movie. It's very, very funny. It's interesting funny. you say it reminds you of Blues Brothers because if you think about it, Melissa McCarthy is sort of our female version of um, Jim Belushi. You know, she's yeah, got yeah. that sort of, she's not skinny, you know, but she, and she's got sort of the, that mass that makes her sort of that funny, fat, uh, friendly, jolly, sort of like a Santa Claus, but but sort of like that Chris Farley, Jim Belushi, kind of energy that I think makes her the big star that she is today. They should have called the movie The Blues Siblings, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, she could or have the been the sister, si Blues Brothers sisters, and si Blues, 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 Blues Brother sisters, and Sister. If you want to do Blues well, but Sisters. Elwood wouldn't be the sister. But so, he yeah. would cross-dress and you'd do one of those sort of Monty Python kind of things. That's kind of getting away from the spirit of the Blues Brothers. I love this movie. I give it six bags of popcorn and uh, some maybe, uh, well, Three bags of soda. If we had a scale that went to six bags, I'd give it six bags. Our scale goes to five bags of popcorn, and I will award it the five bags. Um, I'm going to throw in a little miniature toy harmonica so you can learn how to play like Elwood Blues yourself at home. All right, well, another season is here, and now for our first of many um, popcorn classics with Greg Turkington. Greg, what did you bring us today? Well, this is going to be a fun popcorn we'll classic. Let the, the thing run. This is going to be a fun popcorn classic because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's the 35th anniversary of the Blues Brothers. So, uh, I think you're going to like this, Tim. I brought uh, an original uh, Elwood Blues hat and glasses, uh, rubber biscuit, anyone, uh, to uh, present mm -hmm. today's popcorn classic, which is probably not going to be a big surprise to anyone, is the immortal Blues Brothers 2000 uh, from 2000. Of course. Um, right, let me say something about this. I hate this, what they did with this, because Dan Aykroyd, of course, but John Goodman is not a blues brother. They they had the opportunity yeah, to work he's... with Jim. They, hold on, I'm not. I'm talking about this now, because this. I'm glad you brought this up. Jim Belushi should have been offered that part as the brother in that movie. It makes sense if some bro brother, somebody dies, like John Belushi had, who had died because of drugs. When that brother is waiting in the wings. Going into, he, do, he looks exactly like him. You might as well use him. Yeah, but Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi were never real brothers. They were blues brothers. So you can have other blues brothers in life. Mm -hmm. John Goodman, I think, is well, a legitimate blues brother from uh, Dan Aykroyd. And some of these other guys, you've got James Brown, B.B. King, the Blues Brothers Band, Paul Schaefer. These are all blues people. 
and this is a blues movie and I love it and it will cure the blues. Uh, I think it's better than the original. I'd like to see uh, Blues Brothers 2014, maybe later this year. We can only pray. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, bring your lights up. Uh, big news. Take that off, you're done with your segment. It's embarrassing. Take it off. Big news for Decker fans out there. I would like to announce that uh, a Decker miniseries is coming to the internet. Um, we're just getting Who's into doing it. doing that? Stay tuned for more information, but Decker, the miniseries, is coming to, inter the, to web television this summer. Thank you. No matter who's doing it, okay? It's going to be a big hit. You should learn a lesson about how to behave. And you got to start clearing popcorn classics with me because that doesn't belong on the show. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. So excited to be back again, talking about the new movies of the week. Uh, joined by my guest today is Greg Turkington. Greg, thanks for being on the show. Hey guys, good to be here. And of course, we also sometimes talk about old movies. Mm -hmm. So this is a fun show. Okay. Um, just quickly, before we get into the movies, I wanted to just, uh, just address something. Uh, after last week, people uh, were asking on the internet about uh, something that had happened at the end of last, our last season of the show that had to deal with um, Ayaka, who uh, moved back to Japan. And uh, there was an issue that Greg had brought up on the show, a bit of a paternity dispute with her and myself. And I would just like to clear the air and, and go on the record here and say that that situation has been taken care of. Um, Shortly after learning that news, um, I handled it in a way that was, I think, be mutually beneficial for all parties involved, and uh, sent her the money that she would need for the, so, such a procedure. And uh, uh, without saying too much or getting too um, personal, I would like to assure everybody that that problem has been Evacuated, or, to, or um, that's not the right word. Taken care of. I've taken care of. She's the, so. Uh, while I stand by my position as a member of the pro-life community, I want to say that I still stand for those ideals. But when push comes to shove, when the situation is, when you are a part of that situation, the choices have to be on the table because there was no way uh, that I was going to be in that situation. So I wanted to clear the air there and know that uh, we are here to have fun and talk about movies. So, But that's the answer to that. We're not going to talk about it ever again, I hope. And I don't want personal stuff to influence this show. I want the show to be about movies and yeah, Oops. that's what I've always said. Right. No, I finally, I'm on the same page with you on that. People so. have reality TV if they want that sort of thing. You know, <laughs> right. they, they tune in here for movie reviews and for expertise, and mm -hmm. uh, that's always what the focus should have been. All right, well, let's get into this week's movies. Uh, first up, so excited this is back, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Gary Oldman, Carrie Russell, yeah. two names, Andy Serkis. Cir the circus is back with Andy Circus. Ringham Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus. What's that? The Ringham Brothers and uh, Barnum Bailey Circus. If you've ever been to the circus. This is S E R K I S S. -S. Right. And uh, a growing nation of evolved apes is threatened by human survivors of a virus released on decades earlier. Both sides are brought to the brink of war, which will decide the dominating species. This is a sequel to a prequel, one of the original great movies of all time, Planet of the Apes. This is Charlton Planet, Heston. Charlton Heston from uh, the original Planet of the Apes. And this is better, bigger, smarter, faster, funnier, more exciting, scarier than the original, even the original of the prequel called Dawn of Planet of the Apes. Or uh, the first 
pretty cool name was of Planet of the Apes. Planet of mm -hmm. the Apes. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's not called Nation of Apes, was it? Mm -mm. What was the original sequel of the pre what was the original prequel sequel called? The Rise of Rise the Planet of the Apes. No, this is called Rise of the This is called Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. We're looking for the name of There's the, the planet. Well, the original the reboot. It's called original. Was the planet, planet of the Apes, Apes, and then the rise of the well, the planet original. Of the, Apes. The, the original, original was planet, planet of the Apes. Of the, Apes. With Charlton Hay the original of Charlton Heston's Planet of the Apes was just Planet of the Apes. But yeah. then there was Tim Burton's remake called Planet of the Apes. I'm talking about the one that came out two years ago with James Franco called fill in the blank. No, your movie. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. <coughs> what's the difference between Ron? What's the difference between Rise and Dawn? I guess you rise, they're rising up, where dawn is more about what time of day it is. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, this was a fantastic movie. It's probably going to win Best Picture. I and hope not. If it wins Best Picture, that's probably a sign it's the last one in the series, because that's how they tend to do that. If you remember when Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. uh, won Best Picture, and The Hobbit 3 is probably going to win Best Picture. So I'd prefer that this doesn't win Best Picture because I could use another 10 Planet of the Apes movies and then give it Best Picture. That's why I hope Bond never wins Best Picture because I well, want that not series be to problem. continue forever. Bond's never going to win Best Picture. That's obvious. They're well, I think movies. the final Bond will win Best Picture. There's not going to be a final Bond because it's Good, cheaper. because they're going to keep making them. Uh, they'll keep making them because dumb sheeple like you keep going and, and buying into that crap. I mean, that's like calling uh, Star Wars people sheeple, which is... I do. Well, okay, Rise of the Planet of the Apes gets... Five bags of popcorn and two sodas. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and a banana cream pie because apes do like bananas. All right. And speaking of apes, uh, our next film is And So It Goes, directed by Robert Reiner, starring Mike, Michael Douglas and Diane Keaton. From The Godfather and The Godfather 2. This is not a Godfather mafia movie, unfortunately. It's a comedy. Which is a self-centered and real estate, a self-centered real estate enlist, a self-centered realtor enlists the help of his neighbor when he is left in charge of a granddaughter he never knew existed. And that uh, is a very funny comedy by director Rob Reiner, star of Harry and Sally. And I give it five bags of popcorn. It's the funniest movie of the year. I laughed out loud several times. Um, and I enjoyed this movie. Thank you, Rob Reiner. And so it goes right up to the podium to collect the award. I agree. This is a funny movie. Rob Reiner is long overdue for an Oscar. And Diane Keaton, of course, was in The Godfather. And she's one of our treasures of cinema. Mm -hmm. So I love the movie. And I'll give it five bags. And I'm going to throw in uh, an Oscar. It's funny. I, now that I live in Jackson Hole, there's only really one movie theater. Mm -hmm. And you don't have Starbucks. And you don't have this and that. Uh, Where do you get your the, coffee? Well, it's funny. I'm now sort of part of that whole... Um, homebrew coffee scene. First of all, coffee tastes a hell of a lot better when you're grinding it at home and making fresh pot every day. I have to, I got the sh shakes now because I'm here in Hollywood and all they have is Starbucks, so I'm s left drinking that crap. But when I'm back in, in Jackson Hole, I'm on my Kawasaki, I'm driving around, and I go to the local store and get eggs and whatever there is available, and it's a better lifestyle. It's clean it doesn't air. doesn't sound good. You're missing lights, camera, and action. We've got all those here being sort of amongst uh, all the movie magic. Well, it's like I don't he, think you're going to yeah. have that in Jackson Hole. I don't, but in a way, first of all, Robert De Niro lives near. Or um, Robert, not Robert De Niro. Who's the guy with the accent? Dolph Lundgren? Harrison Ford oh. lives in Jackson Hole. I want to do a new segment, guys, that I've never done before. I'm very excited about it. We shot it earlier, and it's a way to get to know the guests of On Cinema. Um, I wanted to figure out a little bit more about who we are talking to and why they are such huge cinema buffs. And uh, uh, for our first episode of this segment, uh, I've got a chance to talk to one of our resident film buff experts, Greg Turkington, in a segment called On Cinema, At the Cinema, On Guests. Thanks for doing this. Suit looks good on you. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, I don't understand why you bought me a suit. Well, I, I want remember. you to look good. This is a chance for me to get to know you a little better, get to let the audience know who they're getting all these uh, expert opinions from. Okay. It's just weird because I don't, you, you didn't buy me a suit for the actual show and then for this weird... <laughs> the show's a little more casual, so. Anyways, um, so when I talk to you, don't look at me, look into the camera. Okay. Does that make sense? That's, sure. Let's just I'll do a quick it. audio test. Just say, hey guys. Hey guys. Okay, good. 
Um, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask you some questions about you and your life and, and your relationship with movies. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, that's my area of expertise. Maybe instead of answer interesting, let me think about it. Okay. Um, so we're just going to kind of talk about movies. Sound good? Yeah. Interesting. All right, let me think about it. Uh, well, there's not much to think about. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen this movie? Of course. That's, uh, that's a collector's item. Where'd you find that? Let's try that again. I just want you to look right in the lens. Okay, okay. Of course, that's a collector's item. Um, where'd you find it? Well, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out a way to organize my video collection. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you feel comfortable giving me advice on? Yeah, when it comes to movies, I'm the master of codes. I've got um, an incredible system, which I've explained to you before on the show. So. so would you be able to tell me what code this movie would get? Sure, it's worth a shot. Let me see the movie. So the way to do these codes is you get the first letter of the first okay, well, word in just, the movie title. I, know, and I just the, wanted and to see the, if you'd be able to do it. Oh, yeah, of course. I've done... Thousands, literally thousands, tens, if not tens of thousands uh, of those in my collection, which I think is one of the biggest collections in the country. Okay. So, Thank you yes. very much for doing this. Um, that's, that's an interview? Mm -hmm. You didn't really ask me about my background for reviewing movies or any of that. Uh, where were you born? What? Where were you born? Uh, you to... I was born in Los Angeles. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. All right, well, that was very interesting. Learned a lot about uh, you that we didn't know. And uh, you were telling me off camera that uh, you were just recently in the hospital for a couple weeks? Yeah, during the hiatus, I was. All right, well, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week. So what, what was the what procedure? Was it? Just, uh, just a personal matter. You're out of the woods now? Or? I think so. You look good. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim Heidecker, and you're watching another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema with my, with your host, Tim Heidecker, talking about new movies coming out this week and giving you our opinion on that movie. My guest is Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Good to be back on On Cinema. Double on there. All right. I would like to start, before we give our reviews today, to make a kind of a big announcement. Um, you know, I've, as you guys know, I've been living in Jackson Hole now. It's such a nice, quiet, peaceful lifestyle I have. And uh, I know, Greg, you had said you were in the hospital recently having some organ removed or whatever, but you should think about living in a clean air space like Jackson Hole. I'm not saying you should move to Jackson Hole, but... No, I'm not going to. Uh, anyways, it's been working for me, that clear air. I'm eating right. I've been losing weight. I've been eating a lot of bison, which, of course, is so rich in amoeba acids. And I, I've been going on the Internet, and I was looking at... Uh, the On Cinema Facebook page, and I was reading some of these essays that Greg Turkington wrote that you've been posting onto the On Cinema Facebook page. Yeah. And I really thought they were terrific. Thank you. Thank you. I thought they were very well written. I compliment they're, you on They're that. very informative, mm -hmm. and I put a lot of work into them. So and thanks. I started thinking about, well, what is the one area of the whole entertainment industry that I don't have a foothold in? And it dawned on me it was publishing. Mm hmm and I thought, I want to be, I want to have a, a publishing company and start publishing books. So, um, it is with great pleasure that I announce I'd like to offer you a book deal to release a series, however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. But it would be, um, uh, I imagine, a, a collection of your essays yeah. on film. I would love to do that. I accept your offer. Um, I actually have quite a few essays already written. Mm -hmm. and So uh, the way I imagine the whole thing working is, mm -hmm. I'm also working on a book of my own, called Hog Shots, which is a coffee table book, a, f a photo book of pictures of uh, me on a motorcycle and other motorcycles that I see around town. And it's a beautiful color, large book. I think it's maybe a, a yay big, um, all with pictures taken that I just take on my iPhone because the quality is so good. Take even from far away, you take a shot and zoom it in, and you can see the quality of the bike. Um, so the Hog Shots will come out, I'll make a ton of money on that, and then fund my second book, which would be your Hollywood movie book. What if the Hog Shots doesn't, isn't that popular? No, well, I, I'm pretty confident that, I mean, if you look at the numbers of motorcycles sold every year, it's astonishing. And hopefully I'll get somebody like, I would, my dream is to get Tom Cruise for the cover, posing with his bike, and I'm working on that right now. 
since, since I am in, right now in Hollywood doing the show, I'm, I'm capitalizing on that opportunity. Maybe you should do my book first, and then you can use those funds maybe to do a second movie book or maybe hog shots afterwards, because I'm just worried it's very expensive to print these photo books, and if you lose money on that, then that could be the end of your publishing company, and I don't want to see that because you seem pretty excited about it. Pretty confident. Hog Shots is going to be the number one book in America. It'll be on that New York Times best-selling book list that everybody's crawling to get on. But I'm going to be getting on that list at number one with Hog Shots. And then depending how on how well... How much is it going to cost? I haven't done the math on that. I just don't think people care that much about photos of motorcycles in parking lots. That's, That's your, if you want to do your own publishing, movies. if you want to do your own publishing company, by all means. I thought I saw an opportunity for you and I extended well, it to it's you. Well, I you don't think it's going it, uh, I just don't think you're going to have more than one book ever come out. So, okay. We'll see. Here to prove you wrong. That's the announcement on the new publishing company probably called Heidecker Publishing. So if you have ideas for books, let me know. We're always looking for new ideas. All right, let's talk about our movies this week. We have Jupiter Ascending, directed by Andy Wachowski. 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 Lana Wachowski. Again, the same name. Two, there's a mistake here. It should be Andy, Wachow Andy Wachowski and Lana, some other name that they got wrong here. Uh, that stars another f***ing name that I don't get. Mila Kunis. Seen Bean? Sean Penn. Yeah, Sean Penn. Or no, wait, Sean B Bean. Yeah, I don't sorry. know what Sean Bean is. I thought you were mispronouncing Penn, but in it's the, Bean. No, I'm not going to mispronounce Penn. This is a B, not a P. Well, you mispronounced Sean, so... I think it's supposed to be Seen Bean. Well, no, it's Sean. Well, let me see it. Well, if it was Sean, it'd be S-H-A-W-N. Yeah, that's seen. Sean Bean. It's not Sean Penn. And the woman Channing Tatum. In the future, a young destitute human woman gets targeted for assassination by the Queen of the Universe. I know there was a Queen of the Universe. And begins her destiny to finish the Queen's reign. Um, this is an exciting, fascinating superhero uh, sci-fi movie mm -hmm. directed by whatever the real director's name is. And it's a great movie. It's not at all realistic. These aren't things that happen uh, normally in your day-to-day -day life, but sometimes it's good to escape. That's why we go to the movies and sort of live in a fantasy world for a few minutes. And Mila Kunis provides the eye candy, and there's plenty of CGI, and this is just a fun popcorn movie. I give it five bags. I love this movie. Um, I give it three bags of popcorn. Three bags is not very many for this movie. Yeah, but it's not Oscar. It's not an Oscar contender, so I, I deduct oh, two that's bags. that's Oscar's from... fault, because this, is, this movie's as good as any. Listen, I love this movie. Uh, don't get me wrong. I recommend everybody go see it, but I'm only going to give it three bags of popcorn and two sodas. Well, then I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and two more bags of popcorn, which we can slide over to your three bags of popcorn so that we each gave it five bags of popcorn, because I think you... No, this is... Right here is a border. You can't slide bags of popcorn over onto mine. Well, but I, I, I think you really like this movie, and I think it doesn't you not... would give it five bags of popcorn, because I've seen you give five bags to movies. The whole you... idea of the show is these are my opinions, and those are your opinions. Well, that's my opinion. Five bags of popcorn plus two I'm recommending bags. people see it, but I'm not just saying that it's the greatest movie of the but year. But three bags is like... That's fine, a bad I'll give, rating. All right, fine. I'll give it five bags of popcorn. Well, you mm -hmm. don't need to because I already gave it five plus two, which moved over to your side. So it's already... It hasn't already, moved, and now we have five. It's so already it's, covered. If it moves, and then it has seven, which is the best rating it's ever been. It's the best movie of the year. Which it is. All right. Our second movie today is another sequel. I love these sequels. I love sequels because you test a movie out by making it. You, see, you make a movie, and you say, does that work? When it does work, you, you get the all, all clear ahead... Make another one. Make as many as you can. That's true, no truer than today's movie, Planes, Fire and Rescue. This is another animated Disney movie of Pixar co quality, directed by Roberts Ganaway. Roberts, huh? It should be just Robert. With Dave Cook and Julie Bowman. Boby, Boby, Bowman. Bowman. And uh, when the world's famous R air racer Dusty learns his racing... His engine is damaged and he may never race again. He must shift gears into the world of aerial firefighting. This is a fun action film for kids of all ages, including myself. And my son and I watched this together uh, when he was out visiting um, last week. And we had such a fun time seeing the movie and also talking about it afterwards when we went to Friendly's for uh, lunch. Greg? I give it five bags of popcorn, of course, two bags of soda. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, five bags of popcorn. I mean, um, what can you say? I've seen a lot of movies over the years, and it takes a special movie uh, for me to say afterwards, wow, I've never seen anything like that, and that's what this movie was. So I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, maybe one of those little captain's badges that they used to give kids on the flights, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when you take the flight and you were young, the captain would give you a little badge. All right, now one of my favorite segments, uh, Greg Turkington has come back to us with another uh, edition of On Cinema, On Location. These are my passion, and I'm proud to present this next one. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hello and welcome to another edition of On Cinema at the Cinema On Location. Today we're in front of a very special location. It's Jerry's house from the movie Oh God, 1977. Jerry, of course, was played by the great late John Denver. Now, if you've seen the movie, you'll recognize the house. In the movie, it wasn't being fumigated, but you'll recognize the big tree in front of it and just the overall setting. Oh God, 1977, George Burns. Back to you, Tim. All right, welcome back. To, uh, thank you, Greg. I didn't. That's very interesting to know about the mm -hmm. location of Oh God. Not great movie. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, uh, Decker is coming. July 12th. Is this 12th or 17th? I can't read your damn writing. 7 or 2? Two? 2. It it's really it's July 12th. If you, you think you've seen fireworks on July 12th. You haven't seen anything until you've seen Decker's. It's the 17th? Oh, 17th. Yeah, Decker on July 17th. There's a lot of confusion about when Decker's coming. Um, I've just been told it is July 17th. Happy July 17th. What are you talking about your son? You don't have a son. No, I have a 15 year old boy from a previous yeah. marriage. Yeah. Well, that's I've old never news. Heard of this. Old news. Yeah, we were estranged. I, I barely ever see him, but now he's coming out to Jackson Hole once a week because they're down in um, uh, Tempe. We were married 15 years ago? Mm hmm. To who? Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. And it's a show where we talk about movies coming out this week, give you our honest opinions about whether you should see them or not. And my, uh, I'm with my guest, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. He's uh, with me as usual. And I um, want to uh, acknowledge I was in an uh, accident yesterday um, with my, on my motorcycle. Um, quick story. Uh, I was just wrapping. We wrapped our final scene with, uh, on Decker which was now all in the can, and we had a really fun rap party. And um, thank you, by the way, for all the nice words you said about episode one of Decker. I'm really happy with it. And, I didn't um, say anything nice about it. Anyways, I was coming home, and you know, when I came out here from Jackson Hole, I basically threw in three shirts and, um, and just hit the road, hauled ass out of here, got here in three days. And uh, so I was like, I, I didn't really have underwear and socks and everything. So on the way back from the wrap party, I stopped in at a Walmart and I pulled in the parking lot. And um, I, because I'm on my motorcycle, I can park in the handicap spot up front. So I pull into the handicap spot and uh, I'm idling her down. And some old bitch comes out. She's yelling at me saying, you, have, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be allowed to park there. You don't have the thing. I shut up. And um, so she's yelling at me and I get, I'm getting pissed off and I try to I, I get to get off the off the bike like because I want to go at her and um, she I, my boot gets caught in the in the saddlebag of the bike twist I twist off the bike and the kickstand was in the wrong spot and didn't hold and clipped out from under the bike so the bike tipped over and I sp spun out around and over the bike smacked my face up against the uh, onto the pavement and then the bike fell over onto me and my hand and fractured my wrist. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then, of course, I got all this. So the bike wasn't even moving? No, the bike was stationary at this point, although it had been idling. So I, I, got, I dinged up my face. I tore 
some retina, scar, some, some, I tore something on my eye, and uh, I already have very poor vision in my left eye, uh, which I've always had since I was a kid. I'm um, legally blind in my left eye. So at this stage, um, I cannot see, said the blind man. So, uh, but I did get a chance to see the movies today, and I can read very close up. Um, You want me to do that? Yeah, to uh, read those. Uh, today's movies on On Cinema at the Cinema uh, are Wish I Was Here, directed by Zach wish Braff. You were, wish you were here. Wish today. I Was Here, um, mm -hmm. starring Zach Braff, Kate Hudson, Josh Gad, and Jim Parsons. This is the story of a struggling actor, father and husband, who's trying to find a purpose in life. After deciding to homeschool his two children, he gradually discovers parts of himself he couldn't find. So um, I like this movie a lot. Um, I thought it was very um, introspective and almost kind of a, uh, almost like a fairy tale. So I give it five bags of popcorn. I thought it was more realistic than a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. If you've seen something like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, I mean, there are dwarves, but they're not like those dwarves. They're, it's a different thing. They don't tend to hang out in groups of seven. This was very much like real life. Uh, and some of the problems that you can encounter in life as you try to get through your day-to-day -day living. And so I found it very interesting. Um, I would have to say five bags of popcorn is appropriate for this and uh, maybe an Oscar nod. I think definitely an Oscar nod. It gets my vote for Best Picture of the Year. I think it's also going to be a very popular movie. I think it's going to uh, be a blockbuster. I think it's going to be one of those movies that you call a tentpole movie for the whole year people say it's most it'll be like avatar uh, it just goes to show you don't need special effects yes, you don't you do. need frankenstein monsters if you're doing avatar you need special closet. effects but for something like this you know they didn't have frankenstein you just need a good story and i kind of like that about it all right how many bags five bags of popcorn okay let me read the next one it may be two nickels just something down to earth I know it's Hercules, because we talked about this earlier. Hercules. Our next movie is Hercules, directed by... Brett. Brett. Just tell me about that. Brett Radner with Dwayne Johnson no, 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 no. and... Okay. Brett. Next movie is Hercules, directed by Brett Radner and... Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson, John Dwayne Johnson, Hurth, John and Hurth, Ian McShane. And Ian McShane. Um... It's the Hercules saga in a new movie. Having, having endured his legendary 12 labors. Having endured his tw legendary 12 labors. Hercules. No, Hercules. All right, so this is a movie about Hercules. One of the, uh, if you remember early, Sarnold Schwarzenegger used to play him. I love anything with Hercules or... Uh, Incredible Hulk is another one I always liked mm -hmm. for that type of character. So I give this one five bags of popcorn. It's the perfect summer movie where if you're looking for just fun popcorn adventure uh, with great special effects and Dwayne Johnson, who is my rock. He was excellent in this. You know, people say, oh, from that kind of a background, who knows if he can really act? You know, he's not an actor first and foremost. But I would say he is an actor first and foremost in the year 2014, and Oscar may be calling you, Mr. Rock. This is a great movie. Five bags of popcorn and two souvenir rocks. All right. And for our next movie is Woody Allen's movie. Uh, what's it called? The movie is called Magic in the Magic Moonlight. Magic in the Moonlight, directed by Woody Allen. <clears throat> There's no need to review this. Well, all Woody Allen movie movies get five bags of popcorn. So we're going to turn it over to our resident Woody Allen expert, Joe Estevez, who's got his own take on the master Woody Allen himself. Take it away, Joe. Hey guys, it's Greg Turkington with On Cinema at the Cinema. And we're here on the Warner Brothers studio backlot in Burbank, California, which I snuck into uh, in order to track down Joe Estevez, who I've been following all day uh, in the hopes of getting hold of him to talk about the new Woody Allen movie. Hold on, I think we see him. Joe! Joe! Oh, hey. Hey. Great, how, how you, you doing, buddy? Good, good. Hey, good to see you. Um, I'm doing a new segment uh, um, where we 
talk to uh, celebrities about Woody Allen. I know you, we talked to you before, but we're, this is like a new on the street segment. I w just wanted to get your opinion. <laughs> Obviously. I wanted to get your opinion on Woody's new movie, what you thought of it, if you've seen it. Oh, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, anything that Woody Allen does is absolutely fantastic. Uh -huh. And his new movie certainly isn't an exception. Would you say that uh, Oscar is in the cards for Woody? always in the cards never discount woody when it becomes oscar time you know because he I, I mean you know you know i'm a big fan of it how about the supporting cast has woody picked a good one this time around come on it's woody allen <laughs> hey i gotta run okay 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 thanks joe you bet all right Thanks. That's a very interesting perspective on Woody. That's Joe's great. an insider, and he kind of knows what's going on. Okay. Uh, now time for another popcorn classic with Greg Turkington. This week on Popcorn Classics, my segment where we look at overlooked movies that are classics, we've got Q&A with Nick Nolte, Timothy Hutton, and Armand Asante. This is your basic cop and robber, shoot 'em up district attorney type of movie. Um, it was directed by the director of Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon and Network. It's not as good as any of those movies, but still worth a look if you happen to run across it on a sunny afternoon. So I would recommend Q&A highly. It's a popcorn classic. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week on On Cinema at the Cinema. Have you seen Q&A? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. i got to go and uh, i got a doctor's appointment for my eye. Can somebody help me out of here? Take, take some. I can't, I don't want to get up and walk into the camera. I can't, like the whole point is I don't want to get up and walk in front of the, thank you very much. You want Greg, I'll this. talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. With me today to discuss this week's movies is my guest, Greg Turkington. Greg? Hey guys, uh, good to be here. And Tim, if you need help with a card or anything, I realize you're in a bit of a predicament this yeah, week. Yes, so last week, as some of you remember, I was in a pretty bad motorcycle accident in which I lost the sight in my right eye. And some of you know, I already have very diminished sight abilities in my left eye. So thank goodness for a um, company called Lyft, which is a internet service where it provided uh, rides for me to get here today and to see the movies this week, hear the movies, I should say. So, um, okay, thank you. And the, today's movies are Guardians of the Galaxy, directed by James Gunn. Hmm? Chris Pratt, Vin Diesel, Z I can't hear that, so he's in. So we send Donald. Bradley Cooper. And the film is about an American pirate is named Peter Boyle is himself, finds himself as the object of a manhunt. After stealing a orb, coveted by the village. Um, this was one of those great action movies from Marvel. I love this movie. It was so much fun. so different than your normal Superman, Batman, etc. Uh, it sounded great. The sounds of the action and the all the explosions and lasers and the sounds of the ship and everything. And I really loved the dialogue. I loved um, hearing everybody talk about what was going on in the movie. Um, all the words people said were very good and uh, I love this movie I give it five bags of popcorn and two sodas Greg well you're only really seeing half the movie or not seeing any of the movie the way that you're doing it so I, I'm not even sure you should be reviewing the movie because it's not uh, that's I find it's that not offense. a book on I tape that, I found that I find that offensive 
Well, I find um, it ridiculous that you get in a motorcycle accident on a non-moving vehicle and suddenly you're blind. But I think anybody, no matter what their predicament, should be able to see the movies that they want to see. And this movie's great for blinds. But you don't want a deaf person reviewing albums for Rolling Stone. It doesn't make any sense. And that's why I think it might have been a good week for you to take off until you get your vision problem corrected. We're, we're, we're not on that kind in, of schedule. I could have easily hosted the show and talked about these movies and brought in Jimmy McNichol or somebody to actually discuss the movies in depth rather than talking about uh, you know what Can you you've talk heard. about we'll talk about the movie and don't worry about my situation well I mean this is a fun uh, you know movie as you said uh, it does get old to see Superman things like that and to have a new cast of characters as you mentioned uh, is kind of a thrill so I liked the movie a lot I'm glad I could see it um, uh, and uh, that makes all the difference so do go see it and uh, I would give it five bags of popcorn and maybe a uh, a cane for the blind. Mm. Well, uh, our next movie on the list this week. What about your popcorn rating? I give it five bags. Pay attention. Our next movie today is quick. You have to be quicker. Be up. Be two step. Because I can talk and hear you at the same time. I can just read the card. And... Don't touch my card. Get on up. Directed by Date Taylor. I can just starring. St starring who? Chadwick Boseman, David Andrew Lloyd, Nelson, and John Atlas. Chronicles of James Brown's life from extreme poverty to being a little citizens of all time. And that's about James Brown. I love this movie. I didn't know anything about James Brown. Uh, not my kind of music. I don't like B.B. Uh, King is about as black as I get. And Darius Rucker's. It reminded me of that movie about another blind uh, black man named Ray Charles. It was very similar to the movie Ray with Jamie Foxx. And I loved that movie as much as I loved this movie. And who knew so much about uh, music as, as did James Brown and all the stuff that he went through. Uh, Greg, I give it five bags. Yeah, I mean, I thought the cinematography was really uh, interesting, probably Oscar caliber. Mm -hmm. And um, there were a lot of visual elements to the movie that I thought really were special uh, that I think will stick with people long after the last song fades out at the end. Um, I thought it was a very, very excellent movie. And if you gave his life five bags of popcorn, you'd have to give the movie five bags of popcorn, and that's what I'm doing here today, and I'll throw in a CD of his greatest hits. All right, and go, um, I'm going to think of that song title about Sex Machine. You should have some of his music playing for the end of the show. Anything else? Let's go to an on-cinema, on-location with Greg Turkington. Hurry. Yes, this is the latest episode of what has become a very popular... Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On Cinema, At the Cinema, On Location. And we're here at a very special location. This is the spot where John Denver's car fills with rain. It's literally raining inside the car. Very cool scene in Oh God uh, from 1977. And because it's raining inside the car, he has no choice but to pull over and of course have another encounter with God, played by the great George Burns, one of my favorites. Takes place right here. Back to you, Tim. Oh, very interesting. Pretty cool. So that was another, is that similar to what you did last time with that? Just the, oh God, some. It's the same movie, but it was a different location. They, they shot it in different, different scenes in the movie, different locations. I just don't know how many people want to see every location from oh God. I think a lot do. Okay. Well, right. I'm completely lost. I need somebody to tell me where we're at. Decker's. Decker, July 31st, coming soon, more episodes of Decker. And uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next week on On Cinema. Turn it in.
when I say on cinema, lights go down. No, the lights are down. Oh, then. Yeah. All right. You don't even see light? I'm, I'm telling you, it's like nothing. It's like a black hole. Maybe next week we call uh, Jimmy or something. Don't worry about it. I schedule the guests. Can I get a little help getting out of here? Oh, watch the fing arm. I'm very sore. It's like going into my back now. Thank you. Get my lift guy. Where's my lift driver? It's got a fing pink mustache on it. That's how you know. I can't see that. No, you tell me if there's a car out there with a mustache on the front. That's all. Hi, everybody. Welcome to See You Again. My name is Tim Heidecker, and I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. Happy to be back with you again uh, for another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. And uh, we're here with my guest, Greg Turkington. Thank you for being here, Greg. Um, I am so glad, like I said, um, sort of uh, ironically, uh, to see you again. Because um, thank you so much to everybody at Hollywood Presbyterian's eye department who fixed my eye. And while they were there, they fixed my uh, left eye, so now I have, my vision is 2020 because of, uh, thank God for LASIK, which, um, and this was, the, they took the glass shards out of this eye, so now I can see out of both eyes. Um, so glad to be healthy, happy, and um, this guy's still healing. That's gonna take a little while, as you know. Um, people wondering how Hogshots is going, I've got a bit of an issue coming out with uh, Tom Cruise, who I've made the formal offer to be on the cover, and uh, he has not replied, and I've not heard anything, even his assistant hasn't replied. And if I don't have him for cover, I've already pre-sold the book to uh, bookstore Chapman's Books in Jackson Hole. I've pre-sold 10 copies of the books uh, under the condition that he is on the cover. So quick little message while uh, if he's watching Tom, I don't know what's going on. This is the third time I've reached out to your people uh, about offering you a part in the cover of my book, Hog Shots. And I'm at my wit's end because um, I don't know if you've created too much of a wall around you. You have too many yes men keeping you uh, from getting this kind of information. But I really feel like you're missing out on a great opportunity. But if you don't want to do it, I need to know because I need to move forward and need to find a star for the cover of my book. Uh, at this point, if I can't get you, I'd have to go to somebody like Jack Nicholson, and that is problematic because he doesn't even ride motorcycles anymore because of his age. Um, I'm at a loss, Tom, and I, I'm afraid that if this continues, um, it's going to start affecting the reviews that I give your movies. And I know that sounds harsh and unfair, but it's true, because how am I supposed to watch a Tom Cruise movie and not feel anger and resentment towards you? And you're gonna start seeing five-star Tom Cruise movies are gonna be more like two, three bags of popcorn, which I'd hate to do. So please call me back, get back to me, email me, whatever it takes, I need to hear from you now. Thank you. All right, I won't bore anybody more, more about hog shots coming to bookstores next year. Uh, first movie is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the remake, starring, John, directed by Lieberston, Liebsman, Jonathan Liebsman, with Megan Fox. Will Arnett, Billy, William Fitcher, Johnny Knockville, and my favorite actress, Whoopi Goldberg, back in the saddle. Whoopi. Uh, darkness has settled over New York City as Shredder and his evil foot clan have an iron grip on everything from police to politicians. The Turtles must work with fearless reporter April O'Neil and her cameraman Vern Fernwick to save the city and unravel Shrever's evil plan. I love this movie. It's great to see the turtles back on the big screen. I know it was one of my favorite shows growing up, and now we have the pleasure of spending a couple hours with them in the movie theater. I was so glad I was able to see this movie uh, with my own beautiful 2020 vision eyes, and I give it five bags of popcorn. Greg, what do you think? I don't, you know what? I don't really want to say anything about it because anything I say might end up in an episode of Decker. So. Okay. What's the, I'm sorry, was there? You took the footage, you did this interview with me for the, that I thought was for the show, I thought it was a little weird, but whatever. And then I watched Decker and it's it just cut with dialogue for oh, me, you me talking a, to me that you stuck in Decker you without ever asking. How the, you don't understand how Hollywood works, that's how it works. No, right. you no, ask no, someone, do you want to be in Decker? And then you film them in Decker. You don't steal footage from an on-cinema segment 
in, incorporated not, into oh, Decker. First of all, don't because I didn't agree to be part of Decker, and I wouldn't have agreed to it. All right. Don't and if I was going to do it, I'd want to act in it. I wouldn't want to just have footage of me answering questions about movie oh, expertise that I have, and then it suddenly I'm some weirdo character in Decker. No, you're not a weirdo character. You're an important part. You're a CIA analyst. It's a, kind of a cool part. You should be proud of that. First of all, I didn't steal anything. As soon as you walk onto this set. It's you, anything you say or do is mine. I own it. Oh, do you okay? have cameras in the toilets? Too, no, or? no. I, I'm using things responsibly, and you know that. It's and not responsible if I'm talking about uh, The Godfather 2, and then I watch Decker, and there I am talking uh, about some uh, CIA plan that I had it, no knowledge that you were yeah, using my footage. Yeah, you're not seeing the big picture. With Decker, there's no big picture. Oh, give me a break. You're such a baby on this. Do you want, do you want me to recut Decker without you in it? Yes. I can't do that. It's already aired. That footage I can use for whatever one I whatever no, I want to use can. it for. Yes, I can. I never agreed to that. That you agreed to be a part of the on cinema family, correct? Well, being part of a family doesn't mean being raped by dad, and that's how I feel. What you've done to me. Well, you're not taking. You're not using. You're not. What they say in the business is you're not. You're not using the. Uh, I did what I thought was right for the show. Stealing you, footage. It's not stealing, Greg. Okay. I didn't. Hey, hey. As soon as I, as soon as, like I said, you become part of the realm, you become part of the on cinema family, you become mine. Everything you do is mine. Okay? And if you don't want to do that, walk off, and I don't ever want to see you. I don't you want again. to do that because you can't steal yes, people's work do. like that. You're going to walk not off? Fair. You know, not, well, so I don't no want to, for, but. Greg Turkington has no opinion on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Five bags of popcorn. Huh? Good, good day. Five bags of popcorn. I f I'm in my constitutional rights to use whatever footage I no, want. No, you're not. That's called the Freedom of Information Act. That's uh, s Article 1 of the Constitution specifically identifies. They didn't as have movies of... back then, so there's nothing about that. This is not a movie, it's a mini series. It is freedom of speech, freedom of self expression that I own on cinema. And if you want to be a part of that, then you have to be a part of whatever I decide we do. Otherwise, you can go f yourself. <clears throat> I was in my rights to use that footage, and I could back that up to the Supreme Court if I need to. And you know it, okay? And what I did with it was something perfect and beautiful. I made you into a great actor, and you'll see. People are going to be running up to you asking you for parts in the next movie. You'll be the next Forrest Gump. We don't even have any other movies to talk about. All right, that's it. Get the lights. I did what, I did what was right for this show. Now, go to bed to do with this show. I will go to bed sleeping every night. I will go to bed sleeping every night knowing I did the right thing for this show. I did the right thing for Decker. I did the right thing for me. You go f yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema with your host, me, Tim Heidecker. And uh, my guest today is one of the guests we've have on, had on the show before, is Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Greg, thanks for being on our show again. My pleasure. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Decker. I'm um, getting almost more positivity about Decker than this show, uh, which makes sense because this show just reviews movies. Decker is a movie or a miniseries. And I'm glad you're a part of it now. And yeah, it's a cool show. I mean... I was a little skeptical at first, mm -hmm. um, but I started getting a lot of letters and a lot of comments from people. And, yeah, it's nice um, to be able to hear when you're wrong on something. I've, I've always sometimes go, I didn't like that, and then you go back and, and you figure out I was a fool. Well, I mean, there's things about it that I would have done differently, right. that you should have done differently, but uh, you know, just being in something with Joe Estevez is, is kind of a cool feather to have in your cap. You mm -hmm. know? For you, you should be grateful because you ended up not having to do very much work. Um, uh, you should be thanking me that, uh, anyways. Um, let's sometimes, talk. sometimes work is fun when it's mm. shooting a film, though. That seems like the kind of work I'd enjoy. You know, some things that aren't hard do usually become things that stink. It's my sort of perspective on that. <clears throat> All right, well, then uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, I'm thinking you know what? We didn't, do, we didn't do the movies. Put light back on. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Let's Be Cops, directed by Luke Greenfield, Nina Nodrev, Dobrev, Jake Johnson, and Damon Waynes Jr. Two pals dress as police officers for a costume party, but when they... i would be honest with you, I didn't see this one. Um, let's skip to the one everyone saw. Oh, I saw it, I saw it, yeah. yeah. It's it very funny. It's yeah. uh, 
you know, it's your typical summer comedy. Um, it's got flashes of brilliance. Um, the plot's your typical sort of cop, uh, buddy, funny times sort of movie. But uh, I think it's great. And if you only have money to see a couple of uh, summer comedies, make sure this is one of them. All right. So five bags of popcorn. I give it five bags too, based on that review. I'm going to go see it today with a couple of little mini donuts. Those little uh, <laughs> mini uh, Hostess donuts, because cops love donuts. Right. And I love cops. Now our next movie I did see. This one, The Expendables Three. Uh, this is directed by Patrick Hughes, starring Sylvester Stallone, of course, Jason Stratham, Jet Li, Wesley Snipes, Mel Gibson, Harrison Ford, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Cruise, Tom The gang's Hanks. all here. I mean, these are the, uh, the best Ford. Hollywood has. I'm not offer. done reading the names here. Yeah, okay. But it is a good uh, cast. Starring Sylvester Stallone, Jason Stratham, Jet Li, Wesley Snipes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Jack Lemmon, uh, Paul Newman, uh, okay, now you're pulling my leg. Uh, but it is a good cast. It is a good cast. <laughs> I was wondering cast. if you were paying attention. Well, um, I mean, you know, I happen to know uh, my movie trivia as to who's dead and who's alive. Right, so. and I like playing practical jokes on you. And uh, okay. like, uh, some of the audience must be going, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, it seemed like the pra practical joke when this real cast was announced. Right. Well, they all probably just get paid scale mm. because they love doing the work. Labor of um, love. Barney and the rest of the team come face to face with Conrad Stonebanks, <laughs> one of the original founders of the Expendables, who once thought to be dead is now an arms dealer. To fight him, Barney recruits a new era of Expendables who are younger, faster, and more tech savvy. So it's sort of, this isn't your grandparents' Expendables. This is the new generation. It's sort of that hip hop generation, web enabled generation 2.0. And this is my favorite version of Expendables. I think it's it's a shame. I know I predict this is an Oscar prediction. It won't win, but it should win. This is one of my won'ts but shoulds. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger's baby. I give it Schwarzenegger. I give Arnold Schwarzenegger five bags of popcorn alone, and the movie gets ten bags. I'd have to say I give it five bags of popcorn and two little pills that people think are probably steroids, but in fact it's just vitamin C, because I think people unfairly mm. accused Schwarzenegger of using that. He's a guy that spent a lot of time working out, mm -hmm. and you put a lot of work into it, you can get those kind of muscles without steroids, and I think that was the case with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I love and I, I, li I like these kind of movies, and re-watching some of the Decker stuff, that uh, it's very much in the vein of a movie like this, and it would make a good feature film, is to take the Decker stuff, expand on it a little bit, recut it, make it into a movie. Well, it's a good point. It's funny you bring that up because movies like Expendables 1 and 2, these Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone movies, Chuck Norris even, some of these guys were tr honestly an inspiration for me when writing Decker. Bond, and obviously Bond. an inspiration nope. for Decker. Nope. No? No. Just with no. the intrigue at the higher levels of nah, government? Nah, nah, because I never really liked that stuff. You know, I like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Expendables. Bond, James Bond. Nope. Okay. You no, know, I don't like Bond, so stop bringing it up. It just up. seemed like the it's kind of got I know because well, flair. yeah, but so is Jack Reacher, and so are the J the Jason Bourne movies. Uh, the movie with Liam Neeson, one of my favorite actors, called Nonstop on the Plane, was action adventure CIA spy plot movies. So these are all movies that are better than Bond, and Decker does not draw from Bond. Bond is shit, and everybody that watches Bond. Uh, get, in my, get on my, my naughty list. <clears throat> a big long list, but mm -hmm. hey, we'll agree to disagree on Bond. So go check out Decker now. I give Decker, oh, I'm sorry, I give Expendable 3's five bags of popcorn. Five bags of popcorn. All right, and uh, we're going to check out another On Location with the Greg Turkington. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Welcome to, welcome to another episode of On Cinema, At The Cinema, On Location. We're here in the supermarket from the movie, Oh God. This is the supermarket that John Denver was the manager of. I'm pretty sure it is um, the same supermarket from Oh God. And um, he was the manager and then he met uh, God, played by um, George Burns. Now it was in the, in the, it was a food world, and now it's a fresh and easy. Back to you. Okay, so is this a practical joke? No, it's just a practical way joke. of making a segment, which no, is to every episode, focus every on... every on-location thing you do has got to be on about, oh, God? Well, for season 
five of on cinema, it, I thought it would be good to. If you want to do build something on. conceptual like that, you have to clear that with me. The it's not that conceptual. It's my segment, and it's just about different movies okay. and different locations. God, and just when you were figuring out how to behave properly on this show, you stick it to me to some kind of weird concept. It's, there's joke. nothing weird about it. I'm just doing the it segment. It seems like you're cutting corners. If you don't want to go out and do the work, and these do, do, these locations are, in some <clears> cases are 20 miles away from each other. Well, I'm not you're cutting wasting corners. Every, you're wasting I your time. I spent quite a bit of bus money getting from one location to the next. I mean, Oh God was a big movie. People but love fine. to see I, Star no Wars locations. I have no problem doing one segment on Oh God. I have some reservations on two, but three is ridiculous. Well, they're all different like locations. If I did like three, you're sabotaging the if show. I did three segments, it was always okay. the same street corner. Yeah, I would agree it. with you. I'm done but these are all different it. locations. Yeah, you're bumming me out. That's all. You're just bumming me out. And your segments bum me out. And they ruin the show. I'm sorry. I have a mind to get on my Kawasaki and head back to Jackson Hole and not even finish out this season. Yeah, it, well, you'll get on your Kawasaki and fall right off. Before we even start, before we even put the key in the ignition. All right. Uh, I have some. You said you have two segments. Uh, Tim's, Tim's mailbag. Tim's mailbag, which okay. is a popular. Okay. All right. Segment okay. I'm on sorry, Greg. Season, we're um, we're actually not going to be getting to Tim's mailbag today on the show. We are um, wrapping it up right now. But stick around for a new show directly after this. It's on cinema after on cinema. And uh, thanks for watching. Watch Decker season finale coming up this week. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna snore. We have time. We, no, we don't because we had that. Uh, we had the on location segment, so we have to do this as a separate episode. But we're still gonna do it. Absolutely, we're gonna do it right now. Okay. It's on cinema after cinema with me, your host Tim Heidecker. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of On Cinema After Cinema. It's a show that gets into some of the stuff we weren't able to put into the episode of On Cinema At The Cinema. Today uh, we're going to be, I guess, talking with Greg Turkington here, my guest, about... Uh, Tim's mailbag. Some mail that we've got and we want to go through that. And What do we got? Well, you know, we get a lot of cards and letters and keep sending them, by the way. We do enjoy getting them. This was actually a very popular segment last season, and we kept the bag. So every week, hopefully, this becomes a recurring segment. Uh, I'll pull out a few of the letters. We do it every and, week. But. Well, now that we have this after cinema show, mm -hmm. we probably have time. Um, I'll pull out a few letters that came in, and uh, Tim can read them and answer any questions that you might have for him. Okay. Here's one from uh, Tracy Adams in Naperville, Illinois. Ah, Naperville, okay. It's out of Chicago. Okay. Loving the Decker episodes, Tim. Greg is a natural. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Please include him in more scenes. Well, nothing to worry about there. We've got a lot, lot more coming your way. Cool. Thanks, right, Tracy. No question there, so we'll just uh, move on from here's that. Here's something from England. Get out. All the way from the UK. Wow. It's international suddenly. Huh? So they get this in England too. Nice. That's cool. I thought it was just USA. Hello from jolly old England. Where Decker, I almost want to do this with an accent. Hello from jolly old England where Decker is my new favorite show. Uh, I won't do an accent. The chemistry between Joe Estevez and Greg is magic. Looking forward to more next season. Sincerely, Graham. Thanks, hey, Graham. Graham. Mm -hmm. Nice of you to write. No questions yet. And it is fun working with Joe Estevez. And then here's one from Sherry in Mesa, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona is where my son lives. Tim, loving you as Decker. Now here cool. we go. Your best work yet. Yep. Okay. Now just read the letter. We've got the time. Do you know if Greg would be eligible for a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor in a TV drama series? Uh, no, I don't. It's not my business. It's an internet show. Anyways. Thanks, Shay. <sighs> All right. Thanks for watching On Cinema After Cinema. See you next week. Um, now I go home. Is my lift here? Who is it? Has a mustache on the front. You'd see it pull up. I have to call him then. It should be here. It should be here like 20, it should have been 20 minutes Take ago. Take the bus. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, and we have another show for you where we celebrate movies and the great movies that come out this week with my guest, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be here, and congratulations to our host, Tim Heidecker, for 
a successful season of Decker. Well, thank you. I mean, which, it's... Uh, <laughs> People are talking about it. Yeah, I was skeptical, sure but yeah. man, I'm getting some letters and some cards and some emails, Twitter and things. It's pretty satisfying. It's cool. Well, it was and so fun to do. It was such a fun project. It was project. fun, definitely. It, you know, you write, you conceive of something, then you write it, and you get to produce it and share it with the world. And, and uh, I'd like to share this with you. Ah. It's a bouquet of flowers and Look at this. champagne. Oh, Celebrate. A toast geez. to Decker. Look at this. Thank and you, Greg. This is mm. something I think you really like is the first this? published review of Decker. Oh, wow. Yeah, Look and that. it's a good one, too. Yeah. Look at this. The reviewers are getting reviewed. This is going up on the Wall of Fame. I have to put this in my saddlebag and take her back to Jackson Hole. This is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, man. Never forget your first review, so you want to save that. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, cool item. I thank everybody for really... I shouldn't even get into this because I'm going to start crying. It's just been a really hard couple years, and seeing Decker hit the silver screen has been an honor. And I wouldn't have done it without you. Yeah, well, thanks. I look forward to doing the next season of Decker and the next season of On Cinema. What's going to happen in Decker 2? Can you give us a little bit of a preview about what my role will be and uh, what's going to happen with the whole gang? Well, I have been thinking a little bit about season 2 of Decker, and um, now that we've established this sort of uh, universe and... Yeah. Uh, now it's time to bring in the big guns. So I want to bring in some real actors who can add sort of their weight to it. Um, I don't know how much I see your character continuing into the future of the series because I feel like we've played that card and... Uh, but my character is sort of the expert on operations in the CIA. Right, so but I mean... Would... I think what where the character arc for Decker is, I don't want to give too much away here, you know, but um, let me put it to you this way. Your character is in the CIA. The enemy of Decker in the f new stuff is the CIA. So it doesn't make sense that he uses them. So that why, but I did get um, some nice uh, email from Timothy Hutton who wants to be a part of Decker too. So That'd be cool to work with him. Yeah. We can get your hopes up about Decker too. Still need you here for the show on cinema. So, uh, but this is really sweet. Thank you for that. Um, our review of a movie is Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. Finally, Sin City is back. Directed by Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez. Starring Jessica Alba, Mickey Rourke, Brian Rosario Darza, shush, Rosario, Dazon, Rosario Dawson, Bruce Willis, and James King. Jamie King. Uh, Sin City is back, and it reminds me of the original Sin City from years ago, and it's really one of my favorite movies. It's dark, it has a noir quality to it, and I loved it. I give it five bags of popcorn. And what I loved about it was I used my On Cinema app to remind myself about um, the original Sin City. So the app really came in handy, and I, I thank God I have the app on my cell phone. Uh, you can Anybody can get it at the App Store. It's On Cinema at the cinema app on Movie Guide for 2014. And that way you can find out more about Sin City and the other movies of Bruce Willis. Greg, what were your reviews of uh, Sin City? Yeah, it was good. It's, um, you know, if you've seen the original, you kind of know what to expect and uh, compare and contrast, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of times with movies where there's a sequel, they make a mistake and they leave one of the key actors out of the sequel. You know, whether it's uh, Back to the Future 2 without Crispin Glover, the movie was a flop. If you do this with Decker... Well, we're I mean, not it's, talking it's about not Decker, really we're the talking same. about Sin it's, City. I know, but when you've established the world, it's like Joe Estevez and me and you as Decker, and to just leave uh, a character that people like out of it, that's when you're running the risk. I mean, if you saw Jaws 2 and you're wondering, well, where's Richard Dreyfuss? And that's why it was half as successful mm -hmm. as Jaws, you know? And these yeah, but Star Wars like, movies where they didn't have Mark Hamill, you know, uh, the Phantom Menace, and people are just thinking to I themselves, wouldn't go why ahead didn't and they just make yourself the... to Mark Hamill, okay? You were a bit player. You were almost a glorified extra. That's, yeah, Mark Hamill started be... out as an extra, too, in things. But when you're getting fan mail like I'm getting and things, you start uh, to realize that... I don't give a shit that, about those letters. They're all in the same handwriting. I know it was you. you don't, you they weren't all me. in the same handwriting. Yes, they were. No. Some of it was in cursive. That's not all the same. I was blind, but now I can see. Those were That was the same handwriting. I could tell. But if you saw uh, American Graffiti and you've got Ron Howard and, you, and you've got 
Wolfman Jack and this cast that you grow to love. And then the more American Graffiti comes out and it's a bunch of no names. Does anyone remember? Yeah, more but American let me give you graffiti? an example. Nobody remembers let me give you that. an example. Uh, Hunt for Red October starred Alec Baldwin. They replaced him with Harrison Ford to make Patriot Games and the other movies I can't remember. Those movies well, that's were it. Better you, can't, than, you can't remember them. Yeah, but and that's those my movies point were more exactly. successful than Hunt for Red Well, October. I don't think a movie that you can't remember is a successful uh, movie. I think Harrison Ford is no, probably no probably one of the No one's forgetting Gone with the Wind. No one's forgetting a movie that's successful. All right. Well, they did it with Batman, too. So, anyways, well, and the first one was the best of the Batman movies. Give a review movies. for Sin City? Yeah, five bags of popcorn, but I do think that it's a cautionary tale of how you can screw up a movie through not honoring the people that have made something what it is. All right. Are we doing, we're doing another on. Location? On Cinema on Location. Okay. This is a very special one. I All think right. you'll like it. Let's run that. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema on Location. Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of On Cinema at the Cinema on Location. Today we're at a very special movie location the schoolhouse from. Oh God, 1977's Thank Oh you. God That's enough. is starring Cut. Shut it off. John Denver Shut it off. and George Just let it run. It's, no, it's almost over anyway. No, that's enough. I'm the people wanted to say. see this segment. You screwed up, Greg. I told you that there'd be hell to pay if you did that to me again, and you did it without did what? listening. what? I'm giving you a good segment. Enough of the On God segments. Nobody wants to hear that. That's it. Okay? I asked you not to do it, and you did it. I mean, any movie that was shot in L.A., you go out there and do one of your stupid segments for Go to the f***ing uh, Forest Lawn Cemetery and talk about Michael Jackson and The Wiz or something. They didn't I shoot The Wiz at the cemetery. Well, find All I asked you to do is no more Oh God segments, and you did it, all right? So, do you have anything else? Can you do an, uh, a, a popcorn classic? I could do a popcorn classic, but, I mean... Let do a popcorn classic. But I'll tell you this, people are interested in where films were made. I know, but they're not interested in where every scene from Oh God is, is filmed. Do you understand that? All right? So no more on locations from you because you don't learn your lesson. Throw, throw to a popcorn classic. What do you got? You got it? Yeah, I got one. Our popcorn classic today is IQ with Meg Ryan. Tim Robinson. I swear to God, you've done that one before. That was Q&A. This is IQ. No, you did IQ. Do we, do we have a record of We the did Q&A like two weeks ago. No, like I'm talking last year we did IQ. I don't think so. Yep. Q&A. Oh, no, wait. With, I don't uh, think so. With um, Albert Einstein and Walter Matthau and everybody? That's it. He's, uh, Walter Matthau is Einstein and... Maybe we did. This is the one where, uh, well, it's a, it's a great movie. Um, it, it's a comic genius. What? Who is? Just Walter Matthau, Meg Ryan, Stephen Fry, Tim Robbins. All right. Well, that's really kind of a bummer, but... Uh, great. Oh, it's short notice. This is all that I had, so... It's... I, I remember this one. This is a good one. Yeah, I've seen this a couple times. This is a classic. It's very funny. All right. Um, never underestimate the power of love. And Walter Matthau is always great. So. All right. Well, that's another. We recommend IQ again from On Cinema. All right. Thank you guys for watching. It's just, I don't know what to tell you. What is this? Junk. That's not <clears throat> junk. Drink the whole goddamn bottle. Oh, boy. Where's my lip? You forgot the flowers. I'm sorry. You ever have one of those hangovers that make you feel like uh, you got jackhammers going on in your head? I went to a biker bar last night for the first time in a long time, met some very cool guys, and stayed out till the fucking place closed. The Hangover, you ever see that one? Zach Galifianakis and uh, Bradley Cooper, very funny. We got. Um, thanks for watching. Greg Turkington's with me as a guest. Ho guest. And uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> I had a big one last night with the guys, my motorcycle guys. Um, old roadhouse. Where? No, not far from Topanga Canyon. That's where a lot of the motorcycle guys hang out.
But uh, drank Jim Beam and all the rest of it, beers. Did you tell them about your accident? No. Didn't get into that. Told them about JH. Uh, I told them whenever they're in Jackson Hole, they got a place to crash on my floor. And I got a tattoo. Uh, movies today, we got November Rain, starring Roger Pier Pierce Bronson and uh, Oleg Konio and Elizabeth Taylor. Um, that's uh, an ex-CIA operative is brought down in a mission against his former pupil in a deadly game involving CIA and the Russian president-elect. Sounds like Jekker. Yeah, it's got tone notes. Suddenly now, how look at how interesting how Hollywood's sort of perking their ears up, going, hmm. Kind of comes full circle from Bond to Decker, back no. to Pierce Brosnan, James Bond. Right, well, Pierce Brosnan, best known for his work on Bond, but not one of my favorites. I like this movie a lot. Um, it was a lot of uh, good intrigue and sort of adventure and another, another way of putting it. I give it four bags of popcorn. Greg, what did you think of this November Rain? Man, I'm sorry, it's November Man. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, it's just hard sometimes to focus when you watch a movie with an ex-Bond uh, because you're thinking about past Bond glories and things like that, and it's, it's just a struggle to maintain the focus on the movie you're supposed to be watching. I mean, Pierce Brosnan is my favorite Bond, so uh, there's a lot to think about here. And so I was a little bit distracted. I feel like if I'd been completely absorbed in it, I would give it five bags of popcorn. And that's not the movie's fault, so I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn. Great. Two, five, ba ten bags of popcorn. That's dinner mm. for somebody. Mm -hmm. Our next movie is Jezebel, starring Kevin Durant. St I'm sorry, directed by Kevin Garrett. Sarah Snook, made-up name. Mark Weber. Joel Carter. Returning to her childhood home in Louisiana to recover from a horrific car accident. I know a thing or two about that. Jezebel comes face-to-face -face with a tormented spirit that has been seeking... Her return, and uh, this is a, basically a ghost movie, and it's uh, different than some of the other ghost movies I've seen. Not as good, but like I got Ghost, a, right? With Whoopi it's Goldberg. Not, a, not, not, a, not as good of a movie as I would have liked, but I got to hand it to the director for making a great film. I really liked it. I give it five bags of popcorn, and I hope you watch it too. I liked it. I mean, I don't like it as much as Ghost, which is sort of the gold standard of ghost movies. Look at the dynamic duo. Patrick Swayze, Whoopi Goldberg, you're always going to win. It's my top ten for sure. It's a great movie. This movie, it does have its moments. It's scary. It's frightening. Anything with a ghost is frightening. That's the last thing you want is to be haunted by a ghost. I was kind of haunted by the ghost of James Bond uh, in that I had just seen the November Man earlier in the day and I sort of still had Bond on my mind. So it's kind of hard to keep my focus. Um, when I did keep my focus, I liked what I saw and uh, I'm gonna have to give it five bags of popcorn and maybe a white sheet, like kids for Halloween would wear a white sheet and cut a couple holes in it, sort of a primitive ghost outfit. Not like the Klan, no, just for kids. It's very different than the Klan, but that's what we would wear you right. know, for Halloween back mm -hmm. before you had the plastic masks from Avatar and all these mm -hmm. popular movies. And I wish we'd had things like that back in the day because uh, they're better costumes. All right, well, let's move things along and we have a. I believe we have a popcorn classics from Greg. Let's. No, no, no. I was going to do popcorn classics, but um, I sent you an email about this. Actually, we switched it over to do a different segment today. I was going to do I a don't popcorn. Check email. All right. Well. Okay. It's not, not on location. On location no. <laughs> not on no. location. It's actually a, a segment that you developed for the show called On Cinema on Guests, where we okay. interview guests of the show and learn more about them. Okay. What do you got, Larry Terman, or? No. Just run the clip. All right, let's see who Greg's interviewed. Himself, maybe. Let's take a look. Thanks for Hi, Greg. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, um, I'm doing this new segment for On Cinema called On Cinema On Guests, where mm -hmm. we sort of get to know the guests that we've had on the show, and you were one of our most popular guests, so oh. I was hoping to get an update. So what have you been up to lately? Um, I've been busy with... Maybe. You know, Tim and I have a baby now. I named him Tom Cruise after his favorite actor. I don't know. He hasn't returned my call or anything, but he sent me money, so I bought a ticket to go back to America. I want Tim to meet our baby. I miss America. I miss you, too. Thank you. Hmm? Well, we'd love to see you here. Ah, yay. See you guys soon. Yes, thanks for doing the interview. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. 
Okay, so that was On Cinema, On Guests. Um, Tim had to go make a phone call, and that wraps up another episode. See you next week. Just turn out the light. Just turn out the light. Just turn out the light. Here, let's just, just flick the switch. Hi everybody, welcome to the final episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, thank you all for watching. It's been, uh, it's been a tough couple of weeks for me. Um, uh, as soon as we wrap here, be honest with you guys, I am getting on my horse, as they say, and uh, heading to back to Jackson Hole. And um, we'll see if I ever come back, to be honest with you. Because um, I really do miss it out there. I miss that clean air and my bison jerky, and my friend, my new friends that I've made there, and simple living. I want to welcome my guest, Greg Turkington. We'll hey just guys. do our movies here real quick. And um, Dark Places, directed by Gills Packet Brenner. I don't know what that is. What is that? Gillis Packet Paquet. It looks like the word racket, like racket but with a P, Gills, Packet, Brenner. Gillis, Packet, is it French? Packet, Brenner. You know, we'll have to live with that one. Starring Charles Theron, Chloe Grace Moritz, and Nicholas Hloot. Bunch of no names. I'm sick of looking at these movies that don't have people I know in them, okay? Where the hell's Tom Hanks? Get Tom Hanks in there. Um, you got to make more movies with Tom Hanks. He's in a lot of movies. He's not. A woman who survived the brutal killing of her family as a child. He's not in enough. Oh, there's only so many. Hours a woman in a who day. survived the brutal killing of her family as a child is forced to confront uh, the events of that day by a secret society obsessed with solving crimes. Um, I could not bear to watch this movie. Um, it was just too. There's too much ch kid stuff in it with having babies and everything. I can't handle that right now. Can't handle that information, okay? There's too much going on for me right now. I'm stacked. I'm up to my ears and shit. Everybody's giving me crap, wanting this and that from me. I cleared my, I, 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 I sleep good at night knowing that I did what I thought was right. Well, you sleep good at night because you haven't done anything. I'm the one that the Ayaka comes knocking at my door, uh, crying her, 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 her eyes out, crying her eyes out because you won't show. let her into your place. And now she's sleeping on my couch, and I've got a baby screaming. And it's very hard. Well, I don't want to hear about that. I don't know why with, she's even here. She shouldn't have come over here. She doesn't have a student visa or anything like that. Well, because she, she wanted you to, to meet your child. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I told her exactly what to do with that kid. Nine months ago, whenever that all thing went down, I told her exactly what to do with that. She didn't do it. That's her choice. That's a choice she lives with. But as far as I'm concerned, I have nothing to do with her. I'm going back on my motorcycle. I'm going back to Jackson Hole, and I'm going to see the, the people that I love out there. I don't love people here. I don't love them. All right? No, I'm not talking about it. You, you can be with her if you want. You can raise that child. Well, I'm not raising the child, but the child's at my house right now. I don't care you don't... where that child, that kid could be the bottom of the ocean for all I care. He's not mine. He looks just like you, so he's definitely uh, yours. I take no responsibility for that. The check was in the mail. What she did with that money is up to her. Well, That's she's been spending it on baby yeah, food, on hospital bills, and she's spending it on a flight. For her and the baby to come out and right. see the baby's father. Well, so that's what she spent it on. I got news for you. And that's she's a better not an American way... citizen, and she does not have the rights that you and I have. And well, that... the baby's an American citizen no, because the baby, the baby was, was born, born on foreign soil, born from an American father. Wrong. I'll take the paternity test. Who knows whose baby that is? She's been sleeping around. I heard. No. This is not. The, it should be off air, anyways. Nobody cares about this stuff. Well, one thing um, that I care about is that when Ayaka came to my. Uh, apartment from your place, she takes out of her suitcase the movie list that I had lost, that I thought I had lost back last season, uh, so where I've been keeping my 500 movies and she's, 500. No, she didn't steal list. it. She found it, and you apparently had hidden it or something. I don't know if it's a prank or what it was, but since I had started a new count, 
and I had gotten, at this point, I'm actually up to 200 mm -hmm. on the new count. The good news is, for the viewers, is now I can take the previous list and add that seamlessly because there was never a day where I skipped movies. Add that to it. All right, so now we have about the, that list. So now, with the 200 movies that I had seen, I can add the original list of 127, which puts me at 327, which means uh, it's going to be in December that we reach number 500. So it's going to be this year. So that's very exciting. It's nice to uh, get these back because this is a lot of time I put into these and to have lost them was really upsetting. And uh, so right, I'll well, see everybody in December at the yeah. Guinness Book uh, induction ceremony. I won't be there. I'll be, uh, I'll be in uh, probably riding around on a motorcycle. And that's the end of On Cinema because I'm done with this. I, I can't do. I can't go and watch these movies and talk about this crap. It's it's a complete waste of my time. It's a waste of your time. I don't know what you're gonna do. You're probably gonna jump off a bridge without this show. But I'm out of here. I gotta clean up my life. I gotta get away from the people that are creating negativity in my life. And like that's yourself. What I'm doing right now. No, I'm a perfect person. The people around me are flawed and full of shit. So thank you guys and f make up your own minds about what movies you should watch. And what about Who the Green Inferno? Think? The Green Inferno? Didn't see it. Don't care. It's crap. Eli Roth. It's a bunch of junk. More important things in life than movies. That's a fact. Yeah, like taking care of your baby. No, no. Well, no. anyway, it's a good movie. I'd give it five bags of popcorn. Um, yes, All right. well, it's your dark. show now. Yeah, okay. you're, you're the host of On Cinema. And thank you for, for watching. Uh, get, get the mug and the app so we can make some money back from all the money I spent on this goddamn show. And more Decker soon, we hope. Thank you, guys. I love the movies. Comedy, drama, action, sci-fi, The Hobbit. What are the experts saying about the movies? 501 movies in 501 days. That's my record. This is my area of expertise. I'm Greg Turkington, the new host of Greg Turkington's On Cinema at the Cinema. Time to get serious about movies. This is gonna be fun. That's a wrap. Hey guys, welcome to the premiere episode of Greg Turkington's On Cinema at the Cinema, the show where we review movies and provide critical expertise so that you can make a decision on what movie you want to see this weekend. Uh, you may have seen the show in the past. This is a little bit of a different show now. We're going a little more into the world of expertise. People are asking me, who is your guest expert going to be now that you're hosting the show? And we went through a lot of applications, but I'll tell you something. Uh, being a host is a tough job, and it's hard to be able to be a host and an expert. We needed to bring somebody in who could fulfill that role better than anyone. And uh, I think you'll be surprised at who we found. Uh, I'd like to introduce right now uh, the new guest, the new permanent guest of On Cinema at the Cinema, Greg Turkington. Oh. Hey guys, uh, good to be here back on the show once again. Uh, it's been a pretty busy time off uh, during which I set a new world's record. I aimed to watch 500 movies in 500 days and we did it one better with 501 movies in 501 days. So uh, I'll be hearing from the Guinness folks pretty soon and we'll keep you up to date on that situation. Pretty cool. Um, so uh, today the movies that myself and my guest will be reviewing um, include Jupiter Ascending. This is directed by Andy and Lana Wachowski, starring Mila Kunis, Channing Tatum, and Eddie Redmayne. In the future, a young, destitute woman gets targeted for assassination by the Queen of the Universe and begins her destiny to finish the Queen's reign. Uh, what did you think, Greg? Yeah, you know, this is, this is kind of the epitome of the popcorn movie. These are the guys that did The Matrix, and if you love The Matrix, and The Matrix 2, The Matrix 3, the sequels, uh, you'll love this. They haven't done sequels to this yet, but I'm sure they will, and I'm sure we'll like those as well. Uh, needless to say, I agree with our guest. Uh, 
I think that this movie is uh, really a lot of fun. It's the kind of thing you'd want to go to with a friend because it gets a little scary. Uh, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn. Uh, our next movie today is the SpongeBob movie, and uh, it's directed by Paul Tibbet and Mike Mitchell, uh, starring Tom Kenny, Antonio Banderas, Clancy Brown. Uh, in this movie, SpongeBob goes on a quest to discover a stolen recipe that takes him to our dimension where he tangles with a pirate. Let's get some expert opinion on this one. I'm going to give this one five uh, this bags of popcorn the... and uh, maybe a souvenir keychain from the Matrix just to remind folks of the origins of this film. Sorry, that's from Jupiter Ascending. Uh, how about the SpongeBob movie? Oh God, what can you say about SpongeBob? He's uh, an American institution. Uh, having him on the big screen where he belongs is kind of a thrill. This is something you could take your kids to. You can take your grandparents too because SpongeBob's been around a long time and built up quite a fan base. I'm gonna give this five bags of popcorn and uh, a little cup with SpongeBob printed on it and you can have soft drinks or even put a handful of popcorn in it. And it's an interesting trend. Uh television shows or cartoons expanding into being feature films and it's something we should keep our eye on for the future. Um, now we have a new segment here on the show oh, and I give that one five bags of popcorn also. Uh, the ten bags in total for Spongebob, uh, the Spongebob movie. Uh, and so we have a new segment here that we're debuting. I think this is going to be pretty popular with the movie heads out there who watch this show. Uh, in the past I hosted a very popular segment uh, called Popcorn Classics, where we looked at some of the great movies in all genres. Uh, because of my hosting duties now, it's a little bit hard to maintain the uh, quality on the Popcorn Classics segment. Uh, I've got a lot of hats to wear. And so we're introducing a new segment, which we're calling Golden Age Comedies. WC? Daniels, it's me, your old pal W.S.C. Fields, here to introduce a new segment called Golden Classics of Comedy. I just want to thank uh, Greg Turkington uh, for having me here uh, to do this. And do I have a Golden Age comedy classic for you today, starring Drew Barrymore and Luke Wilson in Home Fries. And these two love bugs get into it just like I used to when I would play Squilligin with my leading ladies. It stars uh, two lovers and a pregnant Drew Barrymore. The only problem is her, his brother wants to kill her. The only th question I have, do you want fries with that? It's a great movie, and I think it's going to be fun for everyone. Maybe too risque for the little ones. This ain't no Mae Westy film. It's one of my favorites. That said, I've never watched a movie I didn't enjoy. All right, I want to throw it back to Greg Turkington. And I can't wait to be here next week and every week in this exciting new chapter of WC's career. Back to you, Greg. My little chickadee. W.C. Fields, the legend, and that's a great segment, W.C., and we'll be seeing a lot of you in episodes to come and in seasons to come because we've got some pretty high expectations for this program over the next few years. Finally, a show that introduces movie criticism for all to enjoy, and I'm very excited about it. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week on Greg Turkington's On Cinema at the Cinema. Great to be here, and I'll see you all next week on On Cinema at the Cinema with your host, Greg Turkington. Right. No. no. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker, the original host and now the new host of On Cinema at the Cinema. 
Thanks for watching. I'm glad to be back. This is my show and I appreciate uh, being back and being back with the old host who is now my guest, Greg Turkington. Greg, thank you so much for being on my show. Hey guys. I gotta say, this has been a wild several months um, and I'm gonna try to get through this without getting too emotional, but I, I do wanna bring everybody up to speed. Um, it's gonna be a long show. It's gonna be a somewhat painful show because of uh, where we're at. I don't know how much time we're even gonna have for the movies, but let me just start by saying, last week I was in such a different place because of what I realized all at once was I do not belong in Jackson Hole with the filth trash that live there, bad people. Don't ever go there. Ter terrific, let me put it this way. I was getting guys that were involved with KKK, all right? I didn't know that when I was hanging out with them and doing business with them, but I found out later. It was a bad scene and I had to get out of there. And I was looking at Greg Turkington's On Cinema, At the Cinema, and it dawned on me that where I belong was what I had given up, which was being the host of On Cinema, At the Cinema. And I had it all. And it dawned on me, I said, why did I throw all that away to go to Jackson Hole to live amongst these terrible people who are doing terrible things to me? And I have to say, I, I want to thank Greg Turkington here for agreeing to come back and be the expert that he is on this show. I know that was a painful conversation we had to have. And I am proud of myself for making these hard choices. And I want to salute myself and pat myself on the back for having the courage to admit when I'm wrong and also to acknowledge that there is a place for me and it is here as the host of this show. It is great to be back as the head of the On Cinema family. I am the, pa the father of the On Cinema family and the father has come home, much like in the classic Bible tales of Abraham and Moses and Jesus Christ himself. I have come back and my flock is now amongst us and I am the shepherd to this flock. Almost like in the story of Christ, he has risen from the grave. Uh, and I am back to reclaim what is mine. Like the Ten Commandments. Like the Ten Charles Commandments with Charlton Heston, yeah. You can almost quote Arnold Schwarzenegger himself by saying, I'm Bach. And, you know, Greg, you, you demonstrate a, a real cautionary tale. You, you've taught us that you can't do everything. And um, Greg did the best he could, but I think we all agree that uh, I belong back here running this ship and it's great to have you on as an expert, and a, you make a great host, make a great guest, and we are great to be back to where we started. Um, yeah, thanks. I'm just, I'm glad to be, you know, doing the, providing the expertise and stuff. Greg, did you want to say something about this experience, maybe? Uh, yeah, you know, I kind of thought it was going to go on longer. I went into this this new season as a new show, new credit sequence that we worked very hard on. Oh, a quick note: we are going to be obviously going back to the old credits. I didn't get a chance to fix that. That's what everybody wants to see. Could mix the old and new credits since we're both sort of the regulars on this show. So you say something mm -hmm. about movies, I say something about movies. I think that would be kind of cool. I want to thank you for coming in and doing that, I mean, yeah, giving yeah. it your best shot. And, uh, it I almost look forward gives you. A, to, uh, excuse me. It almost gives you a little more perspective on the work that goes into what I do. Yeah, you know, um, I always thought what you did was tough. Mm -hmm. And then working on last week's episode, I realized, yeah, what he does is tough. What's even tougher is doing his job, <laughs> also doing my job as the expert, and also producing segments, outside segments like uh, Golden Age Comedy. So I was actually doing more than you've ever done on the show or than anyone's ever done. I was doing it all. It was a one-man show, and it was a bit exhausting, I got to say. All right, well... Things are back to the way they should be. All things come back to the center, as my guru says. Um, I've been reading an interesting book I'm going to talk about next week. What are the movies? Today? Yeah, we'll get to the movies in a sec. Uh, mm -hmm. There's so much to get through. Uh, news about Decker. Decker 2 is definitely happening. Everybody's been asking about that. Um, sort of going about it in a weird way. Uh, as some of you guys know, I took out a very large small business loan through the federal government to publish... Uh, hog shots, which is not happening, thank God. Oh, that's not happening? Yeah, um, I do not recommend motorcycles uh, to anybody anymore. People should drive cars a lot safer and stick with cars. You don't need to be on a motorcycle. No. So the money's there. I've got a timeshare right now in Hawaii, the island of Hawaii, where I will be uh, spending time and shooting Decker 2 because I have an opportunity to attract a better, cl higher class of talent, people like... Um, 
Vaughn Firth could be in it. Whoever I'm going out to, say somebody like F. Murray Abraham or somebody like this, it's going to sound a lot more appealing now that I'm shooting in Hawaii. They're going to jump on the next flight. Well, that's a good idea. You keep your core cast of Joe and myself. I mean, somebody like Abdul probably doesn't need to come back because he's dead, but uh, Special Agent Kington or the President are sort of what makes the show what it is. And then bring in some name actors to bring in more interest in the series. That's and we're that, still that, trying to figure that out, who's going to be in the show, mm -hmm. how many characters reoccur. I'm happy to be a part of it wherever you're shooting it. I so. appreciate that, Greg. And uh, so I want to thank everybody for their support and their encouragement. On Cinema is back on track. Decker 2 is back on track. And let's talk about movies. Fifty Shades of Grey, starring, or directed by Sam Taylor Johnson, starring Dakota Johnson, another Johnson, Jamie, O'Dorn Jamie Dornan, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. So another three Johnsons in this movie. Uh, directed by Johnson and, direct, and starring Dakota Johnson and Aaron Taylor Johnson as well as Jamie Donson. Jamie uh, Dornman. All right. Well, we all know this is a famous book uh, about literature student Anastasia Steele's life changes forever when she meets handsome yet tormented billionaire Christian Grey. So Fifty Shades of Grey is about Christ, uh, the name Christian Grey. Uh, this was a por almost a porno in my book. It was a sexy thriller full of uh, nudity and sex of all kinds and dirty sex and uh, pornographic sex. And it was uh, hard to keep uh, my hard to keep calm during the movie because it was very raunchy. And I loved it. I give it five bags of popcorn and five cold glasses of soda to put between my legs. Um, to cool down. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of looking and, uh, at it. I saw it more as a kind of a romance. It did have some adult elements to it, but a lot of movies do these days. That's nothing new, I and mean, it's just the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. I think that if it's Valentine's Day or something, this might be the movie for you. So I do give it five bags of popcorn and five little chocolate hearts in a, a commemorative, uh, like a heart-shaped little gift box. All right, enough of that movie. Um, we got the next movie come up, Kingsman. That's funny, The Secret Service. Kingsman. Like uh, the old character from Decker 1, Kingsman. Kingston. Kingston, yeah. What you, not old character, he's current character, but uh, yeah, Kingston, who is the special agent, master code breaker, breaks all the codes. Mm -hmm. The director, Matthew Vaughn, starring Colin Firth, Firth the old Michael Caine, and uh, Taron Egerton, whoever that is. Uh, veteran secret agent, sounds like somebody I know. John Decker. John, uh, Jack Decker. Or sorry, Jack Decker. Takes a, a young upstart under his wing. That's a very similar to Decker. Um, I think it's interesting you see now, Decker was so successful online, you see a lot of these new movies coming out that have sort of that tip of the hat to well, It's the more Decker than a tip of the hat when they're taking names of our characters and putting them in the title of the movie. It's a little bit more than that. But, I mean, we when you were writing the original Decker, you were looking at James Bond and sort of no, tipping your hat true. to Bond. And so it makes sense that's that not true. that I was carries not being through and that they by James tip Bond our at all. So hat to us. That. But so. um, more people like Jack Reacher, Cobra, starring Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Nonetheless, there are a lot of similarities to Decker, which is kind of what makes this good, is when you're watching it, it reminds you of how much we really appreciate Decker's appearance on the uh, action scene. And uh, so I really enjoyed this. Well, I love this movie. I give it five bags of popcorn and one soda. I give it five bags of popcorn and a videotape on which we've put five episodes of Decker because uh, I think these guys learned a lot from it and it shows. All right, thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next no, week. No, 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 we still got to do Golden Age comedies, my segment that I produce. No, we don't. That segment's dead. We're not doing that segment because. No, because we contracted for the whole. Season that for contract these. doesn't mean anything to me. It's something you made with. Well, it means something to Mark. Uh, I don't. Mark, it means Ma something to me. Let me. Explain something to him. Mark, I apologize, but things changed here, and we're now uh, kind of going back to the original format. It doesn't. Unfortunately, that segment's not going to be something we continue on. I can make them quicker. Uh, I've order. been getting a lot of emails from people who liked the segment from last week. Right, it's we, probably can the, we talk about this after the I show? Can I do this one just because I, I already watched it, and uh, you know, I have my suit. For now, Mark, why don't you go ahead and give us your uh, movie there, and, and we thank you for your time, and really, really do wish you the best. Okay? It's a recurring segment. It's not a recurring segment. That segment is done. Thank you. Godfrey Daniels!
Hello, everybody, my chickadees, and welcome back to uh, Golden Age Comedy Classics. Today I have a good one for you today. It's called Soul Food, and it stars Vanessa Williams and v Vivica A. Fox in this fun family romp. They get together and for dinner each week and they dish up the laughs. It's a warm and uh, embracing family comedy. So this is the e end of a co golden, golden comedy classic from W.C. Fields. We just want to take a second to uh, thank Greg Turkington for having me on. Uh, I really, I know it's, it's going to be, apparently it's short-lived, um, but uh, I, I had a lot of fun, and I hope you got it. Did too! Thanks for uh, Thank you, W.C. Fields. And uh, that's it for now, and we'll see you next week with more popcorn, with more uh, on cinema at the cinema. Okay. The thing is, we paid to get the, the credits made for that film. That's We're fine. not. We'll throw that away. And he doesn't, we don't see him on set again. Well, you need to give the segment a chance because it's been no, pretty I'm popular. I've been getting a, a lot of emails. And I produced it, and I'm pretty proud of it. Okay, well, it goes away today. Well, that's just your opinion. Well, it's my show, so thank you very much. All right, I need to go and uh, hit Ikea because the mattress that you have for me sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema with your host, me, Tim Heidecker. And I got to say, the outpouring of love and appreciation uh, upon my return last week was truly moving. I appreciate all those um, words of uh, kindness that were sent out by you, the wonderful On Cinema family. It is so great to be back uh, doing what I do best, hosting On Cinema at the Cinema. <clears throat> I got uh, a lot with of my, uh, good, stand by, I got a lot of good feedback. We have oh, I got a lot of good, good feedback too. With my uh, happy to have with me today is my guest of the, on the show is Greg Tur uh, Turkington. Hey guys, and thanks for the feedback that I got from people who did really appreciate the first episode of the season. We got derailed a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to be back here uh, as the resident expert. Great. I tell you what, it's been a busy couple of weeks getting readjusted into the LA lifestyle. Ab absolutely love being back here in uh, North Hollywood here with my new roommate, uh, Greg Turkington here. And <clears throat> I appreciate him letting me bunk up with him. It's been fun. Been watching a lot of movies together and uh, talking about this Decker show which is ha <coughs> happening. So proud of myself for pursuing this. Uh, you know, Decker 2 has been a dream of mine. And um, I have to tell you, it's coming along OK. We're, we're, we're kind of in a bit of a stumbling block right now with the writer's block and everything, trying to figure out some of those plot points that are going to make it so fun to watch. Have not cracked some of those codes. Well, that's what Kingston um, is on board for, <clears throat> to crack some of the codes. I mean, in the script, writing the script, figuring out how, what's going to happen next has been a bit challenging. Uh, but anyways, why don't we get into the movies today and we'll talk about Decker some other time. Uh, first up we have Hot Tub Time Machine 2 starring uh, Rob Corduroy, Ray Craig, Robins Craig Robinson, oh, Chevy Chase uh, from Animal House, mm -hmm. and Gill Gilligan, Jake Gilligan, Gilligan, mm, Gilligan Jacobs. When Lou, who has become, I don't know what Lou is. Character from Hot Tub right. Time Machine. Right. If you saw the original, that it was, was like the main Lou character. Diamond Phillips. No, that was the main character from Hot Tub Time Machine. Okay, I know that. I'm saying I didn't know if they should put that on here. No, they assume, I know by they the assume that you know your stuff. If I know about the, the actors, show. not the character name as much. Right. Uh, when Lou, who has become the father of the internet, is shot by an unknown assailant, Jacob. I don't know, why is it called an unknown assailant? If oh, I see, is shot by an unknown assailant. Jacob and Nick fire up the time machine again to save their friend. So this is a great sequel, and I'm um, happy they made this one. Everybody was kind of on edge wondering what was going to happen at the end of Hot Tub Time Machine 1, and this one sort of solves some of those mysteries. And it's a very funny movie. I was laughing uh, throughout the whole picture, and it's also a quality movie. So I give it five bags of popcorn and some cub t tubs of soda. And, you know, Hot Tub Time Machine, I really think, was sort of the airplane of our generation. Just a comedy that everybody loved. And it had some uh, wisecracks that were a little different than the usual uh, comedy that you see. And so just as Airplane 2 came out and sort of filled us in on what those guys were up to, so we have Hot Tub Time Machine 2. And it's really interesting just to see 
what happened with some of the characters and some of the situations that weren't really resolved in the first one. Yeah, I, uh, I, I uh, how many ratings? I'm gonna give it five bags of popcorn and uh, a little container of chlorine, which you wanna put in any hot tub because of germs that get in the water. All right, and uh, next movie, Frank F uh, McFarland USA by Nico Caro, starring Kevin Costner uh, from uh, Dance with Wolves. Yeah. Maria Bello and Morgan, Mor Morgan Saylor. A, a cross-country coach of a small California town transforms a team of athletes into championship contenders. Um, when I saw this title, McFarland USA, I almost thought it was almost like Seth McFarland from mm -hmm. uh, Family Guy, the cartoon show, which is a, sort of a X-rated, raunchy. Ted, the movie Ted, Ted which we reviewed he favorably uh, last this, uh, year. does raunchy kind of adult comedy, but it's cartoon with different, uh, almost like, um, yeah, Family Guy. Um, and But this is different than that. This is more of a, it, it's an interesting story, and I liked it. I like Kevin Costner, of course, as always. This isn't your typical Kevin Costner movie because of some of the dramatic themes, but it is about sports and uh, this this. The team. I would disagree with you. I think it is your typical Kevin Costner movie, and that Field of Dreams is one of the all-time great Kevin Costner movies, and it's a sports movie, and he kind of got sidetracked along the way with Waterworld mm -hmm. and some of these other movies. And the Bodyguard. The Bodyguard, yeah. and he kind of lost his way, and I think to have him come back to what he does best, mm -hmm. your typical Kevin Costner sports feel-good movie, that's what the world's been waiting for. I give it five bags of popcorn and five... Uh, Baseballs. I give you that. That's why you're the ex. That's why I have you on the show. Your expertise really comes in handy, especially during these kind of times. When I get it wrong, I'll admit when I'm wrong. That's something I've been working on. I've been checking out a website called values.com, and everybody's getting on that site. It can check it out. But it's a great place to get motivational, inspirational messages. One of them is know when you're wrong and admit when you're wrong. I goofed on this one. It's my fault. I'm t I take it all back. Kevin Costner deserves the Oscar for this movie. He should get the best. Actor Award. I don't know if the movie deserves it, but it should be definitely awarded in the nomination time. I don't know about um, an Oscar, definitely a Golden Globe mm -hmm. or People's Choice. I give it six bags of popcorn and, uh, and my appreciation and my thanks. Um, but speaking of Oscars, this uh, coming Sunday is Oscar night, and we're so excited to be broadcasting the third annual Oscar special. So check us out. That's going to be live uh, starting a half hour before the Oscars start and proceeding through the rest of the night, and we'll be there covering the Oscars throughout the whole night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Please, It's kind of a companion to the Oscars, yeah, really. You can't watch, watch one without the other. No, you can't. All right, we are going to go to an on-cinema <clears throat> on location from Greg Turkington. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, Greg Turkington here from On Cinema at the Cinema. And we're here at a very famous location, the infamous tunnel from Back to the Future. Now, if you've seen Back to the Future, you know. Hold on, update. This is the tunnel from Decker. Yes, guys, this is the a tunnel where John Decker rides his motorcycle uh, during the credit sequence of the web series Decker. On location with Decker. That was cool. I didn't know that was coming. You should have told yeah. me that was coming. Yeah. That was cool. No, nah, it was kind of a surprise after the whole oh god thing. I yeah. know we had some disagreements about that and I wanted to start this season of On Location off on a good foot. You so. certainly did. I really... Yeah. That's neat to get a perspective on that. I didn't. Uh, I'm sure people will enjoy that. Yeah. Um, you are such a. I, I, I want to say th one quick thing to you. You're such a a fan of Decker, and you know the characters. You know, you know the show. Oh yeah. And um, I would love, since we're spending so much time together now, if I wanted to offer uh, opportunity love to, to you. Love to come back as Kington. Well, not quite that, but if you wanted to help me write some of these ideas, I know you'd have probably some good ideas in terms of what would happen next on a show. So like screenplay stuff. Yeah, just have, doing a lot of writing. Uh -huh. help, me, help me out of a bind there. And yeah. if that's something that you want to do, play Come Back and Play Kingsman. And, and I'd love do, to come back. And, you know, yeah, that, we that's could find funny. A way, that, if you have an idea for how that would work in it, because I wasn't picturing that he would even be in the story, but if you have an idea where he's oh, yeah. in oh, there. Yeah, and yeah, no, I have a lot of ideas for Kingston's character. And it's funny that we should be reviewing uh, the Kevin Costner movie because that 
It's kind of what made Kevin Costner who he was. He mm -hmm. was the writer and the star and the director and all this sort of thing, you know. So I'd love to come on board on Decker season two and I would uh, love to write some more for the character of Kington and also for John Decker and, uh, you know, President Davidson. All right, well, uh, uh, you know, if, we, if I can get your help on the script, I think we'd have a cool deal where we come, you come back. And I love that. A as long as it doesn't interfere with my movie reviewing uh, <laughs> no. tasks. So, and all right, cool. This is these cool. We're going to go and, uh, and shoot shoot in Hawaii and get this thing started. And, all right. And if you're, uh, you've got a place been to for, Hawaii. Yeah. Well, get ready because we're going to be going there quite a bit. We have a lot of work to do uh, getting this ready for air. We've got an air day coming up in a few weeks, so we're going to be kind of popping back and forth so we can do this show too. But it's going to be a great experience now that Greg Turkington is a big part of On Cinema. I'm sorry, is a big part of uh, Decker Season 2. Um, right, that's the show. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's pretty cool. I felt weird asking you on camera, but I figured you no, were no, it's part of it. Kind of fun for the fans to see history kind of in the making, yeah, see how I'm it all went down. I'm just flat out of ideas. I got a lot of so, ideas. Bond is kind of my thing, so I'd sort of love plots to tap into that, that energy. Yeah. yeah, I think that'll be great. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. So great to be back with you here with my special guest, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Greg, it's good to see. I was going to say it's good to see you again, but I don't know how true that would be because we've been spending a lot of time together. That's true. Uh, I mean, not that I'm. It's just that I, I, I've literally been around you pretty much. 24-7 now for the past couple of weeks. And it's your turn to make the popcorn tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been uh, going back and forth between here and Hawaii, my timeshare in Hawaii, while we're shooting. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, episodes of Decker in the can, and i got to tell you, it has been so much fun. It's exactly what I dreamed it would be. It's uh, coming along real well. And uh, back here at the home front, staying at Greg's apartment, has been an interesting experience. This guy, no uh, question about it, is a movie buff because he's constantly watching movies. And it's driving me nuts a little bit because um, the other night uh, we had to, I ended up taking over his bedroom because I said, if you're going to be watching movies constantly in that living room, then why don't I move into your bedroom and uh, make that sort of my own master suite, a little one uh, studio apartment almost, and that's what we've been doing. So at least when I'm here in L.A., I can have some peace and quiet. But uh, that's, I appreciate that. Yeah, I know. It's cool. I mean, I sometimes I want to get in there and access some of the movies. I have a lot of movies on shelves in there, and I don't want to wake you up, so I can't get to it. But since I have lots of movies in the living room, I just watch something else. Well, like I was saying, the goal for this week should be to get all the movies out of the bedroom, and that way you don't have to ever get in there, because uh, that would be easier for everybody. Um, all right. And the movies today, we got to go with a movie called Focus. Two directors here, uh, Glenn D F Ficarera, Joan, John Requa, two directors. I don't know what's wrong with one. Uh, we got starring one of my favorite, Will Smith, Margaret Robbie, and Rodrigo Santoro. And this is a veteran grifter takes a young, attractive woman under his wing, but things get complicated when they become romantically involved. And uh, this is a great movie, Focus. Uh, it's kind of a great, almost like a it is a pro film camera would be in focus. That's the way this movie is. Very focused, very sharp movie, and um, I think it's an appropriate movie, appropriate title for a movie that's very sharp and in focus. And, uh, you know, you don't have to say anything more than two words, Will Smith, and I'm there, um, and I love this movie, Five Bags of Popcorn and Five Drinks of Soda. That's an interesting point you brought up about the focus of the movie and the title, Focus, because the movie is very focused, focus on the story. And with two directors, I think it's easier to get that kind of focus because they can share some of the mundane aspects of being a director and focus on the story and on the great actors like Will Smith, who I do think uh, it's about time he gets an Oscar. How many bags? Uh, I would focus in on five bags and uh, throw in a little uh, little plastic. What is it called? Not a tell it, not a tell. Uh, what are those things called? A microscope. Microscope. Yeah, just throw in a little plastic microscope as a keepsake. All right, and we have Lazarus. How many bags? I give it five already. Pay attention. And uh, our next movie is Laz Lazarus, directed by David Gelb, starring Olivia Wilde, Don Donald, Glo Donald Glover, Mark Duplass, and Evan Peters. A group of medical students discover a way to bring dead patients back to life. And this was a thriller and a fun movie uh, to sort of, one of the play, get to play one of those what-if games and what if 
Frankenstein came back to, to life, almost like a horror movie. Uh, great movie, wonderful performance from Donald, should be uh, Danny Glover here, sorry, Danny Glover. It says Donald Glover. No, it was, da it was Donald Glover, Danny Glover wasn't in this. Okay. You're thinking of... Um, black guy here uh, named Donald... Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, or um, no, Lethal Weapon. Right. Lethal Weapon 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, well, whoever it was gave top-notch work. Uh, thanks for watching that movie, and it's Five Bags of Popcorn from Donald Glover. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, the idea of coming back from the dead is a topic that's interested people for decades. And in a sense, it's it's sort of the new era of classic movie monsters, like your Frankensteins and your Wolfman and Mummy. Uh, Lazarus could fit right in with that whole crowd, and I hope that there's a sequel and uh, that it develops even beyond that into a whole series. All right, why don't we uh, jump into uh, five bags of popcorn? Five bags of popcorn and uh, anything else? A four leaf clover sort of is good luck that Lazarus continues on and does turn into a popular series. All right, well, um, that's great. So now we have here Popcorn Classics with, uh, presented by Greg Turkington. Hey. This week's popcorn classic is Son of the Pink Panther. And uh, my little chickadee, as W.C. Fields would have said if he was hosting this segment, which he was supposed to be because this is actually a rewritten uh, Golden Age comedy segment that because you killed it. Now, mm -hmm. I'm handling it. So, um, But my little chickadee, it's not Peter Sellers in Son of the Pink Panther. This is actually a later Pink Panther movie with Roberto Benigni. I have a couple issues with it. Um, I think it's strange that they put three stars on the cover when it's clearly a five bag quality movie. Uh, so that's probably my biggest complaint with it. But other than that, I think it's that's perfect. That's why, not to interrupt your segment, but that's why I didn't want to do stars. Everybody does stars. All the newspapers do stars, and we don't want to do that. We want to do something different, something a uh, little bit more interesting and more, a little more colorful. That's, well, why that's we how I felt about popcorn. Golden Age comedy, was that was a little bit different than okay. popcorn classics. Thank you very much, Greg, for bringing the us segment. the insight of this movie. Great segment. Uh, finally tonight, I just want to take this opportunity because this show truly is my forum to express myself and uh, a little something that I picked up from values.com which has been sitting with me all week is that I need to express myself from my heart and this message is uh, not for everybody, it's not certainly not for Greg, it's not for the general public but it is for one person only and that would be Ayaka, my love, who I am so sorry about how things went down between us and I know we've been in touch, and I want to keep getting in touch, and uh, I want to let you know that I would like our lives together to be meaningful and full of love, and um, I'm here for you whenever you want to take it to the next level. Um, I'm in town, you know, except for when we're in Hawaii. So please, I've given you my phone number and my email and different ways for you to contact me. But at this point, it is on you, I think, to contact me because you are the mother of my son, Tom Cruise Heidecker and I want to be a part of his life, okay? And I want, he to, I want him to be a part of my life, and I want us to spend together the rest of time. So, you are my love and my heart, and I worship you, and don't fool yourself. I know you're watching. I know you're listening to me right now. If we get back together, we could become the power couple of, of Hollywood. Our Where family, are you guys going to live? Our family could be strong together, and Tom Cruise, Heidecker, could be almost as famous as the little orphan Annie, or even as successful and powerful as Tom Cruise himself, with my boys named after it, Tom Cruise. And uh, that's my message to you, Ayaka, my love. And that's as, as you have your segment, that's my segment. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next week on On Cinema. Up, you got, you've got to listen for me to finish on On Cinema at the cinema. So this was, uh, I heard you watching this the other night, it's loud. Yeah, it's, it was, all the sound effects and whatnot. Was, the sound design on it is very loud, but uh, you know, it doesn't really interfere with the movie. There's a way for you to use headphones at all for watching movies. It's not really the same experience. You want to feel like you're in a theater. You don't wear headphones in a theater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I am your host. Decker. No, actually, it's Tim Heidecker, but I am in character. I am in the Decker costume because today is Decker Day. Uh, tomorrow, uh, next week is the beginning of Decker Two, so we're celebrating Decker Two here with my guests, 
from Decker, President Davidson, uh, Mr. Joe Estevez, and Greg Turkington, star and co-writer of certain sequences. <coughs> Thank you guys for coming, and I hope it's not too confusing, and this is not Jack Decker's opinion. This is just, I felt like it would be fun to be in the wardrobe of Jack Decker for this episode in honor of Decker, which is airing on Monday. Very excited about the premiere of Decker too. I'm just couldn't be happier that it's getting out there. I I, I love the outfit. I mean, Tim, you're kind of a an extension of, of Decker anyway. Yeah. You know, so you I mean, both idea. got the same persona, right. right? So there you go. I think it's cool that you can combine worlds like this, and it makes it more fun for the on cinema fans and the Decker fans. I think you'd be going too far if you mm -hmm. review the movies as Jack Decker. Right, well the hair is different and everything and I'm not doing my the character voice and everything but I just thought it'd be fun to show people that this yeah. is a little behind the scenes. Uh, it's a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. Do you feel more like Decker now or more like... Uh, you know, I, yeah. I gotta say I'm able to kind of get in between that sort of place where I can easily yeah. slip in if I'm not too... There careful. he is, he's back now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I won't yeah. because we're here to talk about movies. Yeah. Waking you up at four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> who would you be? Would you be Tim or would that's you be That's a good question. Decker. Uh, yeah. That is a good question. I yeah. think it's me. I am always me. And um, I'm just in a great mood. You know, we've been yeah. having so much fun putting this show together. Yeah. Ayaka uh, and Tom Cruise Heidecker, my child, is they're back in my life. We're all getting our, putting the pieces back together, staying over at Greg's. And thanks for putting up with us. And, yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. It's nice having you around. And, yeah. If we weren't so busy with Decker, we maybe catch up on some movies at home, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a madhouse over there. I tell you what, if anybody out there has kids, they'll know that it is nuts. There's a, a lot, lot of, of videotapes for Tom to dig through, and right, I, I and appreciate of, that. A lot but. of toys and everything. It's just like jumping into the deep end with the fatherhood stuff has been wild. Oh. But going back and forth between here and Hawaii and shooting Decker and doing right. this show, it's just been... Uh, like a real Hawaii, yeah. Real, yeah. We've been doing uh, doing what? Decker in Hawaii, oh, you. and uh, yeah. Mm. And Joe, you've been such a big part of the show. Everyone well, I appreciate that. Loves yeah. seeing you as the president. You yeah, do such a good you. job acting yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I often think, I mean, you know, this this Decker character. I mean, what a personification he is. I I, I, I sometimes know. think in playing the president. Wow, you know, what if uh, every president had a had a Decker, you know. Like, it'd be, <laughs> that is certainly be a different too. world, wouldn't think it? About that. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's run through the and movies. And a, a code breaker too. That a lot of times these codes don't get broken, you know, because you don't have people with the expertise of a special agent Kington. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. it's a fictitious show, so you yeah. can get people with supernatural powers, like the ability to crack codes as easily yeah. as Kington does. Yeah. In real life, you know, it takes a lot of training and a lot of guys still can't crack Imagine the codes. Imagine what this guy could do with North Korea, huh? <laughs> turn him loose on that puppy, huh? Wow. Yeah, boy. Yeah. All right, well, let's run, ah. let's run through these movies so we mm -hmm. can get out of here. We got Chappie, directed by Neil Blunkcamp, starring huge, uh, huge Jack. Hugh. Hugh. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Jack. yeah. Jackman. Oh, the old Sigourney Weaver is back. And Charto mm -hmm. Copley, whoever that is. Um, a one-of-a-kind gifted robot is kidnapped at birth by two criminals and finds himself the adopted son of a strange and dysfunctional family. Uh, this is another great sci-fi style movie with what with robots and everything and different kind of movie I hate to say but in a good way so mm -hmm. I loved it and I uh, recommend it to everybody I see and meet and I appreciate uh, the filmmaker for going out on a limb on this one and uh, the acting was very good and so are there special effects when it comes to the robots uh, all, all the best to the filmmakers and to Sigourney Weaver, who was great seeing her. And I give it five bags of popcorn with uh, uh, two bags of soda. Mm. 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 What did you think, Joe and Well, Greg, uh, you know, I saw the previews mm -hmm. when I was watching another movie. I enjoyed yeah. the previews, so... You know, I don't really it. review previews here. It's just going to be... Oh, oh so if you didn't see it, there's no problem. Yeah, okay. What did you think? You know, I, um, you know what? I really like this movie. Uh, Sigourney Weaver is one of my favorites in Alien, and mm -hmm. this being a science fiction film like Alien, I felt it was sort of the flip side of Alien, kind of the darker side of Alien. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time since they've made an Alien movie, so having this sort of unofficial sequel I thought was pretty pretty cool. Okay, your rating real quick? Five bags of popcorn. Whoa. Great. This, speaking of the second movie we have here, this one's, ironically, the second best exotic Marigold Hotel. Directed by John Madden, the football guy, I guess. She's a good coach. Starring Bill Nighy, Julie Dench, Maggie Smith, and the great Richard Gere. Uh, a young, enterprising hotel owner juggling the expansion of his business, his upcoming 
marriage and the lives of his eccentric and active tenants. This is a rom-com, old person, chick flick kind of movie with a lot of old people in it, which is fun to see them. A lot of these people are actual sirs and duchess and whoever from England. English knights here and certain royalty, I guess, a prince. And um, these folks are all down in India doing what they do down there. And it almost is one of these... Uh, it's one of these... One of those kind of... Big, no. every, put everybody in there and see what happens kind of movies, improv. Mm. And uh, Richard Gere, of course, is always great. I love this movie, Five Bags, easily, uh, with ten cups of soda, I would say. Mm. And I'm uh, giving it five bags of soda. Mm. You know, what I thought was really interesting about this movie is... Let me kick it to it, it uh, was, Joe uh, first. And Joe. Oh, I, I, I didn't see the previews even on that one, so... Yeah, you... you yeah, what, what I thought was interesting about this is that with some of the classic movies... Uh, when they make a sequel like your Rockies or your Jaws, you get Rocky 2, Jaws 2. They just put a number after it. And instead, they actually incorporated the fact that it was a sequel into the title, The Second Best. And mm. I think that's an interesting, uh, very creative way to do that. And uh, I think it could usher in a new era of uh, this type of creativity. So I really like the movie for that. And I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn uh, or maybe the way to phrase that would, I will give it the fifth bag of popcorn, mm. uh, which is kind of what they did with their time. All right, and finally, a, a rare third movie here because there's so many movies coming out this week. Uh, the Coop, starring John Pierce Bronsnan and Oz Owen Wilson and Lake Bell. In their new overseas home, an American family finds himself caught in the middle of a coop. They must now look for a safe escape in an environment where foreigners are being executed. I didn't get a chance to see this movie because of the travel we've been doing going back and forth and get, gearing up for the premiere of Decker 2, which starts on Monday. But uh, it sounds interesting. I love everything that these actors have been a part of, so I'm going to recommend it and say go out and check out The Coop, starring Pierce Bronson, Owen Wilson, and Lake Bell. And it's five bags of popcorn. Well, if you're a Bond head, you'll watch anything Pierce Brosnan does. And, uh, of course, I loved it because of that. So I'm also going to give it five more informed bags of popcorn because I did see the picture. Mm. And I'm going to throw in a little golden gun uh, as a sort of a tip of the hat to the man with a golden gun, Mr. James Bond. Yeah. And old Orrin Will, uh, he's terrific, you know? Yeah, yeah he's always good. Yo. And you, you haven't seen this one as well? You no. Know. Okay. No. All right, well, big thanks to my wonderful two guests on this Decker Day episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. We got Greg Turkington and Joe Estevez. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you at the premiere of Decker 2, which starts on Monday, this month coming Where's up. Where's the premiere going to be? I'm just saying we'll all be a chance to watch it. This oh, is sort okay. of the premiere party here with me in costume and everything like that. Uh, too much to do. we got to get back to Hawaii and finish making the show. Uh, once again, check out Decker Season 2 starting on Monday right here on this website. And you'll be able to see new episodes of Decker Monday through Friday. That's every day of the week. And it's a wonderful new series written by me with some selected sequences written by Greg Turkington and uh, directed by myself as well as produced and starring Tim Heidecker as Decker. Uh, we want to thank, it's a great series, Decker 2, Port of Call, Hawaii, Operation Save the Island of Save uh, Honolulu. Lots and more Special Agent Kingston, too. If you missed that character, he's back. And it's mm. really something we're very proud of the show. And Joe is, uh, plays the evil President Davidson again. Wow. And uh, God bless America, and thanks for checking out the show and watching On Cinema. Yeah, we're we'll doing we'll do a lot of it. Some of it we're so doing here yeah. as well. We're shooting kind of back yeah. second and stuff. Is it fun at 10 o'clock? Uh, yeah, we'll find it. I'll wow. see you on set here because we're shooting your stuff. Don't need me anymore? Yeah, we're just kind of shooting around that. Wow. Well, you don't need me. You don't need me. Okay, uh, yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. All right, good fun, fun, guys. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. yeah. And you know how to get out of here? Yeah. yeah. See you, Joe. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker, and I got uh, with me Greg Turkington with me, as always. Hey uh, sorry, but we're a little behind uh, getting ready for this episode today. Um, yes, uh, as you can tell from the shirt here, I've been, we've been basically commuting back and forth between here and Hawaii about three or four times a week now. 
just driving me nuts and um, doing a lot of red eyes and um, yes. So, but we are here to talk about movies and um, let me get back into this here. Two, three, four, okay. I apologize last night. I got to say, a lot of things have been going on. Uh, I've been tra traveling a lot, but um, the good news is the Heidecker family is back together again. Ayaka has come back to me with my son, Tom Cruise Heidecker, and we are all a uh, happy family living at the Turkington residence now, back in the master bedroom. Um, so we appreciate your hospitality, even though we're p hardly around, you and I, because we've been busy with Decker so much. Uh, I appreciate, uh, it's just great to be a family once again. And a quick plug a for my son, uh, Tom Cruise Decker, who um, is trying to be an actor. This is his headshot. He's such a natural on camera. He's got the acting He's bug. got that bug. He's got that thing in his eye that just says, wow, I'm going to be a star. Like uh, how uh, Harrison Ford was the Gerber baby. Oh, really? Yeah. Before you could Star see Wars? It. Yeah, of course, when he was a baby. But you could see it in his eyes. The Gerber baby, he's like, you could tell that he's going to grow up to be a star. They don't just pick anybody out of the bucket. All right, so anybody out there watching in the biz, I know this is an industry show beloved by the industry. Anybody want to give old Tom Cruise Heidecker a, a shot? This is your opportunity to get in on the ground floor of something special because he has a unique talent. He's one of the greatest actors. He might have to change his name when he becomes super famous. Um, but that's Tom Cruise for you. So Contact me if you want to use him for commercials or uh, uh, billboards or whatever it is because he's very talented for his age. And I uh, wish him the best. And, uh, anyway. He could play the baby in... Um Blondie. Remember the old Blondie mm -hmm. comic strip? If they ever make a yeah, movie I'm of sure that? I'm sure they were going to reboot that. They reboot it all. So uh, I can almost see um, Meg Ryan or somebody like that playing that yeah. part. Um, all right, well, let's get to the movies because we have uh, to get out of here. And uh, I got a bug bite or something. I don't know what the hell happened there. In the, heart of the, in the heart of the sea, that's like where Hawaii is, right in the middle of the ocean. Directed by Ron Howard, old Richie Cunningham, Chris Hemsworth, he's done Cillian. a lot of other things than Richie Cunningham. I know, director. but I'm just saying he's he was in the original Happy Days show. He directed Cocoon, which we discussed. A on. whaling ship is preyed upon by a sperm whale, stranding its crew at sea for 90 days, thousands of miles from home. Uh, this is good. I mean, it's a good movie. It's a, sort of a seafaring movie with Chris Hemsworth starring in it, and really good to see him out there doing work. Um, not, you know, for Ron Howard, this is better than doing a TV show, I know. This is a great opportunity for him, uh, you know, although I do love watching those old Happy Days episodes as they show up on the TV. I'd rather watch a movie, though, than watch Happy Days, you know? Even if it's not a Ron Howard movie, I just, you watch four episodes of Happy Days, you could have just watched one movie. So it's just a waste of time. All right, but I did like this movie a lot, and I give it five bags of popcorn and one and bag also, of soda. Also, Happy Days itself was a ripoff of a movie, American Graffiti, which is one of my favorite movies that Ron Howard's also in, but um, they just stole the whole concept right. and then turned it into a TV show. I don't think so. I think that that was a movement back in, that, in the 70s, late 70s, of sort of a nostalgia period towards looking back in the 50s with nostalgia. So you have bands like Sha Na Na and this and that. But American Graffiti, the Happy Days people admitted that was their inspiration. That's why they cast all the same people in it. Ron well, Howard and Tom Bosley others. was not in American Graffiti. No, so. well, they're not going to get the whole cast from Happy Days, mm -hmm. from American Graffiti into Happy Days. All right, well, uh, we'll agree to disagree on that. I think Happy Days would have happened whether or not you had American Graffiti or not. If you ask uh, Penny Mar or not Penny Marshall, her husband, Rob Gary, Reiner. Gary Marshall. Rob Reiner. No, Gary right. Marshall created Happy Days. He would have said that this is, a, this is based on my childhood and growing up in a small town in the 50s. So, but American Graffiti was George Lucas before Star Wars. That's what he made, and that's what one of the reasons I like it so much, is you can feel the roots of Star Wars in the story, even though it takes place in the 50s mm -hmm. in a little town. Some of the same conflicts come out. Did again you have a Star rating? Wars. Did you have a rating for In the Heart of the Sea? Yeah, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and five little rubber duckies in case you want to put them in a bathtub and recreate the movie in your own bath. All right, now this is the next movie called Cinderella. Where, where did you rate it? Uh, five bags. 
Uh, I want to talk about the next movie here, Cinderella. We all know the story of Cinderella, directed by Kenneth Brognaugh, uh, starring Kate Blanchett, Lily James, Haley Atwell, and Helena Bonham Carter. Uh, a live-action retelling of the fairy tale. Well, we know what this is about. It's Cinderella. It's a classic movie with golden slippers and all the rest. Uh, we uh, love this movie. Both of us saw this together. We had to. Saw it last night at midnight. And uh, couldn't say I didn't take a, a little uh, Sleeping Beauty rest of my own during some of it. But um, that is not to discredit that it is a great movie. It's one of the best movies of the year. And Kenneth Bragg now should get the Oscar for Best Director. And that would mean this is a classic five-bagger, and it deserves uh, my appreciation and support. Well, it's just interesting, because Cinderella has become, over the years, something for children. And there's aspects of the story that are uh, very adult. And I think that this movie uh, kind of delved into that a little bit. I would probably still bring a child to see it, but I would warn them ahead of time, this isn't a cartoon, this is something different. I stuck uh, Tom Cruise in front of the boob tube the other day because I had to take a uh, go to the bathroom for a longer period of time. And uh, I put him in front of whatever was on, Judge Wapner, whatever, I put him in front of that. And he was pretty per pretty sort of like a moth to the flame watching that. I have a lot and, of uh, children's movies, though, that you can show them. You don't have to put them in front of that. Tom Thumb, I've got was Russ Tamlin. I just picked that up right, the well, other day. Well, next time I'll put on a movie for him, but I didn't want to go through that process of getting your shit out of order. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we got to go. Are we right. doing a popcorn yeah. classic? No, we're not doing anything like that. We got to go. Come on, right. we got to break to Hawaii. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I am your host, Tim Heidecker. Uh, with me is, uh, I got it's family day here on On Cinema. Ayaka, good to see you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have the first ever appearance of on television of uh, Tom Cruise Heidecker, my son. Tom and, and uh, uh, Ayaka, thank you for joining me. And uh, Greg Turkington as well is with me today. Sorry about this. Hey guys, good to be here and to try to share my movie expertise and maybe a little hard with little Tom. I Cruise apologize. Some of the noises. But I apologize, uh, uh, but um, some of you guys know we've been traveling back and forth between uh, LA and Hawaii as we continue to shoot Decker season two. And uh, this is literally some of the only few hours I have to see my family this week. And I'm grateful to be able to spend time with them here on, on cinema. And uh, we want to give him a. Give him something to shut him up for a bit. Okay. Let him. <sighs> All right. And uh, today's movies we have the Diver Diversion series, Insur Insurgent, directed by Robert Schwenke. Robert Schl S C H W Wenke. Starring Shailene Woodley, Jace Courtesy. Miles Teller, Theo James, and uh, Beatrice Pryor must confront her inner demons and continue fighting against a powerful alliance which threatens to tear her society apart. Uh, I like this movie a lot. It was uh, an action film that I enjoyed watching, and I'm glad I got a chance to see it. So I give it five bags of popcorn. Greg, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. I mean. I gotta say, some of it reminded me of our own Decker, mm -hmm. but not as good, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get these sort of action plots and uh, dealing with terrorists and spies and all that sort of stuff. It's hard not to reflect on what we're doing out in Hawaii and how, uh, how much better it is than some of this Hollywood stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, nonetheless, I really liked this. I thought it was a lot of fun, a good break from everyday life. I'd give it five bags of popcorn. All right, we uh, highly recommend that. We also have The Gunman, starring, direct, directed by Pierre Morel and starring the great Sean Penn, Idris Elbi, Elba, and uh, Javier Bardem. Interesting, an unusual spy, an unusual, an international spy, I like Decker, must clear his name in order to save himself from the organization that he used to work for, which is also a bit like Decker. Decker used to work for CIA, still does work for CIA, but I can imagine in future episodes not working for CIA, being sort of a rogue agent. It's very similar. I don't think that these movies necessarily are stealing plot well, hold on now, I want to give my review, uh, the, my official rating is five bags of popcorn for The Gunman, starring Sean Penn. 
and I recommend everybody go out and check that out because it's one of the great movies of the year. I think it's going to be an Oscar winner. Um, but it did remind me of a certain Jack Decker, especially season two of Decker, which is also airing right now. You'll recognize a very similar sort of um, uh, feeling to The Gunman. So if you like Decker 2, uh, uh, check out The Gunman. Or if you like De uh, The Gunman, check out Decker 2, right now, airing now. And we're enjoying watching the season uh, as a family. I think you've gotten a chance to see it. Yeah. And uh, how's everything going for you since you are the guest? Is you had some good news in the past couple of weeks. You've been yeah, busy. Yeah, I finally got a job <laughs> yeah. as a receptionist. That's right. As Dr. Luther. Dr. Luther. Yes. Uh, she's been telling me about this Dr. Luther, who's apparently a He's brilliant. brilliant yeah. holistic healer of yes. some kind. Mm -hmm. And you're doing paperwork and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Keep it paying yeah. the bills. I yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm proud of you. And of course, Tom Cruise is out there hitting the audition circuit, going, getting that headshot out there. And we're hoping to see him up on the silver screen soon because that's big, big money for him and us too. And uh, hopefully we can get a commercial job or web series, whatever it is. We'll be looking forward to working with uh, the directors who are interested in working with Tom Cruise. Hi, Dad. He's really good. He is good. And today he's a little under the weather, I know, but uh, we're glad to have him on the show. And we're glad to have you on the show too. Greg, what did you think of The Gunman? I thought it was good. I mean, I've definitely seen better. I think that if you tune in nightly to Decker uh, this week, uh, I think you'll find it's a little better than this movie. I've definitely seen better. Uh, I prefer James Bond or John Decker or some of the other spy sagas that are out there. I think this, though, has its place. It's just something you might want to wait till this season of Decker is done with before you go see this so you don't get confused. Uh, at that point, when Decker's done, I'd say go watch this, and I would give it five bags of popcorn. Okay. Um, all right, we have a, one additional segment today we're going to cut to. Greg Turkington, you have a segment today. Yeah, we're uh, actually, uh, well, it's a very popular segment. It's called On Cinema, On Location. Let's cut to that. Hollywood, California. Every street has a story, and these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of On Cinema at the Cinema On Location. And for fans of Decker, we've got a special treat for you. This is actually the location where the treacherous Abdul meets his maker at the hands of President Decker. And uh, if you've seen the show, and I'm going you have, this is where it all goes down. Of course, at that point, Decker throws the bomb up into the air where it turns into a uh, beautiful Americana fireworks display. Back to you, Tim. All right. You said the gave away kind of important plot point there with President. Oh, shit. Well, that was, that was my mistake. I'm sorry. You kind of blew the, blew the ending by saying I know, I'm sorry. Oh. Shit. All right. I'm a three, write the ending. So that's what I got going. I got to hit back to Hawaii right now, write the ending on the plane. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. We're going to miss the flight, Greg. Greg, car's waiting. Let's I go. I didn't mean to say president. And just we've been working such long hours that it just. I understand. Uh, I'm, but the point is, if people find out that he's going to be president. I got to come up with a whole completely different concept for the ending. All right. We can we go now? All right. Uh, Ugh. Airplane food's disgusting. Uh, welcome to On Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker, and my guest is Greg Turkington. We yes. are here once more reviewing movies. Um, let's get into it. Hard, Get Hard, starring Ethan Co or directed by e Ethan Cohen, f starring Will Ferrell, e uh, Kevin Hart, and Allison Brie. 
When millionaire James King is nailed for fraud and bound for San Quentin, he turns to Darnell Lewis to prep him for life behind bars. I like this movie a lot. Greg, what did you think? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, your classic comedy circa 2015. Will Ferrell, of course, and um, Did you see Kevin this movie? Hart. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see it, but it's just that the, um, because we were shooting Decker so late and we had to fly that I wasn't able to see the whole thing. But so. yeah, you have an opinion about it. Well, I mean, I, I, I see a lot of movies and a lot of times if you've seen Somebody them, on this show has, we can't keep doing this show if you're you not going to see, see the movie. You didn't see the movie? I couldn't have, how am I supposed to see the movie if I've got to well, direct I'm, uh, I'm and I'm on the camera the whole time? And as soon as we wrap, I got to get back to the airport and we're here and, uh, you know, there's absolutely no, t barely enough time for me to go to the bathroom, let alone see a I know, that's what uh, I'm Will saying. Will Ferrell movie. Well, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's a great movie. It's just hard to operate at the same level that we're used to operating on this show when we're you're not, also doing Decker. You're not carrying the weight that I need you to carry on this show because somebody between the two of us has to come find a way to see these movies so we can talk about it. Otherwise, why are we even doing the show? You can't do two shows simultaneously. Yes, you and can. Then, we're and proving that gonna... you can, and we're doing it right now. But as, I want you to go see this movie today. We're flying oh, back well, to hold Hawaii on as now. soon as we're done here. I don't care. There's movie theaters in Hawaii. We have time. Yeah, but there hey, are... On the you, shut up. You go see this movie today, and we'll do a supplementary. We'll, we'll have them cut this in or put it online as a I separate piece. I saw the piece. other movie. I hold saw on. Home. I was able to do that. All right. I want you to make a, make a mental note. I just missed this that one, you but see I saw... Get Hard as soon as you get to Hawaii. I'll see it. I'll see it. And but you give I... us a review <laughs> next week of, home, of Get Hard. You didn't see it either, but I saw Home, and you didn't see that. I don't have that. to see this movie. I don't but have to see... you didn't see either one. I, I saw Home. I don't have to... Shut up. I, don't I have went to, to Home. Shut up. I don't have to see Get Hard to tell you that it's a five-bag comedy. Well, no, you do have to see it if you're going to give... I the... put my life on the line for this. This is my job. I'm the expert... Of, uh, no, you're knowing. not. You're the host. I'm the expert. I still give Get Hard five bags, and next week we'll hear Greg's review. Okay, but right. I did see the other movie, and you didn't. Let's talk about the next movie called Home. Home is where the heart is. Directed by Tim Johnson. I love a good Tim. Tim Heidecker. Uh, Tim uh, Story, one of the directors from last season, who's one of our directors. Starring Tim Pars or Jim Parsons, Rih Rihanna, Jennifer Lopez, and Steve Martin, the original... Bozo Steve Martin with the white shirt and every, uh, white suit. When Earth is overtaken by an alien race called the Boov, uh, a resourceful girl escapes capture and teams up with a bandaged alien for the road trip of a lifetime. Now, if I don't have time for Get Hard, I certainly don't have time for this uh, home. I, I found the time to see it. It wasn't that hard because we had downtime uh, on Monday morning. And that's when I went to the uh, 12 o'clock or 12, 15 show. Okay, well, you're not in prep meetings and you're not approving wardrobe or you're not trying to get um, our actors off book and you're not doing rewrites at 3 in the morning. So, And, and you don't have a son who has uh, who's not well. Okay. Because your so, son's not in Hawaii, though. Well, I'm on the phone. I'm talking to doctors and everything like that. So go ahead. If you have a review, Spit it out because I everybody wants to for know whether or not. Let them deal with it, but, and then watch. All right, it. I mean, tell tell us your review of Home so we get some kind of perspective on here. I give it three. Sto uh, I give it four bags of popcorn uh, because it's not my kind of movie. You didn't even. I mean, just you can just give an empty tub or something. That means that you didn't okay. see it. it what did you give it? I give it five bags of popcorn. It's great. I mean, Steve Martin. It's always, you know, you're never going to go wrong with Steve Martin. He's done a lot of movies, and I've loved them all. We've had a, had a lot of his movies on Popcorn Classics before. Um, oh, what was I watching on the plane? Oh, God. We had the, the overnight flight, and I watched um, Sex Tape with Cameron Diaz. You were asleep, but I watched... It's the time uh, I can sleep is on the plane. I can't even sleep on planes, but I'm passing out. With, uh, as soon as Jason Segel and Cameron Diaz was... Pretty funny. I was just surprised they would put that on a plane because it's pretty explicit. Right. And it's, well, I've been asking these assholes the, um, who run this show here to give me screeners of these movies so I can watch these at home and not have to go to the movie theater and pay $18 to go I'd see these I'd probably rather movies. watch that at home than on a plane because yeah. there's an older gentleman who is across the aisle from us and, and we were... And, I had sex tape on, and he's watch like looking over my shoulder. We're at not talking about some sex of the tape. nudity. It just seems kind of weird for uh, an airline. All right, we got a popcorn classic with Greg Turkington. That's that segment now. Oh.
Do you have one? Yeah, yeah. Um, Jack Nicholson. Oh, uh, yeah, Jack. I love Jack Nicholson. Uh, yeah, the man trouble. Um, Jack Nicholson is Harry Bliss, wisecracking comment, and the owner of the House of Bliss Guard Dog Agency. Ellen Parkin is Joan, a single sexy singer who discovers that her Hollywood house, Hills house was burglarized. Did you see this movie or are you just reading off the back? I just got the, I just bought this last week. I haven't had a chance to see it. Good. Don't put well, on don't. the Hollywood classics. Don't come on here and talk about movies you haven't seen. There's no f***ing point to it. That's it. Thank you for watching. You understand me? I'm not going to keep having you on if you're going to talk about movies you haven't seen. It doesn't make any sense. It's but a complete waste. All right, we got to go. It's we a have to popcorn catch classic. The, the segment's not called movies that I've seen. Let's go. It's not called movies I've seen. It's called popcorn classics. It doesn't matter if I've seen it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema, At the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, and I'm joined uh, by my guest this week is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be back and uh, reviewing movies once again. Yes, and we'd like to, I think, both apologize for the past few weeks. It's been very challenging, uh, but we've sort of hit our stride. We've kind of got into a rhythm now, and we admit that the past few weeks of On Cinema have been uh, not fair to the audience, to the On Cinema family. It's been disrespectful to you. And uh, per our agreement last week, I believe, Greg, you owe us a review. Of, I did. Uh, Get Hard, I, yeah, right? I, um... I have to admit, I was very tired last week, and I don't think I really brought my A game, as mm -hmm. we say. But uh, We didn't bring any game. You didn't see the movie. Well, you didn't see it either. So. No, well, I don't have to, to know well, that do, it was a great because movie. because the premise of the show is two guys comparing their opinions about the movie and mm -hmm. seeing uh, if they agree or disagree. Well, I think I'll be proven right when, you, when, the, when I get to see the movie eventually and find out that I nailed it. Well, you could Anyways, have watched it, because I, I watched actually in Pearl City, because mm -hmm. uh, we were shooting out by Pearl Harbor. Yeah, the, uh, the the film is called uh, Get Hard. It's a comedy with Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. And it's very much in the vein of the old uh, Silver Streak or Trading Places, mm -hmm. a prison film, essentially, uh, but with a heart of gold and a lot of laughs. And uh, I would say that Will Ferrell has cemented his role as the Gene Wilder of our generation and that Kevin Hart is the Eddie Murphy. And so you pair those up and you're gonna have a great movie. I wish you'd seen it, Tim. I think well, you would agree with me. It's a five bag of popcorn. I already gave it the five bags, which I'm standing well, by and uh, appreciate that review. And you did the right thing. Mm -hmm. you know, no, I, was, I wanted to see it. I've been waiting to see that movie for months ever since it was first announced. All right, well, I'm glad we're on the same page there. Uh, well, I, we're not because I saw the movie and you didn't. Well, we are definitely gonna be on the same page when I see it. Uh, let's get into these week's movies. I want to say, by the way, it's been a blast doing Decker with you. It's been fun being out there in Hawaii. I actually went body surfing for the first time the other day, met some cool guys, turned me on to some moves. It's kind of sad. We got one more big shoot coming up. We leave tonight and we wrap things up on Decker. Thank you guys Just so the much last, for it. last scene. The last couple of scenes we're shooting there and it's, it's going to be a little bittersweet to say goodbye. And thank you everybody for watching Decker 2. Uh, Port of Call, Hawaii, Operation Rescue, the island. I haven't seen the script and yet on for the final scene, so I'm, I'm still as curious tweaking, as the viewers I'm, I'm are. I'm still tweaking it, and there's uh, quite... It's, uh, we want to keep things under wraps. You know, you always hear about these directors who don't tell their actors what's going to happen uh -huh. until because you don't want leaks to come out, and I don't want anybody to find out the surprise ending of Decker Season 2, Port of Call, Hawaii, Operation <laughs> Save the Island. Let's get to Furious 7, directed by James Wang, Duan, starring Vin Diesel. This was a good one. Paul Walker, who's dead, died on this movie. Jane Walsh, Jane Johnson, I'm sorry, Dwayne Johnson, Jason Statham, Kurt Russell. The great Kurt Russell. Um, Deckard, oh, another tip of the hat from the filmmaker. Deckard Shaw, but the, my character's name is Decker. But this is Deckard. Interesting. And the other one was Kingsman or something, mm -hmm. and it was in Kingston. I mean, these guys are watching yeah. Decker and getting a lot of their ideas from it. And they really are. Of course, my character's name is Jack Decker, but this is Deckard Shaw. Uh, seeks revenge against Dominic Toretto and his family for the death of his brother. Um, and that is the, the name of the movie is Furious 7. And Lucky 7, because this was lucky enough uh, to be one of my favorite movies of the year. And it was full of adventure and action and uh, high-speed car chases, which uh, we see a little bit of that in Decker, interestingly enough. And um, I enjoyed it. And all the best to Vin Diesel and the whole family. Uh, the whole uh, Furious 7, this is, this is their film. And they deserve every award they're going to get. 
and it's a seven it's a seven bagger it's my first seven bags of popcorn and i know you're going to call me out on that but it is a seven bag movie i think it's strange that they call it furious seven instead of fast and the furious seven because there was no furious one i mean mm -hmm. you can't just cut half the title out but keep the numbering system that's a little strange i also think it's very sad that uh, Paul Walker passed away, never got to see this movie. I think he would have liked it. It's a very, very good film. Um, if you like car chases, sometimes you don't when you see that they end in fatal accidents. Sometimes enough is enough. You hear but... about these characters who die on the set of movies like Crow, The Crow and Twilight mm -hmm. Zone. Of course, Paul Walker in Furious 7 going so young, so earlier before his time, as they say. But the good news is he did doing what he did, which is driving very fast. And that's what this movie celebrates. So in a way, it's a wonderful way for him to go. You'd hate for to hear about him slipping on ice and breaking his neck and choking on his own blood or something. You or know. just some sort of cancer or something like that. I mean, you know, you get people that live to be 100 years old like George Burns and you think, geez, do we really enjoy the last few movies he made when he was in his 90s? Not really, you know? It's almost like as if Bruce Lee would have been killed getting karate chopped neck or something would have been appropriate way to go. He got punched in the stomach and mm -hmm. then had a fatal stomach uh, ulcer Well, there you something. go. That's the way to go. And if I guess I, if I had to go, it would be maybe um, as Decker uh, parachuting or, or uh, driving almost the same way Paul Walker passed, which is speeding along in a high-speed car chase. It would be quite a scene, wouldn't it? Yeah, but... Go out um, in the blaze of glory. But anyway, I think Fury 7 is fantastic. I'm going to have to just give it five bags of popcorn plus a little kind of commemorative gold cross in memory of Paul Walker, RIP. Thanks, Paul, for all the high-speed car chases, which gave me put such a smile on my face over the years. Uh, Woman in Gold, directed by Simon Curtis, uh, starring Ryan Reynolds, Katie Holmes, and Helen Mirren. Maria Altman, an octogenarian, an, octogenarian, an, octogenarian, an octogenarian Jewish refugee, takes on the government to recover artwork she believed rightfully belonged to her family. This was a sad movie. Uh, it got, brought a tear to my eye in the same way that the passing of Paul Walker did. Uh, something I learned from values.com was to check in with your emotions every once in a while. And don't be afraid to cry. Even grown men can cry. And I certainly did during Woman in Gold. It made me think about the Jews in a way that I never had done before, which is uh, that they were um, persecuted. Obviously, they were persecuted, but not just hurt, but uh, some of their gold was taken, too. Yeah, when this came out, when it was announced and I saw it, I thought, okay, Woman in Gold, this is going to be a sequel to Woman in Red, which was one of my favorite comedies of the 1980s. And then uh, I read the description, and I'm like, this is not a sequel to Woman in Red. This is a very different film. And uh, it's not the kind of thing I would take small children to, uh, unless you're trying to teach them something about history, mm -hmm. uh, in which case I do recommend it. Uh, Helen Mirren is always great. She's kind of a national treasure. She should be in gold. They should make a statue of Helen Mirren in gold and give that out at the Oscars, because she's fantastic. She's, uh, I just adore her. Uh, you I give know. her five bags of popcorn. and with some golden butter on it, mm. some women in gold. Yeah, I give it five bags of popcorn and uh, six cups of soda. And uh, I think I want to dedicate this episode to Paul Walker. And I think this, uh, the Academy should honor him this year and say uh, we should officially, this is just an idea off the top of my head, change his name to Paul Driver, because that's what he loved doing is driving cars fast. And that is... Very cool. Uh, obviously, Marilyn Monroe was Norma Jean. She changed her Arnold name. Arnold Schwarzenegger kept his name, and that's one of the more difficult names to pronounce or to spell. But why call somebody anyway. that loved driving cars from after he's dead? Who cares anymore? Why not change his name from Walker, which doesn't represent what he does? What he does is drive fast. So you change his name to Paul Driver or Paul Turbo. I just think if you're going to change not, the names, you change it while they're alive so that they can trade on that trademark. You know what I mean? I mean, somebody like Sylvester Stallone. Stallone is like a powerful kind of name. Stallone, you know. If he's Sylvester Jones, that's not really good. Well, uh, my point is, obviously, you can't change it now. It's beyond the point. Well, I mean, they, sh they could change it now, which they should. Why not honor him by changing it to something cool, like Paul 
Turbo, Paul Driver, Paul Carr. But then you have like to that. go fix the credits for all the movies he made to reflect the new name. And they did that with old Star Wars movies when they added Jabba the Hutt to all the different yeah, scenes. Yeah, but nobody's happy with that. I liked it, it's but most nice, people it's prefer... It's a neat way to show some respect. Thank you guys so much, and we'll be joining you for the season finale of On Cinema uh, next week, and uh, and also Decker be ra and also Decker season two on Friday uh, night. We'll we'll see how it all ends. Season finale of Decker season two. We've got to finish watching that show too. I just want to thank our Hawaiian crew and our Hawaiian actors and everybody we met in Hawaii. What Thanks we for learn? the hospitality. I want to say uh, mahalo to all the people in Hawaii. Mahalo and aloha. And aloha. And yeah, really nice people for natives. Thank you guys so much for watching. So, um, all I'm saying is that why not honor the guy? Who cares about the name is so generic, anyways? Paul Walker, he doesn't belong. Yeah, I just think that that his family they, they want to be associated with him. So for they them change to change their name too. But that's a lot of letterhead you have to replace and driver's licenses. I just don't think they're gonna think it's worth it. I don't know why you're, you're you don't want me to think off the top of my head now. Well, it's not that. Hi everybody, welcome to the final episode of On Cinema at the Cinema for, uh, for this season. My name is Tim Heidecker, and I am here with my guest today, Ayaka. Hi. Hello, darling. Thanks for filling in at the last minute. We had a guest cancellation, and I'm so glad to, uh, you were able to come by. Everybody's probably saying, Where, where's Tom Cruise, uh, Heidecker, but he's being taken, Ayaka's mother's in town. Mm -hmm. Her name? Nikia. Say again? Makia. Makia. She's watching the, our little boy, and yep. uh, it's been great. Just been great. Back from Hawaii, uh, settling in. Back. Uh, good to be back, and kind of spreading out a little bit more. Getting out of the master bedroom, and a lot more space now, so we're able mm -hmm. to use the rest of the apartment. It's been really nice. It's been really good. So we saw these movies together. We'll get into it here. Ex Machina, directed by Alex Garland, starring Oscar Isaac. Dome Hall Gleason and Alyssa Vikander. Vikander. A young programmer is selected to participate in a breakthrough experiment evaluating the human qualities of a breathtaking female uh, AI. And uh, this was great. I loved this movie. Did you yes. like it? Yeah, exciting. I thought, thought it was exciting. Mm -hmm. I liked all the action and sort of that drama that happened too. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this. I recommend it to everybody I see. I give it five bags of popcorn. Me too. Five bags of popcorn from Ayaka and Tim. What else we have here? The Moon and the Sun, directed by Sean McNa McNa Sean Mac uh, McNamara. Yeah. Starring Pierce Brosnan, I guess, once again, with William Hurt and Benjamin Walker. King Louis the X15, X1V, 5, 6, X plus 1. X plus 1 plus 5 is 6, so it's 16. It's like King Louis, I don't know the f***ing Roman numerals. I don't know the math. 16's quest for immortality leads him to capture a, memer, a mermaid's life force, a move that complicated, that's complicated when his daughter discovers the creature. So this is a mermaid movie. Um, and uh, one of the best mermaid movies I've seen since Splash, starring Tom Hanks. And uh, it reminded me of Splash, this movie, uh, because of the mermaids and uh, some of that romance, which I loved. And of course, Ron Howard's a great director. And so is Sean McNamara, the director of The Moon and the Sun, starring Piers Bronston. Oh, did you like this movie? Was it, uh, did it, did it, uh, was it as good as some other movies you had seen? Uh, I don't really like Mermaid, so uh -huh. I don't know. A little weird, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. i never yes. seen Mermaid before. So. No. Well, I'll give it six to, uh, five bags of popcorn. Mm, three bags of popcorn. Ayaka gives it three bags of popcorn, and I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and five bags of soda, too because I love Pierce Bronson and William Hurt and all the guys in this movie here. Interesting history, too, I thought. All right, well, um, did you say you had a popcorn classic? Uh, we don't have the VHS tapes, but we got a movie on iTunes. Mm -hmm. If anyone's done this before, you can rent movies on iTunes now. And uh, we watched The Hangover the other day, Hangover mm -hmm. 2. Yep. And uh, that was very funny and it had mm -hmm. a bunch of different, um, I don't know, if, you've seen, if you like The Hangover movies, you'll like this one, right? Yeah, it was really fun. Okay, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm sweating now because I know what I got to do. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do this uh, for a long time now, and I might as well do it. 
Um, I just want to, you know, we've been going together now for a while and having a great time. It's so good to be back and on track with you in our little space. Mm -hmm. It's been master such bedroom. a master bedroom, mm -hmm. now the whole place. Mm -hmm. and, um, and little Tom Cruise is such a joy. And I want us to be closer. If something, as values.com says, if, if you got something you love, hold on to it as hard as you can. And I've messed up in the past, and we've been through some tough times, but I want them all to be good from now on. All right, so I think, come here, sit here. On. I think you know what I'm about to do. Ayaka? <laughs> Would you marry me? Yes. <laughs> Yay. There we go. Thank you for saying yes. We can get married in Hawaii. Okay. Let's go, um, let's go play. Let's see Tom Cruise Come here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I love this movie. I'm Tim Heidecker and you're watching On Cinema at the Cinema. Quite on set! It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hi everybody, this is Tim Heidecker, the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. Welcome to the season premiere, season seven, uh, as we're calling it, Lucky Season Seven. Uh, lucky, uh, season, lucky Season Seven and uh, Thank you for joining us again where we talk about movies and all sorts of other media, as you'll see soon. My guest today, welcome back to the show, is Greg uh, Turkington here. Who, hey, Greg, guys. Thank you very much for coming back and being a part of the On Cinema uh, legacy. And I didn't think I'd be back this season, so it's kind of a trip to be here. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a wild ride. I had you. to put aside our cinema for fans uh, of our cinema that were wondering when that show was going to debut. We had a deal in place with ABC. There were some sticking points, I have to say, that weren't favorable. So I decided, let's worry about that another year and mm -hmm. let's get back to on cinema so that we can keep those reviews coming. And a lot of people were wondering, uh, I know you were upset, a lot of people were upset uh, about the way I handled your collection. And um, we've spoken about it. I feel like it's water under the bridge for us, uh, but some of the viewing audience might not understand um, I believed in my heart that what I was setting aflame was dubs of those movies because I never in my million years believed that you were um, not truly dubbing tapes as you were in the scene. So but they were in video boxes. Well, we like I wouldn't them. dub it and, mm -hmm. and put it in a new box. It doesn't I, make you've sense. You've explained that to me a number of times and I get it now and I apologize to you. I will say this much that at the time when Tim destroyed my collection, which is not a cool thing to do. No. Uh, you wouldn't go into the Louvre with a flamethrower and destroy all those great paintings, and, and but you did do that with, I think at that time, one of the biggest collections in North America. Uh, I was upset. I'm over it now. The good news is, uh, and I can reveal this now to the public for the first time, uh, one of the fans of our shows uh, tipped me off uh, about a video shop in Victorville, California, mm -hmm. up in the desert. Uh, that decided to discontinue the VHS format and rent only DVDs. For the past few years, these tapes have been in storage in a storage locker in Victorville, gathering dust. Uh, the owner got tired of paying the fees for the storage locker and turned it over to me as a gift. Uh, and now I own this collection, which is an entire store stock, mm. all genres, all styles, all in beautiful condition. I've moved to Victorville, mm -hmm. taken up residence there, and right now I'm currently sorting and cataloging this collection, uh, and we're calling it the Victorville Film Archive. And if you've got some time, Tim, you should come out and see it. It's actually probably five times as big as my previous collection, and every single movie that you burned has mm -hmm. been replaced, in many cases, in triplicate. Almost one of those too-good-to-be-true happy endings, which I'm proud to be a part of. Um, I quickly just want to give you guys an update of where I am uh, with my life. I know Greg doesn't want the show to be all about personalities, but people do want to know. Um, still, Ayaka's doing great. Little Tom Cruise is growing up. So he's going through sort of those terrible twos. A little early. Can't put my finger on 
how many months he is, but he's just turning into such a wonderful boy. I've been enjoying really just expressing myself, my individual talents uh, through music uh, lately. I've, uh, thank you all for supporting Our Values Are Under Attack from Decker, uh, Hawaii. My first number one download. Uh, Where? As was well, my first download. It was the number first. It was the number one download for, out of that catalog. Um, as you know, I've got that um, bug. I, I got whatever gene that is that make you gifted musically. I got it uh, in in spades. So I'm going to be probably the next few months working on that almost exclusively. Um, people go, well, what are you going to do next with Decker? What's happening? Season three, I can't wait to see season three. I mean, people are saying this to me almost on a constant basis. Every time I leave that, the apartment, people are stopping me on the street. I get pulled over. People are wondering, what is the future of Decker three? Well, the new season of Decker is coming. With a big, big uh, caveat there and a big announcement to make is, you, sir, Greg Turkington, will be in charge of the franchise. I've given keys to the kingdom over to you. And uh, Greg, I'm excited about it. Turkington here will be directing and uh, writing and producing the entire affair because I've talked to you about this. You know, I looked at the one of my idols, Steven Spielberg, and his ability to create a universe and something like Jurassic Park or, or Jaws, where he's directed the first, sometimes the second movies, and gone on and let the other people, smaller people. Uh, sort of worker bees go off and direct and write and all these things that aren't as important. And, and I thought, well, that's a smart way to do things. Why am I doing all of these things when I should be uh, spending more time with my family? Jaws 2 is great. Jaws 2 is not as, you know, they diminish as, as they go through, although I do like mm -hmm. I feel the opposite way. But I'm excited to hear, see your take on it. And uh, It's not going to be that different. Uh -huh. you know, when you have a good franchise, you want to stick to what works. I mean, like with the Bond movies, you know, different yeah. people direct them. They even have different people playing James well, that's Bond. that's not going to happen. There's so, a consistency to them. Same Decker as Same always. Decker, yeah. but I'm just saying that, you know, we're going to stick with the exotic locales. We're going to stick with President Davidson. He's not going anywhere, folks. And uh, the concepts that make Decker such a successful series. I, I'm so excited to see the script and see what you've cooked up. because uh, It's I know halfway done now. Mm -hmm. Ten episodes written, ten to go. All right, well, that's all the... Uh, Housekeeping I need to do, unless you have anything to add. It's great to be back and we're doing movies again. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we didn't have a chance to see the movies coming out this week. What we'd like to do is take a look back at the summer, because so many great movies came out this summer. We show up the movies uh, on the screen here that we both agreed deserved five bags of popcorn. I'll show that. Uh, we do want to focus on two movies from the summer that have special meaning to us. Uh, Ant-Man, um, directed by Peyton Reed and stars uh, Paul Rudd, uh, Greg Turkington, Michael Douglas, Michael Penna. Uh, Ant-Man armed with a super suit with the astonishing ability to shrink and scale, but whatever, he turns into an ant, doesn't matter. Burger, burglar Scott Long must embrace his hero and, and it, yeah it's like there's not even a way to summarize that movie because it didn't as a movie it didn't make sense but um it was it was number one for several weeks so. your review you know i have to recuse myself uh you can't wear two hats at once i'm a critic obviously a film expert also an actor now and i think it would be unfair to the show for me to review my own movie so i'm going to recuse myself uh respectfully Fair enough. Um, I thought this movie was a miss. This was sort of, um, I'm wondering why did, who at the studio uh, decided to even put this one out in terms of why not just can it and just keep it in the, uh, locked up in a vault and sort of issue a statement of which would say, uh, my apologies to those expecting this to come out. It will never be seen because it was just, no disrespect to another film that came out this summer, A Train Wreck which is what this should have been called. It was a disaster. It was um, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. People go on and on about these Ed Wood movies and um, other sort of classic bad movies. This kind of falls into that category for me. And uh, I shame the studios and everybody involved for allowing real trash to come out and deceive the wonderful film-going audience that expects more quality than that. Shame on you, and shame on every person involved with the film, including the actors, even the small parts, I thought were terrible. 
terribly directed, terribly acted. Every member of the cast was horrible. And um, I give it unprecedented one bag of popcorn, way more than it even deserves. But as you know, there is no such thing as zero bags of popcorn. There has to be a bag of popcorn. This is, these are movies. So uh, laws of physics demand at least one bag of popcorn. But it is a sad, lonely bag with no salt, no butter, many unpopped corn at the bottom of the bag, a bag of popcorn that is stale, hardly able to eat. It is a horrible, horrible movie, Ant-Man, directed by Peyton Reed. So that gets one bag of popcorn. Okay. The, uh, the other movie we want to talk about is The Fantastic Four, directed by Josh Trank. Josh, one of the greats, uh, my captain, Josh Trank. This one's for you. Uh, Fantastic Four, starring Tim Heidecker, Miles Teller, Kate Mara, Michael B. Jordan, not the basketball player, uh, and uh, four young outsiders teleport to an alternate universe which alters their physical form in shocking ways. The four must learn to harness their new abilities and work together to save Earth from a powerful enemy. I give this one six bags of popcorn. It is a home run. It, this movie was sort of the quintessential popcorn movie. That's why I give it so many bags. Perfectly handled by the master himself, Josh Trank. Thank you for your direction. and gave me such great guidance and made, uh, made it such a fun, easy film for me to work on. Greg, what did you think of this one? Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I mm -hmm. thought, um, you know, the beginning's a little bit slow, but overall I think it was one of the best superhero movies that has been made. It has big scenes and it has small scenes. I thought that uh, I completely understand why you would want to be involved with it, why you would pay the $15,000 to get that cameo right, in the movie. We're not so. No. You know, that's what they do nowadays is it, can it I, it's called a, very a much? vanity no, role. No, it's not you, what you, I have You pay $15,000 and you get a couple of lines in the movie. It's a good investment on your uh, part because it helps promote uh, that's Decker, to you know. Me that you think that that's what happened. Well, I don't that's think not... that's what happened. I heard you talking on the phone and making the deal. The opposite happens to be true. I was paid that much and some for the work I did on that for movie. For your fantastic four lines in the movie no, I, that you paid $15,000 to. I didn't uh, pay. It was a great you, movie you believe, anyway, regardless of that. Believe what you movies believe. have to get the money. They, have, believe, to, they have to get the up. budget I'm, somehow. I'll it's block like you out. I'll placement. have everybody walk, all of them walk you this out. This is you one of the things they do with movies this. now is that you can pay to be in a movie in a cameo role. That's enough of the show. Thank you very much. In a cameo role, you can pay to be part of a movie. You have to understand, I did not pay a dime for this. You got on the phone with Josh Trang and offered him $15,000 thousand dollars I offered for him the role idea that in the I Fantastic did not offer him Four. any money. If I offered him money, it was to get the conversation started, and that's where it ended. And he was, gave you a vanity role and then I was in paid, the movie. Uh, no, it was not a vanity role. I auditioned like everybody else, so I was paid $35,000. It's a formality. $1. That's just a formality. You paid $35,000. Hey, Greg, $35. drop you this now, or you don't come back next week. All right. Hi everybody, welcome back to On Cinema at the Cinema, where we're in full gear uh, going through episode the uh, Lucky Season 7, which I'm calling Lucky Season 7 because we are uh, got a good feeling about this season and Lucky s Number 7 has always been lucky for me. Um, I want to welcome my guest with me today is Greg Turkington. Hey guys. And uh, I'm sorry, Greg has asked me to say Greg Turkington from the Victorville Film Archive. Victorville Film Archive, which I've been slaving away to get this archive completely ready to go. Um, thousands, literally thousands of movies to catalog, archive, label, right. uh, using All my right. coding system. Yeah, um, it's got some cool movies this week to talk to you guys about. Want to just give you an update from uh, uh, from our world here, uh, Decker, season three. Everyone's asking what's going on Decker, season three. I haven't seen the script All the episodes yet. are written, 20 episodes, uh, which is a Decker season. Um, most of the cast is set in place. We're building sets right now. Good. I'm doing this at the same time, maintaining this film archive, so it's, I've been very busy. Well, I can't wait to see what you've got cooked up. I'll be there uh, bright and early whenever you need me to. Most exotic locale yet. If you mm. thought Hawaii was exotic, wait till you mm. see where Decker goes this season. All right, and so you're going to be able to get me done in one chunk, um, pretty limited time-wise. No, you have a lot of scenes, but we can shoot them in one day. If you can get the, if you can do them right, we should be able to get you out in a day. Great. All right, 
We're going to film um, a lot of the scenes before you even get there, so don't worry. Okay. So, um, sort of bigger news. I have a big announcement I want to make, and uh, with the support of my family and uh, my friends, I'd like to f announce the formation of my first ever band called Decar. Put the logo up. We just put the logo together this morning. And Why would you call it Decker when there's an existing movie well, series called Decker? It's a different spelling, of course, and it's also my right because it De Decker is part of my name, and uh, that's where I came up with the but original it's Decker. It's going to be confusing to people that if they see a CD, they're going to think it's a soundtrack to one of the Decker movies. And no, then you look at the logo, it's, it's a completely different thing, different spelling. The two Ks, which I think were cool, is my idea. Let's create this duality, sort of a. Um, Mirror, which represents seems like there's another name you could use rather than confuse people with this. Okay, well, I'll be sticking with Dakar. Someone's talking about Decker, they're talking about the hit action series starring Tim Heidecker. If they're talking about Dakar, it is the new, uh, uh, new rock, rock, progressive rock music. D E C A R would be less confusing. D E double K A R is the way we're spelling it. So, I'm going to be uh, recording our first uh, three song EP next week or this coming weekend. And hopefully I'll have some songs for you guys to check out. Uh, title track is called Empty Bottle. So it's not literally about an empty bottle. It's actually a re representation of some, sometimes the way we all feel, feel a little empty, a little lonely. Um, anyway, we'll get into that later. Let's talk about our movies this week. Movies. Speaking of Empty Bottle, Black Mass. Um, doctor, I'm sorry, directed by Scott Cooper. Actors Johnny Depp, one of my favorites, Benedict Cumberbatch, Daco Daco Dakota jo Johnson. Just Dakota. Oh, okay. Daco Dakota. Dakota, okay. like the state. Dakota. It's, sorry, just, Dakota. Dakota. it's just Dakota. This is okay. Dakota. Oh, it's like, like North the, Dakota. Yeah. North Dakota. Or South Dakota. Sorry, uh, Dakota, jo Dakota Johnson. Okay. The true story of white e witty burglar. The... State of the brother of a state senator and most uh, infamous violent crime, uh, criminal in the history of South Boston, who became an FBI informant to take down a mafia family invading his turf. Okay, so this is the the true story of Whitey Burglar, the mafia guy from Boston, uh, who became an FBI um, informant to take down a mafia family mm -hmm. uh, invading his turf. And I liked it a lot. I thought it was a good action. Sort of remind me of The Godfather. Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman, or not Dustin Hoffman. Uh, Robert De Niro. Yeah, and also Goodfellas. If you haven't seen Goodfellas, check that one out. And Married to the Mob and those kind of movies, which are always fun to imagine what life might be like in the Costa Nostra. I give it five bags of popcorn and one soda. Greg, what did you think of this movie, Black Mask? Mask. Oh, I like it. It's a very serious look at a, at a real problem in America, which mm -hmm. is the, the gangsters and, mm -hmm. and some of the havoc that they can wreak on our communities. My only problem with it is the casting. I feel that Johnny Depp was wasted in this role, just playing some old, essentially a businessman, when he's much more suited to fanciful characters, flamboyant mm -hmm. characters who wear velvet gowns or have uh, a strange cap. Or uh, mm -hmm. I feel like you could cast, uh, you know, Robert Duvall or something to pay, play one of these gangsters. And don't waste Johnny Depp's time. He's more suited for these types of characters. Yeah, yeah, Captain Crunch. Captain re Crunch, if they, if they rebooted the Captain Crunch, uh, I guess that was never really a series of movies, but the serial. If they did a movie okay. of Captain Crunch, that would be good. I, I would like to see him play a rabbit or a cat, a talking cat, any sort of, uh, like a giraffe that comes to life as a person. That's I don't an interesting know. interesting point. What's the rating? I'm going to give it four bags of popcorn. I would probably dock the movie one bag of pop popcorn for wasting... Uh, Johnny Depp's time and, and our time as well. But because I like the movie so much, I'm going to go ahead and restore that that uh, that bag uh, and give it five bags of popcorn. Okay. Second movie here we have is Maze Runner, The Scorched Trials. I love those Maze Runner movies. Directed by Wes Ball. Actors Dylan O'Brien, Nathaniel, Nathan e, Nathalie Emanuel, Thomas Brody Strang Stangsters. Okay. Having escaped the maze, the Gladers now face a new set of challenges on the open road of desolate landscape filled with unimaginable obstacles. Uh, one of the greats, I mean, this is sort of emblematic of the Maze Runner series. It's, it's uh, true to the, 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 the characters and um, it reminded me of uh, back in my youth going through uh, cornfields and everything. 
uh, like a field of dreams. Um, five bags of popcorn and five sodas, five cans of soda. And you know, it's been too long since they did one of these movies. And, and that's something that I think Hollywood sometimes gets wrong is that you don't want to keep people waiting too long because then they might move on to something else and forget what happened in the previous movies. I didn't because I did revisit this movie before going to see uh, the, the, the sequel and uh, I thought it was excellent. A little scary. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't take my son Tom Cruise Jr. to this, um, but I would take my wife on a date night, which you got to remember always to keep reminding yourself when you have kids to keep that flame alive. And often we do that. We went to go see the um, Lego movie together, mm -hmm. which was out on the, at the Dollar Theater. Second run. Uh, bags. Oh, yeah, I would give it five bags of popcorn and um, maybe throw in a little whistle in case you're trapped in a maze and, and need help getting out. All right, let's push forward and uh, get through to Greg Turkington's Popcorn Classics, which you said you've got ready. Popcorn Classics. We're going to do something special on Popcorn Classics to commemorate the Lucky 7 season, as you're calling it. Oh, we're going to do what uh, is known as a Lucky Dip. Just bring the movie out. I don't want to do the whole thing. We're going to do a Lucky Dip, just like uh, anyone has done. Um, this is what we're going to do. You're going to close your eyes and reach in and dig into the bag and pull out a movie. These are all classics. Okay. You pull one out and, and uh, it'll be the popcorn classic for today. Okay, this will be a little fun. Close your eyes good. though. All right, we don't need to luck. blindfold you. Wish me luck. Dig deep. I'm just going to pick up, we haven't rehearsed this, so. Our song, our song. What did, um, oh, don't break it. Popcorn classic for today. This is actually one of the many, many films that I have found at the Victorville Film Archives. Uh, it's a contemporary teen movie, a uh, coming of age tale set in Brooklyn. And uh, looks like. Okay, thank you for that. Um, all right, well, I'll, I don't know if we'll probably cut this for next week. I haven't seen this. All right. But Let's... it's from 2001, stars uh, Carrie Washington. Anna forget Simpson. just forget it. Put it back. We get Well, I mean, I want to do the segment. Uh, I see the, the bodyguard. We all know that one. Yeah, Whitney Houston, Kevin Costner. That's your popcorn, popcorn classic. classic. Okay. Uh, well, I'll see you next week and um, that'll be it for us on On Cinema. So, see you next week. I'll probably see you on Saturday. Are you going to Dr. Luther's uh, party? Ayaka sent me an invite to Dr. Luther's on this party. I'm not going to that. I've got recording dates set up. It's free I'm, food. I'm going to be recording from probably Friday night till Sunday night. Blocking myself in, just getting these three songs. Do you tell Ayaka? She knows what I'm doing. Uh, but enjoy it. Have her uh, have fun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're, I'm, I just got in. I have, I have yeah, I know. Time Before we start the episode, I need to talk okay. to Tim about something. Hold on a second. Um, we good? No, no. Before we start the episode, Hold on. I want to talk we'll to talk you about, to you about it after. Ladies and welcome back to another episode of On Cinema. My name is Tim Heidecker, and I'm with joined by uh, Greg Turkington from the Victorville Film Archive. Hey guys, good to be here and uh, bringing in some movies from the archive today for our popcorn classics. Sorry segment. about that. I was running a little late. Uh, just got back, really, just about 15 minutes ago from San Juan Capistrano, where. I've spent the weekend uh, marathon session recording the Decker, new, new song from Decker, the band Decker, and this is the this is the demo. It's pretty much finished, and I wanted to let everyone's been asking me when are we going to be able to hear it. I'm going to guess what you're going to be able to hear it right now. Um, this is called Empty Bottle. Uh, I had an interesting weekend too, and I wanted Hold to on. talk to. Hold on, I am in the middle of a sentence, okay. and you interrupted me twice now. Um, it was an insane, great experience. The Axiom Studios, a man named Axiom, who I met through uh, at Guitar Center. He recorded, mixed the whole thing, played drums on it, and he helped me with some of the instrumentation, drumming, and uh, some of the guitar playing. I actually played lead guitar on it. I got, I obviously got my ears pierced uh, because we were just. It was one of these rock and roll weekends, one of these legendary weekends. That was insane. It was so much work, but also work and play mixed created this incredible piece of music that I'm so proud of. It makes the song I did before My Values Are Under Attack sound like shit. This is 
going to be a number one song on Billboard. So I don't like to. I know this shows about movies. Where can people hear it online? And then let's get to the movies. My show. I'm going to do things my way. Uh, this is going to be a debut right here. Normally we talk about movies, but we're not going mm -hmm. to talk about movies today. We're going to listen to what? music, and we're going to appreciate the work I did this weekend. So, someone want to play this? Here, put it on, and listen to this. Wait, till you hear this? It sounds like uh, uh, I don't know who. Great. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world premiere of my new song from the band Dekar, is Empty Bottle. Take it away. Play the song. That kind of fades out. We'll do a we'll do like a cross mix to the next song, depending mm -hmm. on what that next song is. What do you think? How many bags of popcorn are you gonna give that one? I think instead of spending the weekend making that music, you should have come to the picnic that you were invited to by Ayaka's boss, Dr. Luther, because yeah. I went to it, and I need to tell you something, Dr. Luther. You've never met this guy that she's been working for for a year and a half. No, I've heard of him speak. She spoke kindly of him. That's about all I can say. It's so you weird. don't know who he is. It's my well, wife's boss. We, I got a candid photo from the picnic, and uh, he looked very familiar to me, and I think you'll see why. You just make the, this a Photoshop? No, this? that's from the picnic on Saturday, the wellness picnic. That's Dr. San. That's not yeah, Dr. Luther. That's Dr. That's Dr. San. San. What's she doing with Dr. That's what San? I wanted to tell you. The second I saw him, I recognized him. This Dr. Luther that Ayaka's been talking about, in fact, is Dr. San, who ruined it's, several episodes of our show. You don't know this guy, Dr. Welts. San. He's the most wanted man in America. He's fooled me. He fooled our audience. He's wanted by us. My wife, my soon to be wife, is been working as a secret agent almost under. Well, I don't know if she's, I don't think she she's knows. She's duplicitous. I don't I think she knew anything about Dr. San. I don't think she watched the episodes she, with Dr. San, but if she had, I, she would have told you. I've been you. looking for this asshole 
since for two years, and you're telling me he's been right under my nose Dr. this whole Luther time? Dr. Luther is Get Dr. Sam. Get You get I, out. I didn't have anything to do with it. This is my wife! You and need she's to hear the truth. She's working with Dr. Sam? You're telling me my wife's working for Dr. Sam? I'm Turn the lights off! I'm sorry. We didn't even review one movie this week. We didn't even mention the title of him. I want his head on a platter! You find out where he is! Well, he's at 400 La Crescenta, Suite 200. Where he always is, where Ayaka is every day. You should have, the second you saw him, you should have called me. I would have come straight from the set. I called you and you didn't answer the phone because you were too busy well, recording keep the phone that on crappy recording music. Drums, tracking drums. Right now, I'm interested in my acupuncture. Dr. Sand's gonna be with us. He's now part of the show. He's a permanent member of the team on Cinema Family. Dr. San is with us. Thank you, Dr. San. I do believe that healthcare is a privilege. I sort of feel like my face has been cut with a knife. <sighs> and it's my foot. Ow, Mr. Ow. Disrespect little Dr. San. Well, I don't really care about Dr. San. I have a, they call a stage three uh, uh, infection on my face from Dr. San's needles. If anybody out there knows who, where he is, may he be found and arrested, prosecuted, put in jail. Dr. Luther, you've never met this guy that she's been working for for a year and a half? I, she would have told you. I've been you. looking for this asshole since for two years, and you're telling me he's been right under my nose Dr. this Dr. Luther time? is Dr. Sam. Hi everybody, welcome to um, my, sh uh, on cinema, it's not on cinema today, it's a, I uh, should put, just put this away, so we get to it. It's a new show for today called the Dr. Sand Forgiveness Special, welcome, I want to welcome my guests. Um, it's going to be a tr tricky show for us, but I want to get through a lot of stuff, because last week has been hard. Uh, I want to welcome... Greg Turkington from the Victorville Film Archive. Hey guys. Joe Estevez here, who's gonna, as you guys know from Decker and uh, President Jason Davidson is here, who's also gonna be uh, helping me moderate today and get kinda, uh, you've had, I'm sure you've had to forgive somebody in your past. Uh, I, I, I did, I did. Uh, We're not gonna dwell on that, but you have oh, come, you okay. come from, you have experience in that department. Oh, yes. And finally, my guest is, uh, my main guest, Dr. Sand, Dr. Luther Sand. Thank you for having me back. Uh, bring everybody up to speed. Uh, last week, Greg here alerted me that um, uh, my fiance, Ayaka, had been working for Dr. Sand this, uh, for the past couple of years. And um, there was a little bit of confusion because she had been calling you Dr. Luther Sand. As a Japanese woman would. Yeah, uh, Luther San. Luther San. Yeah. And I didn't know that she was actually saying your full name and that your first name is Dr. Luther. Yeah, maybe it should have been Luther San San. Yeah, right. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, as you guys remember, um, I had been one of your patients and uh, you had been treating me for various d diseases that I had. And um, the re initial reaction to the acupuncture had been negative. And I react, overreacted, and um, we had a falling out. That's one of my biggest regrets after now reconnecting I'm, with you. I'm really sorry about the reaction that expressed itself on your scan. That's why we're calling this the forgiveness special, yeah. I guess, because we all have m had made uh, mistakes. I, I should have been more clear about how you need to clean your body off ahead of time. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. What Dr. Sam was explaining to me was that I had come into the process from an impure place. And uh, I had not done the, the, some of the stuff that you had advised me to do ahead of time. I kind of wanted to skip through some of that stuff. Yeah, because the needles were pure gold. Mm -hmm. They were like 14 karat gold needles. I didn't even know that, that, that was. And gold being a, a pure element, it's impossible for them mm -hmm. to be dirty. Are, are all the needles gold? Yes. Oh. Yeah, Joe, they were. So, so, yeah. and, and so it wasn't, they were good when they went in, it was just he didn't take a shower or something? Was that Something it? like that, yeah. But it was my oh. fault, because I should have told him. You know, that. we're not here to place yeah. blame, we're here to forgive and, and move on. And it's actually comforting to know that, this, that, you're, that you're out there and you're, you have a great relationship with, with Ayaka. And I know that you just started seeing um, my son, Tom Cruise Jr., who has his own set of health problems. And uh, it's just one of those things that I'm glad. I feel so much more relief now uh, that I've got the great doctor here on my side again, advising me for all health concerns. Yeah. And, um, and what you were talking, this is fascinating. You were talking to me about 
um, vaccines. Tell the audience yeah, about that. I mean, it's, be... it's tricky bringing up a kid these days mm -hmm. in, in today's modern world because we have so many opinions and voices coming from all around, uh, especially the drug industry. Oh, yeah, the pharmaceutical is... company, all part of that collusion between big government and the pharmaceutical company, big business that, that uh, we call crony capitalism. Yeah, they're brainwashing us, making us convinced that we're going to go extinct as a species unless we get all these vaccinations. Right and uh, take all their pills to make us happy or sad or And the or shots, whatever. too. I mean, we, 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 Tom Cruise Jr. had been getting these, these vaccination shots, and then I find out from you that millions of kids in this country are dying, you know, every day from these vaccinations. Yeah, it's very sad. With, with, I was reading the other day, coincidentally, that if you don't take a shower for three or four, even five days, that's a good thing in the body. So just, I was just thinking sure, that... We're not, we're not talking about the cleanliness thing right now. Okay. I'm going to move on from that. Um, I just want to say, I, uh, I seek your forgiveness for the way I sort of threw your name through the mud. Uh, Joe, uh, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. Um, and uh, hopefully you can forgive me. Yeah, my forgiveness is all yours. And... I accept your forgiveness, and Great. it feels really good. Yeah, as it I does feel like this forget. thing was hanging over my head for years, this idea that this guy was out there who was trying to kill me, you know? Yeah. And here you are, as I knew you were, a good doctor, a great doctor, a man that cares about his patients. And it's, a, it's an emotional thing for me to, to get, talk about, because I know that you've been... Wow. It's good to be back. <laughs> wow. So, you've been so... Uh, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, I'm so glad I have the opportunity. I have this forum where I can express myself. I have a gift for you and the audience about vaccinations yeah. and about how much harm they cause in yeah. this world. This is one of the greatest, I don't want to say books, but pamphlets, informational documents I've ever gotten. Healthy Healing and the Natural Alternative, Just Say No to Vaccination. Access this document. It's incredible, and it's, a, it's an eye-opener. And that's, I tell you what, I'm going to take Tom Cruise off all that starting today medicines, the vaccine, you know, he's got all kinds of it, medical issues that the doctors are over-prescribing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's better to just let our bodies, let our own immune system just do their thing. Yeah, it's amazing what the body can do to cure itself. That's the message you provide. And um, this is one of the greatest documents I've ever read. Um, it's the key to health, and you can forget about all that other medicine. You don't have to go to the doctor anymore. You follow the words of Dr. San. And um, we talked about this off air, but uh, Dr. San's going to be uh, staying with us for the next couple weeks and try to get Tom Cruise up to 100%, which he's definitely nowhere near because he does have a variety of illnesses that need your direct attention. And you're going to be a guest in our home. And we're all just going to benefit. Off I, of absolutely. Being I think the, the energy is bouncing off each other. And uh, I'll probably, I'm not going to be around so much because I'm still trying to get this uh, demo finished. And, but I want to welcome you oh, home, thank into you. my home and, thank you. The, and welcome back. You know? It's good to be back. Welcome back. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Um, finally, um, we'd popcorn like to. Popcorn classics. I'm sorry. Sorry. We're doing popcorn classics. <clears throat> no, said that I know, but we're not going to have time for that because he just told me he's going to play a song. For but this. you told me to come out here from Victorville to do, and I could do two popcorn classics. And well, I don't know what to well, tell I have no reason to be here for this. We'll and get if to. I'm not doing the popcorn classics. Okay, Greg, this is the... It's, it's, it only takes a minute per this movie. This is a forgiveness special. We minutes. don't have time. There's a forgiveness special. Maybe you should... I forgive you. Now can I do the popcorn classics? Why don't we do your popcorn classics first thing up next week? That's how we'll start the show. It'll be unprecedented in on cinema history. We'll actually begin a show with a popcorn classic. All right? We'll do two of them, too. Thank you, Greg, for understanding. And now, Dr. Sands, A Song for Peace. Dr. Sands. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Thank you very much. My Come pleasure. On. And we'll be back next week with movie reviews from On in Cinema. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. We're back. Thank you for bearing with us last week. Uh, and by the way, 
I don't know about Bearing With It. It was one of the highest rated episodes of On Cinema History. Um, but we are back doing what we do best, reviewing movies that are coming out this week. My guest from the Victorville Film Archive is Greg Turkington. Hey guys, welcome to the show. And we're going to kick things off today with a popcorn classic, as promised last week. Okay, get that over with. All right, this week's popcorn classic is Blue Streak, starring Martin Lawrence and Luke Wilson from the director of Flubber. Uh, it's about a master jewel thief and he's anxious to retrieve uh, the hot rock, uh, which he hid at a construction site two years earlier. So this is an interesting movie. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I consider it one of the all-time great popcorn classics. It's from 1999, and it's rated PG-13. All right. Blue Streak Thanks. with Martin Lawrence. If you haven't had a chance to see it, it is available. I actually have three copies in my archive. I was delighted to find it. All right. It. Got that out of the way. Put that away. Today's movies are Pan, directed by Joe Wright. Acting of uh, Hugh Jackman, Runa Ma Rooney, Mara, should be Mara Rooney, Gar Garrett Hudland, and Amandra Siegfried. 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 The story of an orphan who is spirited away to the magical Neverland. This is a Peter Pan movie. Uh, there he finds both fun and dangers and ultimately discovers his destiny to become the hero. This is a prequel to the movie Peter Pan from Robin Williams. I thought this was uh, finally, you get that origin story that we've all been looking for which is, where did Peter Pan come from? He just didn't come out of thin air. He is Hugh Jackman. And uh, I like this movie, got, to, got, got a chance to enjoy it this weekend, and uh, I'll see, uh, give it five bags of popcorn, and... Uh, what did you think of the movie? Uh, you know, when I first heard about this movie, I thought, geez, of all the franchises to reboot, why Peter Pan? And then when I actually sat down and watched it, I realized it was a, a stroke of genius, because this is one of the best movies of the year. Uh, seeing Peter Pan come to life with the modern technology that Hollywood has as, at, at its disposal these days uh, is nothing short of a miracle. This is something that will give you a second lease on life. It's fun for teenagers, fun for old people, fun for Peter Pan heads, fun for people who've never even heard of Peter Pan. If there is anybody like that, I don't think there is. And the, the whole gang's here, Tinkerbell, Peter, and the rest. Um, I thought the movie was a delight. Uh, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and throw in a jar of Peter Pan brand peanut butter. Yeah, we're not. Uh, Dr. Sand has gotten rid of all chemically induced foods, including well, Peter Pan. It's just peanuts. Peanuts and, and salt. And tons of sugar. Tons of sugar. I doubt it. So, oh, you look up at the ingredients. There's corn syrup in there and all kinds of crap. It's peanut butter. It's just going to be peanuts and oil and salt. Just look at the ingredients. I'm t just warning you. Well, I don't have it at home, so I'm not going to look at the ingredients. But it's fine. Steve Jobs. Eat naturally is my message. Um, Steve Jobs, directed by Danny Boyle. So Susan Boyle, singer. Might be related. This is a movie, though. It's nothing to do I'm with music. I'm saying the director, Danny Boyle, might well, be Everything doesn't to have Susan to Boyle. be about music. When it's about movies, it's about movies. Acted by Fred, Michael Fassbender, Kate Winslet, Seth Rogen, Jeff Daniels, and it's a movie about Steve Jobs. It's about the actor Steve Jobs, or the uh, Apple music, Apple singer, the uh, computers of Steve Jobs. And this was uh, interesting. I didn't know anything about Steve Jobs. I, I'm not even aware that he had passed away from, uh, interestingly, he uh, had is similar issues that uh, my son's dealing with right now with his liver or his kidneys or something. And apparently you can misdiagnose that as being just a flu, but he got, lost a lot of weight. And, uh, Tom did or Steve Jobs? You know what's funny about Steve Jobs in the movie? Steve Jobs, the actor or the character, wears the uh, turtlenecks, the black turtlenecks yeah. that you see that Decker usually wears. Yeah. I was wondering if, in a way, Danny Boyle, the director, and Michael Fessbender was giving a little nod to Decker himself. And you see that in these with the Kingston movie from last year, and these other movies are sort of Hollywood's way of going, we're watching, and keep doing what you're doing. That black mock turtleneck you'll see pop up in a lot more movies, I believe. And Let me give my review. My official bag popcorn of uh, for Steve Jobs is five bags of popcorn. It is... Uh, going to be considered one of the classic movies of our generation. 
Thank you, Danny Boyle, for writing that mo for directing the movie. I just wanted to say this movie is actually going to be in the record books for doing something that no biography has ever done, and this is what makes it notable. And film buffs should rejoice. As far as I know, and and I do know these things, this is the first uh, biography of a known figure to use the full name as the title of the movie. If you think about it, you have JFK. Well, that was his nickname. The Johnny Cash movie is called I Walk the Line. Uh, what's love got to do with it? It's not called Tina Turner. Nixon. It's not Richard Nixon. It's just Nixon. If it's Ray. The Ray mm. Charles movie is just called Ray. If it's Here you have the first and last name, and Seems that's because a uncreative, almost as if they were wasting time doing other things. Oh no, Hollywood is smart with this. They know what they're doing. It's that if they call the movie Jobs, that sounds like a comedy, doesn't mm -hmm. it? About a guy with a lot of different jobs, a mm -hmm. screwball comedy. So they couldn't do that. They had to call it Steve Jobs, and in doing so, they inadvertently pioneered a new style of naming biographies. To my knowledge, this is the first movie ever with a, with a subject's well, first and last name as the title. And oh. so I give it five bags of popcorn and uh, maybe with some melted uh, apple butter mm. on it because Steve Jobs founded Apple. Well, that's one of the takeaways from the movie there. And I want to also add that I thought Danny, Boyle's, Danny, Danny Boyle did a good job. Good jobs on the movie. Or everybody... You know what I'm going for. Good jobs with the movie. Good job directing the movie. Lincoln was another one that's mm -hmm. just called Lincoln. It's not called Abraham Lincoln. And we understand that. All right. Well, a quick uh, Decker update. Uh, you want to give a quick Decker Even update? Even Decker. It's called Decker. It's mm -hmm. not called John Decker. Um, anyway, something to think about. Um, Decker update. Yes, we have shot most of the scenes for the first four episodes. Uh, using some of the guest stars, some of the other cast. I have not We're, been on set yet, so I don't know what you've been well, shooting. Well, you know, but, this is how the real yeah. movie makers do it. You don't have to shoot things in sequence with everyone there. You shoot out some actors, you bring in other actors like yourself mm -hmm. at their convenience, and we'll get all your scenes. No one will ever be able to tell that you weren't there every second of the shoot. Well, I'm coming in the next couple of days. Saturday, 6 a.m., yep, and I'll be uh, on set. I'll be there. Been working with Joe Estevez, who's back as President J Jason Davidson. Things haven't changed that much. And uh, I'm going to give you as much time as I can. You know, he got some issues with uh, Tom Cruise. He's going to be coming along, too, I understand. We're going to be... It's going to be a week. long day, because you've got a lot of scenes. Mm -hmm. But I think we can do them in one day, because we've got this plotted out. It's not like in Hawaii, where everything was kind of slipshod. First five episodes... Uh, next week. So the turnaround then, on this is remarkable. I'm shooting this Saturday and new episodes begin airing this coming Monday. We've already edited so, most of the episode. We just need to insert your scenes. Okay, good. Well, you're, you got a crazy deadline, but you guys are in luck because uh, Decker, can I say the title? Decker, Don't reveal the title uh, yet. We've, everything's it's, everything's. The abbreviation buried. is what's on the poster. DVD. DVD. Hey, can we show the official poster? Can show we the premiere poster. that? Yeah. The official DVD, that's all we can reveal right now about the title. A lot of secrecy here. I can't wait. I'm going to read the script tonight, get off book, and uh, be ready to shoot on Saturday. And um, that's all we got for now. We'll see you next time at the movies. I'll see you guys at the movies. Established. Yeah, that's from another TV show. You're not going to be able to use that. It's, that's from Cisco and If I'd say I'll meet you at the movies, that's perfectly I know, nice. but that's, you, you just took that from Cisco and You can't copyright the English language. Look well, it up. you can. The word Pepsi is copyrighted. It's a made up word. It's we'll common be, use. We'll be there at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. on I Saturday. Do a later start, 10 a.m. or something. No, we have a lot of ground to cover. We've got 20 episodes and the two hour finale. We've got to get your scenes for all of them. Oh boy. Okay. See you then. See you then. Hi everybody. This is on Cinema. I'm Tim Heidecker, and I'm joined with uh, I'm joined by Greg Turkington from the Victorville Film Archive, and, and a writer, director, producer, and co-star of Decker vs. Dracula, which you can currently see online. Okay, and we're going to get to our reviews now, and, and we uh, need to reschedule you to come back in and finish the rest of the 17 episodes in the two-hour finale, which uh, is all written and ready to go. Uh, um, after we review the movies, uh, there'll be uh, a major announcement regarding that. Cool. Okay, Goosebumps, directed by not David Letterman, but Rob Letterman. De acted by Jack Black, Halston Sage, Dylan Minnette, Ken Marino, Amy Ryan. A young kid teams up with the niece of young adult horror author Raoul Stein. Uh, after the writer's imaginary demons are set free in the town of Greendale, Maryland. This is a great action, uh, 
horror comedy for kids, Goosebumps. It gave me the goosebumps. I get recommended five bags of popcorn quickly. I loved it. I kept feeling like this is kind of like an unofficial Tim Burton movie. I kept wondering, did Tim Burton have something to do with this? It reminded me of what he does. And then I started wishing Johnny Depp was involved. So I was a little disappointed that those two guys weren't involved. But on its own merits, uh, it, it was fantastic. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and um, the phone number of Tim Burton so that you can get him involved next time. All right, quickly moving on, Bridge of Spies, directed by Steven Spielberg. I almost feel it's insulting to Steven Spielberg to be seated during one of these for his movie. So I would like to stand. Can we? Are we able to frame for that? No? Okay. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. Well, just show him some respect. You sit up straight. I'll give the film five bags of popcorn. Right. That's the ultimate mark of respect. I plan on it. This is directed by Steven Spielberg, acted, acting by Tom Hanks. I mean, do I need to say any more? Alan Alda and Amy Ryan. Uh, I'm glad I said more because Alan Alda is one of our greats, too, from MASH. And uh, this is an American lawyer who's recruited by the CIA during the Cold War to help rescue a pilot detained in the Soviet Union. It's a Cold War spy thriller directed by the master of cinema, Steven Spielberg himself. Everyone said, well, he, I thought Steven Spielberg was retired. And he came out of retirement to make this wonderful movie. God bless Steven Spielberg. Thank you for working on action movies of this caliber. And Tom Hanks, you've never been finer since Forrest Gump. I've never seen you do a better for film performance. This is five bags of popcorn. If you, if you have anything less than five bags of popcorn, I'll uh, personally make sure that you never see the light of day again. Oh, I definitely give it five bags of popcorn. But I was a little disappointed in that it all took place in courtrooms and mm legal filings right. and this sort of stuff. I wanted some more aliens. Rating. That's what Spielberg brought Rating. us in Close Encounters. E.T. the Extraterrestrial, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Rating. Five bags of popcorn. But I would dock it. I would dock it a few kernels per bag uh. because I do feel that Spielberg is the master of science fiction. Mm -hmm. And this was not science fiction. This was courtroom drama. And there's other people that do okay. it Okay. Thank you very much, Greg. And now a very major announcement regarding the uh, re regarding Decker. Um, 20 episodes plus, we can announce now for the first time there is also going to be a two-hour season finale at no, the end. So uh, this sorry. is the biggest and best Decker yet. Pardon me, that's not the uh, announcement I'm going to make. The major announcement is Decker versus Dracula has been canceled no, no, uh, no, no, by no, me. No, no. I apologize to the audience for bearing through those three episodes. Uh, if you haven't seen the third one today, don't bother. It's a complete waste of time. It's uh, a disaster what you did. No. The way you... Shut up. I'm not letting you speak, but you should hear this. What you did to this franchise is you pissed on it. You pissed all over it and you shit on it. And you showed absolutely no respect for the universe that I created through Decker Classified and Decker Protocol Hawaii, Save, uh, Save the Island. I came in good faith and trusted that you would write a script worthy of my performance, my characters that I created. And I did. No, you did not. I did. You turned it into a mockery. You turned it into a joke. Dracula. Who cares about Dracula? You need to watch all monster. the episodes. Shut you up! To film them. Hey! Shut up or I'll punch you in your mouth. Second of all, you showed blatant disrespect for America, American values, by the capitulation of Decker with the Taliban. Never in a million years would Decker and the Taliban collab plot twist. collaborate in order to protect the world from a fictional character. You have ruined your chances at becoming a director, writer, producer of content. Wait and see how it turns I'm out. I'm not waiting to see because I'm not coming back to set. This well, is This ended. beer didn't fit with Decker anyway. You're the one that shits all over it when you show up to set with a it's dyed black beer that Jack Decker dyed. would never wear. That beard is not dyed. It's natural. It's how my hair comes in. First of all, you didn't give Decker any action. You, you need know, to you bring in the action right away. Well, like there was I did no with action in the first three episodes you, of The Sopranos, you screwed up. and that Why was the most popular you up? series you of all time. Doing. You have no idea what you're doing. In Moonraker with James Bond, they took James Bond to outer space. That was at that time the most successful I've, James Bond movie of them all. You know what? Shut up. I've. I, I, it's the biggest mistake of my life ever given you the responsibility of those keys to my beautiful Corvette. I have never heard more negative reactions to anything in my life than those first three episodes of Decker I've never heard Dracula. more positive well, reactions. Well, then you're not looking on the right places. I've seen more one stars, more down votes, more dislikes. I've seen the exact People opposite. Wrote, People are throwing Horror you the Horror movie fans it love is, it, listen, and Decker heads love it. First of all, it. and that fraud, that James Dean that you f picked out of a trash can, whoever his name is, that James Dean James guy, Byron Dean. He's not James Dean. James Dean died many years ago. You've been and that's one of the special him. things about this is it's a return to the silver screen. Wow. James Dean is back. I'll, Rebel Without a Cause, East of Aiden. 
I, Giant and Decker versus Dracula, the four films of James Dean. I, I apologize think he's fantastic you, in this, and there's a lot of buzz about this right now. There a is lot not a lot talking. of buzz. The buzz is bad buzz, and it's people are angry and upset that we destroyed the characters. They're angry that you're and, destroying the series. I'm yeah. going to keep it going with. No, Mr. you're not going to keep it going because I forbid you to ever go on set and work with the characters Jason Davidson. Decker, uh, Abdul, to Jason Kingston. Donaldson. Those are all completely forbidden for you. And sorry well, that this had we'll to happen We'll change the name way. of the show to Becker. I apologize I gave you this creative control. It was my mistake. It was out of line. Well, no, it's your mistake to be uh, pull the plug prematurely before uh, the, people have had a chance. In the parlance Tune of your, horror, Becker in the parlance of your versus, horror movie language, RIP to, De to Decker versus Dracula. It's the last time any and, of my audience and the is going to have to suffer the, through and that. In the, in the language and of horror you. movies, Becker versus Dracula rises With again who? from the crypt. Well, thank you very much. We're wrapping it up James for today. James Dean and is you're back. Forbidden to work. If you want to work on On Cinema, then you don't touch the Decker franchise ever again. I apologize. Well, to you're going to get so much hate mail over this because people are going to want to know how these episodes turned out. You ruined And you don't pull you a plug on something. No, one I didn't chance. ruin it. You need yeah, to watch it. You're going to get so much hate mail. You're never going to open your inbox again and not have it explode in your face with hate mail. Lucky Seven means Casino Edition. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. What a special show we have for you today. It is season seven, Lucky Season Seven, and this is the seven episode number seven, 707. So it's gonna be a special casino-themed uh, episode of the show, which I thought would be a fun thing. Not, I'm not gonna talk about the movie casino or anything, just introduce some casino-style games and. Uh, have fun with the idea that how lucky we are to be doing this great show and how lucky you guys are to be with us every week. Let's kick it's it over. Why, why do you think they're still watching on, after interested. you canceled Hold on. Decker versus Dracula? There's probably nobody watching this anymore. And I'd like to welcome my guest, Mr. Sour Grapes himself, from the uh, Victorville Film Archive, Greg Turkington is with us. Hey guys, and it's kind of ironic that it's the lucky episode because the audience is unlucky and that if they tuned in to see movies reviewed they're probably not going to they're going to see irrelevant casino gambling and personal problem discussions. Incorrect. I've got the movies right here. We're going to get to them and then get to these very simple games. It's we're going to do a stump the buff and another surprise at the end. You're going to enjoy it. Here's uh, a, you know one game that I just wanted to as long as it's game time. How about everybody get on Twitter and tweet at Tim Heidecker bring back Decker versus Dracula, because we all loved it, and he is the one who has somehow managed to halt production. It's temporary. We will be back with the other episodes, but for now, it's no, been halted. Here's a fun game. Who, who can send the most tweets at Tim Heidecker no, saying, don't bother, bring don't back Decker versus Dracula? Court that's of public a, opinion, by the way. It doesn't matter. What matters is quality, and uh, that's why we don't, we'll never see another episode of Decker versus Dracula. Thank you, Greg. Today we're going to be talking about Jen and the Gem and the Holograms, directed by John M. Chu, starring Julius, Juliet Lewis, Stephanie Scott, Ryan Guzman, Molly Ringwald from the old Molly Ringwald movies. As a small town girl cap catapults from underground video sensation to global superstar, she and her three sisters begin a journey of discovering that some talents are too special to keep hidden. This is a classic. Um, in my opinion, one of the great classics of all time, Gem and the Holograms. It's uh, based on a cartoon from the kid, from when I was a kid, and I loved this movie. It was a great throwback to the old times, uh, mem remembering some of those great Gem songs. They were kind of uh, like the Bangles or the groups like that. I give it five bags of popcorn. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a Star is Born mm -hmm. type of scenario, but with animated characters who have now come to life. So. It, it, it's interesting. I'll give it that. I'll give it five bags of popcorn as well. Great. And uh, pop. second one is Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. They can keep making these for, for as well as I care. I'd watch every single one of and them. And then you'd pull the plug on them after three of them so that people never found out how they ended. Directed by Greg Lee, Gregory Plotkin. Acted by Olivia Taylor Dudley. Chloe Sesengarit. Cesangeri, Cesangeri, and Brett Shaw. Another installment of, in the Paramount Horror franchise guaranteed to shock all viewers. And that is true. It is a, one of the, talking about jumping out of your seat, I felt like I was going to, the word I like to use for is spine tingling. And it was really wonderful. I, I love a good horror movie. Uh, you know, not something that really uh, gives you a spook. Not like, like the Dr. Sand Forgiveness special. That was a horror movie. 
Well, it's take anything over some old, uh, you know, like when they take these old Dracula uh, movies and try to reboot this old tired guy in a tuxedo. And I'm, we're not going to get into that. Uh, no, you won't let us. He won't let us see the remaining episodes. Honestly, when he got that beard, I didn't think he was right to play Jack Decker anymore. Uh, but he did anyway, and it was a disaster. But it's certainly not my fault it was a disaster. He, you're the lead actor, and you uh, refused to show up for more than a few hours, gave a piss-poor performance, and then pull the plug and have a tantrum uh, like a, like a crybaby, like little Tom Cruise Heidecker would, because people liked it better than they liked Decker uh, Hawaii. Just like somebody uh, has to pay to get cast in the Fantastic Four because somebody else got cast in Ant-Man. It's, it's, it's just professional jealousy, and it's just destroying this uh, franchise here. But I think that if you would let the other 17 episodes plus the two-hour finale actually get completed in air, uh, you might find that you get some awards. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Dr. San, who has me on this powder called Relax, which I take twice a day. And what it does is it takes all that crap energy that comes this way, all that negativity, all that vitriol. What's more it, negative than pulling the plug on a show that all these people depend on for their livelihood and to be entertained by? That seems pretty negative. Well, I've never been more calm and more at peace than I am right now as you uh, flap off at the mouth. And I suppose uh, I'll just, it's sort of just rolling off me, which is, that powder is unbelievable. If you're ever in stressful situations, take a spoonful, put it in water or juice. And so the moral of the story is instead of watching uh, Decker versus Dracula and finding out an interesting story with an interesting ending and some twists and turns, instead of that, just take a, some weird drugs from some quack doctor who's been discredited. Are you done? Because uh, I'd like to move on to the fun games. Your show got canceled. It's time to move on. Take the Lick your wounds, get up off your ass, and make something of your life. Uh, choices have been made, and I'm living with them. James from Dean the... fans are furious, mm -hmm. too. And sure if, you go, if you hang out in James Dean message boards or chat rooms, James Dean fans, we're looking forward to seeing the first James Dean performance since 1955. I mean, this is a piece of history that uh, essentially you aborted. Am I going to send you back to Victorville and block you up in your uh, viewing station, or are you going to play along and be a good sport and be my guest on the show? Or do you want to leave? I'll finish the show. Okay. That's what I thought. Let's get into these casino games, and we can go home. Are you ready to play Stump the Buff? Sure. Okay, Stump the Buff. Because it's lucky number seven here, uh, these are all questions that have to do with the number seven. Number one, what 1995 thriller starred Brad Pitt and Me too, Black. No. Me too, Black. No, it's seven. Oh, well, yeah. All right. Seven. Well, that's a trick, because the game is called Seven. Why would the answer be the same thing as the game? Obviously, no one's going to guess Seven, because it's too ridiculous that you would use okay. that. Well, I was clear that it's... the answers were about Seven. And that Brad was the Pitt name. was in Meet Joe Black and came out in 1990. What 1954 film directed by Stanley Donnan and starring Jane Powell and Howard Keel won the Academy Award for Best Score? Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Yeah. yeah. Howard Keel, Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. You're very close. It's Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That's the British title in America. It's called Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Okay, it's 0 for 2. No, because the British oh. title, we, we're in America. We're going by the American titles. America, I think it was called Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Okay, well, we'll look that up and see if there's any accuracy to that and find out. Well, this is the uh, wild card question. As they do in Vegas, they've got the wild card. Yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. Um, this is an interesting question. It actually concerns here uh, us here at On Cinema. What is the lowest rated film in On Cinema history? So the question is, what film got the lowest rating in the history of On Cinema? It was that um, One Direction documentary that you and Ayako went to. No, I'm sorry. I that, that got five no. bags of popcorn. No, I, I, I hated it. It wasn't even a no, movie. No, no, no. We have a scale. If we add them both up, if we give five bags each, you'd have ten bags of popcorn. One Which, Direction nope. got zero. 
I mean, I wouldn't have given that anything. It well, I give wasn't five even bags a movie. of popcorn. So the answer is, with one bag of uh, popcorn from this year, this season actually, the first episode was Ant-Man. That was right. All right. Um, I was going to play another game. I got these on the way in. In the money, it's called. Let's see. I was going to give one to Greg to play. I'll just... See what happens here. Hey. <laughs> Thousand bucks. All right, see you next week. I love this movie. The latest chart-topping hits from all the great artists. Who will go see every movie? Hey, what about new music? It's on cinema at the cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Great to be here. My guest today is drummer, guitarist, producer, a uh, band member of mine from Decker is Axiom. Hey guys, pleased to meet you. Yeah, welcome to the to the show. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's funny, um, I was supposed to go down there uh, to do a final mix on Empty Bottle, and uh, I have some issues, of course, up here with Tom Cruise Jr. being a little under the weather, and uh, he's just been been having a hard time. And uh, Ayaka's like, you're not, you're not leaving, so. He comes up here with his mobile rig, and we've been sort of doing that final mix. And yeah. I think it's sounding pretty good. It sounds awesome, man. Yeah. So let's play a little bit of the new mix, because I think the audience yeah, will be eager to hear what that sounds like. Let's just talk about that. Yeah, I need some All this rap music, it's so like with this high bass, so I wanted to give you that kind of feel. Like a more modern yeah, exactly. Like, you know, yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty much modern. Yeah, totally. Like, it sounds good. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I, you know, um, so you taught me so much about recording. I mean, what, what, so what's your, what's your, what kind of software do you use when you're? Um, I use a software called Sonar X1. Mm -hmm. It's like um, just you know a uh, professional software to track audio. Yeah. It's it's re it's really a good one, a professional one. I yeah. mean, um, it costs a lot of money actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it is, and you do get a good quality sound from it. That's what. Yeah, absolutely. Like I do this since ages, like yeah. since I was a kid. Like and my you dad. You have a label as well. Where you yeah, I do have, have a label. Out. It's located in in Europe. Uh -huh. And you know, I do some of my business here. You know, right. I, so I think the news is uh, we want to kind of get out there is even put out the Decker album. Yeah, yeah. So. we want to make a great album, yeah. and we're gonna do it. So I'm on. I'm now signed on uh, Axiom Recording. Axiom Recordings uh, out of England, or out of um, Italy. 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 And uh, so that's kind of big for me. I got a big record deal, and we'll just. I'm happy that you have it. Yeah, thank you very much, and it's uh, kind of awesome. Gonna, so you guys can check out the. Uh, that's it, right? That's the right. one band in America coming next year as soon as that record comes out. Um, I got a short story. Axiom and I met at the Guitar Center. Um, I was sampling recording gear because I was thinking I was going to have to do this whole record on my own, like I did with Our Values Are Under Attack. Yeah. I met you, and you sort of, we kind of clicked. Yeah, on. like, I was giving you some suggestions, because you seemed like uh, you, you didn't know that much about all, the, all that gear, so I, I wanted to help you. Yeah, like, i just been doing it with my laptop and everything. Yeah, like, we are doing, like, something much better now. You know, if you wanted to succeed and really do something that is going to bring you to the top, you have to, you know... Um, take it to another level. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing, it's, you can't do it by yourself, like, right. no way. You need someone that has a certain, you know, amount of experience. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we're going to get to, did you get to see, did you see Audubon? Um, so it came out this week, Aaron, I didn't get, it's, uh, Aaron Creevy with actors, uh, Anthony Hopkins and... 
Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, we've been I so busy. I mean, I've been like, yeah, saying yeah, exactly. Say, like, I'm, that's what happens when you have to rec mix a song. You listen to yeah, it over. Like, and start over. Now we're gonna adjust the bass, a couple dBs. Exactly. So, uh, what do you mm. think about for live when we're gonna do this live? We're, I mean, we have to get a, a whole band put together, or more people than just the two of us, because I think you'd want to. Uh, it depends. Like a lot of people are like. Uh, using a lot of backing tracks nowadays, huh. so we can think eventually about that. Like, mm -hmm. do you see us doing like uh, tours and that kind of thing? Or? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what we're working now, it's really good. Yeah. So I don't see how it, how this is not going to happen. Honestly, like, it's so good. So world tour, and um, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Didn't see that either. It's got Patrick Schwarzenegger in it, who's Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. Uh, Familiar with him? Uh, I never heard no, of this guy. You've heard like, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. Yeah, of course, but yeah. never heard it of this of <laughs> well, his son. But. I like this one a lot, and I give it five bags of popcorn. And uh, oh wow, and uh, yeah, this is cool. I'm glad yeah. you were able to fill in. We had yeah, a problem absolutely. with another guest, and uh, I want to get a picture of me signing the record contract. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's something you have to do, right? Yeah. To, you know, we'll go you sign post... the contract and we'll go out and celebrate, have a big dinner, go yeah, to the Chateau Marmont. And you post Marmont a picture on Instagram. Say, welcome right. to the new machine, Rock and Roll 2.0, Decker. And that's how you're going to know my name from now on, is greatest rock groups in the world, touring everywhere around the world, playing Wembley Stadium. Uh, Empty Bottle will be, a I guess, our first single, unless yeah, we record totally. something better. So, Empty Bottle, you guys heard it here first. Thanks for watching. What? Go and like, what do you mean? Sorry. For uh, pictures. All right, sure. Yeah, Let's like, do it. I, I, I totally want them. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host today, Greg Turkington, filling in for our usual co host, Tim Heidecker who unfortunately is not able to be here. Uh, the bad news is there's been a family emergency with little Tom Cruise Heidecker, his son. Uh, we wish Tom the best of health. We, uh, I don't have the details about what's going on. I just found out that uh, they were called to the hospital with, um, with little Tom. So um, we, we all send him our best wishes. I'm filling in uh, as the uh, guest host or co-host or host for the episode. Uh, as you know, I was the host uh, for this show in the past, and so I feel very comfortable stepping back into those shoes. Uh, we had a second emergency in that when Tim left, he didn't leave me the passcode to get into the studio where we normally film on cinema at the cinema. And so uh, fortunately, that emergency has been squashed because I consented to shoot the episode here at the Victorville Film Archives. Anyone who's a regular watcher of the show knows that I have been curating and maintaining uh, one of the largest film archives in North America here in Victorville, California. This is just the screening room uh, where we uh, dub the tapes and catalog the tapes and that sort of thing. Next door, and I'll show you a little bit later, is the actual archives where the films are stored. Uh, it's going to take a long time. There's been a lot of work put into it so far. It's going to take a long time to get everything completely cataloged and available to the public to come and tour. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. Today is an exciting day. It is the uh, day in which I finally get to review a movie that I've been looking forward to all year. Uh, James Bond in Spectre. This is directed by Sam Mendes. Uh, it stars, of course, Daniel Craig, James Bond, uh, Christoph Waltz, Ralph Fiennes, Monica Bellucci, Leah Sedo. A cryptic message from Bond's past sends him on a trail to uncover a sinister organization. You should go there. While M battles critical forces to keep the Secret Service alive, Bond peels back the layers of deceit to reveal the terrible truth you know what it's behind called? Spectre. Its name is and if you followed the Bond movies, and if you haven't, I would be surprised if you were watching on cinema at the cinema, because this is a known refuge for Bond heads. Uh, you know that Daniel Craig is possibly one of the best Bonds yet. This, I think, is the best of the Daniel Craig Bond movies, possibly of all the Bond movies. Uh, I think this is the first Bond movie in which you're going to see an Oscar awarded for Best Picture, but not the last. Once they uh, uncork that bottle of champagne, 
I think future Bond movies will also get the Best Picture nomination and the uh, statuette as well. So I'm going to go ahead and give this five bags of popcorn and throw in uh, like, a, like a coffee cup, a styrofoam coffee cup uh, that you would have in your car, but it secretly has a tracking device because that's what Bond is great at, gadgets. And because Tim's not here, we're going to do uh, sort of an estimated or projected rating for him. I believe that uh, Tim would love this movie. It's very similar to uh, his own Decker. Uh, and I believe that Tim would give this movie five bags of popcorn as well. Okay, our next movie today is The Peanuts Movie. And it's directed by Steve Martino and featuring the actors Noah Schnapp, Francesca Capaldi, Venus Schutelis, and Alexander Garfin. Snoopy embarks on his greatest mission as he and his team take to the skies to pursue their arch nemesis while his best pal Charlie Brown begins his own epic quest back home. If you've ever read the Peanuts cartoons, you know exactly what this is about. Charlie Brown, Snoopy, the Red Baron, Lucy, Linus, Pigpen, all those great characters are back, and it's interesting to see them uh, in this film uh, in kind of a 3D, or not a 3D, but just it's, it's not as flat as some of the old Peanuts movies. I would also say that, I would also argue that the Peanuts movie is kind of an inaccurate title. It's not the Peanuts movie, it's a Peanuts movie, because movie buffs know that there have been, in fact, several Peanuts movies in the past. I love this movie. Uh, I think it's great for children of all ages. I think if you show up with a snobbish attitude and say, well, I'm a little bit old for this, you're going to be surprised that really you aren't. This is a movie everyone could love. The only reservation I have, and I, this, this is why I would give it four bags instead of five, is I feel that John Goodman would have been right uh, for the voice of Charlie Brown. This is something I noticed hearing his voice in many great pictures over the years of Blues Brothers 2000 and so on that I always thought he had the right voice, and if they ever revived the Peanuts franchise, it should be Goodman as Brown, but uh, obviously they weren't listening to me, so uh, they've got Noah Schnapp. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give the movie five bags of popcorn, and I'm gonna throw in five bags of Peanuts. And Tim Heidecker's projected rating, I think, for this, uh, this would be a great movie for him to bring little Tom Cruise Heidecker to. Tim, if you're watching, we wish Tom the best of health, and when he gets better, you take him out to see this movie. He's going to love it. I project a rating of five bags of popcorn from Tim Heidecker and uh, two Milky Way candy bars for little Tom Cruise Heidecker because anyone that knows him and knows the family knows he's always eating Milky Ways. Okay, now we're going to cut to a special segment. It's the special Victorville Archives edition of Popcorn Classics. Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of On Cinema at the Cinema Popcorn Classics, live from the Victorville Film Archives. As you can see behind me, we have quite a few films to choose from, and that's one of the things that makes these segments so special this season. Uh, this time we're doing a special edition called On Cinema at the Cinema Family Ties. And I'm not talking about the TV show Family Ties, I'm talking about the ties that bind a family of actors. In this case, actresses, in this case, Goldie Hawn and Kate Hudson, her daughter. Uh, Swing Shift is our first popcorn classic. This is a movie starring Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell. Uh, it's 100 minutes long, directed by Jonathan Demme. And it's a sweet romantic comedy with exceptionally gifted performers. And if you've seen... Hudson's comedic timing, which she learned from her mother and from her father, the famous 
uh, Kurt Russell, because How to Lose a Guy in uh, 10 Days is also a very funny movie in its own way. It's kind of a more modern spin on the classic Goldie Hawn comedies, uh, but it's a movie you're going to love if you get a chance to see it, and I hope that you will. That's the point of uh, this whole segment. Uh, and we're here in Victorville uh, at the Film Archives. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching another great episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Greg Turkington. We'll be back next week with another episode with your new host, Tim Heidecker. In the meantime, we're wishing our best wishes to Tom Cruise Heidecker. Get well soon, buddy. See you next week. Have fun at the movies again. Here's your ticket, Stub. I'd like a seat in the front row. Right on set! We're about to roll. It's on cinema at the cinema. Lucky season seven. It's casino edition. It's casino edition. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim Heidecker, and I usually am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, but today we're uh, not going to be talking about movies. Um, sorry. <clears throat> we're going to be uh, talking about my son, uh, Tom Cruise Heidecker, who passed away over the weekend. And uh, I'm joined, I have a wonderful panel with me. And um, Greg Turkington is here. And, hey, guys. Uh, I don't usually get choked up about too many movies. Um, Old Yeller, or Brian Song, Ghost. But this this just feels as bad as any of that or, or worse. And if you want to come by, you know, I will still make, make a selection of movies that might cheer you up and put together a little care package for you from the Victorville collection. I don't mind giving them to you. I have duplicates of a lot of these titles. You know, Greg, um We've had some problems, I know, in the past. A couple of weeks ago, we had a real blowout. and You uh, helped me out last week with the show, and, uh, and thank you for that. Thanks for being here. If you want to say something about Tom, that would be great. Yeah, he was really, really good to work with. Just a really good kid. And just really made the scene that he was in with Ayaka, his mother. And I'm just, I just want to be here for her and, uh, and for the memory of Tom Cruise Heidecker. I wish we could have uh, done more scenes together. Um, thank you, Greg. Um, I want to also thank, uh, welcome uh, Axiom, who's uh, been my rock. He's been a guy in, who I've been playing music with now for a while, and um, he's been up here since basically last week working on the mix. And yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Yeah, and you said unbelievable words of support because you had been through similar things, you, you know, and you're in a band, you, you're like brothers. Yeah, exactly. So I want to support you. Like, so I don't really know what, what, what to say. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing to say, really. Um, and finally, Dr. San here, who's been with us, me and Ayaka, for the past few weeks trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with them and crack that code. And um, I'll be honest with you, Doc. From my own eyes, I can see you tried everything. And... Um, Thank you for being here. Yeah, sure. I just, it's so sad. I don't know. I wish there was something else we could have done. Wow. Well, what was there to do? You know, you went through. Yeah, we cleansed the house and we went on, you know, foraging for all the herbs ourselves out in the, in your garden. We tried magnets. I thought for sure that was going to pull the iron in his blood back into alignment. So many needles. No, we did. I mean, this guy was unbelievable. Just, it sage. Blowing, burning sage and everything. And, and that just got rid of all the negative spirits, so I really don't know what else we could have done. We could have just taken him to a real doctor. I did what I was trained to do, 
You know that most people, where they get sick, is at the hospital. But he was already sick. He, he didn't get this from the hospital. If you'd taken him to the hospital and got a real doctor to look at him, instead of removing the magnets from the fridge or whatever it is that you did, he might still be alive. It's nobody's fault, and let's not start pointing fingers at each other or what we should have done. But if we would have brought him to the hospital, he would have even been dead quicker. Yeah, I, I think two things, by the way. The, the fact that we had those initial round of vaccinations, which I begged Mayaka to avoid doing, and uh, the black mold that existed in that apartment before we moved in. Yeah, you know, probably, because, you know, when you uh, wipe down all the walls with bleach and stuff, mm -hmm. you're actually just, you're killing everything, but you're letting black mold take yeah. over. Yeah, refocusing that negative energy into it. Inward instead of, yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, just a bummer. Just too bad. Uh, what we'd like to do now to honor my son is show a, a little retrospective, a um, video montage of some of his, because he was such a good actor. I know you guys got a chance to see him in some stuff. And he was an actor and a model, and he was going to go on to do such great things. I know it in my heart. And uh, let's take a look at that now. This beautiful clip put together by the Uncinema team. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the first ever appearance of on television of uh, Tom Cruise, Heidecker, my son. Tom? Maybe one day he'll become an agent like Jack, like my, uh, Jack Decker. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, what do you think of that, Greg, in terms of what if, where would he have gone as an actor? We had some scenes in um, episode 18 of Decker vs. Dracula that he was going to do um, with uh, Joe Estevez, President Davidson, that were going to be a bit of a stretch for him. and. Um, I felt very confident he would have been able to nail the scenes if, you know, if he had lived to do them and if the show hadn't been canceled. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I want to share this with you guys. I got this, um, we got this as a gift for Tom, and that was going to be just a little something that he was going to wear. I thought this would be, would have been good for the funeral, but we didn't end up doing an open uh, casket funeral, so you don't do that with the kids under a certain age. So we just put them in there with nothing on. It is a birthday suit, actually. Just quickly do the movies for this week. And I didn't get to see these, but we Greg, do, maybe you have. We don't to do popcorn classics this week. I'm fine with skipping it. Rings, uh, directed by Javier Gutinez. Uh, by, acted by Amy Teagarden, Johnny Galecki, Laura Wiggins. It's a ring horror movie. I checked that out. Directed by By the Sea, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt. You like Brad Pitt, Greg? Very much. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. We haven't seen them in movies since uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, right. And I didn't get a chance to see that either. I've been dealing with funeral arrangements. I saw it. It was, it, was, it was very good. Five bags? Yeah, you right. should see it. There you go. I'll give, I'll give it a, a five bag review too. Oh man, I don't know if we should have done this. You know, but I think by talking about it, getting it out, you kind of get a chance to heal. You get a chance to put some, per share. first of all, share with the on cinema audience who's obviously going to be feeling hard about this. And uh, just reflect on life and wonder maybe there's a master plan out there. I don't know, you you were saying something beautiful at the service that kind of blew me away. Well, I can't know, remember most of it, but. 
like when a, a bolt of lightning strikes in the forest. It's the bolt of lightning. And some of the trees burn down, mm -hmm. and you, know, you just kind of let the fire burn, and mm -hmm. some of the trees end up standing. And we're standing today in honoring Tom Cruise. Um, I want to end with a song I wrote for my son. It's a dedicated song to him, and um, we're just going to play it. And it's rough, so, you know, give us a benefit of the doubt. We just kind of worked it out with Axiom. Um, not too long ago, and uh, who knows, it might end up on the record, we don't know. It's coming from my heart, so, if you got a problem with that. Got you, that okay? That's awesome. Sounds good. Emma, <clears throat> here we go. Mm -hmm. And my heart is broken. And it's time to black And my future seems so uncertain Cause he ain't coming back Two, three, four, time it Farewell, Tom Cruise I miss you, son, and I wish you well Cinema, thank you very much for watching the season. We'll see you back here next week, next year, for more season of uh, On Cinema. And thanks for your, thanks for your uh, condolences. That'll be it for the show. Thank you guys for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. We got some coffee, and desserts, and stuff. Funeral. If you guys want, yeah. grab some stuff. We got a bunch of like uh, eggs, and you know, calzones and stuff. Like that. Sure. Let's get it. Japanese food. Oh. Hey, nice uh, idea for this. Is, you know, I'm not saying like as a B-side, but uh, you know the success that Tears Net. Yeah, yeah, right. We totally. can get like, con connected yeah. with the story. It has probably that vibe. Like, I guess we should track it. Like, yeah, but I just don't want the chorus to get too heavy. I feel like it's too upbeat. It's gonna be a great song. Like, yeah, I want to just record it I now. Mean, yeah, so I know. We, I know. So you, we can we'll lose that energy. Yeah, totally. We we lyrically, it. it's lyrically. It's, I mean, on, it's ready. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's We're bringing on cinema at the cinema to the cinema here in Victorville, California. I love this movie. Movie expertise, opinions, the classics. Who won the box office this week? It's season eight of Tim Heidecker's On Cinema at the Cinema. Welcome to another episode of a new, a new season of On Cinema at the Cinema with my your host Tim Heidecker here at uh, um, for season eight, and my guest is 
uh, Greg Turkington. Hey guys, good to be back with some uh, very important news that Tim will fill you in on. This is a very different season of On Cinema at the Cinema. Yeah, so we can tell we're at a new space here. This is an actual cinema that we have relocated the On Cinema at the Cinema experience to Victorville because of some issues I'm having with people that let us shoot the previous seasons. And They're it's not... near the archives, Hold which on. gives I'm us access finish to my the... thought. And so it's different. We're out here in Victorville now, and that's been a different change of style for me. It's Big kind of the new Hollywood, they're saying. There's a lot of movies being produced in Victorville, and of course the history of the city is it's always been a movie city. So it right. makes sense for us to have not only the archive, but our filming location here. We're gonna open the doors and start showing movies, as well as using it to film uh, future seasons of On Cinema at the Cinema. And thanks to the Tom Cruise Memorial Arts Fund, we were able to lease this property. It was an abandoned theater and was sort of rotting away here in the desert. And uh, this has been the big announcement that uh, we are now, I'm now primary, the uh, Tom Cruise Arts Foundation is now a primary investor in the Victorville Film Center run curated by Greg Turkington here. Starting next week, we're going to be showing one movie a night uh, at 7 p.m. And then hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll be up to two or three movies a night, all coming straight out of my archive. So a lot of popcorn classics will be on the screen. It's the best of all worlds. And of course, the work at the archives, which is just a mile, a mile and a half away, that work still continues. And we're building up uh, a bigger collection than has ever been seen. And thanks to Tom Cruise Jr., wherever he is. Uh, that he's shining down on us and leading us towards a brighter future and encouraging the arts. It's and just, also to, excuse me, also to uh, my thanks to um, my wife's, uh, Ayaka's father, uh, who has also put in some significant funding towards the expansion and the success of the Victorville Film Center. Uh, my only request to you as a director is to get working on fixing the air conditioning because it's about 125 degrees in here. Um, and it's been, a, it's, I know well, that you're working somebody on Somebody stole the copper wire. This was board, boarded up for years and I would walk by this place on my way uh, to the supermarket and I would say, wow, that could be a really great theater if only we had the resources to make it happen. And so this is kind of a dream come true to actually see it opened up thanks to the Arts Foundation and of course, uh, Ayaka's father. So. Very exciting to be this new season. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for checking out uh, Decker Unclassified. It's been a tremendous season. The, the season finale begins this Friday, so check out the season finale of Decker Unclassified. And I think you'll enjoy what you see. It's been a lot of fun putting that show out. It's been the number one show right now on cable and on network TV. So we are excited about that. Season four was the lucky season, and uh, I'm very proud of our ratings. And we have some good movies to talk about today. Some movies. Yes. Couple still, by the way, a couple more updates. We're uh, Dakar is still hard at work on our big LP. We're going to be finishing the record over the next few months. I'm in that writing process now, where I'm trying to access uh, song ideas. So, if anybody has any song ideas, let, let us know. We you are, should do a jingle for the new theater. I'm not going to be doing jingles, you know, at all. Just something we could use as radio ads locally to get people to know that this theater is uh, Star Trek Beyond. S beyond what? Did someone we'd get this cut off? That's the title. All right. Just directed by Justin, Justin Lin, cast starring Chris Pine, Idris El Elbow, Sophia Buotella, Zoe Sol Saladana. The Enterprise crew explores the furthest reaches of space where they encounter a myster uh, mysterious enemy who puts everything the Federation stands for to the test. This is a Star Trek movie, one of, the, one of my favorite series, uh, franchise series uh, that has come out besides Star Wars. And it's really interesting to see them take the story to new heights and go where no man has gone before. I give it six bags of popcorn and uh, a cup of warm, a cup of cold co soda. Yeah, this is an interesting Star Trek movie in that it was directed by the guy that made The Fast and the Furious. And there's going to be some Trek heads out there that are going to say, that's a little bit too much like The Fast and Furious, but in outer space with spaceships. And that's true, but I actually think this is the best Star Trek movie since uh, Star Trek II, which was set in San Francisco. 
Uh, I really love this movie. It's great to see the gang back. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and uh, a Klingon cola. How about that? Mm. Whatever that is. Well, next up we have Hillary's America, starring Hillary Clinton. Yuck. <clears throat> She's uh, sour to look at. Usually I would hate to see her in a movie, but this is an expose of her. And Hillary's America, The Secret History of the Democratic Party, stars Hillary Clinton, Desesh Sh uh, Desesh so D, D, Soja. And cast starring Dinesh and Elizabeth Jackson and Artie Mazzoni. And this is a documentary film, uh, a story about the a warning side. It's a clarion call. It's actually the uh, canary in the coal mine letting us know that there is a chance of uh, the end of the American experience. The country itself is under collapse. And we are at risk of a complete takeover by the Hillary not, uh, people who are in charge of Hillary Clinton. Uh, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. I think it will win the best picture. A b bombshell movie that's going to expose Hillary Clinton for the fraud that she is, the criminal she is. She belongs in prison, in my opinion. She has broken every commandment, every uh, law. Well, just discuss um, the movie. And uh, it's my opportunity to speak my mind. We already and had that earlier with a soapbox, with a 60-minute soapbox, so now people want to know about the movies. Well, there's no question about it that she deserves life term in prison, if not more. And by more, I mean execution uh, by for treason. They should all be strung up and uh, everybody well, was... Uh, they're going to get our theater shut down. No, I'm for formally requesting the United States government try and uh, try Hillary Clinton and her husbands to uh, stand trial and be executed. And that is an official request wow. on behalf of, of a true American patriot myself. And let me say this. I believe, and I think we can start a movement here easily, uh, we should pass a law in all 50 states that you can not allowed to vote unless you've seen this movie. It's not much to ask. And I think we would see how that would affect the voting, the polls. Then you'll at least be educated so when you vote, you know who you're voting for. So I give, of course, I give it six bags, and I give it uh, all the cups of soda in the world and value the ability to get that, because in Hillary's America, you're not going to be able to even get soda anymore. Well, I like your idea to promote film going as a, as a new theater manager. I think it's, it's, it's a cool idea. I was skeptical of this movie when you told me we were reviewing it. I thought, oh boy, another documentary. To me, that's not a real movie. I was very surprised in that this movie is only partially a documentary. A lot of it are recreated scenes using actors, and they're very good actors, and it has a lot of action and intrigue and suspense. Um, I think you have to approach it as sort of a popcorn movie and not get bogged down in the politics, which to me isn't very interesting. But there actually are some, some real uh, chills and thrills in this thing. And uh, strictly from that point of view, I really enjoyed it. How do you explain, how do you sleep at night knowing what the truth is and then ignoring it? Well, I don't know if it's true or not from the point of view of somebody that loves, uh, you know, thrillers like The French Connection, All the President's Men, those sorts of uh, political espionage intrigue movies. I thought it, it fit very well with those. The parts that didn't work for me were the parts that use old news footage and and that sort of thing that doesn't really belong on the silver screen. If I want to watch the news, I'll turn What's on the TV. What's your review? Uh, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and a little pair of scissors so they can cut out all those news sequences and stick with the action scenes. OK. Doesn't seem like you liked it uh, the way I did. Well, I, well don't. I, be an idiot uh, and miss this one. This is the most important movie of the year. Don't bother seeing Star Trek. If you can only see one movie, make it Hillary's America. It'll scare the shit out of you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time at the movies. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, one other announcement. Um, people have been uh, wanted to let everyone know, wish me well, and my wife Ayaka well. The Lord has blessed us and Ayaka and me with the chance to try again, and we have a, another one on the way. So. That's another we are um, expecting. We're having another uh, child. Mayaka. My, my Ayaka is with child, pregnant. Uh, was not not planned, but uh, we have that uh, coming up. That's going on with me. Thank you. So oh, I just found gonna... out.
have to have the baby here in Victorville. No. Here. This has been on everyone's mind. Uh, just, I do want to make an official announcement right now. And this is coming from my heart, and I want to get this out there so you guys can talk about it and get online and even engage in this conversation because it's an important one, I think. And you can call this a 60 second soapbox if you want. But, um. <laughs> I, Tim Heidecker, host of On Cinema, lead singer and bassist of Dakar, and executive producer of the hit show Decker, do, Donnelly, do solemnly endorse the presidency of Donald J. Trump. He is the leadership of which we need to command our country back uh, to a position of strength through leadership. His business experience of treating our country like a CEO would, in terms of strength through experience, is and is needed now more than ever because of the times we are living in. Face many challenges, but must look forward towards a strong man uh, has, and as, uh, we must look forward towards a strong man. Just put this on the, on the website Hold and on. people can read Let it. Get through this, it's important. Look forward towards a strong man, as Donald J. Trump is, is, it comes, uh, we must, yes, Right. We must elect him and protect our country uh, from the dangerous forces of Hillary and another term of Obama. He will make our border safe through the building of, of the wall and get our working country back in shape. Um, I've, uh, I've all, I will do whatever I, uh, whatever I can to help support my leader. My hero is you is in you who but my hero is in you thank you for giving us life giving your life to the public as you sacrifice so much you could be sitting in uh, this is to donald trump this, we kneel before you and it's way past 60 seconds at this uh, point yes so. we uh, what, this is it here we kneel before you and thank you for giving your life to public to the public as we sacrifice as you sacrificed so much, you could be sitting on the yacht with your beautiful wife, drinking champagne and having uh, the time of your life, but you choose to fight for people for us, the last remaining people who even matter. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. Uh, I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, and um, I'm get joined again by my co-host, Greg Turkington, here. Hey guys, good to be here in Victorville. We're back here at the Victorville Film Archives, or Film Center. Film Center, yeah. two very different organizations, yeah. both with the same common goal, which yeah. is to promote movies. Well, I'm begging you now, on behalf of me and my family and everybody, get the air conditioning fixed, because it's... Very warm in here. It's a lot more expensive than we anticipated to get a system that doesn't have sound that overwhelms the screen. Well, for at least these shootings, the temperature today driving in from Hollywood was 126 degrees out here. Well, I mean, it's hot in Hollywood too, so Not it's just anything it's a like hot this. spell. Not and... anything like this. Uh, by the way, thanks again for watching the season finale of Decker Unclassified. I appreciate all the wonderful reviews we got, and it was really a pleasure to be able to do that. We're going to make more for sure. And, um, yeah, it was neat to get to work with James Dean, I'll admit mm -hmm. it, you know, he was mm -hmm. consummate He's cool. professional. He's a cool guy. He's got good stories, too. Yeah, and I'm glad we were able to uh, mix sort of the real world with the fantasy world and playing... As in Decker versus Dracula. Well, yeah. what I was able to do was hone that idea and make it work for the inside the Decker universe, because what you had done was sort of uh, disrespectful of the Decker uh, characters. No. But I made it seamlessly work, and we learned from our mistakes, and I think you learned from that mistake, and I learned certainly from your mistakes. You learned from my triumphs and took the ideas for your own triumphs, but that's okay. I'm happy to have been a part of it, and I know the fans really enjoyed seeing sort of the uh, unofficial conclusion to the Decker versus Dracula. Well, the two things have uh, nothing to do with each other. As stated in the episode, when Dracula sees President Davidson, he says the line, and this is important, he says, I've never met a president before. Ah, so nice to meet you. I have never met a president before. Dracula. And folks, that's 
irrefutable proof. I'd like to see anybody question how the logic could possibly work. Because the character of Dracula has always been a little bit unreliable when it comes to the facts. Well, so no, I think the case is he would, closed. He might say something Do you like want to talk that. about movies today, or do you want to keep going on about this? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about some, some new movies. All right, we are starting with the great one, Mr. Woody Allen, coming back out with another movie. Uh, Cafe Society, starring Steve Carroll, Jamie Lynn Lee, Cheryl Lee is her name, it's Todd Weeks, and, um, An as, ensemble and cast. Woody himself, I would assume, mm -hmm. is in this. Set, set in the 1930s, a Bronx na naive native moves to Hollywood where he falls in love with uh, his secret agent to the stars. That sounds like Decker. Interesting. So, I'm sorry, secretary of an agent to the stars. It's not that, okay. Returning to New York, he's swept up in the vibrant world of high society nightclub life. So this is sort of two movies in one. It's always like that with Woody, though, in that uh, they're very funny movies, but they often uh, make a very serious point. Now, this is his 100th movie, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he puts out a movie every couple, a couple movies a year, and this one is as good as any others, don't you think? I mean, this was sort of his best movie yet to date, and uh, I predict Oscars for him as director. He has enough already, but he'll always take more. I was going to ask you, uh, this is interesting. Uh, by the way, I give it five bags of popcorn and a cup of soda. I was going to ask you if you are if you know offhand, we could look this up, how many Oscars he's won. It must They're be not, the uh, They don't count them anymore. They measure it by the weight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let me put it this way. Woody Allen's house is sinking into the ground under the weight of all that Oscar gold. Well, Oscar loves Woody, and they keep rewarding him with the awards, and they, he's well-deserved because not only are his movies funny, but they're profound, and they're well-performed uh, by the actors. Always a great cast with Woody Allen. Mm -hmm. And that's no exception here. If you ever wanted to get out of directing, he could get into casting because he does a great job with it. Yes, and this is an original movie too. This is not a remake or a, or a reboot of anything. This no. is basically a new tale from the Woodster, and he. It's is a love letter to movies. If you like Clark Gable, if you like the old '30s Hollywood, and you want to return there but see it in color now, because if you see old movies from that time period, they're going to be in black and white. This is the best of both worlds. It, it, it's truly a special movie, and I do give it. Uh, five bags of popcorn and 500 uh, wheelbarrows to carry all, all Woody's Oscars from uh, one home to the we next. You wouldn't be able to do the graphic of 500 wheelbarrows if you want to put something else. All right, in. five bags of popcorn and five wheelbarrows to wheelbarrow. That's fine. Just a small portion of his Oscar collection uh, from room More to room. More Oscar gold in, in Woody's world than there is in Fort Knox, actually. Pretty interesting. Finally, today we have Jason Bourne. Directed by Paul Greengrass, starring Matt Damon, Alicia Vilca Vikander, Julia Stiles, and Tommy Lee Jones, one of my favorites. Jason Bourne, now remembering who he truly is, tries to uncover hidden truths about his past. Now, I think it's kind of interesting that uh, the whole spy genre had kind of fallen by the wayside until we launched the Decker series, and now it's suddenly become topic du jour. It's the, basically, you wouldn't be surprised if every movie now has some sort of nod to Decker. Well, Bond never slowed down. That was always going. This one didn't have the chills and thrills that I was looking for in a movie, and I found it very confusing, and I didn't understand what was going on from moment to moment with the movie. Did you see uh, the uh, other ones? Well, no, I think this one was about as confusing as I could imagine a movie ever being. But I still did have fun looking at it, and it did have a car crash in it, which I thought was neat. And there was the element of surprise, because being confused is often very similar to being surprised. And you're surprised at not knowing what's going on. I felt like I was watching a movie in another language because of how confused I was. But whenever the guns were shooting and the bombs were going off and the cars were driving around, that was always interesting to me. So I do, I do give it five bags of popcorn, uh, but no sodas this time. Uh, work on maybe providing some kind of uh, uh, info sheet at the beginning or some sort of... We'll just watch the other one, the Born Ultimatum. So. You know, I'm a little confused too, but for different reasons than you are. I'm confused why when you have a movie, The Born Identity, then you follow it with a Born Legacy, then you follow it with a Born Ultimatum. These are titles that are in a good uh, alphabetical order so that when you're filing your tapes in your collection, they go side by side. This movie is called Jason Bourne, so it's not even going to be in the same room as the others that start with B. 
I mean, clearly the challenge was to come up with a title that falls after Born Ultimatum. I think that they should have called it the Born Victory or the Born Witness. Both of those would work with the plot as it was in the movie. I think they should re-release this movie with a new title. Again, the Born Victory uh, seems like the most natural one. And I think you'll see the box office explode if they do that. How many bags? Uh, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn because it is an excellent movie once you get past the uh, shenanigans with the title. Uh, and then I'm going to throw in a, a little capsule. It's not a suicide capsule like you might see in one of these Bourne movies. It's an advice capsule and you unscrew it and there's a little memo in it that says, call your next movie The Bourne Victory. Okay. All right, we have a special guest we'd like to bring out right now who's going to talk about some new uh, exciting advancements. And Who's the guest? Come out. It's Dr. San, and he's... Hey, just, you guys. Can you move over? So I don't want him sitting here. We can move. He can sit here. No, just I'll get move, up. I'll move over, but he can sit next to you. All right, <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome Thanks. to Victorville. How, did you have a hard time coming out here? No, it wasn't that bad. C terrific. So I wanted to talk to you, because this uh, doctor has got me on. I was talking to you last week about the challenges we were having writing the record, and... Uh, coming up with the creativity that we're, that's required to deliver seven extra songs. And uh, Dr. San turned me on to this amazing nutritional vape technology. Now this is something you are in partnership with, they're developing. Yeah. And this right here has changed the game for me. I'll show you how it works. It's just... Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That is not only creatively stimulating, but it's providing me with nutritional basics, basically. Tim, so this was supposed to be a popcorn classic segment on I, the call sheet that I have. We're, we're getting to that after this segment, okay. but I just want to share, speaking of popcorn, this nutritional vape system that you've invented now replaces my meals, and I'm not required to no longer eat because the vape liquids in here actually provide on a molecular level the nutrition that I need, and then my body and blood gets to absorb it, and so I haven't, basically haven't had a bite to eat in six days. I've just been using this. Yeah, when you eat, your body requires a lot of energy to digest the food that you eat. And with the vaping, it just goes directly into your system. And this is pure nutrition. And, you know, for like, for example, that would be like having a snack. But what's wrong with digestion? Well, don't you feel tired sometimes after a big meal? Yeah. <laughs> That's like... A turkey dinner. <coughs> and you haven't felt any fatigue or feeling tired like you do after a big meal, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. I have more energy than I've ever had before. There's, and there's a psychoactive element in this, which is creating creativity and giving me the ability to write lyrics and music. And I, what, have you, what, is in, what is this? You know, it's like 21st century technology is sort of hacking the bi actual biosystem. Is that what you were saying to me? Yeah, well, I tweaked a traditional Chinese formula that was kind of, I put some uh, Dong Chong Xia Cao into it, which is a so, mushroom. Um, I've lost like 15 pounds too. Yeah. From when? Yeah, it passed like 72 hours. And the Ma Huang really opens up your lungs and will enable you to sing with your maximum potential. So my singing's improved and I wrote a lyric the other day, song lyrics, Se seven, or, seven or eight pages of lyrics for a song. And that's like going to be a long song, but I mean, everything rhymes in it, and it's really actually a good song. And it's a drone kind of song, so it's only one chord. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you drink water, too, while you're vaping, because there's not as much fluid in it. I could see getting hooked on this, too, because... It's not it addictive. Has, no, I know no. it's not addictive. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying is, this stimulates so much. If I didn't have it, I feel like I'd turn into, a, uh, like, a zombie or something. But, so I'm addicted to this. Um, not in a literal medical sense, but I don't think I could live without it. And it's very convenient, and it actually has the time on it. Well, that's the temperature, or the watts. And is this FDA approved? You know, things take so long when you include all of the bureaucracy, so we might as well... Like it has that immediate buzz. There's an immediate buzz that's very intense, almost a pain. But that fades very quickly, and then sudden positivity and energy come flying through my brain at a very exciting, rapid pace. And I'm almost picturing a six-dimensionality of co you know, common sense, human sense, spiritual sense, as you were saying to me.
yesterday as we were meditating, and he got me on a meditation zone perspective from using vape t nutritional vape technology that I can access. It's almost like having a key, like your Kingston character, Greg, from on, uh, from uh, Decker, that yeah, you can but, unlock I mean, the codes. Just, that's of from brain training. technology. Kington does that from training, military training, not from drugs. I'm full. It's like I just had a big box of Oreo cookies or something. I feel full and si almost sick from it. But it does have a neat flavor to it, too. It tastes like watermelons and uh, grape soda. So thank you for this. Dr. Sand's been my guest. And we'll be back next week with more Odd Cinema. Um, and Popcorn Classic? And a Popcorn Classic. Here we go. Cut to the popcorn classic as we go out. That's not how you do the popcorn classic. Yeah, it'll be as our, it'll no, be I sort have, of I, after the credits. We'll roll them after the credits from now on. Thank you so much for coming by. Sure, You're going to yeah. stay here for a little bit because I want to show like you around to, yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. Can get a bite to eat or something. Well, not for, not you. for me. Yeah. No, I don't need that. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I am your host, Tim Heidecker, and I'm with uh, Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. Uh, glad to be back here in Victorville at the Victorville Film Center, where we are shooting this season of On Cinema at the Cinema. Bringing some expert uh, commentary to the world of current cinema. Yes, and I apologize uh, for, to you. I was a little late today. Uh, it's been a, been a tough couple of days in Hollywood for me. Um, well, that's why we do things here in Victor, a little <coughs> different. Right? My uh, people have been asking me what's going on with uh, Ayaka, and um, she. We had a conversation about not having the, not having our, not taking a, a, a little bit of a break on the, having that kid. Now, what yeah. What do you mean by that? I don't want to get into this with you and you about what this means for me, but it's my choice, her choice, to uh, move f f uh, along without the uh, pregnancy. Uh, and I'm asking her to consider that right now. So she went back to Japan to consider that and talk to her family about it, and whether or not they can afford it and everything. So that's why you haven't been by the theater. No, and uh, I've been on this stuff basically full time. So I've been here Tuesday at the now, bus all station. All this is going to get cut from the episode, so you might as well just stop. Do you have the thing, the, the movies? Yeah. Uh, starting with S Suicide Squad from David Ayers. My, Margaret Roby, Will Smith. Kara, Degla, Kara Devleridge, Ben Affleck, Jared Lego. A government, secret government agent. This is all Decker crap. This is, everyone out there in Hollywood is taking Decker stories. A secret government agency recruits imprisoned supervillains for dangerous black ops missions in exchange for pardoning their Crime. You have to get the air conditioning working here. I can't breathe. Well, it's not the air conditioning. It's the vaping. You're sweating like a pig. You sweat. You're sweating you too. You have your uh, your face is covered like you just got out of the shower. Well, you should at least wait until afterward. There's no reason to do that on air. If this doesn't get into my system, I go to a bad place. At this point, you're the only customer in the whole world that that guy has. Uh, Everyone else has either moved on or died. Uh, Suicide Squad, directed by David Ayers. Uh, secret government agency recruits imprisoned supervillains for dangerous cro black opes. It's got that sort of action adventure that you've come to know from Jared Leto. And he is sort of the, ver the best supervillain of all time. <coughs> but what made me like this movie the most is it made me laugh. And I need to laugh right now because things are not going well. And, you know, Ayaka's in Japan right now as she discusses... Uh, terminating our pregnancy. Well, she's not going to do that after what happened to Tom. I think she should. Use protection, my brothers out there, because you don't want to be in this position. I'd rather not have the pregnancy terminated. I'd rather the pregnancy not happen to begin with. 
Well, I'm sure she'd rather that she had married somebody else. Well, what did you think of this Suicide Squad? I wish I had. I liked it. I mean, it's kind of cool to see Batman and the Joker and some of these uh, superhero characters, but then in a setting, it's really more reminiscent of our own Decker, you know? Um, it makes you wonder, um, I'm not a comic book head, but I would love to see a Decker comic book and then have the movies, future movies of Decker, spring from the pages of the comic book because that's how a lot of these uh, big studios do it and it seems to work for them. Uh, I would have to say five bags of popcorn is a slam dunk rating for this and I'm gonna throw in uh, a pair of handcuffs for Dr. Sam. for doing this once again. Nine Lives, starring... No, you, uh, what was your rating for Suicide Squad? Uh, five oh. bags of popcorn and a cup of soda. Can't read this. Nine Lives, uh, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld with Kevin Spacey, Robbie Arnell, Jennifer Gardner, and my favorite, Christopher Walken. Stuffy businessman finds himself trapped inside the body of his family's uh, I'm so tired. I just, I've been trying to sleep at the bus uh, by, um... <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm talking this way. I'm trying not to breathe out of my nose. Okay, well. I don't want the ideas from my head to come out of my nose. I want everything to stay inside. <coughs> I'm trying not to breathe out of my nose because I don't want the ideas for my brain to come out of my nose. Okay. Suicide Squad. Nine lives. Do you have a rating on this? So hot in here. It's really hot. Uh, this is very reminiscent of the Shaggy DA, the Shaggy Dog. Uh, either one of those movies, I guess you'd say, cross that with Garfield, and you know what Nine Lives is all about. It's yeah. a kiddie movie for Prison sure. Games. Any movie where uh, a businessman becomes a cat is probably going to have more interest to children than to adults. But any movie that finally, after all these years, pairs Kevin Spacey and Christopher Walken up so that these guys actually have scenes together is going to be of great interest to the adult movie-going population. And that's why I highly recommend Nine Lives. I wish I could give it nine bags of popcorn, but I will give it five bags of popcorn plus a little uh, catnip toy. We are uh, on to On Cinema On Location. No, no. Uh, uh, Nine Lives with Kevin Spacey. Did, did uh, you see that? Do you have a chance to see it? Uh, five bags of popcorn and... Uh... Okay, on to uh, the first segment this season of one of our most all-time beloved segments called On Cinema On Location. If you've been watching On Cinema for many seasons now, you know this is our most popular outside segment. In this segment, we look uh, behind the scenes at motion picture filming that took place in a variety of locations. One season we did it with Oh God, which is one of my favorites. This year, we're gonna be looking not at films made in Hollywood, but films made right here in Victorville, California. Let's roll the tape. Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, on location. Hey guys, Greg Turkington from On Cinema at the Cinema On Location. And we're here in Victorville, California, uh, in front of the sign that says 6th Street, uh, as seen in 2015's movie Broken Horses. If you've seen the movie, uh, you might remember a scene that was filmed exactly where I'm standing uh, in front of this old movie theater. Victorville's got quite a few old movie theaters and of course is home to one of the world's number one film archives, the Victorville Film Archive. So there it is. Of course, if you've seen the movie, there's a ticket, uh, there's a ticket booth right there that's not there anymore. Uh, back to you, Tim.
Okay, another uh, on cinema, at the cinema, on location with a little bit of a twist. And we will be seeing a lot more of those uh, as the season progresses. <coughs> All right, just, just shut it down. We'll, we'll be back next week uh, with uh, more movie reviews. Uh, uh, you can't come in like this and do this on the show. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm bringing new professionalism to it this season, and for you to come in, I can't go. I, sweaty. I can't go back. I mean, I can, I can host the show myself. I just do. I just do with you. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, good, because this stuff can get you nowhere. All right, what's? I'm gonna call Axe here. Come on. Hello, my name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema. And as, as some of you know, I made a fool of myself here on this very broadcast last week. Uh, it has been a very, very challenging couple of weeks for me and my family. And the last thing I ever wanted to do was bring you, the cinema, On Cinema family, into it. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was introduced to a nutritional system through the Dr. San, which uh, I was led to believe was going to inspire creativity and was going to give me a healthier life. What it actually did, in fact, was cause me a tremendous amount of trouble, made me make some very, very bad decisions, which led to my wife uh, leaving me and, and moving back to Japan permanently and it led me to hurt you, uh, my friend. It led me to do some terrible things to my band, Dakar. You didn't review the movies. And let me, I told you I'm gonna have this opportunity to explain myself. I went to the, after last week's taping, I went to the clinic and had my blood tested. And the doctor came in with his mouth wide open. He said he couldn't believe the substances that were in my body and the levels by which they were at in my body. Uh, there were high levels of speed, synthetic marijuana, synthetic cocaine, uh, PH, PCH, some P PCH 911 or something like that. He said, I would have been dead if I had not come in. Now let that sink in. What are the movies this week? But I'm wearing the Dakar shirt today to let you know that I am fully committed to my band, Dakar. I'm committed to my health. I'm committed to being creative and providing movie expertise through my co-guest, uh, Greg Turkington, who's my guest today, by the way. I wish you were wearing an On Cinema at the Cinema shirt to show the commitment to that. We don't have those. I gave and you I wanna th I'm trying to thank you here. I want to thank you for being supportive. I'm right now, I'm committing myself to the Victorville experience. I'm here now full time. I've gotten myself away from Dr. San. Greg here is letting me stay at the Victorville Film Archive, which has been very generous of you to let me crash there as I rebuild. And I am so lucky to have this second chance. I really am. Well, let's review some movies. And um, stay away from nutritional vaping. I mean, this has been <coughs> just first of all, to be able to have a cheeseburger and I had pizza and I had Ice cream. Plenty of popcorn up there, and too. And popcorn, and after not eating for almost two Mark's weeks. Mark's been popping up a good batch today, and, and, and lately he's been very, getting very good at it. Yeah, and the air conditioning's fixed. So the air conditioning's all, fixed, which, It's a know, great day. It, I, 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 but I, I have to apologize to you for that. I was so busy working on our uh, calendar and our programming for September. And it's been uh, a good couple of days. I'm, I'm on the road. I mean, I'm just beginning on the road, which is interesting, to be able to say I've chosen a new path. And with your help, I am just great, happy to be alive. <sighs> so, Pete's Dragon, directed by David Lowry, starring Bryce Dallas Howard, Kurt, K Keith Urban, Robert Redford. Sundance Carl Kid. The Sundance, huh? the Sundance Kid. Yes, our Robert, Robert Redford. And Butch the, Cassidy and the Sundance all right. Kid. We, the adventures of an orphan boy named Pete and his best friend Elliot, who just so happens to be a dragon. Now, 
This was one of my favorite movies of the year so far. It's for kids of all well, ages. Not so fast. <clears throat> the movie was actually filmed in New Zealand, and it's about a dragon. I wouldn't call it an unofficial sequel to The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, but definitely in the same wheelhouse. Mm. If you like those types of movies and those types of characters, unlike the original 1977 Pete's Dragon, which was not filmed in New Zealand, this one was. And so I think it's of great interest uh, until the next Tolkien trilogy starts. Uh, this will fit the bill. I'm happy to know you. I'm happy to call you a friend, too, because you're you know so much about movies and getting 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 to be around you is pretty cool and this one was uh, a remake of a film from 1977 in 1977 they didn't have the technology the cgi technology to make a film that would end up being timeless uh, and this pete's dragon 2016 has all the hallmarks of a film that will be timeless and well i, I give it five bags of popcorn i loved it and i give it five bags of popcorn too and i love you Okay. Love you for being well, I love uh, that you put me in this position here in Victorville to uh, run this theater, and we hey, just hey, finished hey, hey. the. Uh, I just I want to tell you. I want to look look me in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Look me in the eyes. I want to tell you something. Your heart's beating like crazy. Here, look at me. Look at me. I looked at you plenty last week. Come I, here. Look me in the eyes. I love. Look me in the eyes. I want to tell you. I love you. I mean, I'm glad to hear it because He's what we're doing here in Victorville, I think. All right. Well, you're a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a real. Well, thanks. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, that you've put that stuff in the past and you can focus on movies and focus on this great theater that we've built together. Mm -hmm. You've got to see what we've got coming in September. I think you're going to be spending a lot more time in Victorville. Well, I love Dakar. And I love Axiom and Manuel, Vinny and Nick. I love you guys if you're watching. I love Greg, and I even love Ayaka, even though she's not speaking with me. And I'm really I happy to be alive. I think you'll love the child. That, we'll that was that sad. Goes. That was so sad. And again, Dr. San was at the center of that whole mess with what happened to your uh, last child. But uh, with him in our rearview mirror, I think we can move forward. Okay. I think Ayaka will be happy to hear that Dr. San is out of your life. Well, I got you. I got your eyes here, so I love you. All right. Um, Next, we have Sausage Party, directed by Greg Tiernan. Tien or Tien? I didn't Tien direct this no, one. No, no, no. Greg Tien, Tiernan and Conrad Vernon. Directed by, J starring James Franco, Kristen Wiig, Paul Rudd, Seth Rogen. I'm Ant Man. And Edward Norton. An animated movie, and we know that about one sausage's quest to discover the truth about existence. Another kid's movie, it does have those sort of subtle jokes that are playing pretty good with adults. You know, you don't have to be a kid to, I love this movie. I give it five bags of popcorn and two sodas. And they are, they do use the F-U-C-K words and the C-U-N-T I heard a few times, B-I-T-H and S-H-I-T. These are all words used in the movie, but so that makes it kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this is for kids of all ages. I think this is more for older teenagers, maybe from 13 up to 19, and then everyone past that age as well. The weird thing was is that the sausages as characters to me weren't as compelling as the baby carrots, because it takes place in a supermarket. And these baby carrots are just so funny, and the voices that they use, and, and the things that the baby carrots do, it, it, they're so much better than the sausages, and I, I feel like they sort of missed an opportunity to showcase a much better uh, group of characters. But you know, hey, maybe that's a sequel down the pike. Baby well, carrots. Or I love sausages party two, sausages versus carrots, or something like that would be good. Well, I love raunch, and this is some of my favorite raunch of the year. Uh, and I think kids can handle raunch. I think there's so much nasty crap going on in the world right now, and people are so abusive, and there's so much abuse. Uh, drug abuse in particular, but if a kid sees the C-U-N-T word or hears people saying F-U-C-K, it's not going to necessarily ruin their lives. It's almost exposing them to the raunch that exists in the world. Well, the Bad News Bears had lots of those kind of words in it back in 1977, and uh, that was a great movie. That's a classic with Walter Matthau. And it Tatum makes me, I, it made me laugh, and I needed a laugh after what I had been through. I mean, I was, last week we talked about the Suicide Squad, and that's where I was at, basically. Um, I was at the uh, Sixth Street Bridge. I'm going to tell you this. This is kind of breaking news. We have the Rainbow Bridge in Victorville. Yeah, well, uh, I was at the Sixth Street Bridge, and 
was going to jump. And a police officer showed up and grabbed Sounds like It's a Wonderful Life with James Stewart, 1939. Same plot, exactly. Definitely had echoes of that. This is a much more real situation, though. That really did happen to me last week. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, very realistic, and it's also really great. Yeah. So what else do we have? We're going to take a look at another uh, on cinema, on location segment. This is a series that I've been filming in my spare time, and I don't have a lot of it uh, dealing with this archive and this film center. But I have had the time to walk the streets of Victorville and put together these segments that really showcase this town's cinematic heritage and history. So let's take a look at another one. Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, On Cinema at the Cinema. We're here outside of the Green Pole. Uh, is seen with Kurt Russell in Broke Down. He walks right by this pole. And things have changed here in Victorville, but it's still a great town for film production. A lot of great movies still being made here, and of course the archives as well. So this is a neat Victorville historic site where Kurt Russell walked up the street in one of the key scenes in one of my favorite popcorn classics, Broke Down. Please visit Victorville and support the archives. Back to you, Tim. I keep saying Broke Down. Thank you for that, Greg. You keep saying uh, Broke Down. This With Kurt Russell. Yeah. Breakdown was the name of the movie. I think that was the working title, and then when it went into theaters and stuff, it was Broke Down. I'd have to check, but I'm, I think they did use both titles. I, was, I, was, I, mean, I recently saw it. It's on TV. It was Breakdown. All right. Thank you very much. Both is there anything movies. else? Yeah, actually, I wanted to um, show you this. I'm kind of proud of it. This is what I've been working on. Uh, the past few days, not just my layout and, and the, the graphics of this, but also some of the movies we have programmed to play here at the Victorville Film Center. Now, it's a great, great resource for film buffs, for film heads. Um, we've got a movie every night at 7 o'clock, and you can see our schedule and see if something piques your interest. It's uh, $5 to get in. Uh, we've got great deals on popcorn and sodas and um, different movie every night. So if you want to see 30 great movies over 30 great days, come on by the Victorville Film Center. And I hope that you'll um, check in and watch one of these films, Tim, because you haven't seen anything yet. But September 1st, we're kicking off that month with For Love or Money with Michael J. Fox. And I think you'd really like that one. All right, I'll see if I can make it. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to being here. And the band's coming out for different rehearsals and stuff, so we'll see how that goes. That's it for us on On Cinema. Thanks again. And I do apologize one more time to everybody out there for my uh, behavior last week. And what else can I say but download Empty Bottle today and make my dreams come true. And we're still working on the new album, The Car. And yeah. you know, you're welcome to get more involved with the actual day-to-day -day operations of this film center. We, you know, Mark and Thank I you. have a lot of good things going on here. So I think what I want to do is figure out a way where we can start. You can maybe just stay here full time. Because there's just not. I'm still space. at the archive quite a bit myself because I'm bringing well, what moving about parts the of the archive. archive. What about moving the archive here? Well, I probably have a hundred of the movies here right now already just Great. because we're screening. Because the two so. cots right next to each other is working. Hey, everybody, it's Tim Heidecker back with another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm joined by my guest, uh, my sorry, my co host, Greg Turkington, and uh, the also. the Victorville Film Center. Also, I'm joined by Axiom, who's been sticking by my side basically 24-7. As you know, he's my rock, and since last week, I've had a few relapses with the issues I was going through, and it was decided upon me and the group that we need, I need, like a baby would, I need constant supervision and uh, to be looked after, and, and, uh, and, and Axiom's here to basically make sure that I stay out of trouble, and that means that I've got to have him, because he's my rock, i got to have you 24-7. So he's, uh, basically, we are locked like this. You could have, done, you could have had him 23-50-7. Leave the 10 minutes to shoot this program without his involvement since All right, he doesn't well, really not, have any knowledge Let's not stir the honeypot there. Movies. I think we should thank you for being here for me. Hey, whenever you want, man. What was here for you? So we're the whole uh, Nortel um, glam scene from West Hollywood's out here supporting us. I mean, we, 
the ba the bands come out here, and you guys are. What do you think of the the Victorville scene? Huh? It's cool. Um, I like it. Uh, it's a good place. I mean, it's good because we're. I can you know be really focused on what we're doing. You know, there's not so much going on, but you mm -hmm. know at least it keeps us really focused on the we're car. We're constantly writing music, and your sister's out here now. She just yeah. came into town, and uh, we're getting to spend some time with her. Yeah. Juliana, and we're enjoying this desert heat. I mean, it's actually, honestly been a pretty good way to detox. You get that dry air, that warm uh, water coming out of the tap. Why don't you guys come and check out some of the movies we've been programming here at the theater night after night? I yes, seen you guys if, here once. If you're in the Victorville area, come on down here. Uh, when we're done shooting here every day, there's a screening that he's got going on. And uh, 7 p.m. every night, five dollars and. We've got uh, specials on concessions as well. And if you mention this show, we've got a thing where uh, you get a, a free uh, couple of these little mini cookies that we're doing called uh, Creature Cookies uh, in honor of the old creature from the Black Lagoon. And they're just miniature cookies, but if you mention the show, uh, you get a couple of them for free. Yeah, and I'm already talking to uh, you and to some people around town about making this uh, sort of a place for us to um, have some shows. We're, we're no. looking at, uh, well, yeah, because you have the theater setting, sound system and everything, and all we have to do is build a little stage up front here and we'd be able to put on no, shows. No, because so. then the people sitting in the front seats aren't going to be able to see the screen if you have some big stage in front. No, it'll be, I, there's a way to do it. It's a, it's a, I think it's a mixed use style facility and it could be the Victorville Film it's Center too big. slash entertainment it's complex. It's too big of a room for you guys. Yeah, there's there's a lot of little bars in Vic, in Victorville. Well, we can feel that. Like a lot I mean, of people I are writing. I mean, I see people that. come in from. We can get a, a Vegas crowd. We can also get an LA crowd and the Victorville home team. People so. don't. Movie theaters are built for movie sound, Dolby, THX, and all that kind of thing. Not well, we'd for want to redo the band. sound. You probably want to come in here and mess around with what and how, how we can get the sound great in here. The sound is great here already, but it's not great for rock music. It's great for movies, and that's what the place was that. built for. I, don't know, like I think Mondays, Tuesdays, we'll probably do some, some start doing a concert series. We'll do a residency. Wow, what time? It'd be 10 o'clock. I have movies at 7 o'clock, and if the movie's two and a half hours, it's not going to be time for people to get cleared out completely mm -hmm. and before you guys come in, so I'd rather you don't do it on movie nights. You can start at 6.30 for once. Like, I don't know, no, because I've been establishing on this show and just from flyering and, and uh, talking to people around town that you can always count on a movie at 7 o'clock. It's always going to be a different movie. It's always going yeah, to be a popcorn classic. Yeah, but to show movies classic. that are only two hours long, and then you take it to 9 o'clock, there's plenty of time for people to come back in. And probably a lot of people that are coming to see the movie are going to stick around and see the car anyway. Let's talk about that later. We have to talk about movies today. Uh, first one up coming out is Ben-Hur, uh, directed by Timur, Timur Beckman. Uh, Bekmebeva, Bekmemem, what is that? Bekmam, Bekmamatov. Timur. Bekmamat, Bekmamatov. Is that German? Uh, I, uh, uh, it's Russian. Russian. Bekmamatov, yeah. Casted by Jack Houston, Naz, Nazanin Bondine. Bonyadi. Bonyadi. Nazadin Bonyadi and Ayelet Zurer. Falsely accused Jewish nobleman survives years of slavery to take vengeance on his Roman. We all know what Ben Hur is about. It's a remake. He, does, he doesn't know what it's about. Well, he, believe me, this is some of the great movies. This is almost like the original Ben Hur. Same story with Jack uh, Charles Heston. And we loved Ben Hur then, and we love it now. I give it five bags of popcorn. Get the movie out of my car. Yeah, okay. It's in the, it's in my jacket. Come back after the show's done taping. Um, yeah, Ben Hur from 1959 was classic. I think they've improved upon it this time because in that movie you didn't have access to some of the technology. Some of the sets were a little cornball, quite frankly. Uh huh. They didn't have the pacing down. Of a good action movie that you do now. And so I think they took the modern pacing of action, put it into a classic story like Ben Hur, and I think you end up with a movie that may win as many Oscars as the original Ben Hur did. And that one right. actually won 14 Oscars back in 1959. And I 
predict this will win 15. Okay. All right. Um, Five bags of popcorn and a miniature chariot, because a chariot race, of course, is the classic finale to Ben Hur. All right. Kubo and, the two, two, Kubo and the what two. Did you? Did you uh, Five bags. Two. Uh, <sighs> I have to take a break. No, just review the movie. It's. Okay. Right. Yeah, Wait. Just, just, just come back chill. when we're done. Or you guys can meet up the street somewhere. All right. Um, Kuba and the Two Strings, directed by Travis Knight. Um, Runamari, Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Theron. Kuba lives a quiet life in a small village until a spirit from the past reignites an old vendetta. In order to survive, he must locate a magical. S uh. In order to survive, he must locate a magical suit of armor, armor, uh, uh, armor worn by his late father, a legendary samurai warrior. Show the clip. Oh, shit. This is a, it's an animated, another, this is the summer of animation, quite frankly. We've had a lot of uh, animated <laughs> features this year, and there's more to come. This one is pretty cool. It takes place in Japan. It's got a historical angle to it, though it does have elements of fantasy. Um, you know, I like these characters. I didn't like them as much as, say, the baby carrots from last week, if you remember uh, when we reviewed Sausage Party. Right. But I still think the movie has something to say, and it's very beautifully animated. Mm. And I would give it five bags of popcorn and five uh, little packets of soy sauce because uh, those go good with sushi. And I don't know. Um, Sorry. Sorry. That's very close. Can you wash your hands? Yeah. Um, so now it's time for another great On Cinema, On Location segment. But this is a special edition of On Cinema, On Location. It's not about a movie. It's about a theater. A theater that's a dream of mine that's finally come to fruition. Of course, we're talking about the Victorville Film Center, where we're filming right now. And this is kind of a behind-the-scenes segment looking at the inner workings of Victorville's newest and best movie theater. Your PV light or anything like that? Gatorade? Go ahead. This is interesting. Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on Mont Cinema on location. This is where the magic happens. Magic happens. This is the Victorville Film Center. This is our projection booth. This is an original 35 millimeter film projector. It is not currently operational. Uh, when we uh, took over this theater, we found that this thing had, uh, the wiring had been eaten by rats. Uh, we could have spent several thousand dollars to get it repaired or we could put that money into buying uh, another 10,000 VHS movies uh, to bolster the already incredible Victorville film archive and purchase this. It's a VHS film projection system. If you go down there and actually look at what we're doing you'll see that it looks as good as any 35 millimeter film if not better. Uh, I'm going to show you an example right now of what it looks like using one of my all-time favorites and a lot of the viewers, Decker versus Dracula, which incidentally you can purchase online. You hit play on this and there it is on the big screen, Decker versus Dracula as it was meant to be seen. And now let's go talk to our popcorn jockey, Mark, down in the concession stand. So this is sort of the nerve center of any movie theater, the place where the popcorn popping happens. And this is Mark, who you may have seen on, uh, on cinema playing W.C. Fields in the great golden age comedy segment. I'm hip, I'm W.C. Fields. It's nice and to I'm have hip. you back here working with us here at the Victorville Film Center. Thank you for hiring me. And what's your all time favorite movie to sit back and uh, have a tub of popcorn and, and watch, whether here at the Victorville Film Center or at home on your home system? 
What's the one with Sandra Bullock and it's like the mailbox? The net. The net. What's your favorite thing about working at the movie theater? Is it the free popcorn, the free movies? Um, I love working here. I mean, the, the drive does kill me, um, especially when you just need me for like a half hour shift. Or that was an emergency. To fill in for Alex, who always calls in. But I, uh, I just, I wish I could get more hours. And uh, But I also like still being a part of the entertainment industry because I get to work here and it's good exposure for me. Um, a lot of productions have moved uh, to Victorville in recent years. To wrap the segment up, can you share with our viewers at home your recipe for the perfect home bucket of popcorn? Don't know. I'll be honest, I don't eat popcorn at home. When you're watching a movie though? No, I'll have pretzels or... I mean, these machines people don't have at home. But how do you get the movie taste at home? I told you, I just follow the instructions on the machine. All right, back to Tim. All right, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time at the movie. Do you like the segment? Yes. Don't say it the next time at the movies because that's from the Siskel and Ebert I show. So. I almost, I almost had an accident. No, you're, it's a bigger accident if you're there's, using somebody there's else's. There's residual effects to the detox. And what I'm saying is if you, if you say Siskel and Ebert's, yeah, you can't use copyright words. Well, I mean, you can't uh, go ahead and completely sorry, remake go. Gone with the Wind, word for word remake of Gone with the Wind, and say you can't copyright words. If you do that, you're going to uh, find yourself in a lot of trouble. Uh, uh. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, back with more movie reviews, giving you guys a chance to figure out what to watch this coming week. And I'm joined by my co-host, Greg Turkington. Greg, hey guys. good to see you again. Welcome to our show, live from Victorville. We're back in the Victorville scene. And uh, I'll just get this out of the way. This is, uh, I, I want to apologize because... Uh, I threw these guys under the bus a couple weeks ago, and you know this is a great company uh, that makes these uh, devices. And I was able to connect again with Dr. Sand, and we figured out through. I mean, he's admitting that it was his fault that the dosage and the chemistry that he had combined to make this for me was all wrong. And we were able to dial it in and actually find the right amounts for me. And I just didn't want anyone to get the wrong impression that this was going to be, that this company is a problem or that this device is a problem. Gives me exactly what I need, which is light nutrition. I'm still eating, luckily. But then this also complements that and, and, and adds nutritional values such as uh, vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin A. And also it has a, a slight just a slight psychoactive element that keeps me creative because we're still working on the record. Axiom had to go uh, back to West Hollywood, so I am without a, without his rock, but luckily his sister Juliana here is staying uh, out here with me. And she's keeping me warm at night, if you know what I mean. At the uh, archive. So... Everyone, don't everyone worry about me. This is a much better place for me to be. There's no synthetic cocaine in here or any of that kind of crap. It's all natural, actually. I got that confirmed from Dr. Sam. Uh, and, but he does want me on it pretty much um, intermittently through the day, which is... Okay, but I've been getting complaints from the landlord at the archive that I need to talk to you about because I do not want to lose that space because of how you've been carrying on there at night. Well, like I told you before, we're being creative. And uh, the lyric writing process is, is part but of that is not, self expression. And, uh, it's not meant to be a, a party pad or something. It's a film archive um, that's in a storage facility, and so it's not zoned uh, you know, for a party atmosphere. Okay. No, you're welcome so you to stay want... there as long as you want, and I invited you, but the thing is. Is you, you, you don't can't. want me to be self-expressive and working on projects that's going to move me forward as an well, artist. I mean, Hold on, I'm not finished with you. 
and you don't so and then you don't want me to use this space which i'm paying for through the T tom cruise memorial junior junior fund that i set you up use it you can i can't but use I don't this want for you my on to car express concerts to, during okay when i, have I just want to know what you expect me to be well doing i'll show myself. you the complaint that i got from the landlord and and it's very specific, but I just don't want to lose the place. You're not going to lose the place. You're being very uptight about this. This landlord's an ad. He doesn't know what he's doing. Trust me. I'll talk to him. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't okay? know that's going to help. Stop being I'm... such a baby about this. The landlord is just being overreactive, and he has got you under his thumb, and you're being manipulated, and that's embarrassing. Well, he's not manipulating because he's been very generous all along. He's looked the this other way. This is the same asshole who's revoked your bathroom privileges for two months. You had to go down to the gas station to go to the bathroom. I don't like this guy. I, I don't. Th I think you're getting taken advantage of. Well, that you wasn't because of ground. me. That was because somebody else who also was using one of the units, but did not because they were running an archive out of it and were working late. They were strictly just living there because it was cheap rent, you know. And the, the bathroom, uh, having them change the locks on that had nothing to do with anything I was doing. All right. And you knew that, so well, I don't know why you bring it up on this show. We'll try to keep it down. That's all I'm asking. Okay. You're welcome to stay. I'm not, you know, I just be smart. The manager's calling, complaining, because we got, uh, when you're at this movie theater, we got Juliana screaming like a little kitty cat. Don't tell Axie, by the way. He doesn't know about him being her. Well, it's more Ayaka that I would... Tell. Hands of Stone. Kind of quir quir quirky movie. Jonathan ja Jakowinitz. J Jakubowitz. Jacobowitz. Cat starring Donald. Uh, sorry, Ronald. Sorry, uh, Robert De Niro. Ellen Barkin. Anna De Magus. De, De Armas. Edgar Ramines. Ramines. The legendary Robert De the legendary Robert De Niro and his equally legendary trainer Ray Arkell ch change each other's life. <sighs> Roberto Duran is the name, not Robert De Niro, and is equally well. The actor Robert De Niro is in the movie, but the character is Roberto Duran. The character is not Robert De Niro. All right, this one, Hands of Stone, starring Robert De Niro. One of my favorite actors of all time. I think what he has has he done a movie you didn't like? Nope. I give it five bags of popcorn. One of my favorite movies this year is Hands of Stone with Robert De Niro, uh, and uh, I can do an impression of him if you want. No. Uh, yeah, Hands of Stone is interesting. It's not being called Raging Bull Two, but essentially it is, but with a twist. Is that now Robert De Niro is the trainer? and he's training a young fighter, uh, whereas in Raging Bull, he was the fighter. So shades of Rocky, uh, Rocky Balboa, in those movies, uh, Rocky Balboa has become the trainer rather than the fighter. And so now Raging Bull has gone that same route. But it's a little more interesting than Rocky because with Rocky, you have so many Rocky movies. One comes out every year. With Raging Bull, we had one come out in 1980 and we've heard nothing since. So it's great to get back uh, and catch up with these characters. Uh, it's an exciting film on its own. You don't have to have seen Raging Bull. It will definitely help. Uh, I do foresee a Best Actor award for Robert De Niro, and I think that would be pretty cool for him to win it for this, as he did for Raging Bull back in 1980. Are you talking to me? Are you talking that's, to me? That's Taxi Driver. Well, I'm doing my Robert De Niro for you. Yeah, but that's a different that. character. All right. Five bags of popcorn, uh, and... I would have to say um, miniature boxing glove or something. Maybe two. A set of two miniature boxing gloves as a souvenir of two great movies, Raging Bull and Hands of Stone. All right. Uh, Mechanic, Resurrection. What was your rating? Five bags. A mechanic, starring Resur uh, Mechanic, colon, Resurrection. Starring, uh, with directed by Dennis Gansel. To cast starring my favorite actor, Jason Stratham. Jessica Alba and Tommy Lee Jones, my favorite actor too. Arthur Bishop thought he put his murderous past behind him when his most formidable, formidable foe cap kidnaps the love of his life. Now he's forced to travel the globe to complete three impossible assassinations. A little bit, bit like Decker. Well, Decker's not 
assassinating people. He's preventing assassinations from happening. I would think he would assassinate if it was, for example, if we had, uh, like Obama was in the presidency. Uh, Decker well, would come out you know, and put a bullet to, uh, through his that's, skull. Again, I don't want you talking like that on the show because the next thing you know, they're going to shut the show down. It's nothing to do with this movie. That's it's fictional. Nothing to do I'm with talking Decker. fictional. Decker's a fictional story. If you had a president like Obama, I'm not saying it is Obama, somebody like him. Somebody well, exactly can't like, talk him. like that on TV or anywhere, really. I'm not saying I'm going to kill the president. Well, but stop saying it and let's just talk about the movie. You're talking about assassinations. I'm giving you an example. No, the movie is about assassination. Right. It's about a character who's kind of an unsavory, kind of the flip side of the James Bond coin. He's an expert He's... at what he does, but what he does is something that's not... Uh, appealing in the way that saving the country is appealing when Decker does it. And so uh, he's kind of an anti hero. Five bags. Whoa, that hit me hard. <laughs> Five bags of pop. Yay, yay, yay. Hold on. You need to do this stuff before you come into film oh, because it's Jesus. just really disruptive. Oh, right. It's gonna fucking go out of my nose. <laughs> ah, wow. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, okay, I'll put. I gotta put this away for a minute. Yeah. Yee yee yee. I thought you yee. threw it away. Oh crap. <sighs> I also think Tommy Lee Jones as Max Adams is an unforgettable character that... Oh, wow. Do <laughs> you have any uh, segments to go to? We could cut to it. Yeah, we've got uh, some on cinema on locations in the can. <laughs> oh, shit. Can you put one of those on until he gets done with his Whoa. little... Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema, On Location. Hey guys, On Cinema at the Cinema, On Location, at the home, the ranch house where Citizen Kane was written back in 1941. This ranch, the Kemper Campbell Ranch, was the writing location of the motion picture script for Citizen Kane, and it's right here in Victorville, California, current home of the world's number one film archive, the Victorville Film Archives, as well as the shooting location for season eight of On Cinema at the Cinema. Back in 1941, this is where Orson Welles wrote Citizen Kane. Back to you, Tim. This is Greg Turkington from On Cinema at the Cinema, uh, which, or, which is the show that we're watching right now. I'm a little stunned this week. Always happy to guest host uh, in Tim's absence, but in these circumstances, it's anything but happy. I don't know if you saw the, um, the news footage uh, over the weekend, but uh, there was a fire at the Victor Wolf Film Archive. Uh, you can see this is a serious fire. Uh, it was caused by Tim falling asleep uh, in his cot, smoking. Uh, the cigarette apparently fell down onto the blanket and that started the fire. And he's in the hospital still. He, he, he will survive, but uh, he's got serious third and first degree burns that are gonna take a lot of work before he's uh, gonna be able to come back and review movies or do anything. And so I've got Mark here that, uh, Mark's been a good friend to this show for many, many years and of course plays Abdul on Decker and has been helping me um, run this 
very important resource, the Victorville Film Center, which uh, we've been running here in Victorville for the past few weeks, uh, screening popcorn classics. And um, the, the archive is destroyed. We had about a thousand films, maybe 1,100 that we had brought up here to the theater uh, in terms of using them for programming for our nightly screenings, and so those are okay. But that is just a fraction of what the Victorville Film Archive uh, used to be. We will rebuild. And if anybody out there uh, has access to videotapes uh, that wants to donate them, uh, at this point, you know, I don't think insurance is going to cover this. This was Tim's fault, so at this point I can't buy the tapes from you even at pennies on the dollar. These would have to be donations. Um, the screenings will continue. I'm proud to say that the night after this fire, we still showed our movie for the people in the town that count on us, and nothing is going to stop us from doing that. All my clothes were burned on my Ant-Man memorabilia, burned uh, the master tapes to some of the Decker versus Dracula stuff is burned. A lot of the lost footage that you've never seen was burned. The props, Dracula's cape. I had a postcard from a Giant that James Dean had signed to me. That was also burned. Um, very little survived. The tapes that did survive are unplayable. Any tape that did survive, it was sprayed with uh, water and foam. Um, Mark here uh, is going to be taking over a lot of responsibilities in the coming weeks. Uh, he's done a great job with the concession. I'm going to have, have to you. have you help me uh, with a lot of other things, especially if Tim chooses to rehab here at the theater. I've been trying to get in touch with Ayaka. Just, I can't get hold of her. Um, I mean, I don't even know if she wants to hear from Tim. One of the most incredible film archives in North American history it is reduced to cinder, and uh, the Dakar master tapes are fine. So there is no justice in the world. Those are still at Axiom's uh, studios. So. Um, Hopefully we'll have updates on Tim's condition. It's not good. You're not going to be seeing him anymore this season. I don't know how Decker's going to continue. He's not going to look like the Decker that we know. Uh, he's going to need a lot of uh, facial reconstruction. I visited uh, Tim at Victorville General Hospital and he's unrecognizable. His head is very swollen. His uh, his face is very mangled. Uh, some of his hair literally melted to his head. Have you visited? Have you been? Have you seen Tim? Or no? There was a uh, episode of Mash once where uh, a, a guy was burned up, and uh, yeah, well, they that's... they brought him back. Totally fine. That's TV, though. That's not real life. That's not movies. There's the yeah. Mash movie. Oh. which Sally Kellerman, who also starred in Decker, uh, actually was oh, in the right, nice yeah. She had fun. some interesting stories about What's working fun? with uh, Robert yeah. Altman. And, no, because he was on the TV show. So the movie's very different. Mm. Elliot Gould. Uh -huh. Anyway, we do have a couple movies to review. Um, <coughs> Solace, uh, directed by Alfonso Poyart. <coughs> Anthony Hopkins, uh, Colin Farrell, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, a psychic, uh, works with the FBI in order to hunt down a, a serial killer. It's a good movie. It's, uh, again, one of these movies post-Decker. You feel like they've taken a little bit from what we're doing. Uh, this is an FBI agent. Decker, of course, is CIA. Uh, this, this FBI agent tries to stop the serial killer. Uh, Decker, of course, would have uh, fallen asleep and burned down FBI headquarters and uh, destroyed all their records. Uh, but uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I was a little distracted watching it, uh, but I would give it five bags of popcorn. And but
entire fire truck full of uh, flame retardant foam. Did you see it, Mark? Uh, I saw the last half of it, and uh, I, I I loved it. Why did why, why did you miss the first half of it? Uh, I got you that ticket. You did, but when I got here, uh, Aaron didn't show up for his shift, so I had to cover the first half of the last half of his shift, which means I missed the first half of the move. How many bags of popcorn would you give it? Five. The Light Between Oceans, uh, directed by Derek Jean-France, uh, starring Michael Fassbender, Alicia Vikander, Rachel, Rachel Weiss, a lighthouse keeper, and his wife living off the coast of Western Australia raise a baby they rescue from an adrift rowboat. Well, uh, it reminds me of uh, Tim and Ayaka's baby, but it wasn't a drift on a rowboat, it was a drift on uh, bad medicine and anti-vaccination uh, ideas that Dr. San had, and, and no one was rescuing that baby. It's bad news. Um, five bags of popcorn and five tickets to the rehab clinic. Did you see it? All right, now we're going to see a segment called On Cinema On Location, filmed right here in Victorville. This is a very popular segment where we look at some of the cinematic history that's taken place here in our town. Roll the tape. Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on On Cinema On Location. Hey guys, I'm here in Victorville, California, once again, home of the Victorville Film Archive, and we're outside the Rock Formation Mountain, seen in the 1953 all-time classic sci-fi epic, It Came From Outer Space. If you've seen the movie, you know that the flying saucers fly over these rocks, causing a landslide which threatens the fictional town depicted in the movie. Visit Victorville, California and the Victorville Film Archives. Support your local film archive. Okay, that was uh, our latest segment. And now we're gonna do a couple popcorn classics if we have time. These are movies we're showing here this week. If anyone can get down here. Um, and wants to see these. Mention this episode, we'll give you uh, a free small popcorn with admission. Remember that. Um, this is Holiday Heart. Uh, we're going to be screening this on Friday night, 7 o'clock. It's based on a play called The Holiday Heart, and they filmed it, essentially a filmed play uh, with a little bit more Hollywood razzmatazz. So it's, they didn't actually film it on a stage, but it, it was filmed in a studio, and it's quite good. And then Saturday, oh, be careful. Saturday we've got the wood. Um, again, seven o'clock, five dollars. Uh, Tay Diggs and Omar Epps, Richard T. Jones, Sean Nelson. Unforgettable tale of laughs. And um, come on out, and I'll keep you posted uh, as far as Tim's health. I'll keep you updated. Uh, it's not looking good. Um, I don't know uh, how we're going to be able to continue this, this show or this theater. I could do. I could step in each week. And do what? All right. Well, thanks, Mark. Maybe next time we do some WC Fields. It's just not really the time or the place for that this time. So I'm understand. sorry. Mm. We couldn't get to Golden Age comedies. It's funny. All this time I. And start asking Tim, let's put the Golden Age comedies back. Mark's been very loyal to the show, and that's his segment. And um, and Tim said no. And then here is my chance where I could put anything I want in the show. And I just don't feel like uh, Golden Age comedies would be appropriate. So it's a paradox. I'll see you guys next week. Well, you got to get the popcorn fired up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. 
I'm back. Welcome to On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm, to I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. And thanks for bearing with me last week. Sorry, it was an uh, accident on the, as Greg told you. And uh, uh, and I'm joined by my, thank you for filling in with for me last week, Greg Turkington, my co-host. Greg Turkington. Hey, guys. I feel like I've got nine lives, like that movie with... Uh, Christopher Walken. No. Yeah, nine, we reviewed it. Kevin Spacey. And Christopher Walken. Kevin Spacey was the cat and the star. Well, anyways. They're uh, co-billed. Co this looks a lot worse than it is. It was basically uh, two degree, uh, second degree burns over the course of my entire face. And uh, they'll be doing some small plastic surgery to get it fixed up. And uh, my arm, my hand is charred back, basically the bone. And uh, We'll be working on recovery. I have to keep doing this show for financial reasons. I cannot stop uh, coming to work here because I will lose my health insurance. So I'm required to keep this happening. I want to apologize to you on behalf of Victorville's f film archives. Uh, uh, very quickly, the story was my vape pen, which is I didn't realize a piece of junk from China, that overheated and caught fire on one of the uh, cardboard boxes holding the archives. You weren't and using it properly. Well, you supposed this to go to sleep. Manufactured vaping. poorly and uh, set the box on fire. And the box lit the whole shelving unit up, and then one of the big boxes, uh, which had um, Blues Brothers 2000 in it. I guess well, I mean the whole archive copies. is gone, of so it doesn't, you don't need to go through the titles, I'm it just trying makes to explain, me feel worse. I'm trying to explain which movies. Oh, I know me. which movies. So seven All of them. or eight flaming VHS copies landed on my face as I was sleeping, which woke me up. And uh, luckily I was able to escape the inferno um, and, and uh, rushed out into the middle of the street where I was uh, rescued and taken to the hospital. And uh, I'm back on the road to recovery, and thank you for all your well wishes. But we're not here to talk about me, we're here to talk about the movies. Quickly, because I have to go and get another shot of morphine. Sully, starring Clint Eastwood, and with Tom Hanks and Lauren Linney, the story of Chessa Sullenberger. Remember, you remember Sully Sullenberger? From yeah. He crashed his plane into the Hudson River. And Oh, he didn't crash it. He landed the plane. He, how are they going to make a whole movie of this? It doesn't make sense. Well, they did. Kirby became a hero after gliding his plane along the water in the Hudson River, saving all 50 passengers, uh, 50 passengers, 155 passengers. This is a movie directed by Clint Eastwood, the original. Hey, Tim. Joe. Hey. Joe Estevez. Hey. I don't know if you can. Yeah, hey, me. what's going on? Uh, well, uh, Tim, we got Ayaka and, yeah. and her dad, and oh, Mark, and John, Greg, of course, and myself. Uh, we, we all uh, wanted to come down here today, Tim, because we've been recognizing that you've been having a lot of trouble with your life, and, and we just wanted to show up here and, and support you and tell you how much we love you, how much we like you, and, and that we, we care about you, and, and uh, well, frankly, that we're a little bit worried about you, Tim. Okay. And if all of us just want to say a little something, and maybe we can start with your, your uh, band member here. And, yeah, okay. And, uh, hey, man, great to see you. I mean, I was really scared when my sister called me. She was crying. I was really scared. I talked to the guys. I just wanted to tell you that it doesn't matter how, much, how long is it going to take for you to heal, but, you know, the car is waiting for you. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, you know. We're not going anywhere. No. And your strength and the group's strength is keeping me, my spirits high, and I can't wait to get back in the studio. Yeah, well, the I thing is, Tim. I going to do the bass stuff, because this hand's going to be. You could just put the whole the band on high no, I can't. No, no one can take it. Like, you're, it doesn't well, matter how much. I'll a new bass player. I'll just uh, say. Tim. Foot, hold on, Joe. I can do foot pedals with bass. Don't think about it. Just get better, please. Tim, if you keep on doing what you're doing, there's there's not only going to be no band, but there's going to be no Tim. I, uh, Ayaka, you want to tell uh, uh, Tim how you're feeling and and. Hi, how are you? Oh, oh, not not good. 
I'm sorry to hear oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry that you had to go away to Japan to leave me in my... T <laughs> Tell him about the baby and, yeah. and, and what you're going to do. You can take care of that? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep the child. Oh. I don't mm. think that's a good idea. Ah, oh, you're wrong. My dad is very concerned, but... Well, I'm concerned that you traipse off to Japan every time there's a bump in the road. But we hope you feel better. Next time, save about thousand dollars in plane fare and send a card. What? You want to say a few words? Uh, I don't have any interest in hearing what he has to say. Good. Okay. Well, John. Tim. Who? John. You John. John. worked John. quite John. a bit on uh, General Cotter on Decker. Oh. Yeah. Tim. I hate to see you this way, and then I don't. Uh, I don't know, you haven't known me as long as these other guys, but uh, I want to get to know you better. Get it, get it better, you get it together. You're going to be fine, man. Okay. You got something you want to tell uh, Jim? You, you've known him the longest. I'm not going to say my theories in front of Ayaka and her father, but I, I do think that getting Dr. San and uh, Dakar out of your life and focusing on this theater is your chance to really make something of yourself and you know the thing that you've done that people love the most are, are these movie reviews and Decker and uh, the thing that people don't like is uh, Dakar and Dr. Sam and so uh, I think it would be a good thing for you when you heal up to focus on movies and let's get this theater um, running at full capacity up the schedule to two screenings a day. We could do a, like a five o'clock and a seven o'clock or a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock and really make some money here and have some yeah, fun well, and, it, you know, and, and, it, and really make the Victorville Film Center uh, a destination yeah, for people from out of town as well as for locals. Well, y y you know, Tim, you gotta understand that I know this is not easy on you, but it's, it's not easy for any of us to come down here and to tell you what we're telling you, but we just want you to get better and get back in the game and be the old Tim that, that you were before. Thanks. Well, not the old Tim that he has been. Well, you know. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Axiom and uh, Ayaka, Ayaka's dad, uh, Mark, who didn't say a word that made any sense. And uh, John, you got John. Back John. Here. Thanks for coming down and supporting me. You guys are my closest friends and family. You're all I got. And I'm going to make life better for everybody. I'm going to turn it up a notch. So I'm can, act, Shut up. I'm, you ask, you've been talking all okay. day. All right. I'm turning another leaf, turn another corner, and the band is going to be better. We don't need bass. We'll we get computer-based music. And When the Bow Breaks is Morris Chestnut, Glenn Mushroom, and to Teddy Roosevelt. Well, what, what would like Hold on now, Joe. I, I wrote a little letter here. I think that that, that kind of sums up about how all, all of us feel. And oh, what, what? Well, what? What we'd like? What we'd like for you, uh, uh, dear Tim? Keeping company with John Barleycorn for you, I believe, has become quite a problem. You are a mess, and so is your life. Okay, thank you. Although a lot of people prefer your thank company. You know what? You, this isn't your show. This is but, my show. Yeah, but this is important that you it hear this, Tim. It is not that, important. That, Did you write it? I, I wrote this well, because from the be heart, Tim, then. because I... I, I, I write can't. your lines, all right? And if I'm going to stop writing them if you keep reading that crap. Well, well so this isn't, this isn't a TV show taping, Tim. This it's, is an intervention that Joe has put together, and I think you should listen to what he has to say. Okay. Tim, we care about you. What you're doing to yourself is... Hold on, Joe, shut the fuck up. You all can take a walk. I'm going to be fine. I got some perkies. Keep taking the pain away. And then well, I'm going to get plastic surgery. Shut up! To stop. I'm going right. to make a commitment right now. I'm going to kick it up a notch. We are about to go with Dakar 2.0. Man, we no. got a whole new angle. Stop now, everybody get the fuck out! Drugs. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. Ayaka's father paid for you're half that theater. Mark, where the fuck are you going? Come on, yeah, where are you please. going? Where are you're, Tim, we're here because we care about you. And we we want to to see a change in you and to do right and to do the... Do the proper thing. All right. Thank you very much for your concern. Now get the fuck and so off. Can focus I get an on, answer from you that you're going to Get movies. off my property, you piece of shit, or I'll never work with you again. You too. Get out of here. It's all right. Oh, no. You get out. Hey, hey. Come you on. get out too, old man. Come on, John. It's just going to get worse. Get out. All right. Okay. Get the fuck out. We love you, Tim. Oh, no, we you. don't. 
What? You gotta calm down. Come dude. on. Come on. Calm down. All right, come on. You all need me or do shit without me. There's nothing without me. What we do is we don't forget the bass. I throw the bass away. I don't need it anymore. I can program bass licks on a computer. We kick it up a notch. Let's go to CVS. I need to get Let's some get turkeys. Let's get some. Oh, I'm gonna burn this fucking theater down. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker, and I'm uh, sitting here happy to be alive on the mend. Uh, getting better and stronger every single day, thanks to you guys, your love and support. I do appreciate it so much. And uh, it's been hard, it's been a struggle, but I just gotta say thank God for the perks. <sighs> I'm not talking about uh, the perks like vacation and all this and medical benefits of which I don't have enough to cover what's been going on with me. Uh, but most important is the Percocets that keep me the pain away, it keeps the pain at bay. and. Uh, <clears throat> and my guest is Greg Turkington from the Victorville Film Center, which is hey where guys. we are right now. We're at the Victorville Film Center right now. We're still screening uh, seven nights a week, uh, 7 p.m. We've got a full schedule of popcorn classics. You better Come hope, on down to Victorville. You better hope people show up because I was taking a look at the receipt from the last couple of weeks and it's been not very impressive. Well, I haven't been able to promote it because I've been too busy dealing well, with the mess that you created when you burned down the entire Victorville Film Archive. I have, I have to say and that I've is been not dealing, part of the agreement. The agreement was that we were going to hit certain benchmarks. The agreement was that you were going to get wasted on weirdo uh, drugs mm -hmm. and burn down the archive. That uh, The agreement was that we were going to review movies, run I'm, a world-class movie theater, and not waste all this time what I'm on trying to let you know, and, on, and drug addiction and all this other crap. I am a man of peace, and I am trying to let you know of one thing that if you can hit the financial benchmarks that we set when I put you as in charge as director and curator of the Victorville Film Center, I'm gonna have to go out and find somebody else that can handle you it. You could fill a football stadium with people and charge $5 a piece and it wouldn't be enough to cover all the damage you did to the Victorville storage facility where <laughs> our archives were, which is now completely destroyed. It's gonna have to be raised. That's done. Do you know how many people lost their archives of things and their baby photos and mementos and all these other things? There was a guy who had a 63 Stingray, which is quite an expensive car that was stored at that uh, storage facility. That car is gone. Well, that's accidents just a happen. pile of dust. Accidents yeah, happen. Well, that's but a $90,000 car that someone's going to have to pay for. So don't tell me that because I did a screening. You of did a, a movie screening. Let me give you an example. You did a screening of Summer School starring Mark Harmon on VHS that barely reached the screen. The projection quality was so low. On a Friday night at 7 o'clock, who you in the right there. line was going to go out and there. see? You had four people here that night, and we people had, were complaining we had, about the we had popcorn being old. People because we couldn't promote it properly. Well, it's no way to run a movie theater. I don't know why you can't show the first. Well, run this movies. is a soft launch. Wait until we get everything completely ready to go, and we're getting the word out word out around Victorville. Now, well, I was going door to door and passing these things out, why letting would, people know. But I've had to go to the hospital all the time and watch them peel all this dead skin off of you layer by layer. Let me ask you a question. Because you couldn't stay away from Dr. Sand's idiot drugs. What, who again. in their right mind would program Fletch 2 on a Saturday night? You had one person come in. Again, it's a soft launch. We're still testing the equipment. Well, we on. don't have any radio ads. We don't have any TV ads. We were going to try to do something like that. But now, whatever little money you had less, left in the Tom Cruise Heidecker Memorial Fund is probably going to be paying for that guy's burnt Stingray and, and everybody else's stuff that got wrecked. My only uh, in advice that fire that's all your fault and I'm surprised you're going to get sued by your medical insurer if you have one because this accident this accident was not an accident at all it was entirely your fault and it put my archive in severe jeopardy. Thank God that fans have been sending me boxes of videotapes each day I'm getting another box and we're rebuilding the archive. Well, you're very upset, but let me just remind, as a friend, I'm giving you advice to show more movies people might want to come out and see. Well, I wouldn't Not take Fletch advice too. from you because I don't think people want to see documentaries on Hillary Clinton. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. That's uh, the newest updates on the Victorville Film Center from Greg Turkington. Uh, we've got two movies today. One is Snowden, directed by Oliver Stone, uh, starring Joseph Gordon Levitt. Shaneen, Shailene Woodley, Nicholas Cage, one of the greats, Scott Eastwood, that's uh, Clint Eastwood. 
The story of NSA uh, employee Edward Snowden leaking thousands of classified documents to the press. Uh, this guy, Snowden, is a traitor and is a traitor and uh, should be hung up and uh, hung up in the uh, off a uh, should be hung out in front of Congress and uh, just review movies don't review no. current well, events I am trying is it a good to movie or not who cares what the this truth of the story is we're curious if it's a good movie it's typical Oliver you don't Stone review the JFK bent. assassination in mm. terms of whether it was a good assassination you review the movie in terms of whether it was a good movie which it was it wasn't this paints Snowden as a hero when he was a traitor he, was a be he betrayed us He's as worse, worse than Osama bin Laden, in my opinion, and he's brought down the greatest country on earth, America. He's brought them to our knees, and he is, uh, should be tried for treason, and he is responsible for the end of our country. Uh, and the, the Russians have come and have invaded us already, and Chinese are right behind them. And you can say goodbye to American pie. <sighs> No, no bags is co uh, popcorn, and uh, shame on you, America, for letting, letting Oliver Stone live. Well, this movie is kind of interesting because if you watched the last season of Decker, you saw an episode uh, that mentioned Nicolas Cage, National Treasure. National Treasure. And uh, also, when uh, said, we got into the treasure chest, treasure we found chest. Uh, a file and mentioned how much Oliver I Stone would like to see this file. To see Stone. those two worlds come together in a motion picture shows once again the influence that Decker has had on modern cinema. And for that, I tip my hat and award it five bags of popcorn. And I'm going to throw in a little toy door because Oliver Stone also directed the doors. Next up is one of my favorite movies of the year, Bridget Jones Baby, directed by Sharon McGuire, starring Rennie Zellweger, Z Emily, Emma Thompson, Patrick Dempsey, and Colin Filth. The continuing adventures of British publishing executive Bridget Jones as she enters her 40s. This is a chick flick, there's no question about it. It's for the ladies. Uh, me and Juliana checked it out a couple nights ago, we had a good time with it. We kind of uh, used it as a good excuse to fool around <laughs> in the movie theater. There was, um, we got that Could she even back. touch your face without you screaming? She didn't need to touch my face. Let's leave it at that. What did you think? I give it five bags of popcorn and two so cups of soda. Uh, I think that the Bridget Jones movies are fantastic. Uh, I don't see them as just for women. I, uh, I personally love those movies, and when I go see them, there's always plenty of men there who also enjoy those movies. Uh, I think Bridget Jones could be sort of a James Bond for women in that uh, this is a franchise that could go for many, many years. And uh, when Renee Zellweger can't do it anymore, there'll be another actress to step into her shoes and continue uh, the wondrous adventures of Bridget Jones. And so I give it five bags of popcorn and a little baby rattle. Oh, I want to read this. This is neat. I got a note from Kenny Chesney, music artist Kenny Chesney. And... He just wrote this to me, he said, uh, Dear Tim, I understand you're in a terrible accident and we just want to let you know that we're thinking of you and we're able to hear the first, your first track from Empty Bottle and we are loving it and would love to cover it sometime. And uh, he goes on and on but says uh, he hopes we feel better and uh, that's pretty cool from Kenny Chesney. And Where do you, also how, how would name, he heard of you? Uh, that's how do you hear about anybody? And there's also a note here from the guys in Rascal Flats, I guess they're on tour together. So the Rascal Flats guys say, uh, really enjoying, love Trigger everything and love Dakar. And can't wait to see what you guys do up in the future. And you're welcome to play with us anytime and hope you get better real quick. We need you out there in the music community. That's all I need to hear. That gets me back on my feet. That's from Kenny Chesney and Rascal Flats. So those guys, Anytime they want to come to Victorville, they get free popcorn on the house. Not if I'm working. See you next time. So, I'm telling you, if you don't bring those ticket sales up significantly, I'm making major changes. I'm going to rip all these seats out and we're going to turn this into a dance club. You're in danger of being sued for a, probably a million dollars over damage to that storage unit. I don't think you should be worried about $5 movie tickets. You should just let me run this place the way I've been running it. You're running it into the ground. So, uh, place you're running it.
Uh, whatever, I gotta take some meds. Oh! Welcome to the movie! This is as good as a movie can get, and it's so great that they're still making these kinds of movies. This is my theater now. Join me, Greg Turkington. Don't waste your money on a bad movie. Go watch On Cinema first to get the reviews you need. It's movie time on Tim Heidecker's On Cinema at the Cinema. Tim Heidecker's On Cinema at the Cinema. Hey everybody, welcome to the season finale of season eight of Oscar, uh, sorry, cinema, on cinema, season eight Oscar, uh, uh, on, at the cinema here in Victorville Film Center. My name is Tim Heidecker and I am the host and uh, I'm with my guest Greg Turkington. Hey guys, sorry this season <coughs> uh, hasn't gone as planned. I think it's going well, consider, all things considered. Uh, I want to apologize. If you were in this room, you'd probably smell it. But this, I've been wearing this shirt now for four weeks. It, mu it fused into my skin because of the fire. And some of the fabric and materials made in China uh, are, are, have become part of, part of my skin. Uh, so I'm wearing this shirt now. Well, the fire now. itself was made in Victorville by you. So you can't blame Why? China. But anyways, this is me now. Well, this is me now because my every stitch of clothing that I have was burnt to a crisp uh, when my archives were burned. So. The Magnificent Seven, starring Antonio Fu uh, directed by Anton Fuqua, starring Chris Pratt, Hillary, Hel Haley, not hope, hopefully not Hillary, Haley Bellet Bennett, Denzel Washington, uh, Matt Boner, Ethan Hawke, Ethan Hawk. Seven gunmen in the Old West, who was a Western, gradually, gradually come together to help a poor village against savage thieves. Uh, this is a, another remake of the Magnificent Seven, and uh, even the Magnificent Seven was a remake of another movie called The Magnificent Seven. And this is starring Chris Pratt and uh, Matt Boner and has uh, a good chance of being my favorite movie of all time right now. I saw it the other day and it has it uh, was a western with guns and Indians and uh, there was all, all kinds of stuff going on. I thought it was okay for me. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this for everybody but I say five bags of popcorn. A lot of... Um, also we have <coughs> a lot storks. Of, hold on, I, w I was going to review the movie because uh, people do want uh, some critical thinking applied to these movies and I don't even know if you really saw The Magnificent Seven. I saw it. I want to see well, Storks. What theater did you see it in? Can we talk about Storks? Can we see? I don't sure. Wanna... Five bags for The Magnificent Seven. I, I, Nick is... It, it is very good. He's right. It's very good. It's right for reasons that he didn't bring up because he didn't see it, but I did and it is Storks, good. Storks directed by Nicholas Stoller. Nicola, Douglas Sweet, Doug Sweetland, cast with Andy Sandberg, Keegan Michael, Michael Key, and Keegan, Michael Key, Keegan, Kelsey Grammer, one of my favorites, and Jordan Peele. Storks have moved on from uh, delivering babies to packages, but What? But when an order for a baby appears, the best delivery stork must scramble to fix the error by delivering the baby. Sounds like the Tim Heidecker story. Mm. Well, I thought this was a cute movie. This was for kids of all ages, storks. And it was fun to hear Kelsey Grammer's voice. It was almost like you're watching the chip, uh, Cheers or... Uh, um, Frasier on... I used to watch the Frasier. What's up with Ayaka and the baby? Excuse me? What is up with your wife, Ayaka, and the baby? I haven't seen baby? her since that stupid waste of time intervention you had for me a couple weeks ago. That was Joe's idea. Okay, well, it was a big miss. That was three strikes, you're out. Goodbye, thanks for coming, but you are not up to my speed. <sighs> <laughs> 
Um, and it was the worst episode of the show in our show history. Nobody wants to see people being treated like babies. We are self-reliant. I am legend. Uh, storks. Five bags. What did you think of Storks? I liked it. It's it's funny. It's a, I'll give it that. It is funny. Um, I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and five Stork eggs. We are uh, excited to debut the new track from a group that we're working with right now called DKR. This is a new electronic music collaboration between myself and Axiom. And I want to debut this track for On Cinema. It's pretty exciting. I know people are wondering how am I going to bounce back, how am I going to rise from the ashes, literally, musically, uh, without the ability to play bass. Nobody's and wondering that. Yes, they are. I've been getting it. You should have heard Kenny Chesney going on. He actually called Kenny me. Kenny Chesney doesn't want to listen to that. And I got wonderful messages of support. So uh, we are pleased to premiere the world premiere. You're getting of legal papers served on you constantly at this theater from the people who lost all their possessions in that fire. You're not getting messages of support from Kenny Chesney. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to make the world premiere of the premiere song, that uh, new collaboration between myself and Axiom. It's a new group of electronic dance music uh, called DKR, and this is our brand new single. Uh, and I want, you, I, want to, I want you, we don't have a title for it yet, we're just putting it out there, hoping it catches fire, which I, you know, no pun intended. But uh, we want to just see, get, get this music exposed, and let's play the new track from DKR. This is DKR's new mu music revolution, EDM style. Check it out, and uh, we'll see you guys next season. No, we're, we're supposed to show oh, the, the last episode of On Cinema at the cinema on location, and then you can play that music no, over well, the end Well, let's play the music. Can we credits. play the music first? Let's play the music well, now. Play it last, because people want the information. Hold on. Quiet. I've dreamed of everything left in my mind. Chicken out, I'm living without time. I've got a little bit of time. drums come back in hard. Empty, 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 empty bottle, empty bottle, empty bottle, empty bottle, empty, 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 empty bottle, empty bottle. That's not going to be a hit. All right, you can check out that whole song on the Dakar website, which is going to also be, we're going to put together a DKR site as well. So that's a bit, it's a sampling of the new DKR song, which is going to rave up. You're going to catch fire all over the clubs. And starting next week, if you're in Victorville, come on down to the Victorville Film Center because Saturday nights at 9 o'clock, we start things right by having no, we're going to have music. He's wrong. And we're going to have uh, some stand up comedy and we're going to no. actually have sketch comedy we have and movies. EDM music all night long till midnight. And we're going to have an open bar. And it's movies on Friday and Saturday night, 7 o'clock. And now let's check out this it's not, on cinema. There's no on concert on Saturday night here. Yes, there will be starting next week. No, there will on cinema at location from you. Victorville, California. Every street has a story. And these are but just a few on on cinema on location. Hey, guys, and welcome to Victorville. Behind me are some of Victorville's beautiful mountains where It Came From Outer Space was filmed, but we have a special report today on this episode of On Cinema at the Cinema On Location. It is the writing location, not the filming location, but behind me is the ranch at which was written the all-time classic Citizen Kane. Yes, Virginia, there is a Citizen Kane, and he was born right here in Victorville. You can see beneath me the actual ranch where Citizen Kane was written. This is history. 
Now Victorville is home to the Victorville, home of the Victorville Film Archives, of which we have several copies of Citizen Kane. Back to you, Tim. See you next, uh, uh, see you next season. Uh, so. <sighs> you know how, um, I have to stay, stay going through it? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have two kids. She's having twins? No, Juliana's pregnant. What's wrong with you?